What if I told you that you too could have superpowers? Superpowers to build anything you ever imagined. What you're about to witness is far beyond any web application you have ever known. This project has been two months in the making, all just to bring it right into your hands. Plura is a white-labeled multi-tenant SaaS application that empowers agency owners, a market that has not been tapped into yet. We will be using Bun, Stripe Connect, Next.js 14, Shadcn UI, Tailwind CSS, Prisma, and Clerk Authentication. Even if you are a beginner, you can follow through with my guidance. I will be breaking down the architecture of this entire project. You will not only understand the front end of things, but also the behind the scenes. Now, what I'm about to explain is extremely important to ensure that you have a smooth development process and at the same time understand what you are building. So please pay attention. First, we will build a fully functional landing page where agency owners can sign up with our platform. After logging in, the agency owner is prompted to create an agency and fill in all the required information to start onboarding. Upon submitting the form, the user is redirected to the agency dashboard, where they can navigate to the launch pad to start their onboarding process. The sidebar on the left is dynamically pulled from the database. You can also search and filter for specific sidebar options. And here is something that I have never found on YouTube before. I have incorporated Stripe Connect, which means not only can we use Stripe to charge month-to-month -month subscriptions for our platform, but we can also connect the user's Stripe account into our application. We have also gone above and beyond with Stripe and have included the ability to charge platform fees from all transactions that happen within all sub-accounts. Even better, if the sub-account sells a subscription service, we get a piece of the cake every single month when the subscription is successful. When the agency owner starts their Stripe onboarding process, they are prompted with two options, either to create a Stripe account or to connect an existing Stripe account into our application. Once they connect their account, they are redirected back to their launch pad to ensure that their onboarding process was successful, indicated with the blue check icon. Now the agency owner can access their dashboard and see performance metrics. Agency owners can upgrade to paid plans to get access to premium features by clicking on the billing section in the sidebar. The billing page also has a ton of add-on products. They can subscribe to these to get access to additional features. And of course, add-on products are completely customizable, and I'm going to show you how you can create your own add-on products as well. Once the user clicks on the upgrade button, we will show a custom Stripe form, and this gives a much more professional white glove onboarding experience to your customers. I'm sure you've seen the traditional Stripe hosted page on every single YouTube video. So I decided to just go one step further and show you how you can use a custom Stripe form to do the same. Once the user puts their credit card information and hits submit, their payment is successful. And if the user scrolls to the bottom, they can see their subscription charges in the transaction table. The user can also upgrade to a higher plan with just one click of a button, and they will be billed only once the existing subscription has ended. Agency owners can create sub-accounts for their clients by clicking on the drop-down or by clicking on the sub-accounts tab, which shows a list of all the sub-accounts they own. They can also search and filter through these as well. Now, let me explain what is the purpose of these sub-accounts. As an agency owner, you might have multiple clients and managing all of them on one single application can be a little difficult. So what we did is we gave the agency owner the ability to create sub-accounts for their clients and each sub-account gets access to a bunch of amazing features. If we try to create a sub-account, a modal pops up prompting the agency owner for the information. But the coolest part is this is not done using a library like ZooStand. We will be building a global provider completely from scratch to show you what actually happens under the hood. The agency owner can update both the agency information and their own personal information inside the settings tab. They can also set goals for their agency by increasing the number of clients in the step component. 
Another cool feature is that agency owners can also invite staff members to assist them with running their business operations. They can do this by sending an email requesting the staff member to log in to Plura to access the agency account. And they can also fine tune the level of access each staff member can have by toggling their access for each sub account. Now this part is really cool. The agency owner can also invite sub account users into the application to give them access to their own sub account. So just as an example, I have invited a sub account user here and when they log into the application, they will see a custom unauthorized page until the agency owner gives them permission to view their sub accounts. Now let's move on to the sub account view. Sub accounts are also required to connect their Stripe account to see metrics and to sync their Stripe products directly into the app. The onboarding process is very similar to the agency onboarding process. And once they have successfully completed it, the check icon shows in the launch pad. As you can see in the sidebar, sub accounts have access to a bunch of really, really cool features. The first one is the media bucket. Sub account users can upload images and store them safely in their media bucket. The contact section helps the sub account user keep track of all the leads that come in through their website. And I know we haven't spoken about websites yet, but when we do, you are definitely going to be impressed. They can also see if a contact is an active or inactive lead with their estimated ticket value showing on the right side of the table. The next section is pipelines. Sub account users can create Kanban like boards, which we call pipelines. And these pipelines can have lanes and tickets to keep track of their business processes. When a ticket is created, we fill in the information for a service request, and we can also assign the ticket to a contact if it exists. And not only that, we can also assign the ticket to team members that have access to the sub account. And here's another cool feature. We can also label and place tags on each ticket to provide us with more information on the type of services that need to be performed. These pipelines can be used for anything that has a life cycle, such as lead generation or booking appointments. And even cooler, you can drag and drop and reorder the lanes and the tickets as well. Now, just to show you, since we created a ticket that has a customer assigned to it, we can see in the contact section that specific contact has an estimated value in the right side of the table. Sub account users can create funnels and websites and host them on custom domains within the application. After creating a funnel by filling in the details, the user can also view and edit these settings in the settings tab of the funnel. We can create multiple funnel steps directly in this section. You can also update the path for each section in the settings tab. The order of the funnel steps can also be rearranged in whatever manner you like. And what's really cool about the funnel steps is that when a user submits their information through a website, they automatically get redirected to the next part in the funnel. If you head into the settings tab, you'll also notice that you can search for all the products that the user has in their Stripe account. And these products automatically sync in directly from their Stripe. You can choose to set which products you want live so that the sub account user can accept payments directly from this specific funnel. To edit the funnel page in the builder, all the user has to do is click on the placeholder image and the funnel builder shows up on the page with a beautiful animation with all the powerful features in one place. And just for your information, every feature you see in this website builder is built completely from scratch, including the drag and drop functionality for the components, which again, I'm going to show you in great detail so that you can add to this and build your own custom components. The user can change the funnel page name by double clicking on the title and changing it to whatever they like. And when the user clicks outside the title, the changes are saved in the database. The navigation bar on the top also has other relevant information like the updated timestamp and the path of the page. And here's a really cool feature. The user can also switch between different responsive views to see what their website would look like on different devices. The preview icon up top allows the user 
to view the website as if it was in production to help them make a better decision for UI UX. You can also switch back to the editor mode by clicking the close preview icon on the left hand side. And here's something that's definitely going to impress you. We also built a fully functional undo and redo feature that keeps track of every action the user performs, including clicking different elements on the screen. This is what a website would look like fully built out in editor mode. Changing the values of the text inside the elements is as simple as double clicking and changing them. When the user clicks on the elements on the page, a badge shows on the top left providing more information on the element being selected. You can also delete the element from the view and bring it back if needed by hitting the undo button. On the right hand side, you will see a beautiful minimalistic editor that allows you to change almost every single CSS property you want. And I have made this architecture in such a way that creating new properties and expanding on these are as easy as copy paste. When the user clicks on an element, the properties automatically populate so that you can see what properties are being set on that element. We also have a custom section up top where I will show you how to create custom property values for any element you create. As if this wasn't enough, we also went above and beyond and created more tabs under this section. The first one is the components tab, which has a bunch of layouts and elements that the user can simply drag and drop on their page. And as you can see, this drag and drop feature is built completely natively. With the way I have set up this project, you can create almost any component in just one simple step-by-step -step process, which I have not only broken down in the video, but I have also provided the diagram, the illustration to everybody in the private community that is in the description below. To create a Stripe checkout page, all the user has to do is drag and drop the Stripe component, and Stripe will automatically sync all the products that are live on this funnel. The contact component allows the user to capture lead information. And once the user submits the form, the details are saved inside the contact section. The video component also helps build beautiful VSL pages or funnels to keep the user engaged on the website. We have used the power of client components and directly embedded the media bucket in here so that users can copy links to their images and use them as assets for their website. All they have to do is copy and paste the link in the background image property and the image will show on the website. Even cooler, a preview of the image shows in the color swatch and the same applies to background color as well. Finally, the layers tab shows a full breakdown of every element on the page in a tree structure so that you can easily access elements from here. To make it super user friendly to build more pages with the same theme, we have incorporated a feature where the user can simply duplicate the funnel page and change only what is needed to create a new page. Now, since the website is hosted under a subdomain, you can click the live production link, which will take you to the live website. And as you can see, the URL shows the subdomain that the user created. If website visitors try to access a page or a subdomain that does not exist, a 404 page is shown, indicating that the page is not available. We have also built notifications in the nav bar up top. When an agency owner is viewing a sub account, they can filter all the notifications that only belong to that sub account. We also have a mode toggle button in the nav bar, which allows the user to switch between light and dark mode. Hey guys, it's Perrin here. I hope you enjoyed that amazing demo. I had to do a lot of research to actually put something like this for you. And the best part is that it's completely free and I'm not charging you even a single dollar. Here is all I ask in return. First, you actually take action. Go get your laptop and build this entire project with me. And I'm going to guide you through the entire process. The second thing is I want to give you more free resources because I want to help you reach your goal. If you look in the description, you will find a private community. That community is completely free. If you join now while this community is open, every single course that I upload in that community will be free for you. And then hopefully in the future, I win your trust and then you give me the opportunity to mentor you and get you to your goals. Now, with that being said, only join this community if you are ready to take action and you want to start freelancing because we are going to be releasing a free 
completely free freelance course so that you can get your first client. And finally, the most important thing. All I'm asking is you click that subscribe button because we are going to be the biggest and the best web development community on YouTube. And I really believe in that and I hope you guys do too. All right, prodigies, I hope you have fun building out this entire project and I will see you in the community. I am super hyped for this video. So if you haven't already, go ahead and grab your laptop because we are going to be building this entire app together. Okay. See, this is action driven content. So if you want to take action, this is the best way. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a folder in here. So just anywhere, wherever you want, create a folder and we're going to change this to web prodigies uh, slash Plura. Okay. Don't forget this name it like this. And then you want to drag this project into your visual studio code. Okay, and that's just going to open it up for you. So for this entire project, we are going to be using bun. And if you don't know what bun is, just quickly look it up. What is bun like this? And it's going to show you go ahead and install bun into your computer. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've already installed it and I'm going to proceed. So what we need first is create next app. So we're going to say bun x create dash next dash app at latest space and period. Okay. And go ahead and hit enter and it's going to give you this. So hit yes for TypeScript. Yes for ES lint. Yes for this. Yes for this as well. App router. Yeah, of course we need app router. Also guys, please use source directory. Okay. It's needed for this project. I mean, at least I like it and I prefer you use the same settings. Okay. We're going to hit no for this option and let's just give that a second to spin up. Wow. See, that was so quick. I couldn't even say let's wait for that. Awesome. So guys, please, please open the dis up, uh, not discord. Sorry, please open open your GitHub and keep it on the right side. Okay. You're going to need this uh, because we're going to copy paste a bunch of things. Okay? Go ahead and create a .env file and copy these. Just copy it for now. Okay. We just need these env variables. We're going to populate in just a second. First thing is we're going to just spin up our upload thing. Open up upload thing, create an account if you haven't already, and it's going to create an app or something like that. Okay. It's going to look something like this. I've already built, I've already created the app. So once you create the app, it's going to take you to click on API keys and uh, copy this here, come in here and just replace these two things with that API key. We're going to use upload thing to basically upload images, files, and things like that. So we need this. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Awesome. The next thing is we are going to use Shad CN UI for theming, designing our components and things like that. And, and by the way, Shad CN has become one of the most used. It's not a library, right? It's like a copy paste component. They just had a new update and it's just gotten so much better. So uh, go ahead and scroll up top and you're going to see installation. Click on that. By the way, don't immediately install. Give me a second. I'm going to show you what to do. Click on the bun command, open your uh, terminal, paste that right after in it, you want to hit add. Okay. Go ahead and hit enter. And that's going to give you a bunch of things. So, so let's hit yes for this for TypeScript. Yes for default. Cause we want default. You can use whatever you want. And now our CSS file is actually inside the app directory. So we're going to say SRC slash, make sure there's no spaces. Yep. SRC slash app slash globals dot CSS and hit enter. And now we want to use variable to so hit yes. Just leave this blank um, tailwinds. This is good. And then hit components, hit yes, hit enter for react server components, hit yes, and hit enter for this as well. Awesome. So that's going to go ahead and install everything we need. Okay. So small problem here. It looked like it didn't install the components. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. So we're going to copy this and what we're going to do is just remove in it and just say add and let's hit enter. Okay. Now it works and you want to hit a, so once it prompts you with these, you know, radio buttons, hit a and then hit enter. And that's going to install all the components for you. This is just so much more quicker so that we don't have to go back and forth and use all the components it's too too much of a hassle. Okay, awesome. Now that we have upload thing, uh, there's a couple more things that I want to address. Hey, this is Perrin here from the future. In the next section of this video, we are going to be setting up our database. So in development, we will use a local database. And when we deploy, we will switch to a production database. Okay. But for whatever reason, if you have a problem setting up the local database on your local machine, look at the timestamps, scroll to the deployment section and watch the first part of that. Okay. In that section, I will show you how you can directly use the production URL link. We are going to be using a local database 
for local development. And then we're going to quickly swap to our production database by simply changing one string. How cool is that? It's very important production environment specifically. We're going to be using my SQL workbench. So if you don't know what this is, don't worry, I'm going to try my best to explain. Okay, quickly look up what is my SQL workbench, and it's going to give you this, go ahead and install this. Okay, once you install it, it's going to look like this. And by the way, when you install, it's going to ask you for a root password. Do not forget that password. Okay, I forgot and it took me a very hard, very long time to get back into it. So make sure you remember that password. So once that is done, you want to hit this plus icon. Okay, and it's going to show you something like this, go ahead and put plura up top and type it exactly the same way that I am. Okay, type in plura and just take a look at this port. So just remember this. Okay, this is root. This is good as well. And you know, you already remember your password. Awesome. So just go ahead and hit OK. I already created it and it's going to take you into this. OK, the root account has all access. So that's good. Awesome. And we need to create the URL. So I'm going to uh, just copy paste this. Give me one second. OK, so go ahead and type this. All right. Type it the way I'm typing it, which is my SQL this dot slash slash root, which is the user account, right? So we're just going to use root and this dot here, we're going to write test. This is the password. Okay, not this, this part only and then at localhost. And remember that uh, localhost um, port we saw, right? So go ahead and put that port. And for this one, we're just going to put plural. I think this is what we created. Let me make sure. So just go ahead and type that in there as well. And we're going to populate the other stuff later. OK, so for now, since we're using local database, I'll copy that and paste it inside the database URL for now um, in here. OK, awesome. OK, awesome. So it looked like first it failed for some reason. So I just did it one more time and it worked. So great. If that happened, that's the solution. All right. Just do it one more time. Now, the next thing is we want to go into our next config file and we're just going to paste in a couple of things in here. OK, so you can again go back into the GitHub right in there. So I'm just going to click on that config file. I'm just going to get the images for now. OK, we'll we'll leave everything else for now. OK, we'll just get this. Uh, we're gonna, just going to remove this strict mode as well. And the reason why we're removing it right here is because um, when we're using some other libraries, it causes some problems. Okay, so that's why we're just going to remove it for now. And uh, let's go ahead and run bun run dev to make sure everything is running as expected. I'm just going to say localhost and let that run. And let's so it looks like I need to upgrade my node.js. All right, so it looked like um, it, it. I mean, it basically told me I need to upgrade my node version right here. It said I need to be greater than 18.17. So what I usually use is NVM, but for some reason it's not on my computer. I don't know why. Go ahead and look up NVM. Okay, Node Version Manager. I'll actually put the link in the description. Okay, open up this package. Uh, scroll here. Click on installation. Copy this command if you're on a Mac and paste it in here. Okay, and hit enter. I already did that, so I'm not going to do that. And that's going to go ahead and run a script. Okay. And once that is done, make sure you close the terminal. So close this and open up another terminal again. And then you just have to hit NVM. Okay. And it's going to show you, you know, it's going to do something basically. That's how you install node version manager. And we actually use this for production builds. So it's very easy to switch between node versions. And in fact, production applications do not use the latest version of node. So you would always have to revert. So having this tool is definitely going to come in hand. Okay. The other easy version is I think you can just go to node.js and like download it from there, but we use this all the time. So just wanted to give you a heads up. Awesome. Okay. So once that is done, go ahead and type NVM. I want to say use node. Okay. And this is going to use the latest version of node.js. So just go ahead and hit enter. Let's do this. I think this should install it and let's just give that one second. OK, awesome. And I think it's already using the latest version of Node, so we don't have to worry about anything, but that's OK. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it in case you came across this bug. And if you have any problems, just reach out to me in the Discord. The Discord is literally blowing up. Everyone is helping each other out. So if you need any help, I'll be there to help you. OK, awesome. So I'm just going to close this again and let's run this command and hope everything works. OK, awesome. Now, when you type NVM, uh, you, also, you might have to restart your uh, Visual Studio code. So you can probably just reload it like this by hitting Command Shift P and just reload that. Or you can shut down and open a new one. And let's go ahead and say bun run dev. 
Okay, that spun that up. And all of you guys had this problem last time, which is you were like, why is this stopping here? Why is my file not coming? I mean, not showing up on the browser. Well, that's because no Next.js does not work that way. For Next.js, you have to make a request to the server to get a file. Okay, and that's why you need to refresh this. Okay, so go in here, enter. So make a request to localhost, and then you're going to see the code. Awesome. Let's move on. Okay, the next thing we need is clerk because we're going to be using clerk for authentication. Okay, so go ahead and look up clerk.com and hit enter and go ahead and do the same thing. Okay, log in, create an account, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, just give me a second. All right, so I went ahead and created an account. Hopefully you, hopefully you did it as well. So you want to get to this page and you want to click on add application, turn off the email address, put Plura in here. I'm just going to put all small letters and go ahead and hit create application. Okay. That's going to take you to another page. Okay. Scroll in here, copy this and you want to go in here and you want to replace the first two environment variables with what you just copied. Okay. We're going to need this and then we're going to populate these two things when we, I mean, these four things when we need it as well. But right now this is all you have to do. Okay. And the next thing we need is clerk themes and clerk themes actually helps us change this to a dark mode or light mode, whatever you like. So go ahead and copy this command. They're using NPM. So we're not going to use NPM. So I'm just going to quit, quit the server here. And so we're going to say bun add at clerk slash themes. Go ahead and hit enter and let that install. So once that is done, we need to install a couple more things. Okay, so let's go ahead and also populate these values. I'm just going to paste it in here and it's just HTTP slash slash localhost 3000 uh, with the trailing slash. Okay, don't forget to add that and same thing here, localhost 3000 and this scheme is just going to be HTTP for now. Okay, awesome. So we got to do a couple things now to set this up. So let me uh, see in here. Okay, so uh, we have to do some quick changes here. So let me go into the Tailwind config file. So we have to wrap this whole uh, export with, with the upload thing that we just created. So let's shrink this. I'm going to copy all of this stuff and I'm going to go ahead and get with UT. So which comes from upload thing. All right. And now we're just going to change this as well. So uh, we're just going to change this to the following. So just go ahead and put this for the public URL for the, and don't forget the trailing slash. Okay. And put this for the scheme. And now we're going to go back to upload thing because we need to also install it. We only created the project, right? So go ahead and open up the terminal and you can uh, go to your project. So you'll be in here, right? You'll be into, you'll be in here, click on documentation. And that's going to take you to the documentation file right here. Okay. So we're going to use bun. So click on bun copy this and paste it in your terminal go ahead and hit enter. I think we already populated all these variables. So this is fine. So now go into your tailwind.config.js file. Okay. So just change, just change this to TypeScript guys. I don't know why it came out as a uh, JS. Okay. So it looks like when we were creating the shad CN themes, it actually made a JS file and everything is TypeScript clearly, right? You can see here. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy everything inside this config.js and you're going to uh, delete this file here. So just delete that file and go to this one here and just paste that inside the TypeScript file. Okay. This is what's going to hold all the correct configuration. Awesome. If we have to make any changes anywhere else, we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay. But for now, just do this anyway. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to wrap this module export. So copy this and get with you with the, we have to get some package here. So let me import this package up top first. So we're going to say import with UT from upload thing. So from upload thing slash um, tailwind. And now we just have to wrap everything inside that. So with UT invoke it and then pass in that object that we just got. Okay. This is how um, upload thing actually gets all the styling and all that kind of stuff. Great. Now quickly go back into your dot uh, git ignore file and we're going to actually put dot env in here. So that's just going to hide uh, our env file so it doesn't get pushed. Okay. And now you want to go back into clerk. Okay. Go into clerk. And I want to show you what you need to do here. So in clerk, you're going to have this, sorry, not that you're going to have this, right? Click on continue to docs, uh, from home, Click continue to docs. It's going to take you to this page, scroll down, and you're going to find this uh, thing right here. Okay. So copy this, um, and we're going to use bun. So actually just type bun, um, uh, add at clerk slash next JS. Okay. Go ahead and hit enter and that should install clerk for us so we can start using it uh, in our application.
All right, awesome. I know we went back and forth a little bit, but if you're following through, you are going to get everything correct, okay? Um, and if anything happens, guys, you can reach out to me in the Discord and we will all help you out, okay? So the next amazing website or thing that I found tool is this, and someone actually shared this in the Discord, and this is what we're gonna use for theming our application. So if you don't like the theme we're using, you can use any theme you want. Like, look at this. This tool has access to every single theme for Shadsy and UI, and it, it is completely compatible. You just have to copy the code and you can just paste it inside your global CSS file, okay? But what I would suggest is you just go into our, um, our um, Git repository and just copy the CSS file so that there's no uh, problems, okay? We wanna make sure that we're working on the same exact thing. So go into your app directory, click on globals.css and just copy everything in here, okay? So copy this, go into your uh, globals file as well, which is in here, and just replace everything in here, okay? This way, everything looks the same. And what we did additionally here, so right here, is this is just called CSS reset or CSS normalize, okay? So go ahead and put that in here and put this up, um, this in here as well, okay? Awesome. And then the next thing is we also need some additional classes. I'm sorry, some Tailwind configuration that I did. So just go to that file as well, which is all the way in the root. Um, I know we already did the config, but I wanted to show you that config thing, right? And that's why I did that there. So go in here, go to your tail, Tailwind config dot TypeScript, and you want to copy everything in here. Actually, it might need some plugins. Uh, let me see. Okay. I don't think we need plugins yet. So just copy all of this, copy it just like that. Just replace this stuff, okay? Inside your Tailwind config uh, file. So I'm gonna copy and paste and then just save that. Okay, that's it. And we need this because we need to wire up something in the future, uh, which is Tremor, which we'll be using, but that's fine. Just copy this for now, okay? Next thing you need to do is replace these URLs. So this is what we're going to use, okay? We're gonna use agency sign in and agency sign up, okay? We haven't done this yet, of course, but this is what you need to do. So just put these values in here. Now, the next thing is we need to wrap our entire application in this clerk provider. Go into your directory right here, go into layout.tsx, and you see this right here, right? Go ahead and import this component, and we're just going to go ahead and use this component in here. Now drag everything into this component, and that's it, you're set for that. Now the next thing is we need to use the theme, right? So scroll up top, and we're going to import dark from clerk themes. And in here there is an appearance prop, we're gonna set that to the base theme, and that's going to have the dark property on it. So of course it's not going to render anything. Now you're gonna ask, why is this actually not working? Well, Clerk needs some sort of setup. It needs a path to render out its components. And if you read the documentation, you will see all that in detail, okay? Like you see here, for example, uh, they're showing you how to create all this stuff, right? So that's what we need to do. So go into your directory again, inside this app folder. Now we're going to actually build our structure. So first we're going to create a, a, a route group called main. So go ahead and say main, and this is where our entire application will uh, will remain, okay? We're gonna have the agency and the sub accounts and all that kind of stuff. Say main in here, and also let's just quickly go ahead and say providers. We're gonna need this maybe, right? So we're gonna put that in here. And inside this main, we're going to have the agency folder, and we're also going to have a sub account folder. And inside the agency, create another one. This is another route group called auth. And inside this, we're gonna say sign dash in, sign dash sign up. And in here, we're going to create another path. And this one is going to be a dynamic path, sign dash in like this. And inside that, a page.tsx. That's the return of the sign in component, right? So I'm just gonna say RAFCE. Uh, I'm using React snippets, by the way, okay? And in here, I'm just going to return the sign in. I don't think it's gonna come. Okay, it came in right there, awesome. And in here, same thing. We're gonna create a dynamic URL, sign dash up, and inside this a page.tsx and return RAFCE, which returns the sign up component. I mean, let's just see what happens actually. So if you reload this, so nothing really happens. And that's because our, um, our default path I think is set to a public. Okay, so if you go into your middleware 
dot TypeScript. Let me see if I actually have that. Okay, we haven't set that up yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our middleware file inside the source directory. Create middleware dot TypeScript. Okay, you can see the documentation. So if you scroll up here, you see it gives you something, right? So copy that and paste it in this middleware file. Inside here, guys, we actually are going to set some public paths. Okay, we need this to be public, and this is public routes. And this is going to be site uh, with a slash like this. And the next one is this is actually for upload thing. We're going to set this, but we're just going to do it right now. API slash upload thing. This has to be in an array. So let's put that in an array. So now clerk knows that these are public routes. So if you try to render now, you're going to see that for the local uh, for local host 3000, it's going to render this component. And there you go. It's showing the dark component. Now, I don't like this. I want to center it. So let's go back into this folder, go into main, and we're going to create a layout page for our authentication. So inside the auth, create a page call it layout.tsx. And inside this layout.tsx, we're going to render like a wrapper that's going to give it some uh, new styling. Okay, just return RAFCE again. And I'm going to change this to auth layout. Let me shrink this so you guys can see more. And let's give this some class name. So now it's returning this, right? So we need to return the children component because how layout works is it wraps the components and any children components passed into that, it's going to pass it in here. And that's how we get access to that stuff. So I'm just going to get the children from here and react dot react node. Okay. And um, this has to be returned here, of course. So we're just going to send this and now you, you're going to see that sign in page, but I don't like this. I'm going to say height full. I'm going to say flex item center, and we also need justify center. Okay, so there you go. Now it looks so much better, right? Awesome. So now inside this directory, we have to also build other other structures, right? So let's go into this app folder right in here. And we are going to create uh, another uh, route, actually not a route group, we're just going to create another folder. This is a route called sites. And we need this because our root page, which is our website is going to be inside here. So simply move this page inside here. Okay. And hit move. That's it. It's going to give you some prompts. So just go ahead and uh, do that as well. And inside this page, guys, this is where we're going to have our website. Everything is going to be in here. So I'm just going to remove all this stuff, remove everything inside this, just keep the main, just the main. Okay. And we're just going to say page. Okay. And now if you try to access the site, it will actually be a public URL. So you can access this. And now we're going to ask parent, why are we doing this? Why do we need to create this? Well, the way our application works is our website is in a different path and we're going to rewrite this path. Okay. So when the user tries to access the site, it's going to look like localhost. Okay. And the, like I said, the magic is in the middleware file. So please just focus when I get to the middleware file, because everything about this app works from the middleware file. Okay, so I already have our beautiful website deployed, right? So we're going to build this entire thing. And I'm going to show you. So I just want to first show you what it looks like. And then we're going to go ahead and build it. Okay, because I know I didn't share screenshots of the uh, landing page. So look how amazing this looks, guys. And we're going to learn how to create this grid inside our page.tsx. We are going to remove this now to remove all the styling in here as well. We don't need this. Okay, we're going to keep the main tag though, because we need um, some good uh, semantic meaning. Okay, so we're going to create a section tag and this section tag is going to have a class name of height full with full padding top of 36 relative flex item center justify center flex dash column inside this we're going to create a div and this is going to have a class name of absolute bottom dash zero. I think we're basically building that uh, that grid, right? So we're going to say left dash zero, right dash zero, and then also on top. So top dash zero and on dark. Hey guys, just a quick announcement for our free freelance course. So if you want access to that, just listen up. One of the most important skills as a web developer, apart from the web development stuff is knowing how to freelance and how to make money on your own. And there's a lot more benefits that you can gain as a freelancer than doing a nine to five job. Because the problem with only having a job is that you're exchanging your time for small dollars. Now, why do I say small dollars? Well, it's pretty obvious. You only have so much time. Whereas when you freelance, you're basically exchanging 
your expertise and the value you have to offer for a fixed price. And one of the best rewards that you get out of freelancing, apart from the monetary part, is that you can work from anywhere. Like it really is possible. You could sit halfway across the world and deliver the same, if not better results for your clients. And just through freelancing alone, you learn so many things like how to get leads, how to run an entire sales call, how to show somebody your expertise and have them build trust in you to invest in your services. And the best part is you get to work with other people, build a team, and you're building a brand for yourself. So here's what I want to do for you. We have opened up limited spots in our private community. And I I want to give you access to this community for free because I want you to start learning. And the fastest way to do it is be a part of a supporting community that's already making money doing freelancing. Be around people who are where you want to be. So I want you to get access to this knowledge because it's not available anywhere else. So I am creating a completely free freelance course to get you guys started. And that course will be available for anybody who is a part of that private community. And here's the best part. If you join before we actually lock this community, Every course we release in that community will be completely free for you. Now, here's the criteria. If you join the community, you have to have a display picture because people want to know you and I'm sure you want to know other people. This is not a discord channel. So if you want to just hang around and this is not the place for that, this is the place only for success minded individuals. This is only if you want to meet successful people and see some real progress in your career, please be understanding because we are only opening up limited spots in that community. So if you try to log in and your request gets denied, it's probably because we're either at cap or we're no longer offering this opportunity. If you want to start freelancing and also get personally mentored by me and be a part of a community that is absolutely crushing it in the field of freelancing, scroll down to the description and you are going to find the link there. Click on that and join and I will see you there. All right, guys. So I took a look at it. I actually couldn't tell what was going on wrong. So uh, this is the website that I found this resource from. OK, it's called uh, Snippets, I think, uh, BG this one all right right here and they have some really really cool stuff okay you can copy this and it's just copy paste okay so i copied this one pasted it in here i just changed the color values okay i changed this one and the other thing i changed was the size i changed it from what it is to 4 rem i'm not sure what broke or what happened also i changed this one right here i changed it to uh six sixty percent okay and now you see it on the screen so let's move on so so right after this, so I'm going to actually close this tag because we don't need to keep that open. Uh, we're going to create a paragraph and we're going to say run your agency in one place. And this is going to have a class name set to text dash center. So it's right in the center. All right. Sorry about that. Pretty stupid thing. So first of all, we are we don't really need to push this back, I think. And what is happening is I forced the color here. So the you know, the color scheme is not actually working. OK, so that's what's going on there. That's because we're on light mode, but it will work. OK, awesome. And after this paragraph, go ahead and create a uh, a div. And this div needs to have a class name and this is going to have BG gradient. So what we're create, why are we creating this? This is for um, the text you see here, right? We need to create a background gradient and we're going to clip that text. Okay. So we're going to see BG dash gradient dash to right from dash primary. And then we're going to say to secondary dash foreground. And then we're going to say text dash transparent. And we're going to do BG dash clip uh, border. No, clip clip text. Sorry. And then we need relative from here. So um, yeah, once we create this inside this, we're going to create an H1 tag and we're going to set the class name to text dash nine XL and then font should be bold. And then we want the text to be center with uh, medium. For, so from medium devices from MD, this is going to have text dash 300 pixels. And um, inside this, we're going to say uh, we, we just need to put a title. So I'm just going to say Plura for now. And there you go. So now when you extend it, it looks great. And when you shrink it, it looks like that. And you can change this if you like. OK, you can change the brightness. I think it looks different here. Um, oh, I just removed it on dark mode. OK, I, I, on light mode. Sorry. But yeah, you could you could do that if you want to. OK, I think that's what I did uh, somewhere here. Right. I think I said something here to dark. I'm not sure what I said to dark. Let's see okay there you go done <laughs> all right it's gone uh so yeah you could do that if you want i'm just gonna keep it because it looks great okay awesome and after this h1 tag after this div we're gonna create another div here 
and we're going to give this a class name and set this to flex justify center items is going to be center as well and then this is going to be relative with from medium uh, devices sorry it's going to have a margin top of negative 70 pixels we're going to push it up a little bit so that way it goes up and uh, let's see what that looks like there you go okay and uh, let me make sure this looks good okay cannot shrink anymore okay cool and inside this we're going to put an image so this is why i said you need to have the github because we need to download a bunch of images so go into the public folder and you're going to see a bunch of stuff in here okay i want you to go ahead and download each of these images okay click on it and then click here download okay download all these images and open your uh, folder too and inside your public folder just drag and drop it in the exact same format so let's say right now uh, inside the public folder inside that directly we have these four images so drag them and drop them inside this folder, okay? And then inside the assets, so create a folder in here and call this assets like this. And inside that, you wanna drag and drop these pictures. So go ahead, pause the video, do that and come back. All right, hopefully you did that. I just finished doing that as well. So let's continue. So after, uh, sorry, inside this div, okay? Inside this, you're going to create an image tag and this comes from next image. So let's import that from uh, next image. Where is that? Did I already import it? I think I already imported some stuff up here. So I'm just gonna remove that, sorry. Uh, import this, okay. And we're going to say SRC, and we're gonna set this to the slash assets slash preview dot PNG, okay. This is the preview image for our application, and this needs an alt, so I'm just gonna say banner image. And then uh, the uh, height and width also have to be specified. So we're going to say height of uh, 1200 and width of 1200 as well. And then let's give this a class name. We're going to say rounded uh, dash uh, top left dash to XL and then rounded dash top right of uh, two X. I think there's just one property for that, but that's okay. And border two and border dash muted uh, like this. Okay. So it kind of has that effect nice and the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to give it a fade uh, in effect at the bottom okay i think this is good all right and after this image so right here okay since this has relative we're going to place something at the bottom of this image so we're going to say div with the class name of bottom dash zero top dash 50 percent so 50 percent like that and we're going to say bg dash gradient dash to top we did this last time too, I think, right? Yeah, I'm um, sorry, to T. And then we're gonna say dark from dash background, left dash zero, right dash zero, absolute and Z of 10, okay? Okay, so it's from dark mode, that's why we don't see it, okay? But you will see it um, on dark mode, okay? Cool, and um, if you wanna see that, we would have to actually create our nav bar and maybe we could actually, maybe we could do that. Let's go ahead and do that, guys. So inside our folder in here, inside our layout, this is where we're going to um, render out that uh, navigation or nav bar component, okay? So in here, right uh, before the children, create navigation, which we're gonna come to in just a second. It's gonna throw an error. And now you want to go into your components, okay? Create a folder. And we're going to call this site, okay? Because everything for that is going to go in here, okay? You can call it site components if you like, but it's already under components. And inside this, I'm going to create navigation. And then inside this, just say index.tsx, okay? And then we're going to say TypeScript. You can use this one too if you'd like. Navigation component. And inside this navigation component, uh, we're going to do a bunch of stuff. So in here, first, this needs a user, okay? Create user from here and this is going to be either null or type user and now this is where we come into um you know getting types and stuff like that i mean for getting prisma and all that kind of stuff but we're not going to deal with that for now and now we can just destructure this user here and inside this navigation we're going to return a div not a fragment actually we'll return a div like this with a class name of padding for flex items center justify between and relative and inside this we're going to give it a side because we're going to have two sides left and the right okay and on the left side uh, first let's give this a uh, flex 
items center and gap of two. And inside this, go ahead and create an image and import this image from next image like that too. And you want to say SRC is equal to uh, dot slash assets slash plura dash logo dot SVG. Okay, like that. And then you want to say width is going to be 40 and height is going to be 40 as well. And just give it an alt. And let's also give it an alt tag is going to throw an error. Okay, we're just going to say plura logo. Okay. And now let's go back in here and let's import this component. So just import the navigation and refresh in there. You just, you see something in there. Okay. So let's refresh that. Okay. I see something very weird. That is not the uh, element. What's going on? Let me take a look. I think I might know what's going on. So this navigation came from Lucid React. Let's remove that. And let's import navigation from our components. That happens all the time. All right. So make sure you look at your... Um, your imports if something's happening and you don't know what the hell is going on. So, all right. So let's go back to this component here. And after this, we want to create a span and we're going to say class name text dash XO and uh, also let's make it font dash bold like that. And we want to say plura and put a dot. Okay. And we're also using a specific font here, guys. We haven't loaded this font in yet. Uh, but we will soon. Okay. So let's just finish this nav bar. Okay. So after this, a nav tag, and this is going to have a class name of hidden on mobile devices, but for a medium device, it's going to have block. We want absolute left of 50%. We want top of 50%. And then we want to say translate X transform translate X of negative 50% percent okay and then translate y and then here we're just going to change this to negative 50 percent okay and this is basically for the navigation stuff in here so inside here create a ul tag and this is going to have a class name of flex items center justify center and gap of eight and then let's go ahead and create our link tag so i'm just going to create a link from next link okay and uh, just give it an href. I'm just going to put this because we're not really, you know, building all that crazy navigation. We did that last time, by the way. So if you guys want to learn how, we, how to build a really insane navigation bar, you can watch the previous video. Okay. We did a lot of cool things in that video. So let's uh, expand this again. And let's just say about um, documentation, T-A-T-I-O-N, sorry. And then this one's going to be features. So we see something here or maybe not. Not sure. Oh, that's because of medium devices, right? Okay. This is set to MG. This should be MD. Okay. Now you will see that. Okay. And something's wrong here. Is it because of this? Okay. It's because I don't think we have flex set properly. Let me see what's going on. Okay. This is spelled absolute. Okay. That fixed it, guys. Sorry about that. I make a lot of spelling errors. That happens. And here we also need trans. I think it's transform. Transform. I think transform right there. Yeah, that should be good. Now it'll be perfectly centered. And after this nav down here, we're going to create a side. And in here, we're going to give it a class name of flex gap dash two items center. And this is where we're going to have our toggle mode. So we have to create that component too. Okay. But uh, let's just say link and give it an href of slash slash agency because you can log in here and we're going to say login inside this and we're going to give this some styling so class name is going to have bg primary text dash white p dash two px dash four rounded dash md hover bg dash primary slash 80 oh, not dot slash 80 um, and then let's hit enter here Okay, already looks great. <laughs> and then we can just do transition all, I guess, if you want. Uh, okay, that's fine. We don't need that. So, and after this, now we need the user button. And this comes from clerk authentication. So let's quickly see what that looks like. Of course, there's nothing there because the user is not logged in. Okay. And, um, and if you also hit this, it's going to take them to the agency page where they can log in. Okay, cool. And in here, now you want to create the mode toggle, which we haven't built yet. So we're going to build that in just a second. Okay. So say mode toggle like this. And now go to Shad CNUI 
and just open this up real quick and you're going to see um, just give that one second why is it taking time okay so themes let's go to docs okay dark mode next JS and it's gonna give it to you literally so go to this okay oh they have the drop-down version yeah this is probably what we want so we need to create this theme provider so copy this code okay let's move this aside and let's go to our providers that's why we created those providers so go in here create theme dash provider dot tsx and just paste that code in here and now go into your uh, let me think yeah you want to go into it says right here right go into your layout so the root layout right in here and inside this so right above the body tag you want to place this theme provider so i'm going to import this from our file okay like this hit enter and i'm going to just bring all this stuff inside that and now inside this we're going to also pass in these properties in here and they're also telling us to pass in suppress hydration warning so let's pass that into the html tag as well okay i think that's all there is to that and now inside your mode toggle we're going to copy this code here and let's go into our components and let's create a global file okay so you can say global and inside this we're going to say mode dash toggle dot tsx paste the code go back into the uh, okay something is wrong here radix ui why does it need that i don't want that so moon icon where is that moon icon here i'm just going to remove this sun icon from lucid react moon icon from i think that might be an error <laughs> anyway and um, or maybe that just automatically installed i don't know but yeah let's go back in here and now we can bring in this component mode toggle from our file and now if you refresh there you go now you can just change it right from there and now you see it show, okay so it looks like there is some sort of hydration okay looks like there's a hydration fail i'm going to fix that just give me one second so i think this is yeah this is not right this this body tag should be outside this the children tag can be in here that's probably what's breaking it let's see um yeah there you go that was it all right awesome great job so let's go back to where we were which was inside the nav bar right I mean, I think we're pretty much done here with this. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's move on. Now you want to go back into your site and click on the page.tsx. And after this section, you're going to create another section. And this, you're going to give a class name of flex justify center flex dash call and gap dash four and margin top of 20. Okay. And also, let me change this items center like that. Just create a H2 with a class name of text dash four Excel text dash center. And in here, we're just going to say, choose what fits you right. So let's put that from maybe from medium devices. Okay, cool. And we can hide that later. And now after this H2, we're going to create a paragraph tag and we're going to set the class name to text dash muted dash foreground and text dash center and we're going to just paste some text in here okay i'm okay cool so i just went ahead and pasted something so create a div here and say flex flex items center gap dash four flex dash wrap and then we need margin top of six now what you're going to do is you're going to open the github repository click on this and go into the constants file which will be inside source libs constants dot typescript and go ahead and copy the prices price cards okay so open this go into your libs and go ahead and create this all right pause the video go ahead and build it and then come right back all right hopefully you did that you just have to go into libs create a constants file and then just paste that in there okay you want to come in here and now you want to import that uh, variable that you just created inside the constants which is called pricing cards so i'm going to come in here shrink this so you can see and i'm going to say pricing cards i'm going to import that and i'm going to do dot map and for each of that i'm just going to return something for now okay i'm just going to return like a div and inside this we get access to the cards i'm just going to say card in here and give this a key and inside this actually yeah let's just change this to a card and this card is from components ui and in here i just want to put 
card dot title just to see what's going on. Okay, cool. There you go. We see some stuff. And if you shrink it, okay, we need to flip, fix that part. Justify center. How does that look? Okay, that looks slightly better. Yeah, and that will accordingly fix itself. Great. And inside this, we're going to just remove this card description. We don't need this card description anymore. And in here, we're going to first give this a class name. And we're going to use CLSX here. And they actually have a CN function, but CLSX just makes sense for me. I'm just going to use this right now. With dash 300 pixels, flex, flex dash call, justify center, actually justify between. And in here, after this, you want to put a an, an, an object, sorry, and you want to say border dash two, border dash primary, and this is if the card dot nickname, uh, or we don't have nickname. Okay, we can just say title for now equal to let's see what titles we have, and this has to say unlimited SAS like this okay and in here we want to create a card header in here we want to also use a card title and this title is going to say card dot title and let's give this a class name CLSX this is going to be empty we'll just say text dash muted dash foreground and this is going to be true if card dot title is not equal to unlimited SAS. After this card title, we're going to put the description, card.description for now. After header, we want to use the card contents component. And this is going to have a span with a class name of text dash for Excel and font dash bold. And in here, we're going to say card dot uh, price maybe. And after this span, we're going to create another span. So I'm just going to duplicate this right below. So we're going to say card dot. Okay, we don't have that. So I'm just going to say per month, per month like this. Okay, that looks good enough. And after this, after the content, we're going to create a card footer. And this footer is going to have a class name of flex, flex dash call, items dash start, and gap dash four. And in here, create a div. And we need to basically render out each of the features. So card.features.map. That's how we render for each of them. And we're going to get the feature here. And here, we're going to return a div with a key set to the feature itself. That's fine. And uh, we're going to give it a class name of flex gap dash two and items dash center. And in here, we're going to first render the check icon like this. And we're going to also have a P tag. This is going to have the feature inside here. There we go. Looks great. Put a class name of text dash muted dash foreground. That looks so much better. Right below this, we want to create a link. So say link and import from next link. Okay. And we're going to say href is going to be slash agency, put a question mark. So we're creating a param here and we're going to say plan equal to dollar sign card dot ID. This string has to be the other quotes. Okay. So card dot, um, let's see what we could put in here. Maybe price ID. I think that should be good because basically we're sending a price ID, which Later inside the app, we will extract from because it comes from Stripe and then we'll create a payment intent with and inside this create a class name. And this also is going to use CLSX say with dash full text dash center BG dash primary and P dash two rounded dash medium. This one is going to also depend on what we are on. So we're going to say not BG dash muted. I'm not not sorry. This means important uh, foreground. And this is true if the car dot title is equal to unlimited SAS. Then inside this, you just have to put get started. Let's remove this justify center. I think that is wrong. Maybe it's the item center. Yeah, it's the item center. So just go ahead and remove that. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Change this to not equal to. That looks so much better. We want to emphasize on the pro plan more than the free plan. Damn. I mean, I think we're pretty much done. Yeah, we just have one more thing. And I think that's about it. OK, so what we would do when we are wiring up Stripe is we would replace this card with an additional card because in Stripe, you cannot create a free product. Well, you technically can by using free trials and things like that. But it's, we just we're not using that. OK, if the user hits 
get started. We're going to create an account for them and then we're just going to set them up. So for that, we will wire something up in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, a work in progress tag. OK, and I, I know you guys saw this in the last video. We did this very often. OK, so we're going to do this here and we're going to say wire up free product from Stripe. Awesome, guys. Great job so far. You already finished building the uh, the website. Let's go ahead and move on to the next parts now. All right, so I'm just going to reduce this a little bit because on mobile devices, it looks really bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say margin top. So first set this to important and set this to maybe something like 40 pixels. I think that should be just enough. Uh, oh, negative. My bad. Don't do positive. That should go up. OK, that looks better if you shrink it. OK. It goes right back. Yeah, let's increase that a little bit more. Let's just set something like negative 60. So it's right around here. That looks so much nicer. Let's go ahead and set up the fonts for our website. So go into your layout page in your root file right in here. Scroll to the top, change this to Plura, okay? And change this one to all-in-one agency solution. Now we're going to import a different style in here. And I'm going to change this to font. And this one is going to be DM Sans. I love DM Sans. You can use this if you'd like to. It's up to you. And let's replace that. Okay, great job, guys. Go ahead and stop whatever you're doing and just give me your attention for a few minutes. I'm going to explain our architecture for the navigation. Okay, so go ahead and stop what you're doing and just pay attention. Like I said, everything happens in the middleware file. The middleware file does all the magic. Okay. But what we are essentially doing, guys, is we are rewriting the user to a specific path, okay, based on what they are trying to access. So, for example, if that still doesn't make any sense, look here. You see, we say web prodigies dot application, right? So this is a subdomain. So if they were trying to access a subdomain, we're going to send them to a different path that we created. So let's say if we had a path in here called subdomains path, or, or it can just be anything. It can be domain path. We are going to send them to that path and we're going to rewrite the URL so that it looks like this. But technically under the hood, it looks something like it's like this basically. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So that's basically what we're doing. So first, when they try to access any page, we want to check if a subdomain exists and if a subdomain exists, then we're going to send that user over to that page, which is the domain. And if there was any path, we're going to send them to that path along with the search params. If there's no subdomain, we're going to check if they were trying to access the sign in or sign up page. If yes, we'll send them to agency slash sign in because that handles all the logic for sub accounts uh, to send the user to a sub account directory or keep them in the agency directory. Then if that does not exist, so if they're not trying to access sign in, then we uh, will want to see if they're trying to access the website. So in this pay in this application, if you try to put slash site, it's going to take you to the landing page. But if you try to also put the local only this, uh, the root path, it's also going to take you to the site page. So that's a really cool thing. Okay. And we're doing that because um, we just want to create that great experience. Okay. So we're rewriting the user to slash site. If they try to access either local host, I'm sorry, if they try to access the root path or the uh, path slash site. Now, if that's not the case, then that means they're probably trying to access their sub account dashboards or their agency dashboards. So what we're going to do then is we're simply going to rewrite them to the path they want along with any search params. I hope this makes sense. OK, I think it's I did a great job explaining. But hey, if you have any questions, the discord is going to help you, like give you all the support you need. Awesome. So let's move on. So here's a challenge for you. Go ahead and create a dynamic route called domain and a dynamic route called path within that domain. And that has to be inside the root app directory. OK, take it up as a challenge. Go ahead, pause this video, give it a shot and then come right back. If you don't know how to do it, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Awesome. So go in here. You want to create a folder and you want to call it domain like this. And inside this domain, create a page dot TSX and just return something for now. So I'm just going to return uh, page and inside this domain, create another page, uh, a, a dynamic path. We're going to call this path. Okay. And inside that a page dot TSX, that's all you had to do. So if you got this correct, great job. And uh, I want you to actually give a good attempt at these challenges. Okay. Awesome.
you to understand this uh, very important concept, right, of how this provider actually works with Clerk. So when you wrap your app inside this Clerk provider, everything right now, so we are in the root layout.tsx file, every component is wrapped with the Clerk provider. And inside the middleware file, we have only these two uh, paths set as public URLs. However, we also want the domains and the paths to be public. Now, this is going to cause a problem because we have to do something like star and all that kind of stuff. And that would also mean that everything after that would become a public URL. So how do we solve this problem? It's very simple. You cannot have the clerk provider uh, in the root layout file. So let's quickly remove this clerk provider from here. I'm just going to copy that and we'll just remove it from here as well. And you're going to see this error on the screen. That's fine. OK, and you want to go into your main file, your main folder, create a layout.tsx in here and just return a layout, get access access to the children from the props. So we're going to say children is react react node. And in here, we're simply going to return the children component. And now go ahead and remove this div. We don't want to return anything else. And we have this clerk provider here. So just push the, the children into this clerk provider and go ahead and import this. I'm going to import clerk provider and import dark theme from clerk provider as well. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to copy this dark theme and I'm going to import it here so I can actually use that. Okay, awesome. And another thing you're going to notice is the website will also need that clerk provider. Okay, so go into its layout.tsx and in here you're going to return that, uh, that clerk provider. So I'm going to copy this clerk provider from here, go into site, paste that, hit enter and move this into this component and quickly just import all of this stuff. There we go. Awesome. And now if you, okay, there you go. So if you try to access the uh, dynamic path, you're, you're, you're not going to see it. And the reason is because we are not uh, rewriting the user. You're still going to see the sign in. Okay. That's because we still have to build the middleware file, but I just wanted to get you guys set up with this so that we can move forward with that. Okay. So go into your middleware file right in here. I'm going to shrink this so you guys can see more. And inside this auth middleware, there are two uh, functions. Okay. It's called before auth like this and this gives us access to the auth and the request and this is an async we're just going to make this an async function okay and there's one more in here called after auth okay we are not going to use the before auth but i just wanted to show you okay and inside the after auth first we're going to do um rewrites for domains okay so basically we're following the structure that we just have here that's literally it so the first thing we need to do is we're going to say const url equal request dot next url okay next we want to say const search params equal to url dot search params dot to string and then we're going to get the host name. So we're going to say host name equal to request dot headers like this. And then after this, say const path with search params equal to we're going to use backticks dollar sign and the bracket. We're going to say URL dot path name, not password, sorry, path name. And after this, put another dollar sign and a curly bracket like this. We're going to say search params dot length greater than zero. And if this is true, then we're going to return another backtick and we're going to say question mark dollar sign search uh, params. OK, like this, uh, copy this and I'm just going to paste it in here or we're going to return something else, right? Uh, so, okay, I see some error here. Uh, let's see, what is the error? Okay, the back tick has to close here and this can be like this, I think so. Okay, yeah, so close that back tick. Sorry, I just made a small error there. And if not, we're just gonna return an empty string. Now, after this, go ahead and we're going to run this logic, which is we're gonna check if subdomain exists. If the subdomain exists, we're going to, I'm just going to put a note here for y'all who want to see this. So um, if subdomain exists, okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to say const custom subdomain equal to host name dot get host. And then we're going to, if this has something, we're going to split like this, uh, put back ticks again. And we're going to say dollar sign process dot env dot next public um, domain. And make sure you also have that in here. Okay, there you go. We already have that in here. And let me go back to the middleware file. Okay, cool. And uh, we're going to split at that. And then we're going to filter for Boolean. 
So only the ones that are string and we're going to get the first one. Okay. In here, we're going to basically check if the domain exists. So if custom domain, custom subdomain exists, then we're going to return next response dot rewrite. And we're going to rewrite with a new URL invoke that like this. And inside here, we're going to pass the back backticks with a slash and we're going to say custom subdomain. And we're going to put the path with the search param. So another dollar sign like this and path with search param. So I, I hope you understand what we did here. We're basically rewriting the user to that domain and the path ID. So whatever we created in here, you see this, uh, where's that right here, we're rewriting them to this path. Okay. That's it. And, um, after this, so after this, if statement, if the subdomain does not exist, then we're going to the next stage, which is if the URL dot path name equal to sign in. So slash sign dash in. Okay. Let me scroll down and hopefully you guys can see more and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, or we're going to say URL dot path name equal to slash sign dash up. So they're trying to access the sign in pages. Then we're going to return next response dot rewrite, sorry, redirect. We're not rewriting them. We're redirecting them now to a new URL with a, uh, with back ticks. And we're going to say agency slash, sorry, slash agency slash sign dash in. And then after this pass in the request dot URL, uh, like this. Awesome. And after this, so after this, we're moving on to the next stage which is if the URL dot path name equal to backslash, so they try to access the website, right? Or the URL dot path name is equal to slash site and the URL dot host name, host, sorry, not host name. The host is equal to process dot env dot. Um, let me go and copy this from here actually, or here, I can just copy it from here. Okay. Let's shrink that. Okay. Process.env.next public domain. So if this is equal to this, then we're going to do something. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to re redirect them to the website to site URL. Okay. So next response dot rewrite the user to a new URL with slash site and request dot URL, just like this. So we're taking them to the site. Awesome. And after this, so if this is still not true, then right after this, we're going to make another check. We're going to check if the URL dot path name dot starts uh, dot starts with the slash agency or the URL dot path name dot uh, starts with sub account. So if they're trying to access their dashboards, then we need to take them to those pages, right? So if this is true, then we're going to return the next response dot re uh, re yeah rewrite okay new url invoke this and you want to uh, pass in back ticks sorry actually no back ticks about that uh, you want to say um uh, actually yeah we will need this because we need to put the path with the search params yeah so dollar sign path with search params like this and after this put a comma and say request dot url so now it's going to redirect them to that page awesome now let's just see what happens okay so if i try to access the site it's taking me here if i try to access the root page it took me to the website as well and if i try to access access agency it's going to uh ask prompt me to sign up or sign in oh this is sorry i didn't spell that correct so agency like that. Okay. So something's wrong here. It looks like it took me to some other page because this should throw an error, but it's not. So something is wrong here. Let me just take a look at that guys. Okay. So nothing was actually wrong here. We also need to put the next URL at line 28. So after you return the custom subdomain, make sure you put request.url as the second parameter. Okay. I think everything else was fine, but we do, we do not have a page for our agency. So let's go ahead and create a page.tsx and return RAFCE. We're just going to say page like this. And here we're going to return agency dashboard, for example. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to say agency right here. 
So now you see it's showing the agency. Whereas if I try to access some other page here, so some other path name, it's going to take me to that domain path. And now you may ask, well, hey, that page does not exist. So why are we showing this? Well, we're going to do some logic where we're going to loop. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to search the database and check if the domain exists. And if it doesn't exist, we're going to throw a not found. That's why if you try to access something that is random like this, right, it's actually going to throw a not found error and it's not going to show them anything. So that's why we're seeing that problem. But everything else looks good. So uh, great job. Let's move on and install Prisma. So if you don't know how to find all this stuff, right, you can just search for bun with Prisma or something like this. And it's going to show you right here and you can just copy these commands. All right. So copy this one, paste it in here, and that's going to go ahead and install Prisma and Prisma client for us. And then the next one we need is this command, which is to init um, MySQL. So we're going to remove this and put MySQL and hit enter. And that's going to um, spin up our application with MySQL. So it also gives you the next step. So set the database URL in the .env file and point it to the existing database. And then uh, it's literally telling you everything. So let's go in here and let's just see what it did to our .env. Okay. So, okay. So it looks like there's something. All right. It didn't do anything in here. But if you go to Prisma, you're going to see a schema.prisma file. And this is going to have your database URL key in here. And it's going to say MySQL. So this is exactly what we want. One more thing I want to add here is af after this, after the URL, go ahead and hit enter. And you want to say relation mode equal to Prisma like that. Okay, I want to add that in here. I don't know why. Awesome. And uh, generate client, Prisma client, uh, JS. This is okay. All right, awesome. So now go to your uh, libs folder in here, create a db.typescript file, not TSX, sorry, TypeScript file. And in here, we're going to initialize our client. Okay. And if you don't know what that is, I'm going to show you in just a second. So first, let's go ahead and import Prisma client. So import Prisma client from at Prisma slash client like this. And then we're going to declare global var prisma prisma client or undefined. Okay. And then we're going to say export const db equal, uh, sorry, global this, global this dot prisma. So if this um, exists basically, or we're going to create a new prisma client. So this way we don't create multiple clients on every single reload. And if you guys were here from the last project, you know that we had this issue with the drizzle ORM client being reinitiated every single time the app reloads. So this is the solution for it. Okay. And we also addressed it in the discord and all that stuff. But if you are not there for some reason, this is the answer. Okay. So we're going to say process.env dot node environment is not equal to production. Then we want to say global this dot prisma dot uh, sorry equal to db. Okay. So now we can use this prisma client um, db in here and we can make uh, calls and you know, we can basically create tables and all that kind of stuff. Now go ahead and open your terminal and type bun x prisma generate. And that's going to say something. Let's see what happened. You don't have any modules defined in your schema file. Of course we don't. It's mo models. Okay. So let's go in here and we can basically create the structure. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an enum. We're going to call this role inside this role. We're going to say agency owner just to basically create something. Right. And let's say Prisma. Oh, we have to create a model too. Sorry. So I'm just going to create that. The first model we're going to build is the user model. This is going to have an ID of string, which is going to have this at ID. And the default is going to be UUID. And then we're going to have a name, which is also a string. We're going to have the avatar URL, which is a string. We're going to use db.texture. This gives us some more characters. And then we're going to have an email, which is a string. This is going to be unique in here. We're going to have a created at, which is going to be a date time at default now. So it's going to, every time you create a user, it's going to default to the current uh, date. Okay. Then we're going to have an updated at, which is also a date time. And this is going to have the default as updated at. Okay. And then we're going to have a role and this role is this role from here. Okay. 
this role and we're going to have the default value set to new sub account user that is better okay sub account user right there okay because we didn't close that bracket nice and then we're going to have an agency id now th if this is confusing i'll tell you what it means so what is this agency id each user can be assigned to one agency only okay so that's why we're going to have the agency uh, id linked to this user in here okay and now we're going to say agency here this is going to be of type agency which we haven't created which we'll create in just a second. Um, this is going to have a relation with the fields set to agency ID and um, the re it references the ID field in the agency table and on delete, we're going to set it to cascade. So when the agency is deleted, we want to delete that user as well because they only have one agency, right? So we're going to say cascade here. You're going to see this error and we'll solve that in just a second. So we have to say index here and we have to set this agency ID. The reason why you don't see this is because that that model is not created yet. So we also have to create the agency model. So uh, we'll do that in a second, but I just want to first show you how to create these models so that you can build them on your own. The next one we are going to have is permissions. And what is this permissions? So this permissions is not um, the roles okay permission is basically can a user see a sub account that's what the permissions table is so by default the agency owner has permissions to all accounts but sub accounts right the sub account users only have access to those sub accounts that the agency owner has given access to Okay, I hope that makes sense. So that's why we need these permissions table. So each user who is a like a profile in our application, they are not a contact. Okay, they can also have tickets assigned to them. Okay, and this comes through for the Kanban board that we're going to create soon. So that's why we're going to put a ticket model, which we haven't created, which we'll create in a bit. And then we have to have the notification. And this notification is uh, here because it can be assigned to a user. Okay, like let's say, for example, I made a change. I want to assign that notification to me right um, awesome and then that's about it we need to basically create models for each of these references here and we just have to assign them uh, at the bottom that's literally it okay so uh, let's move on to creating the agency table now so the agency table is going to have the following. So it's going to have the ID, a connected account ID, and this is needed for Stripe because remember I mentioned that we're going to be using connected Stripe accounts. That means every user can connect their own Stripe account inside the application. Okay. That's something that I've never seen anyone do. So I thought it'd be great. And then we're going to have a customer ID. This is for the subscription. So when they are subscribed to our application through a subscription service, we need that customer ID. Okay. Okay, we're going to have name, agency logo, uh, company email, company phone, the white label. And this is needed when, um, let's say if the agency owner wants to show each sub account their own logo in the dashboard instead of their white labeled logo, right? In that case, if they turn this off, it's going to actually show their logo. And then we're going to have address, city, all this address related stuff, and then the users. So each, there are multiple users that can go into an agency. So by default, even sub account owners are part of the agency, okay? We're just giving them access to either the agency or the sub account. That's literally what we're doing. Okay. And then uh, we have the sub account, which is a bunch of sub accounts, which don't exist again. So we'll have to create that. We have the sidebar options, which is going to be agency sidebar options. And the reason why I did this is because in the future, if you want to control what sidebars can look like, or if you want to control stuff like show the sidebar, hide the sidebar, and you want to give the user the ability to do that, you can do that with this system. Okay. And then invitations. So people can be invited to the agency. So we have to keep track of that as well. And then we have notification, we have subscription subscription and this subscription is you know something for stripe and then add-on so these are different products that are in addition to the subscription fee that we sell now let's go ahead and also create these other tables so here's what you can do guys just save yourself a bunch of time okay go in here i already showed you how to create a model and i showed you what how we're building that right and what it looks like and all you have to do is just go into the github repository copy this because there's a lot of code in here okay we if we type this is going to take us two hours so copy all these the prison uh, schemas go into your code in here and replace it with that new file so I'm just gonna do that so go ahead pause the video do that and come right back okay awesome hopefully you copied and pasted it as well so let's just quickly look at what we added okay so now you see the permissions here it has the permission for the user so who can access it and the sub account so which account they have access to and of course if they do or don't okay so by default we will create these for them but we have a boolean value that allows us to show it or not show it basically. 
Awesome. And then the agency is the same thing. We just went across that. The sub account. Now, the sub account is a little different. So the sub account is going to have everything is the same thing. OK, everything that we had in the agency, uh, we have the connected account, but we're not going to have the customer ID because they they are not paying a subscription fee to us. OK, they're just owned by the agency owner. We're going to have the agency that it belongs to the sidebar options. And this one is a sub account sidebar option. And to look at what that looks like, let's quickly take a look at that. It's a, it's a, literally the same thing as the agency. Okay. We have the ID, the name, a link, an icon for it, the created at uh, updated at the sub account. It belongs to sub account ID and it's index. That's literally it. Let's look at the other stuff. So we have permissions again. Okay. And then we have funnels. Now this is basically the websites. So each sub account will have multiple websites. So that's why we have this as an array. And if you go to a funnel, you will see in the funnel sub account right here. So each funnel belongs to one sub account. And after that we have media. So this is where all the media files will be stored. Now we have contact. This is where all the contacts for the sub account will be stored and contacts are basically the leads for that sub account. And then this this is additional guys. This is actually a bonus. I don't know if I will be <laughs> releasing this, but it is a bonus thing that I do not have time to actually make in this video. And if I do, maybe I would, if not, um, you know, I will see how I can put that out for you. Okay. And then uh, we have tags. What are these tags? These tags are basically for the tickets. Okay. So you can assign tags to tickets and the notifications for the sub account. Exactly the same thing. It's just inter interlooped. Okay. It's the same thing. Like everything pipeline belongs to the uh, sub account, right? You have a bunch of pipelines in here and stuff. It's just the same thing. We're just linking everything. So all you have to understand is how to create one relation and then you can do it for everything. So I'm just going to give you a good example of how you can do that. Okay. So I'm just going to show you one example here. So let's say we had a modal called, we'll just call it owners. I'm just going to give an example. Okay. Owner. And this owner is going to have an ID. Um, let's copy this, right? An ID. They're going to have a name, which is a, sorry, a string like this. And then, um, it, the owners basically belong to the agency. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this below the agency. I'm just showing you an example how to create these relationship things because y'all had a question last time. So I want to give you a, a good idea. So an owner, basically a multiple owners can belong to an agency, right? So this is how you think about it. An agency can have multiple owners. So all you have to do here is say owner and set it to owner with an array. Okay. And now an owner can have only one agency. So in here you have to say agency, but since it's one agency, you just want to say agency like this. Okay. And now you have to give a reference to this. So how are you going to identify this owner with the agency? Well, through an ID. So you're going to say agency ID. And then uh, in here, if you see, this is how we give the relations, right? So for this, you want to say at relations, because this is related to something. Let's give this a string in here fields. This is actually incorrect. I don't know why I did it this way. Let me just redo that real quick. So you want to say agency. Okay. And that will say relation, the field. So which field is it related to the agency and which field does it reference from the agency table? We want the ID. You can reference anything you want. Okay. And on delete cascade. What does this mean? This means that when the agency is deleted, we want to delete the owner as well. And now finally, because we're creating this relationship, we have to create an index in here and say agency ID. This is how you build relationships between tables. Okay. And let's say if this had multiple, so let's say an owner um, had uh, multiple agencies, then you would have to create something like this. And then you would have to change. So I think we have a good example somewhere here too. Let me see. Yeah. So th there's a good example in there. So you guys get the idea, right? That's how we build relationships. Awesome. So yeah. Um, unfortunately, if I type every single thing, that's a lot of code. It's going to take us a lot of time. So let's move on to the most critical part of the application. All right, we're just going to quickly look at what we copy pasted. So we have the users table. We have permissions, which is for the sub accounts to show the sub account for that specific user. Then we have the agency, which is the entire agency, which has a bunch of fields, of course. And an agency has multiple sub accounts. Okay. And a sub account has a bunch of fields as well. So a sub account has sidebar options permissions. So basically which permission can be shown to which user funnels, media contacts. This is actually a bonus guys. I'm not 
putting it in this tutorial, but um, I will see maybe we could do it some other time. It's basically how to create automations. It's an automation builder where you can drag and drop components and that will create automations like emailing, email marketing and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, and then we have notifications. We have tags. So what are tags? Tags are basically um, for each ticket, you can assign tags for them. Okay. I'm sure you saw in the demo. So that's what the tags are for. What is a pipeline? A pipeline is basically think about it as the entire Kanban board. Okay. That is the pipeline and each pipeline can have lanes. Okay. And each lane can have tickets. All right. And then finally, again, these trigger thing, this is sorry, this is actually like a bonus ad. So I'm not going to be putting it in this video. So let's skip to the action. Yeah. After the actions, then we have contacts, which is multiple leads that come into each sub account through the website. And then we have media, which is the media bucket. So each media file can have the, this, you know, these fields. And then we have a funnel. What is a funnel? A funnel is just a website. So right here, you see, we built something. This is a funnel. Okay. And I made it in such a way that you could literally build anything you want. It's a funnel, a website, like, see, these are working links. Okay. You can literally click on them and get started. You know, you can take payments to get contact information. Literally it's super powerful. Okay. And after funnels, you have class names. Now this is actually a challenge for you. So that's why I put this in here. When we get to it, you will see the challenge. And then we have the funnel page. So each funnel has a funnel page. Okay. It's just that, just that simple. The agency sidebar option. So this is just the sidebar option. So each option in here actually has these properties. And the reason why I did this is because in the future, if you wanted to give the user who is the agency owner, the ability to hide options for their sub accounts, you can use this. Okay. So I just wanted to give you some additional uh, knowledge on that. So you can actually do that. And then same thing for su sub accounts as well. And then we have invitations. What are invitations for an agency? You can send invitations to other users, right? So we need an invitations table to keep track of that right here. And then we have notifications that belong to either the agency or for the sub account. Right. And then we have the plan. So these are the pricing plans, which we'll have to create, which we'll have to change, of course. But um, just to give you an idea, it's just the plan and the two prices that we sell. So right now, these are the two prices that we sell. OK. And then the subscription right here. This subscription is for Stripe purposes. OK. So we need the price ID, the customer, the current start period and all this kind of stuff. We're going to use this to actually uh, show whether the, the user is uh, on a paid plan or on a free plan. And then finally, the add ons. This is also another challenge for you. And we'll get to that when we get to it. <laughs> OK, awesome. So let's move on now. All right, guys. Awesome. Great job. So go ahead and open up your terminal. OK, I'm going to close this studio terminal for now and we're going to say bun x prisma generate okay and hit enter and that's going to generate uh, the prisma schema file and then we're going to say bun x prisma db push and that's going to update our database and now if you open another terminal so i'm just going to open another one here and i'm going to say bun x prisma studio like this and let that open up now you should see all your tables in your database Awesome. And also if you go into um, your, um, what is that? The MySQL workbench right in here, you should see those tables in here too, right? That's the whole point of this. So you can cross check that and make sure you see the table. Let me see if I can pull that up. Um, okay. Right in here, we see Plura, we see tables and there we go. We see all the tables in here. So if you don't see this, um, there are eight, thousands of videos on the internet talking about MySQL Workbench. Okay. It's one of the oldest database technologies. So go ahead, take a look at that. And again, the discord is open. Join, ask me, I'll help you. Okay. Awesome. So let's continue. All right. So I noticed something here. I'm unable to create login and that's, I'm unable to click on the nav bar itself. So that just looks like something wrong here. So I'm just going to go into uh, provide, sorry, I'm going to go into components, go into site navigation and this one is actually a uh, relative here okay so what i'm gonna do let me see if i put uh fixed on this i don't think that should break anything hopefully not yeah we'll remove this relative uh, okay flex uh, sorry uh fixed top dash dash zero right dash zero left dash zero and let's give it a height. Okay. It already has a height because of the padding and we need to give this a Z index. I'm just going to say Z 
of 10. Okay, let's just see what happens. Now you can click on it. Okay, so it just looks like it was hiding behind that. So this should work perfectly. All right, awesome, cool. And now you can actually click on login. It's going to take you to the agency uh, agency page. Okay, and it should actually send you a login. Hmm, something's wrong here. It should make you login, but it's not letting me do that. So I'm going to take a look at this. All right. Okay, so the reason why nothing was happening when you clicked on login and it was just showing agency is because we didn't do anything in here. Okay, we need to redirect them. So what we're going to say is we're going to say const auth user equal to um, await current user and change this component to an async component up here. And we're going to check if there's no auth user, then we're going to return redirect from next navigation, okay, from next navigation to slash sign dash in like this. And now if we refresh, and if we click, boom, there you go. Now it prompts the user to sign in because they don't have an account. Okay, awesome. So this is how we uh, route the user through our login system. All right, so now the next step is we need to uh, get the user's details. We need to check what access they have. And depending on that, we're going to send them to the sub accounts or we're going to keep them in this agency account. And if they have an account, we have to send them to that specific account as well. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to first scroll to our libs folder and we're going to create a queries dot typescript file. And in here, we're going to put use server up top. Okay, guys, so many people made this mistake last time. Please don't do this mistake again. Put use server up top. Okay, that's how this becomes a server actions um, file. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to close this and we're going to create an action. So the action is uh, user equal to await get auth user details. Okay, details like this, and this does not exist. So we're going to copy that we're going to go to our queries file, we're going to export const this which is equal to this function and this is an async function right here and um, this function what okay <laughs> and this function right here is going to basically say const user equal to equal to await current user okay we're going to get the current user from uh, clerk next okay and if there is no user then we're going to simply return Okay, but if it does exist, we're going to say const user data equal to await db imported from our from our file, right, that we created here db dot typescript. So db dot user dot find unique. Okay, like this, where and in here, we're going to say where email is equal to user dot email addresses at zero dot email address. Okay, we're going to take the first email. And then we're going to include a bunch of stuff because we need this data. So we're going to say agency include the sidebar options. So sidebar options, uh, we're going to set this to true. And then we also need the sub account. And we're going to set include the sidebar options for that and set that to true as well. So let's hit enter here. So we have two lines Awesome. And then finally, after the agency right here, we're going to say permissions and set that to true as well. So we're going to get a bunch of data and let's make sure to return this data. Okay, go ahead and return the user data just like this. And now we copy this, go in here and you can import these get, um, you know, the auth details. So if there is no data, guys, we have to prompt them to create the, the agency account. That's what we're going to do here. Okay. So before that, we'll also have to make some quick, what is this? Uh, we'll have to make some quick checks, right? We have to check if they are a sub account guest, agency guest, and all that kind of stuff, all that logic. So let's quickly do that in here. Uh, okay. There's one more thing. So what if the user was sent an invitation? We don't want to end up creating an account for them. So we have to do some logic before that, right? So we're going to say const agency ID, we need to get their agency ID, you know, don't have an account, right? I mean, if they do have an account, so we're going to say uh, verify and accept invitation like this. And we're going to copy this go into our queries file, which is in here queries, and we're going to export const export this function, set that to an async function like that. And this is going to do the following. So in here, we're going to say const user await current user like this equal to this. 
And you can basically redirect the user if you'd like in here, but we're just going to say if no user, okay, we'll just redirect the user in here itself. So redirect them to sign dash in like this. And then we're going to say const invitation exists equal to await db dot invitations dot find unique where uh, we need to find where their email address is uh, the same, right? So email address is user dot email addresses at zero like this dot email address. Okay. And we need to also say status is pending like this. Okay. Because we created that, that stuff. If you go and read, just read through the schema file. All right, guys, it's very simple. It's not too complex. Okay. If their status is pending, that means they have an invitation. If you're curious as to how we're doing this, when we send an invitation, we will just create an entry here and set the status to pending. That's it. So if the invitation exists, so that means they are um, invited from say const user details equal to await create team user. So this is um, another function that we're going to do in just a second. Okay. And we're going to pass an invitation exist dot agency ID. And then we're going to pass in all the, all the data that's in here. Okay. So that function that create team user function, we're just going to build it maybe somewhere up here. So we're going to say export const create team user equal to async function async arrow function like this. And this is going to take the agency ID, which is which has a type of string. And we also need the user which is of type user and this user comes from Prisma client. Okay. And in here, we're going to say if the user dot role is equal to agency owner, then we're going to return null. Okay, that means they already have access. But if not, then we're going to say const res, uh, const response equal to agency, uh, sorry, await db dot user dot create, create like this. And we're going to pass an object here and say data. And this data is going to have everything in user like that. Okay. And then finally, let's also return this response from here. So now we can create that. So now we have to pass in um, that data into this, into this object right here. So going back to this in here, we're going to say email is going to be invitation exists dot email. And then we need to pass in the agency ID is going to be the invitation exists dot agency ID. And then we need their avatar URL, which we can capture from the user dot um, user dot. Okay. Image URL. And then we need the ID, which is user dot ID. And we need a couple more things. We need the name, which is going to be dollar sign user dot first name and put a space here. And we're going to say dollar sign uh, curly bracket user dot last name. And after this, we need the role. So their role is going to be invitation from here, invitation exist dot role. Okay. And we're also going to pass in the created at uh, which is going to be new date, not data transfer, new date like this. And the updated ads also ne is needed in here. New date like this. And you want to invoke that. And then after this, we're going to go down here and we're going to create activity logs. Okay. So these activity logs are basically when user accounts or when any action is performed, we need to save that data, right? How do we do that? Well, we're going to create that in just a second. Let's scroll maybe up top here. So we're going to export uh, const save activity logs notific or yeah, this is fine. You can call it like this notification equal to async. This is an arrow function. So I'm just going to create an arrow function in here. And this is going to take in uh, the following. So it needs an agency ID. Okay. Agency ID, which is going to be uh, just like this. Okay. Agency ID uh, description. Okay. And it needs a sub account ID like this. And we can basically take that from here too. So we can see agency ID, which is actually going to be optional and it's a string. Okay. And then we need description. So I'm going to copy this description, which is going to be a string. And then finally we need sub accounts ID, which is also going to be a string. And this is also optional in here. Okay. Um, okay. Like this. And what this is going to do, and we're going to need this here guys, it's super important. That's why we're creating it 
right here. Okay. And uh, what we need is first to say const auth user is equal to await current user like this. And then we're going to say let user data. And if there is no auth user, then we want to say const user or const response equal await db dot user dot find unique find first actually sorry and I'll tell you why we're doing this okay so find first and the reason why we need to do this is basically let's say we are creating an activity log when a contact came in okay that time there's not going to be an auth user so that time we need to just find some user that belongs to that sub account or that account and we need to just assign it to them I hope that makes sense <laughs> that's why we need to do this process right here so we're going to say find first where okay the agency and then where the sub account where some id is sub accounts id and let me hit enter here so everything gets indented all right like that so we're going to find that and after this auth user so after this right down here if response exists then we're going to say user data equal to response okay and uh, right below this. So after this statement, we're going to say else create a bracket here and say user data is equal to await db dot user find unique. Okay, where and I'm actually going to hit enter here. Okay, or let's just first put this in here first. So we want to say email is auth user email addresses. Something's wrong here. Why is this? Why is this throwing this error? Ah, okay. Move this up here. Sorry about that. So else you want to say auth user email addresses at zero dot email address like this. Something is wrong here too. Email addresses. I spelled that incorrect. Sorry about that. So you want to get that email address. We're going to find unique. We're just going to find that user. And then after this else statement, we're going to say if there's still no user data, we're going to just console dot log. Okay could not find a user okay then we're just going to return here okay because we could not find anyone so we will return here and then after this we're going to say let found agency id equal to agency id that we just uh, found from above and if there is no found agency id then we're going to see if there is no sub account ID as well. Then we're going to throw a new error. Okay. We don't actually have to throw a new error, but I'm just going to do this here so that we can track what's happening. You need to provide at least an agency ID or sub account ID. So we need something right to assign it to assign the notification after this if statement. So after this one right here, the sub account, we're going to say const response equal to await db dot sub account dot find unique id is sub account id not subscription sub account id like this and after this so right after this yeah we're going to say if there is no i'm sorry if there is response then found agency id equal to response dot agency id and if you're wondering why are we doing this why are we checking if there is no agency ID and stuff like this. Sometimes notifications are assigned to sub accounts and inside the sub account directory right in here, we will not have access to the agency IDs. So for that reason, we need to find the agency ID that belongs to that sub account. And then we're going to set that. Okay. Hope that makes sense. And now after this, so I know this is a little long, but this is just one of them. That's long. There's a lot of stuff. Okay. So after this, we're going to say if sub account ID exists, then await db um, db dot notification dot create okay data like this, and we're going to say notification is going to be dollar sign hey okay user data dot name, and then we're going to put a like a pipe here. We're going to say dot description. Okay. And then we also need a couple other things, right? So we're going to say user, we're going to connect a user in here, connect, hey, not continue, connect with ID user data dot ID. 
Okay, that's so weird. It wasn't showing me the IntelliSense. Anyway, and after this, we want also want to connect to the agency. So connect with the ID and set that to found agency ID. And after this agency ID, we're going to say sub account and we're going to set connect to ID sub account ID. Okay, like this. Awesome. ID. Sorry, guys, this has to be an object. Okay, nice. Now, if that's not the case, we have to do one more final step, which is else. If that's not the case, we need to say await db dot notification dot create where I'm um, sorry, data. And we're going to set the notification set to dollar sign user data dot first uh, user data dot name. And we're going to put a pipe here. We're going to say description in here. And after this, we also need to connect it to some user. So user connect ID equal to user data dot ID like that. And after the user, go ahead and say agency is going to have connect set to ID with found agency ID. Awesome. That's it. So now we are going to use this every single time. So we need this function. So it's good that we created it here. Okay. What you can also do is you can create a wrapper for everything. Okay. You can create a wrapper uh, for every single action. And every time you invoke that action, you can pass in some additional properties. But at the end of the day, you're going to end up doing it for every single thing. So you might as well just do it this way. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back to where we had to put that. I think that is right here. Okay. After this, just say await. Oh, save activity no, log notification pass in an object with the agency id set to invitation exist dot agency id and then we need the description and we're going to set this to joined like this and then we're going to set sub account id to undefined okay awesome and then after this if user details so, okay, we have to move this whole thing inside this fun inside this if, if block. Okay. So if user details, then await clerk client. So say clerk, a uh, client like this. Give me one second. Let me try to import this. Yeah. Clerk client. You can import this from here. Dot users dot update user metadata. Okay. Update user metadata going to invoke that and say user dot ID. So for that ID, we're going to set the private metadata. So private metadata is going to have a role set to user details dot role, or we're just going to say uh, sub account user. Okay. So sub, okay. We don't have that here. So what I'm going to do is just give me one second sub account underscore user like this. Okay. So basically if the details do not exist, if, if the details do exist, we're going to create a, a role. And by default, we're always going to give them a sub account user role. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys. Now what is next? So after this, we also have to delete that invitation, right? So after the statement right here, say awaits db dot invitation dot delete, delete where ID or oh, sorry, where email is fine too, where email is user details dot email. Okay. So it's going to delete that invitation. So we no longer end up, you know, creating accounts for them every time. And let's also return user details dot agency ID because we need this agency ID to reroute the user. And now after this, let's just say else return null. Okay. And after this block, you can also say another else. And we're going to say, uh, check if um, at least they have an agency ID. Okay. So in here, we're going to say const agency equal await db dot user dot find unique. Okay. Where email is user dot email addresses dot uh, at zero. So the first email address dot email address like this. Awesome. And then after this, go ahead and return if agency exists, then we're going to return agency dot agency ID, uh, or we're just going to return null. Okay. Awesome. Great stuff. And now if we go back in here, we can import this. 
And if you try to invoke this, okay, let's just say console.log agency ID. And since we're on the server, we're going to see the console in here. If we hit login, it's going to take us to the login page because this statement here failed, right? This right up here. Um, or what we can do, guys, is we can simply just remove this part in here because the verification is also redirecting, right? So let's remove this. We don't need it in here anymore. So let's refresh that. Okay, awesome. It's going to do what it has to do. And now it's asking us to log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I'm just going to use one of the testing accounts. Okay, it's going to take me back to the local page. The, I mean, sorry, localhost 3000, because that's what I set as the redirect to URL right here after sign in to the default path. And then we're going to hit login. So now you see the user's account is here. This is so cool. With Clerk, the user button actually just comes straight out of the box. Okay. And now if you hit login, it's going to take you to that page. It's saying no, there's no user account. So now we, I'm sorry, there's no agency account. So what are we supposed to do now? Now we need to create an account for them. Okay. So before that, we will search to see if we have the agency ID. And if it does exist, we'll send them to that page. If it does not exist, we'll send them to the creation page, uh, the form where they can actually fill in their details. Awesome. Hey everyone, so the best way for me to actually know that you enjoyed this video or you want more similar content like this is just by hitting the like button. And also go ahead and do yourself a favor and click that subscribe button because the next video is going to absolutely blow your mind away. Before we send them over to that agency, we also need to check if they are a sub account user. Okay. And we also have one more role guys. It's called sub account guest. We are not using it for this project in terms of the logic under the hood and stuff like that. That is going to be a challenge for you to incorporate, to create additional functionality for guest accounts. So basically your sub accounts can actually, you know, give access to their platform, to other, you know, maybe their clients or something, and they can also log in and do a bunch of stuff. So that I'm going to leave that up to you, but, but I already put it in here in case you need it. Okay. So let's go ahead and first do that. So we're going to say if the agency ID, so agency ID exist, then we're going to do a bunch of stuff. So in here, we're going to check if the user dot role. Okay. And it's going to be have to put a question mark here because it's undefined. It might be undefined. We want to check if it is equal to sub account get or it's dot role is equal to sub account user. Then we need to do the following. We need to basically return redirect them to the sub account page. Okay. And if this is not the case, then else if user dot role equal to agency or the agency admin. So, or we're going to say user role equal to agency admin. Okay. And if that is true, then we're going to check if there are any search params. So these search params actually come from the param uh, from the props. Okay. That's how pages work. So let's go ahead and extract that. So we're going to say search params, search params, and this search page types, I'm just going to copy this, paste it here. And the search params is going to have plan, which is uh, of type plan that comes from Prisma client, or it's going to have, I'm sorry, and it's going to have a state and this state, I'll explain what this means. Okay. For now, just put it, this is for Stripe stuff, but we're just going to put it in here and then we're going to also have a code. This is also for Stripe, but don't worry about it for now. Just put it in here. Okay. So this rule put a question mark here too. And uh, we want to say if the search params exist, then actually we need search params dot plan. Okay. So if this exists, we need to basically send them to that, to that dashboard, to the billing page, and we need to pass in that parameter. So that way we can show the payments payment plan on the screen immediately. Okay. So if this exists, we're going to return, redirect the user to a dynamic thing here. So we're just going to use string here. Yeah. Just put this back ticks. And then we're going to say slash agency slash dollar sign we have to put the agency ID. So agency ID, and we also need slash billing and billing. And we need to, we need to pass in that param. This is search params dot plan like this. Okay. Awesome. After this part right here, after this, you want to say if search params dot state and what is the state? So basically when we are using connect to connect any users stripe account in our application there is a redirect url 
And unfortunately, there are, I mean, I don't know if there is or not, but I did a lot of research and there's no way to have um, like a dynamic param as a return URL. You have to have a static URL. So we have to send the user back to this agency page and then we need to reroute them to that specific agency ID that we're trying to connect, right? But we're not going to know that because it's we don't know what we're trying to do in Stripe. So that's where Stripe allows us to pass in a state property when we are redirecting to Stripe and then processing the stuff and then getting the response back. And that state is going to have that ID basically. Okay. So if state exists, so in here, if this exists, do this and we're going to say const state path equal to search params dot state dot split. So we're going to get that uh, parameter. Uh, we're going to get that search param and I'm going to put an underscore in there. Okay. So that's why we're taking this and we're going to say at zero and then we're going to say con state agency ID equal to search params dot state dot split. And again, we're going to put this, it's a triple, I think it's two underscores, one, two at one. Okay. And then if there is no state agency ID. So this unauthorized is actually a component we are going to create. So for now, I'm just going to just return a div that says not authorized like this. And then we'll, we'll build that component because we're going to need it a lot. Okay. And after this, we're going to also return. If not, we're going to return direct the user to backticks slash agency slash dollar sign state agency ID slash state oops sorry not this we need uh this right here dollar sign and bracket and we're going to say state path and after this you want to put that param that we uh that we just received the code so that code is equal to dollar sign search params dot code and what do we need this code for once we receive the code we need to actually update we need to confirm that everything is successful. And this code is what's going to confirm with Stripe, okay, while connecting the account. For now, we're not doing that, but I'm just setting this up right now because it's needed for the logic, okay? And um, after this, we're going to say else return redirect the user to backticks slash agency slash dollar sign agency ID, okay? After this part here, we're going to put another else and we're going to say else return um, the the same div for now, okay? We're going to actually create that unauthorized page because we're going to need it a lot. Anyway, now, after this, below everything, we're going to say const auth user equal to await current user, like this, okay? And then we're going to return something in here. So what are we returning? This is basically if everything failed, that means they don't have sub accounts, they, they don't have agencies, they don't have any, like nothing is satisfied. We need to do thing here. And what we're doing here is basically allowing them to create an agency for their, for themselves. Okay. So what is wrong here? Oh, wait. Uh, so after this guy, sorry, I put it outside. That's why. So remove this return here. Okay. And we're going to paste what we just did of, what is that? What did it do that? Class name of flex justify center items center like this margin top of four. And inside of this, we're going to create another div. This is going to have a class name. I'm going to remove this. And in here, I'm going to say max of 850, because this is the form where the form where they're going to put in the details. Okay. So I wanted to have some maximum width border dash one pixel. And then we have padding for rounded dash XL. Okay. And inside this, we're going to have a H1 tag that says, um, also, why is this not refreshing? Let me see. Okay. Let's come back in here right now. We'll get to that in a second. In here, we're basically going to, um, return a, co uh, return the, t the title. So let's give this a class name of text dash four XL. And then let's say create an agency. Okay. And after this H one, we're going to put that component, uh, that component in here. Okay. So you see, it says create an agency, whatever, right? So great. And, um, okay. Yeah. So let's go ahead and create that component. That component is called agency details. Okay. And we need to also pass in some props. So this is going to be a close tag and let's go ahead and say data equal to an object with company email set to auth user dot 
address at zero dot email address. Okay, we're passing that email. Address. Okay, and let's go ahead and create this component. So let's go to uh, forms. Okay, so scroll in here. Uh, no, we're going to create that folder. Let's go into components, create a folder here called forms. And inside that create agency details dot TSX. And we're going to create uh, TS like this. Okay. And we're going to say agency details. Okay, cool. And now in here, we're going to get access to data. And let's see what data we passed in. Okay, so this data is a is basically an email address, right? So let's go up top here. And let's get data inside this component. So let's go to definition. Oh, what's going on? Okay, we didn't import it. That's the problem. So let's see if we can just import this right now. Okay, import it, go in here. And in here, we're going to say data, which is optional, and it's going to be part of agency. Okay, because we can pass in half of it, <laughs> half of it basically. So agency, uh, okay, and just import that from Prisma client. Now let's come down here. And in here, we're going to destructure data. And in here, where we're returning this stuff, we're going to do all our logic. So first thing we need is toast. Okay, so I'm just going to get uh, toast equal use toast from why well, use toast. Okay, and invoke that. Nice. And then we need router. So now we're in an error. And I'll tell you why we're seeing that error. And a lot of you had this co confusion. This is because this is a client component since we're using hook. So go up top and say use client like this. And after this, you want to also create another state. And this is for deleting. So deleting agency. Okay. And we're going to say set deleting agency. Okay. So let's move on to actually building the form first. And then we'll come. First thing is we're going to need the alert dialog. And this alert dialog is needed because we are going to have a delete button. So when the user hits delete, we want to, you know, basically show the alert and say, are you sure? Something like that. So that's why we need this. So the first thing is we're going to use a card here, import card from UI card. And this is going to have a card header. And in the card header, we're going to have a card title, card title. And this card title is going to say agency information. And for this card, give it a class name of width of full. Okay. Nice. Awesome. And uh, let's go after this. You want to say card description and say, uh, I'm just going to paste some string in here. Okay. I'll just, yeah, let me just copy that. So we have, where is this? Forms, agency details. Let me go ahead and just copy some string. Where is that? Okay. Right here. Copy that. And I'm just going to paste it in here. Nice. Cool. And description we want after the header, we're going to have content. So card content here, we're going to have a form, not the native form actually from, from UI form. And this form is going to uh, basically have a prop in here. Okay. We need to pass something in here. So to get this, we need to use a uh, use form and this use form comes from react hook forms. Okay. So you're going to say cost form equal to use form from react hook forms. And in here, we're going to pass in Z dot and Z comes from Zod. So let's see if that, why is that not here? Maybe that's not imported. Let me go up top and see if I can import star as Z from Zod. Okay. It's already there. So good. So Z dot infer and inside this infer, we need to pass in um, some sort of a, a, a form schema. Okay. So first let's open this bracket here and we're going to say type of form schema. Okay. And that form schema is going to create it up here. So const form schema equal to Z dot object invoke that and pass in the property. So name is going to be Z dot string. Okay. Invoke that and say minimum of two and then say, and this message is agency name must be at least two characters. Okay. And after name, we want to pass in the company email. So company, which is going to be a, a string. So Z dot, okay. Z dot string. And next one is going to be the company phone. So go ahead and pause the video, go to your schema file. Okay. Which is in here, search for the agency 
and see what information do you need. Give this a shot. Just build out. You don't have to build all this white label stuff. Just build the goal, maybe. And then you can do the name and the company email and phone. Okay, go ahead, pause the video and give that a shot. Okay, awesome. And now we're going to infer that type here. So it's going to understand the form is going to be of this type. Great job. And now inside this, we're going to pass in an object and say mode on change. And after that resolver, and this resolver is going to come from Zod resolver. We need to import resolver. So go up top, let's just say right here. So I'm going to put all imports from outside files up here and native imports at the bottom. Okay, this is good. And we're going to go up top and we're going to say import um, Zod resolver from react hook form. So at hook forms revol resolver slash Zod. Okay. All right, cool. It imported it. Nice. And now, okay. The resolver is going to be Zod resolver and we're going to pass in the form schema that we just created. Okay. Nice. And after this, we're going to have default value. copy all of these, paste them in here. Okay. And for just remove this stuff. So remove this, remove this. So um, what I'm going to do is highlight all of these. After that, I'm just going to delete everything. Data name for company email. I'm going to see go to say data dot company email for the company phone. Same thing. Okay. We're just populating these uh, company phone. And then for the white label, we're going to say data dot white labeled or false. And then for address, we're going to say data dot address city. We're going to say data dot city. Same thing for zip code. So go ahead and fill this in. Okay. One more thing we have to in here use effect. And the reason why this use effect is needed default um, react hook forms will cache if data exist. Then we're going to say form dot reset and pass in the data. Okay. So it's just going to reset those values. Nice. And um, after this, let's go back down to our form in here and pass in the form with a spread operator just like this. Okay. And inside this form, we're going to, let me see if I imported this form. Okay. I think I imported it. What is it screaming for children? Okay. So in here we need to pass in the native form like this, and we're going to say on submit is equal to form dot handle submit. And we're going to create a submit function in here. So const handle submit to an async function. Okay async function in here. And uh, we're just going to copy this function and pass it in here. Okay, nice. And after this, we are going to give this a class name too. So let's say class name of space dash y dash four. And inside the form, go ahead and create a form field. Okay, like this. Nice. And for this form field, we're going to have disabled guys keep my github repository open okay we're going to copy paste and if you need to you can copy paste all right so keep that open it's going to be so much easier so the disabled prop is going to be equal to is loading and where does this is loading come from is loading actually comes from the form state itself okay so let's go up top let's just say let's go up to this let's go up top here to states and say is loading equal to has to be after the form of course go down here is loading equal to form dot uh, dot state sorry form dot form state dot is submitting okay like this and now we can use that is loading in here so if this is is loading true then this field is actually going to be disabled okay and then control is going to be equal to form dot control and inside this we are going to pass in a name and this name is going to be agency logo. Okay. And then we're going to render, uh, we're going to pass in a render prop and this is going to take it. Okay. It, this gives us access to an error to, of, of, we're going to get fee from that. And in here, we're going to return a form item, form item with a form label. And this form label is going to say AC logo. And after this, we're going to have the form control. And the form control is going to have whatever component we want in here. Okay. So since we're going to need component for everything, we're actually just going to create it right now. So let's go ahead and say file upload like this. Okay. 
and we're going to pass in the API uh, file upload. Uh, we have to install this, I think. So let me go ahead. Okay, so open your folders, go to uh, global, create a file in here, call it file-upload.tsx, and then we're going to say T-S-R-A-F-C-E, and we're going to call this file upload. Okay, and then let's go ahead and import this right away so we can go in here. So this file upload is going to take a couple things. So we need the API and send, or we're going to have sub account logo like this. And after this, we're going to have an on change. And this is going to have a callback function. And this is going to actually return void, not an object, sorry. And here we want to have the string. And this is going to have a value set to string as well. Okay. And in here, let's go ahead and destructure this. So go ahead and say API endpoint sub on change and value like this. Okay. And in here, now we're going to create a type. So cons type equals split at uh, the period at the dot dot pop. So we're going to remove that. And um, in here, we're now going to check. So if the value exists, we're going to return a div. Okay, value exists. We're going to something's wrong. So if value ex return a um, that the image itself in here. Okay, so if value exists, a div with a class name of flex flex dash call justify center and items center. Okay, and inside this div, we're going to see, uh, we're going to say if the type is equal to or not equal to PDF then we're going to um, return something. So true, do something else, do something else. So here, if this is true, then return a div. Great, I need to close that on my own <laughs> and say class name, class name, and set that to relative with dash 40 and height dash 40, okay? And in here, we're gonna return an image component from next image with the source equal to the value and the alt is just going to be um, uploaded image, okay, like this. And we're going to give this a of object dash contain and fill. Say div here, and let's close this div. I don't know why it's not closing for me. That's so weird. And let's pass in a class name of relative flex items center p dash two margin top of two rounded dash md. And then BG dash background, not black, sorry, background like this. And uh, let's just put divided by 10 like that. Okay. And then we're going to say file icon. And this comes from uh, Lucid React icons. Okay. And inside, after this, sorry, we're going to use uh, an anchor tag. And we're going to say href equal to value target equal to blank. So underscore blank like this. And after this target, we're going to say relationship equal to no N O opener. Okay. No opener underscore no referer. Okay. Just like this. And after this, we're going to pass in a class name and this class name is going to have margin left of two and it's going to have text dash SM text dash indigo of 500. And then, we're going to say dark text dash indigo um, 400 and hover is going to have underline. Okay, nice. And inside this, we're going to say view PDF. So this is if it was a PDF document, you can have that in here. Okay, if not, you can just skip this. That's fine. But now after this, we're going to say button. Okay, and this comes from UI button and we're going to have um, the, uh, the variant and the variant is going to be ghost and we want to pass in the type equal to button like this okay and also we need an on click on this but before that i'm just going to say remove logo and in here we're also going to use the x icon so import x and this comes from again the same lucid icons and in here we're going to pass in class name of height of four and width of four okay so um let's see Okay, so remove. Yeah, we're, we don't have an icon right now. So that's why we don't see this. And let's have an on click on click. And we're going to have a function here. 
And this is basically just going to take the on change that comes in from the uh, props and it's going to set it to an empty string. So that basically tells React Hook Forms there's no value in here. Okay, simple. And after this div, so here where we're returning something, we're going to return something else. So let's remove this file upload and say class name with dash full bg dash muted divided by 30. And in here, we're going to create, uh, we're going to import upload drop zone. Okay. And if this does not show up, just give me one second. Let me go ahead. And I think we have to create this upload drop zone. So let's go in here, go into libs, create upload thing dot, uh, dot type script. Okay. And in here, first we're going to import, let me see if I can generate. Okay. I need to import it. So import generate components from at upload thing that slash react. And then we also need uh, another one, which is import generate react helpers from at upload thing slash uh, react slash hooks. Okay, great. And now we're going to also import another type. Let me shrink this so you guys can see clear. We're going to get um, we're, we are going to import our file router and we got to create this in a second. So I'm just going to import it for now. Import file router from slash app slash API, which we need to create slash upload thing slash core. Okay. And then also let's just say export const, um, upload button comma upload drop zone comma uploader equal to generate components, invoke it. This should be const. Um, you want to invoke it and you also want to pass in a type. And this is going to be our file router, but we don't have it. So we're going to go and create that in just a second. So our file router like this, and um, let's go down here and we need to do the same thing. I'm, I'm just going to duplicate it here. And we're going to go, go in here and say, use upload thing and upload files. Okay. And this one uses generate react helpers. So invoke that and we're going to pass in this. So let's go ahead and build this out. Um, and this is inside the uh, API folder. Okay. So let's go into API up here. So close this, close everything. So it's easier to see. You want to go into your app directory and you want to create another folder here, call it API. Okay. And inside this API folder, you're going to create another folder and call it upload thing like this and another uh, file in here called core.typescript. Okay, nice. And inside uh, inside this one more, which is called route.typescript and inside the core.typescript, we're going to do the following. So I'm just going to go in here. This is just set up. So we don't really, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Let's go in here, go into app, go into your API and you see upload thing, click on that, go into core. And basically we're just using upload thing. Okay. If you read documentation, you'll know what this means, but basically we're just creating a router with different API endpoints. Okay. Like the sub account logo, the avatar agency logo and things like that. Okay. So go ahead and copy this like this and paste it in here. Nice. And the next thing we need is a route. So what is this route? This is how we can upload. So we're going to just import. I'm going to copy the import statement actually. So let's go into route the import statement. Okay. We're going to get this create route next route handler. And we also need, um, this, our file router. Okay. And then we're going to export const get and sorry, get and post equal to create next route handler, invoke that and pass in an object with the router and set it to our file router like this. Okay. Now, if we go into our components, let's see if we can uh, also upload this, import this upload thing component. And now we need to pass in a bunch of stuff into this as well. So in here, the first thing we need to pass is the API endpoint. So the API endpoint in here is agency logo. And then the next one is the on change, which is going to be field dot on change the same function. And then we also are going to pass in the value, which is optional. So we're going to pass that in here and we're going to say field 
dot value. Okay, so that way we can tell uh, what's going on with the value. Awesome. And uh, let me also just close this component and let's see what's going on here. Okay, let me just quickly render this before form message component. There's something missing. I think I need to go ahead and take a look at this form uh, form element. Give me one second, guys. Ah, okay. We actually didn't build it out. Sorry about that. So let's go in here and now let's import the upload drop zone. Okay. And this actually comes from um, our libs slash upload thing. Okay. Like this. And this is going to take in um, a bunch of props. So let's pass in the endpoint. And the endpoint is going to be the API endpoint we get from our props. So API endpoint. Nice. And then we need the on client upload complete. So once it's completed, we're going to we're going to pass in this callback function and pass in res res in here. We get access to res, and we're going to say on change and pass in res at zero dot url. Okay, and after there you go. You see it's already showing up here, right? Looks awesome. And then on upload error, we're going to invoke that. And uh, we're going to get access to the error, which is of type error, like this, okay? And in here, we're going to say console.log error. Great. So let's refresh this. Um, it still says loading. Okay, there you go. Fixed. Nice. Now we're going to use this component literally everywhere, okay? So we're going to need it, um, and that's why I wanted to build it right away. So let's go back up, and now go ahead, take this up as a challenge. Go use Shad CNUI. So go to Shad CNUI, go to forms. So scroll down. You're going to see forms in here. Okay. Where is it? I'm going to show you how to do it. So click on form and see here they're giving you form item, form label, form control. They're literally showing you what to do. So try, just give it a shot. There's also a good example at the bottom. Okay. So build out those input components. If you don't want to, no problem. I'm just going to show you right away. All right, so after this form item, we're going to create the others. So we're going to say div class name of flex md flex dash row gap dash four. This is just some styling, okay? We're going to put items left and right. So that's why we need this, um, this kind of like a wrapper here, okay? And then we're going to use a form field, and this is going to have the disabled set to is loading like this. And we also need the control, which is I'm <clears throat> sorry, the control, which is form dot control. Sorry, not this. And we need to pass in the name, which is name and then render, which is uh, a function like this. And this render has uh, gives us access to the field. So let's get that field and let's return a form item. OK, and this form item in here is going to have the form label. So form label and the label is going to say agency name like this. And after form label, let me shrink this real quick. After form label, we need the form control. And inside the form control, we're going to use input and import it from here. Okay. Not from anything else from UI input and uh, pass in a placeholder like this placeholder. Oops. Sorry. Sorry about that. It's going to have a placeholder set to your agency name and we also need to use the spread operator and put all the items in here okay so the field goes right in here that's how you create a field okay so let's see um there you go we just have to refresh and that shows up so this is how we do this and if you create another form field just literally copy it paste it that's all you have to do and now you have another field just do the same thing, okay, and create multiple fields. Um, and I think we made, would we, okay, I think this is okay. Not sure what's wrong here. Yeah, it's fine. It's just the same thing, all right? Go ahead and just copy, copy, paste, copy, paste, and just change this name according to the field and then come back. Okay, so uh, basically I wanted to just point something out. The reason why it wasn't stretching across the entire form was because I didn't put flex one on this form item. Okay, so just put that as well. All right, so I went ahead and just built out a couple form fields. It's the exact same thing. Nothing is different. Just change the name for each field. 
that you need up here, okay? So I did company email, company phone, and I just created the same row and I removed the row for some of them. So this one has a row, so you will see company phone and the other one in the same thing. The only different thing is this white labeled agency right here. So I'm just gonna show you what I did. So let's scroll down. It's the same thing, guys, just literally copy paste, copy paste and change the name, okay? So where is this switch component? It is right here. So for this, we're gonna use form field, have a disabled prop set to is loading, the control set to form.control. The name is gonna be white label and we're gonna pass in a render prop, which is gonna give us access to field. We're gonna return a form item with the class name flex, flex row, item center, justify between, rounded LG, border gap four, and padding four. And then we're going to have a div here and we're gonna say form label, white labeled agency, and we're, and we're gonna pass in a description. We're just gonna say turning this will, you know, whatever, whatever, we're just gonna give some information, okay? And then we need to pass in a form control. And for the switch, we're gonna import the switch from uh, our UI folder. And then we're gonna pass in the checked as the field dot value and the on check change as field dot on change. Okay, that's it. And um, that's it. And literally that's about it, guys. There's nothing crazy. There's a couple other things, but I just wanted to show you this uh, because these are the, the, the values that um, you know, are going to be there by default. Okay. So let's go down to country right here. And after country, we're going to show something here. So let's say right after this right here, go ahead and create this and say data dot ID exist. Then we're going to return a div with a class name of flex flex dash flex dash call and gap dash two. Now, this is basically a way for them to create um, uh, goals for the agency, okay? But this component comes from a different library that we're gonna need for um, you know creating charts. So let's go ahead and install that. So open up Tremor, okay? It's a library. Uh, let's find this Tremor UI, all right, right here. And I'm gonna click on installation. And you see, it's gonna show you, I wish it gave us the bun command. I don't know why they don't do that anymore. But anyway, so we're going to just copy this command from here, copy it, open this, close this, paste, don't hit enter. Actually, okay, it's causing problems. Paste that, and we're gonna change this to bun add, okay? So bun add like this. Tremor slash react. Okay, and go ahead, go ahead and hit enter, and then we're gonna copy this from here. Okay, awesome. So since you already copied the Tailwind config file from the GitHub, if you haven't, go to the GitHub and copy that file. Okay, and paste it if you haven't already. But we've already done that. But um, yeah, if you haven't, go ahead and do that. And now we're gonna use that component uh, in here. So inside this div. For now, I'm just gonna remove this so we can see what this component looks like. Let's go back here, awesome. And inside this, go ahead and say form label, create a goal, so they can create a goal basically. And we're gonna say form description. And this form description, I'm just gonna copy it from the GitHub. So let's go to app. Uh, we need to go into the components. So where is that? App, uh, sorry, this is wrong go into source, components, go into forms, agency details. Let's scroll and I'm just going to copy this text from here, okay? And just paste this. You can do the same thing too, no hard fail, no, you know, nothing stopping you from doing that, okay? Go ahead and do that. Just don't copy paste blindly because you're not gonna know what's going on. And then we're gonna import the number input. Okay, it looks like it's not showing up. So I'm gonna go up top and let's get that number input component from Tremor React, let's go to the bottom and let's import number input component like this, okay? And now we need to use this component. So in here, we're gonna pass in the default value, or not default checked, default value. And the default value is gonna be data.goal, data.goal like this, okay? And inside, um, actually we need one more, so on change, on change, we need to update this. So we're gonna just say, um, create a function here and we're gonna make this async. And in here, 
we're going to say if no data dot id return okay if not okay let's put this question mark here and then if not we're going to await update agency goal and we're going to set that to data dot id and set value in here okay so um we don't actually have to use this we can actually use here let me go into the libs queries and i'm going to create const uh, update, update um, agency details equal to an async function. Whoa, 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 sorry. <laughs> equal to an async function. And we're going to pass an async in here. What's going on? Okay, whoa. Equal to async. And this is going to get the um, agency ID, which is going to be a string. And we need the agency details, which is actually going to be partial. So partial, we did this last time, guys, if you don't remember and you want to get a good idea of how we built an amazing application last time, go ahead and check out the previous video. The link is going to be in the description. It is an amazing application and there's nothing like that on the internet because we taught you how to use real time cursors and so many cool things. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't. If not, no problem. This is still an amazing project. So I'm going to say uh, partial agency from Prisma client. And then we're going to say const response equal to await db dot agency dot update um let's see data okay and this is going to be like this data and we can say um, everything basically everything that is inside agency details not agency logo agency details why is it saying agency logo it's not even here agency details okay and we also need to pass in where so where um ID is equal to agency ID like this. And then we're going to update this. Okay. You don't even have to do this. You can just, yeah, this is fine. Just do it like this and then return uh, response because we're going to use this more than we use that update one. So return response. So close this, go in here. Let's go ahead and import this. If it, if I even imported it, let's see. Okay. Export const update agency details and let's go ahead and import that right here. So this needs the ID first. I'm going to pass in data.id and the the data that I need to pass in is going to be an object with goal set to um, the value. Okay, nice. And now um, after this, we need to what's what's going on here it's saying value. I didn't get val from here. That's why. Okay, so this val is going to be string goal is not assignable to type number sorry about that so this is going to be number and huh, something seems to be wrong here guys just give me one second okay so this one has to be on value change not on change all right there we go okay just, i wish it was just on change but anyway and um so now that we're updating this we can also use that activity log so we can say const i'm sorry await save activity notification we're going to pass in uh, an object and say agency id is going to be data.id and then we need the description which is going to be uh something like updated the agency goal to put this and say dollar sign um val and then after this, we're just going to say sub accounts like this. And then finally, we need to say sub account ID of undefined. And finally, after this, we're going to scroll to the top right here. Okay, we imported use router. So let's go to the bottom here. And after this, we're going to say router dot refresh and just invoke that like that. And for this, by the way, we need to also pass some additional props. So let's go in here and let's close this component actually. And let's pass in min equal one class name equal bg dash background no border i'm sorry important border important border dash input and then we're going to say placeholder is equal to sub account goal okay and let's refresh this page we have to say bun run dev and let's refresh this 
and let's see what that looks like. Awesome, there you go. Take a look at that. Looks very different, but um, it's fine. We're just using an external component, right? And we're not gonna show this if the ID does not exist. So now we can go ahead and hide this and we're gonna say uh, data.id, then we're going to return this component. So now you're not going to see this by default. Awesome, now we need to also create the submit button. So let's go quick. Um, after this, um, after this div right here, we're gonna say button, which comes from UI button and class name. Um, actually, we don't need any class name. We can just say type equal submit. And then we need to say disabled equal to, disabled is equal to is loading. Okay, um, loading. What is, what, what's going on? Is loading. And the text inside is going to um, say, you know, something like loading basic. So let's just say save agency information because we're going to use the same form for creating and for updating. So we're just going to say save agency information and uh, that should be it. I think Shad CN also released a new update. Let me take a look at this. Okay, so they have a new reload icon. That's awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this component. So let's go in here and let's say um, reload icon like this. Hello? Okay. Imports are not working anymore. Let's go ahead and import that. Oh, I got to import this component literally. Okay, give me a second, guys. Okay, so I'm not going to install this. I think there's more to install if you try to get some components. I might be wrong, but um, I'm just going to move on, okay? I'm actually going to use my own loader. So let's go in here and go to the go to GitHub. I actually created my own custom loader, so that's why I was a little excited thinking I could use that right off the bat. But uh, this is loading components. Um, this loading component comes from... Um, a different place. So let's go ahead and import that. Where is this component? Let's see. So globals slash loading. Okay, let's go to that. Okay. So let's go in here. We want to go into source components globals loading.tsx. Let's go ahead and copy this and let's go ahead and create that. So go into your globals file folder right in here and say loading.tsx. Paste that in there. And let's go back and let's install that. Uh, let's import this component in here. So I'm going to say, um, let's remove this and say is loading. If this is true, then return the loading component from global loading or say this save agency information. Okay. And we actually might use this again. So I'm going to go in here. There is a loading page that we need. So let's go ahead and copy this. It's, it's nothing. It's just a loading component and something with height full, width full, and it's just, it just spans the entire page. We're going to use this to basically show the loading state of the page. So let's go in here and say loading page.tsx and paste that in here too. We might use this again. Okay, cool. And uh, now we also need one more button, I think. Uh, let me see. Okay, this is good. After this, we need the delete button. So uh, go down here after this form component, okay, after this, and we're going to say if data.id exists, that means something exists, then we're going to return a div with a class name of flex, flex dash row. Why is this like this? Okay, never mind. And then we're going to say items center, we're going to say justify between rounded LG border, border destructive. And then we're going to say gap dash four, padding dash four and margin top of four, padding top of four. Oh, sorry, padding of four. I made a mistake there. Okay. And inside this, create another div, create another div here. And we're going to call, um, we're going to call this one danger zone. Okay. Danger zone like this. Let's remove this and see what this looks like actually. Let's go in here, refresh that danger zone. Oops. Reading use con. Okay, never mind. Yeah, danger danger zone. And then we want to create another div in here. And we're just going to pass in a class name. And I'm going to copy this text. So let's go back here, go into forms, agency details, scroll to the bottom. Let's close this. It's taking too much space. And let's copy this delete danger notification, whatever. 
and let's say text muted foreground. Okay, copy this. I put it outside the div. Okay, what is this? Close this and paste that inside. Okay, nice. Now let's go back and see what that looks like. Great, so it just says, hey, danger zone, watch out. Okay, <laughs> cool. And after this part, after this div, now we're going to use that, use that alert dialog trigger. Okay, dialog uh, trigger, dialog trigger like this. And this comes from UI alert dialog. Okay, please be careful with that. And this is gonna have a disabled set to is loading or deleting agency, okay? And let's give this a class name of text-red-600p-2 text-center margin top of two rounded uh, rounded-md like this hover bg-red-600 uh, and then hover, oops, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> That's just a message. And then hover um, text dash white, white space, no wrap. Okay. See, I don't, I can't even see that because it shows, but I know the next one's going to be no wrap. And in this dialogue, we're going to say deleting agency. If this is true. Just say uh, deleting dot, 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 or we're going to say delete agency just like this. Great job. And now we're not going to see this, of course. So let's go up here and let's hide this now. So you see, it's just going to look like this and you can click on this. Okay. So let's just wrap this. Where is that? Um, wrap till the uh, alert dialog. And we're going to say data.id if that exists, then return this component. Okay. You cannot return two JSX elements. So we need to actually put this uh, alert dialog inside this div like this. Okay, sorry about that. And now we need to do get the alert content. So what are we going to show inside that content? And we can just get this from here. So uh, just copy this content from here and paste the content after this. Okay, and go ahead and import each of this. So Oops, make sure you import it from UI, okay? Import this from UI alert title from UI alert dialog title description as well from there. So like that. And the footer from there as well. The cancel button from there. Action. Um, and that should be it. And now we need to pass in this function. So let's go up top and I'll basically create this function, okay? So uh, copy this, go up top here and say const, this is equal to a function and it's gonna be async because we're gonna create some sort of API request, right? And in here, we're gonna say if, sorry, inside this, we're gonna say if agents, uh, if, no, if there's no data.id, okay? And then let's put this in here. We're going to uh, return, so we don't even need this, just return. And if it does, then we're gonna say set deleting agency to true. And after this, um, what are we gonna do here? Actually, we're gonna just delete it, right? Okay, so there's one thing you have to do in here. This is something we're gonna keep for later. If we have time, sure, if not, it's fine, okay? You have to basically discontinue the agency, the subscription for the user, okay? Okay, I'm just gonna put a work in progress flag there so we don't forget. So create a try catch and inside this say const response equal await delete agency and pass in data.id. Copy this, go into your queries file, scroll to the bottom and just say export const this equal to an async function. Whoa, 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 sorry, I don't know what just happened. Let's save that. And we need the agency ID, which is going to be a string. And in here, we're going to just say const response equal to await db dot uh, agency dot delete. Okay. Where ID is agency ID. Okay. And then return response like this. Good. Okay. And let's copy this. Go in here and let's go ahead and import this from here. 
So import that. Great. Awesome. And if this is successful, we'll return a toast. Okay. Also, I know Shatsy and UI updated their library and created using Sonar now, but I'm not going to use that. Okay. I'm just going to use this title and we're going to say deleted agency. And we're going to say description is going to be uh, deleted your agency and all sub accounts. Okay. Cause that's a, that's a bad thing. You don't want to delete everything. So you need to tell them. And after this, we're going to say router, sorry, what was that router dot refresh? Awesome. And if there was an error, same thing, copy this, go in here, paste it. Um, and we'll just say, oops, could not delete your agency. Okay. Just like this and pass in the variant, which is going to be destructive. Okay. Nice. And after this, we'll also just console.log the error in here so we can see what happened. And after everything, which is after all of this, set deleting agency to false so that we can stop loading that. Awesome. And now let's go ahead and also create the saving uh, on submit in here. So we're going to create a try catch in here and say let new user data and let customer ID. So this might be work in progress. Let's see how far we can go without breaking, uh, you know, the flow. So if data dot ID does not exist. Oh, sorry. Yeah. If data dot ID does not exist, then we're going to actually say, yeah, we're going to say body data equal to an object email dot um, email, sorry, is going to be values dot company email. And this value comes in from here. Okay. So say values is going to be Z dot infer type of a uh, form schema like this. So now this has all of these values. So values dot company email like this, and just go ahead and populate everything. Okay. Go ahead and populate all the data. Okay. And I just saw how, how far we could get without actually jumping into the Stripe stuff. But basically this is the Stripe uh, thing, right? We need to create this so we can uh, create the customer. Okay. So that's why we're just going to skip this process right here. And after this, right after this, we're going to say const, um, or we're going to say new user data equal to await, uh, init user. So init user like this, and uh, this is going to be a, a new action that we need to create. And we're going to pass in the role, sorry, the role of agency owner. So I'm just going to copy this. Okay. And replace this and let's go ahead and create that action. Okay. So where do we go? Let's go in here, go to queries and let's say export const init user equal to async function like this. And inside this, we need new user, which is going to be partial of user. Okay. And in here, we're going to say const user equal to await db dot user dot upsert. And in here, we're going to say where the email is user dot email addresses, uh, user, not user agent. Sorry. It's new. Okay. Sorry guys. I skipped a part here. We need to actually get the user. So const user equal to current user like this. Okay. And if there, if there is no user, then return. Okay. Um, yeah. And in here, we're going to say user data instead. So yeah, so return this, or we can throw a new error, whatever you like to do. I'm just going to return here. And after this, I'm going to say where email addresses, email addresses. So user dot email. Oh, we have to await here. My bad. Dot email addresses at zero dot email address like this. Okay. And after this, we're going to say update the new user, or we're going to create the ID is going to be user dot ID. The avatar URL is going to be user dot image URL. The email is going to be user dot email addresses at zero dot email address. The name is going to be dollar sign user dot first name. 
space dollar sign user dot last name. Okay, this is small letter. And then finally, the role is going to be new user dot role or sub account user. Okay, sub account user like this. And after this part, after upserting, um, after this, we're okay. This is not user metadata. <laughs> this is user data. And after this, we're going to say await clerk client dot users dot uh, uh, dot update user metadata to user dot id. So for this user, we're going to update their private metadata. And we're going to set that to role. And that role is going to be new user dot role or sub account like this. I'm just going to copy this sub account user and paste the sub account user in here. Okay. So we're just going to basically create that role for them uh, on the private metadata as well. And then return user data. Awesome. Cool. Phew. That was a lot of code. So let's go in here and now import this init user from our lib from our libs folder and let's go ahead and build this out in here okay so we're going to get we're going to create the user and if no data dot customer id and no cust id so this cust id actually comes from here so since we're not doing that i'm just going to remove this uh for now okay and I'm just going to put a work in progress flag cust ID. Okay. We'll come back to that. And if there is no data in here, then we are going to say const response equal to await upsert, um, upsert agency. I don't think I exported it. Let me see. Uh, where is a queries file queries. Okay. We need to create that one. So export const upsert agency and make sure I didn't uh, actually create that anywhere. Okay. Yeah, we didn't create that. Nice. <laughs> so let's go down here and we're going to say absurd agency. And this is going to be a function that's going to take in the agency, which is of type agency and the price, which is of type plan. So this plan comes in from um, Prisma client plan like this. So if there is no agency dot company email, then return null. Okay. And why is this? I think that's just, yeah, it's going to take some time. So try catch let's import. I mean, let's create that template and say const agency details equal to await db dot agency dot upsert like this, where ID is agency dot ID dot ID. Okay. That exists. Nice. And we're going to say update agency or create a new agency. So we're going to say for users connect where email is agency dot email dot company email like this. And after this, let me hit enter here so we can see more. <laughs> And after this, um, users, we're going to say dot, dot, dot agency like this. And then we're going to say sidebar options. We're going to create some default options. Okay. So we're going to create an array. Okay. And we're going to say, um, the following. So we're going to say name is going to be dashboard. Go here. Just actually just go in here and let's go into not in it user. Where's that? Where's that? Absurd agency. Let's click on that and let's go into this right here. Okay. Oh, it's not. Okay. Absurd sub accounts, absurd agency. Copy this entire create statement. Okay. Copy that. Replace this. It's basically a default, um, like sidebar options that we need. Okay. And now you're going to notice we have this icon here. What is this icon? So we have already gone ahead and got the best icon set. We have updated it. We've upgraded it, changed the colors, everything, and we're put it in here. So make sure you go into this source uh, components folder and you're going to see icons. Go ahead and just download this entire folder, this one right here, and just bring it into yours and create the same directory structure. Okay. So go ahead, pause the video, do this and come right back.
Hey, it's me again, just quickly reminding you, if you haven't already, just please click that like button if you found this video helpful. It's the only way for me to know if you actually found this valuable, and I'm going to put much more similar high quality content out just for you. Hopefully you went ahead and copied the entire icons folder into your components folder. It's same thing, download, drag it from your download folder into your components, okay? now. How does this work? There is a mapping structure, okay, that we're gonna use inside the sidebar to determine which icon to show. Go into source, okay? See, this is why I said you need to have your my, my GitHub open, okay? Go to the description, click on the link, and open it, keep it on the right side. So go into libs, constants, and you see this mapping structure, right? Just copy this whole thing right here, and go into your libs, you have a constants file in here, so just go paste it in there. And then you're going to see all the import statements for all the components. Just copy this, go up top, and just import all those components. And now that all the errors are going to go away, basically. We're going to use this one to determine which icon to show in the sidebar. Now you want to go back into your agency details under the forms. Basically, we're just going to finish up this, okay? So let's look at that inside the GitHub repository. So click here. You want to go into source, components, forms, and then click on agency details, okay? The reason why I'm copying this is just unnecessary redundant stuff, okay? Right here, you see it's just await upsert agency, that new uh, function that we just created, right? That new server action. We're just going to invoke that and pass in some data. So I'm going to I'm going to show you exactly what it is um, right in here. So you want to import this upsert agency like this. And let's also we also need V4 and V4 comes from uh, UUID. Let's quit the server and say bun add UUID. OK, that's going to go ahead and install that. And then we can import this from that. I think we might also have to import the types for this. Yeah. OK, so you see it's going to give you it's going to say uh, get this types, copy this types and just say bun add and paste those types. OK, so the customer ID right here is actually uh, undefined. We're not we're not doing that part yet. Right. So we're just going to remove this and we're just going to pass in this customer ID like this. So let's see what happened here string or undefined is not not assignable to string uh, to string. OK, so the customer ID has to be present when we create an account. OK, so let me see how we can make this work. Since this customer ID requires a bunch of Stripe setup um, and we haven't even gotten our UI kind of up and going. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our schema file. OK, go into your Prisma schema and you're going to find customer ID under the agency. OK, so we're just going to remove this for now. All right. Remove that. And I think everything else is OK. And just go ahead and open your terminal and say bun x prisma generate and then bun x prisma db push. OK, and that's going to go ahead and push that change. And I want to go back into your file and we're just going to remove this from here because it's no longer needed. And let's just make sure data Dot, yeah, so if data dot customer ID does not exist, then we're going to create this. So for now, we're just going to uh, let me see right here in it user. And we're creating an account, right? So we can just say if data dot ID or yeah, we could just put this. This is fine. Uh, and what is this issue? Property ID does not exist on type of never. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Give me one second, guys. OK, so you just have to put this here and that way it will uh, remove that TypeScript error. OK, awesome. And after this, now we need to quickly show a toast if everything is successful. So in here, just copy the toast that we have above, which is uh, right here. Did we even use that toast? I think we used a toast somewhere. Yeah, right here. Copy the toast, paste it here. And you want to say created agency. OK. And this is okay. We can just remove this. And uh, we need one more toast for an error. So I'm going to copy this one. And if some error took place, I'm going to console.log the error. And I'm also going to show a toast and say, could not create your agency. Okay. And um, yep. So this is how we basically uh, create it. Now, the other thing we need to do is once the user creates this, we have to route them to that page. How do we do that? So Right after this, so right after the toast, after showing we created it, we want to say if uh, data dot id, okay, we're going to return router dot refresh, okay. We're just refreshing the 
um, we're refreshing the, the browser. Okay. And then after that, we're going to say if response exists, so response exists, nice. And then we can do return um, this one. Okay, right here. So just do this in here. Nice. So we're just refreshing it. And once this refreshes, what happens, the page basically gets purged, all the data gets kind of uncached, right, it refreshes that. And then inside our page.tsx in here under agency, it's going to basically refetch and check. Okay, it's going to refetch this. And we're going to end up finding the auth user details. And it's going to have the person's going to have a user because we in initialize the user. And then it's going to redirect them to the agency if an account was created for them. And whatever. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So let's first hit this and see if error validation works. Okay, awesome. And even the agency detail gets pre populated. So I'm just going to refresh this. Um, okay, we have to run the server. So go ahead, open your terminal and say, bun run dev and refresh this. Okay. And let's just give that a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go into this agency folder, and I'm going to create a dynamic um, path like this dynamic route, and I'm going to call this agency ID. Okay, we're going to need this because we're going to route the user right and inside the and inside that just create a page.tsx and say this and just say page like this. Okay. And in here, we're going to get access to uh, some sort of per, uh, some params, right. So this is basically the ID that will get passed in. So to extract that we're just going to say uh, params like this, which is going to be um, an object with params, which has our ID. So agency ID, which is going to be a string. Okay. And now we're just going to render out params dot agency ID. So that way we can see when the user gets routed. Okay, so let's go ahead, give this a test. So if you hit this error validation works, let's go ahead and try to upload something I already have an image pack um, that I'm going to use. So in here under my assets folder, I have a bunch of amazing template logos, I'll see if I can put it in the description. Okay, this is not mine, guys, I this is not my logo, I just found this from the Figma community. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, just select uh, a really nice looking logo. And I think, uh, let's take this one. Okay, I think it's called focal point. And I'm just going to put it in here. So focal point I already have some, you know, pre configured data, I'm just going to put some uh, random text in here. Okay, just put some number like this. And we're going to change this to USA. So United States, like that. Awesome. And this white label can be off for now. So let's go ahead and upload this image. And oh, did I click on something? Let's see. Okay, I'm going to use this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload that image. If everything works as expected, that image should show up here. So let's give that a second. Awesome. Looks great. Well, it, it's not uh, covered all throughout. And maybe we can go fix that because we're going to use this component, we don't want it to look bad, right? So let's go into our globals into the file upload component. And let's see, where do we have that? I think that should be somewhere in here items. What is this item center? I'm just going to fix that. And object contain contain. This should fix it. Okay, let's give that one more shot. Of course, it's going to upload that image, but it's fine. Okay, we're going to change this to bold shift. I know this is bold shift logo. And let's go ahead and upload that. And let's hopefully Hopefully everything looks good. Okay, amazing. And now you want to scroll down and hit save agency details. Okay, let's hope everything works. Okay, something looks wrong. That might be because we made a refresh. So I'm just going to change this stuff in here one more time. Okay, just like this. Yeah, that's probably because we made that refresh. And now let's go ahead and save. Okay, it did something. What did it do? I'm not sure I'm going to open this and see what's going on in here. Okay. Okay, so here's what I did, guys, I just removed all the if statements, because we are actually not returning any data from the upsert agency, we could, but that's fine. That I think that's why it's failing, because there's no data in there, right? Or what you can do is go in here and just return the agency details. So let's go to the bottom here. And we can just say return agency details like this. Okay, and this will work. Okay, awesome. And let's just console.log some error if an error takes place in here. Let's quit this. And now it's of course going to work. Okay, so let's refresh this one more time. 
Let's give that a second. Okay, and in the meantime, I'm just gonna fill this up with some uh, some mock data. So I'm just gonna use focal point. Guys, so I'm having some issue here. I don't think you will face this problem, but I think it's because I'm out of space in my com uh, memory in my computer. But if that's not the case, I, I don't think you're gonna face the same problem, okay? Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna quit and refresh. Just give me one second. Okay, so now if you go ahead and try to upload some image, put some random phone number, put some random information, um, change this to United States. We'll keep this like this. Let's go ahead and upload this image. And now if you go ahead and save the agency information, it should reroute us to that page. Awesome. Great job so far. This is the logic. So now you pretty much know how to build any form, literally any form, okay? And if you have any questions, Discord's open or learn how to read the documentation. Under forms, in here, there's so much that teaches about Zod and how Zod works. We literally worked through an entire example. You have to use Zod to basically validate and components just do it for you because that's the power of Shad UI. So from now, I'm not going to build each form element one by one because you know what it is, okay? You already know. So just read this and try to understand how does a form work. A form works with simply a form field with a bunch of props that you have to pass in because that's how the component library works. And then you need the form item, label, a control, for the input, whatever the input type is. So here we had a custom input. So you also know how to create a fully customized input, okay? And um, you also know how to create the form error messages, every single thing. So from now, I'm just gonna copy paste form so I can help you speed up your process, all right? Awesome, let's move on to the next part, which is working with the sidebar. All right, so go ahead and open your directory. I'm just gonna shrink everything, and so it's easier to see. Go into components and create a sidebar folder. And inside the sidebar folder, we're going to create the um, index dot types uh, TSX file. Okay, so let me change this real quick TSX, and then I'm just going to use this um, snippet here, and I'm just going to say sidebar like this. Okay, and now this sidebar is going to take two props, which is the ID, which is going to be a string, and it's going to have the type, and this is going to either have agency or it's going to have the sub account. Now, why, why do we need this? The reason why we need this is we're going to use the same sidebar for everything for agency and sub accounts. Okay. We're just going to make some quick tweaks. And also we're going to use the same sidebar for mobile devices as well. Okay. So that's why we need all this stuff. And in here, first, I'm just going to change this to an async component and I'm going to remove this and I'm going to say ID. I'm not removing it. Sorry, by the way, I am destructuring. Okay. ID, ID and type. And uh, here now we're going to do some stuff. So we're going to uh, we're going to first say const user equal await get user get uh, auth user details. Okay, and then we want to say if there's no user, we're going to return null. Okay, because there's no user, and if there is no so if no user dot agency then we're going to return as well, okay? And now first we need the details. So let's go ahead and get all the details uh, that we need for uh, the agency or sub account. So if type equal to agency, question mark, and then we're gonna say user.agency uh, like this, user.agency, or we're gonna get user.agency.subaccount dot find where the sub account dot ID is equal to the ID we just passed in. Okay, so we're just basically filtering. Uh, so let's see what seems to be the problem here. Sub account dot ID is equal to ID. Okay, and this is wrong. There's no space. Great. And now after this, we want to basically say const is white labeled agency. Okay, it says white labeled agency equal to user dot agency dot white labeled. Okay, like this. And then we're going to say if there's no details, if there's no details, we're just going to return. Okay. And after that, we need the sidebar logo. So which logo are we going to show? So let's write this here, sidebar logo, and this is equal to user dot agency, user dot agency dot agency logo. Okay, and um, or we're just going to pass in from our assets. So we already have a Plur logo. So worst comes to worst, if something fails, we at least show our logo. Okay. So assets, Plura dash 
logo like this. Okay. And let me refresh this. I think I'm having that error. Okay. Yeah. I'm having that error again. And this is not something related to the code. I know that because I made other people run the code and everything looked good. So if you guys are facing this problem, please let me know and we will solve this bug. Okay. And now that we have, see, now it's running. So clearly there's no other problem. But anyway, so now we have this uh, plural logo dot SVG like this. And after this, we're going to say if it is not a white labeled agency, then we're going to say if type equal to sub account, then we're going to say sidebar logo is going to be equal to user dot agency dot sub account dot find where the sub account has a sub account ID equal to the ID that we just passed in. Okay. And if this exists, uh, then we're going to after this. Okay. Right here. What is this? Did I say const sidebar logo? So here we're just going to say dot sidebar account sub account logo or user dot agency dot agency logo. Okay. Awesome. And after this, all the way at the bottom, we're going to create the sidebar options. Okay. So const sidebar options is equal to if type equal to agency, then we're going to say user dot agency dot sidebar options. So let me get that sidebar option like this, or we're just going to put an empty array. Okay. And if this is uh, true, this one, if this is not true, then we're going to say user dot agency dot sub account dot um, find where the sub account has a sub account dot ID equal to the ID we just passed in. So now we have all these sidebar options. Okay. And also we can pass in the empty array here if uh, this fails. So uh, actually let's first get the sidebar options. We missed that here and then we can pass in or an empty array. And in here we want to say const sub accounts equal to uh, user dot agency dot sub account dot filter like this and we want to filter for the sub account okay where uh where the user dot permissions dot find so we're basically seeing only the sub accounts that they have access to okay uh so permission okay where the permission this is the wrong spelling <laughs> permission dot sub account like this sub account ID is equal to sub account ID that we uh, are accessing here. So we're going to say sub account dot ID and permission dot access is true. Okay. So this will have these sidebar options, sub account uh, uh, sidebar options, basically. Okay. Sub accounts and with their um, options. Awesome. And then finally, now we're going to return the components. So here we're going to return a custom component. So first let's have a uh, react fragment. And in here, we're going to say menu options. Okay. Like this, and because it's a custom component, we're going to create in just a second. And I'm just going to close this and I'm just going to do this one more time down here. And I'm just going to pass in uh, some props actually here. Let me just go and build this out. So we're going to call this menu options.tsx. Okay. Oh, I can't type. Okay. Menu options .tsx. And in here, we're just going to use this snippet and menu options. Okay, cool. And let's go ahead and import this component from here. Awesome. And now if we go into this component, we can actually show the props here and then we can bring those in. So we're going to say default open is going to be a optional property set to a Boolean. Okay. And then we need sub accounts is going to be of type sub account from Prisma client, which is an array. And then we need sidebar option, which is going to be agency sidebar option uh, with an array, or it's going to be sub account sidebar option with an array. Okay. And then the side bar logo is going to be a string. And then the details, Oops, what is this? The details is going to be any and user is also going to be 
any here and the ID is going to be string. Okay. Like this. And now this can be destructured so we can get access to these. So I'm just going to get this value. Okay. Yeah. Just import, just bring all these values in. Okay. User and finally default open. Cool. So now we have all these values in here and, um, so let's go ahead and pass in all these values from here. So we want to say default open is equal to true. Okay. And then we have details, which is equal to details that we just got. And then we have the ID, which is equal ID. We have the sidebar logo, which is equal to the sidebar logo. We have sidebar options, which is equal to sidebar options. And then we have sub accounts, which is equal to sub accounts. And then finally we have user, which is equal to user like this. And now we're going to copy all of this, paste it in here, but we're going to remove this uh, default open a true because this one is going to be the mobile nav bar. Okay. Awesome. And now let's go into this component and we're going to make some changes in here. So the first thing we want to do is go all the way up top and we're going to say use clients like this. Okay. And uh, give me one second. I'm just going to refresh everything. Okay. So now what we're going to do is before we put changes in here, we want to actually render out this component, right? So let's shrink everything, go into app, go into main, into agency. Um, and then we're going to go into this, this agency ID. And we're just going to create a layout dot TSX. And we're going to just quickly import this. And inside this component, we're going to get access to some props. So this one is the children, which is going to be react dot react node. And then we're also going to get params. And these params are basically an object with agency ID, which is a string. And let's go ahead and destructure this from here. So we have children and params. Okay. And we're going to first uh, remove this div. Actually, before this, we need to do something. So I, I am aware that um, layout.tsx does not refresh on every render. Okay. However, I think when params are present, that means the component should be re-rendering, right? I read a lot of documentation and I think this is correct. It worked. If it doesn't work, well, the solution would be to wrap each page element or each component in a check, but we're basically doing a check here. Okay. We're going to say const agency ID equal await verify and accept invitation. Okay. And change this to async. And after this, we're going to say const user equal await current user from next cl from clerk next JS. And then we're going to say, if there is no user return redirect, which comes from next navigation to nothing to the main page. And then if there is no agency ID, then we're going to return redirect the user again to the agency page. Okay. Because that will do the logic of prompting them to create or send them to their account. And then if user dot private metadata, okay. Dot role, we created this. If you guys remember is not equal to agency owner. So agency underscore owner and user dot private metadata is not equal to dot sorry dot rule is not equal to agency admin like this. Okay. So agency owner and agency admin, then we're going to return an unauthorized link. So let's just quickly go ahead and render that. So right now we're not going to see that. Uh, let me see what's going on. Okay. So right now we're not going to see that because we are not rendering this page. So uh, give me one second. I'm just going to quickly uh, get that layout that unauthorized page guys. This is the page that we're going to be building. It's a very simple unauthorized access page. So how do we, how do we build this It's very simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder inside this agency. Okay. So open the agency, create an unauthorized folder. Okay. And inside that create a page .tsx. And the reason is we might need this route. I'm not going to use it. But if you ever need to, you can reroute the user to this page so you can show something and you can also do the same thing in the sub account. But anyway, so yeah, you're going to have that unauthorized and then you want to go to your components folder right in here and create an unauthorized folder in here as well. And inside that create an index.tsx. Okay. I hope you're with me. Go ahead and do this with me right now. Okay. Pause the video and get it done if you haven't, but that's what you need to do to just get this set up.
Awesome. Now click on this index.tsx and just return a component. Okay. Just type in RAFCE and uh, or TSRAFCE, same thing. And inside this, we're just going to say div with a class name of padding four, text center, height screen, width screen, flex, justify center, item center, and flex call. And now you may ask, where do you get this from? Don't worry about that. This is not going to be there for now. We're going to get this in a second. And then create an H1 tag and say text 3XL from medium devices, text 6XL. That's why it increases like this. Okay. And then we're going to say unauthorized access. And then for the P tag, just say, please contact support or your agency owner to get access. And then we're going to have a link tag in here. Okay. Very simple component, nothing crazy. And now we're going to go into that page. Okay. The unauthorized page and just return this component in here so that if we ever access this page, we can show that component. Okay. Awesome. Now go into agency ID and inside the layout.tsx in here. Now, instead of returning this div here, we're going to return the, the unauthorized page that we just created just like this. Okay. Awesome. Now hit enter after this, you want to say, let all notifications. Okay. Any equal to an array. So we're going to get all the notifications as well so we can show them. And right now we're not going to need this, but we will in the future because when you click this, we have to show some notifications, right? So for that, we're going to build this. All right. So let's go back in here. And uh, the reason why you don't see anything is because we're not returning the children. Okay. If you're ever curious, that's what's happening. So say const notifications equal await uh, get notifications access. So this is going to be a new action that we're going to create, which uh, you don't have, but I already built it right now. So I'm just going to get to that in just a second. So let's quickly go into this function. It's a server action. So go into your lib queries file and export a, a function called get notifications and user, which is an async function with an agency ID, which is a string as a parameter. And all this does, okay, it, we have a try catch const response equal await db dot notification dot find many where the agency ID is of this. Okay. And then we're going to also include the user and we're going to order by the created at in descending order. And we're just returning that response, nothing crazy. And if an error occurred, we're just console, we're printing a console saying, error. Okay. So let's go back to that file and that's what we're doing here. So I just want to give you a quick overview. And then after that, we're going to say if notifications exist, all notifications is equal to notifications like that. Okay. And after this, we're going to return a new div with a class name of height dash screen overflow hidden, not auto hidden. And inside this, we're going to return the sidebar that we created. So import that sidebar and you want to say ID equal to params dot agency ID. And we're going to pass in the type, which is going to be agency. Okay. And after this, we're going to have a div and this div is going to have a class name of from medium devices padding left of 300 pixel. This is not going to make sense right now. I understand, but I'm going to show you and we see an error here and I'll tell you what error we cause. So if you go into this sidebar component, and you scroll down, you're going to see we're importing use instead of the user. So let's go up top and remove this. It accidentally got imported and let's go down here and just change this to user like this. Okay. That's it. So just change that to user. And now that error should go away. Awesome. So now we're going to see two menu options because we haven't constructed the uh, menu option component yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So right up top in here, we're going to say const open state equal use memo. Okay. Use memo. And we're going to pass in a, a function with an, with a dependency array with the default open inside here. And in here, we're going to say, uh, we can remove this and say default open. If it is true, then return an object with open set to true or just a, return an empty object. Okay. And we're going to use this somewhere. Now I did notice something and I think this might have changed uh, after the new update from chat and UI, but sheet components are causing some sort of a hydration error. And I tried it 
I also copy pasted the exact same code that we have in production into the build and we're still seeing that hydration error. So it could be coming from somewhere else. I'm not sure if you guys find out awesome. Just let me know what's going on. Okay. But um, so to prevent that hydration error from happening, we have to create a state here. So we're going to say is mounted and set is mounted. And this is going to be equal to use state. So just, whoop, 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 okay, use state like this and set it to false. Okay. And if um, is mounted is not true. So if is mounted is not true, we're just going to return. And in here, we're going to create a use effect use effect and all this use effect does is it's going to have an empty dependency array all we're going to do is set is mounted to true okay so this way only when the component is mounted will we show the show the sidebar i know this is this might cause some problems this might uh look a little weird when it loads because we are waiting for the component to load on the client side but I don't think this is going to cause any problems. Okay, let's let's see how it goes. Anyway, so in here now we want to return the sheet. So let's go ahead and import a sheet component from from the UI components and the UI library. And then we want to say modal equal false. And then we're going to use the spread operator for the open state in here. Okay, and inside the sheet component, go ahead and say sheet trigger. Okay, and the sheet trigger is going to say as child. And it's going to have a class name of absolute, absolute. It's going to have left dash four. And then we're going to have top dash four and Z of 100. Okay. And then we're going to say from medium devices, make this hidden and say flex. Now I want to quickly also show you what this is going to look like. All right. So if we go back, let me just go back to home real quick and let's go back into our dashboard. So. If you look at the structure of our page, we're having, we are going to have a sidebar. Okay. And this sidebar of course has this cool animation when it loads. That's why I'm using the sheet component. And, um, the other thing is you notice the sidebar has this really cool effect where it is under the other page. It's under our dashboard. So if you go into team, maybe we can see clear. There you go. You see that really cool effect. It's, I don't know, it just looked amazing. And I thought it'll be great. So, um, this is why, uh, we need to create all this, this stuff. Okay. We're basically hiding it underneath. All right. And, um, so that means our structure is going to be sidebar. We're going to have this info bar up top, and we're going to have this component in here, which is, um, the main, uh, page. And it's going to be wrapped in something called a blur page. And I'll get to that in a second, but I just want to give you guys an idea. So you understand what you're building. Okay. Awesome. And um, one more thing, if we go back into our layout, let's go back in there. Okay. We have this uh, inside the agency. Okay. So in here, go ahead and return children. That's why you're not seeing anything render. Okay. And now if we go back, there you go. Now you see it. So let's go back into our sidebar menu options and let's continue. So inside this trigger, go ahead and create a button. Okay. With a class name, actually no class name, just say variant equal to outline like this. And the size is equal to icon. And this is a new addition, which I think is amazing. So in here, now we're going to pass in the menu and this menu comes from um, the react lucid react icons. Okay. And after the trigger, go ahead and say sheet content and the sheet content is going to have the following. So first we need to make some changes to the component itself. So come up here, go into that uh, sheet component. So you can hold command actually and click on it. It'll take you into the component. And in here, we're going to create an interface. Okay. Interface. We're going to say custom sheet, uh, content, props. Okay. Like this. And, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create something called show X, which is of a type of Boolean Boolean like this. And now we're going to copy this and go in here and just hit enter and paste it. Okay. Put a comma after this. So, uh, we're basically creating our own version of this. And in here, we're going to extract that show X property and let's wrap this in show X and, and then we want to show this. So 
For some reason, Shadsy and UI does not give you the ability to actually customize the X icon that shows up. So we're going to make that. Uh, we're going to put that in for ourselves. Okay. And now we want to go in here and you're going to see something called focus uh, out, focus ring and stuff like that. Just remove all of that and just from just keep this and after disabled. Okay. You're going to see that. I'm not going to see it. But uh, if you do, just remove that anyway. And even if you don't, that's fine. You can keep it as is. I just wanted it to look a little nicer. So let's remove this now and let's go back into our component and we need to pass in the following props. So we're going to also one more thing. Sorry. We want this to be optional. This does not have to. Yeah, it's not required. OK, so now in here, we're going to say uh, sheet content show X equal to um, the opposite of default open like this. OK, and in here we want to say side equal left and then we want to give it a class name. So the class name is going to be CLSX, import that. We're going to say BG dash background divided by 80. And then we want to say backdrop of blur LG. Actually, let's use Excel and then fixed top of zero. Um, and then we want to say border right of um, one pixel like this. OK. And after that, just say padding six. Great job. And after this in here as a second parameter, pass in an object and you want to say something here and just pass in true for now. We'll fix that in just a second. So say hidden from medium devices. We want it to be inline dash block like this. And then we want Z to be zero and width to be 300 pixels. 100 pixels just like this. And now this value here is going to say default open. And let's uh, go ahead and hit enter after this. And we're going to create one more. So I'm just going to say true for this again, and we'll fix that. So in here, pass an inline block. Okay. And then we want to say for medium devices, hidden. And then Z should be 100. And width is going to be full like this. And now you can change this to the opposite of default open. OK, awesome. Follow through with me, guys. You're going to get it. And this is going to be an amazing project for you to put on your resume. OK, so uh, go ahead and create a div here. And inside this div, we're going to use the aspect ratio. And this is going to have the ratio set to uh, ratio set to 16 divided by five. Also, when you're importing, please Make sure you're importing from the UI library, not from uh, Radix UI. OK, by default, it's going to show you Radix UI. So make sure you do that. So let's create an image component with the SRC set to the sidebar logo. We need the alt tag to be um, sidebar logo like this. And let's say fill. And then the class name is going to be rounded dash MD rounded dash MD and then we're going to say object dash contain okay inside this so object dash contain just like this nice and after the aspect ratio we're going to create a popover component and inside the popover component create the popover trigger and the popover trigger is going to be a button and this button is going to have a class name of width of full margin Y of four flex flex item center and justify between and we want to say padding y of eight okay and now we're not going to see this actually so what we're going to do is let's go up here and just set this to true um default sheet content okay yeah let's go up here and just set the open state to true okay let me hide this open equal to true we'll change this in a second we just want to see what we're building. OK, nice. And now let's go back in here to this. And we want to change this to a variant of um, ghost so that it's empty. Nice. And inside this button, go ahead and create the following. So you want to say div class name of flex items center text left and gap of two and inside the div create the compass 
which comes from Lucid React icons. Just import that and then create a div here to show all the names and titles and stuff like that. So class name is going to be flex flex dash call. And then we want to pass in details dot name. And after the details dot name, create a span. And the span is going to have a class name of text dash muted dash foreground. And inside this, you want to say details dot um, address. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Detail dot address. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Looks good. So I made a small error here. So this is flex like this, and that should go to the next line. Awesome. Cool. Great job. And after the address, so one, two, after the second div, hit enter, create another div and say Chevron up down. Okay. This is the icon we need. And you want to say size equals 16 like this. And then let's also give it a class name of text dash muted dash foreground. So it just has this. And I think we did something wrong with the styling. Let me take a look at this. Give me one second. Okay. So on this trigger first, let's say as child. Okay. That fixed it. All right. So just say as child on the pop over trigger and that will fix that problem. All right. And now after this trigger right here, go ahead and create a pop over content and give it a class name of width of 80 height of 80 margin top of four and Z of 200. Okay. And inside the component, go ahead and say this with the command component, which comes from the UI components again, and then class rounded dash LG, not large. You want uh, LG. Um, and then inside the command, you want a command input like this. And the command input is going to have a placeholder of search accounts dot dot dot. And in after the input, I'm going to close this tag actually. Okay. We're going to say command list. And this command list is going to say, uh, it's going to have a class name of padding bottom of 16. And inside the command list, we're going to have a command empty component. And the empty is going to something wrong here. Okay. Let me remove this. And the empty component is simply going to say no results found like this. Okay. No results found. And after this, after the empty component, go ahead and say the following. Okay. Uh, please type it out the way I'm typing. So create this bracket and say user dot role equal to agency owner or user dot role equal to agency admin. Okay. So after this bracket type and the user dot agency exist, then we want to return some elements here. So I'm just going to say div for now and save this to make sure. Okay, nice. So change this div now to command group. Okay. And this command group is going to have a heading of accounts or actually I'm going to change this to agency. Okay. And inside this, we're going to create a command item and the command item is going to have a key set to the um, user dot agency dot ID. And the command item will also have a class name. Um, actually, we don't even need a key here. So I'm just going to remove this key. Yep, we don't need a key there, guys. We're not mapping over anything. So we don't even need this. I'm just going to remove that. Okay. And a command item is going to have a class name of important BG just dash transparent margin Y of two text dash primary not pretty text dash primary border dash one pixel. So just say one pixel like this and then border dash border border dash border. And then we want padding of two rounded dash MD hover should be BG dash muted and then cursor pointer and transition all. Okay. And inside the command item, we're basically going to show uh, the links. So we're going to say if 
default open is true. Okay, like this. So we're showing different versions for mobile and for the desktop devices. So if this is true, we're going to return a link, which is going to have the href set to backticks slash agency agency slash um, dollar sign user dot agency dot ID. And we're also going to pass in a class name. So say class name equal flex gap dash four with dash full and height dash full. Okay, just like this. And inside the link, go ahead and say div with a class name of relative and width dash 16. Okay. And in here, go ahead and create an image tag and say SRC equal to user dot agency dot agency logo. So agency logo like this. And we want also want to pass in the alt tag. I'm just going to say agency logo. And after this, we're going to say fill class names, class name set to rounded dash MD. And we need to also pass an object contain. Okay, great job. And after this image, so if you don't know what this is, is it's basically, um, we're showing all the accounts. Okay, it just looks like this. So this stuff right in here. So now you can see we're almost getting there. So now after this, this image tag right here, create a div and give it a class name of flex, flex dash call, flex dash column and flex dash one. Okay. And in here say user dot agency dot name like this. And again, create a span with a class name of text dash muted dash foreground and you want to put the user dot agency dot address okay so if you click this now um, you're supposed to see that let's just give that a second oh this is if default open is true so since default open is false right now we're not going to see that okay so what we're going to do after this is in here let's go ahead and copy this first of all copy this link and in here, we're going to return a sheet close. Okay. And inside the sheet close first pass as child in here and inside the sheet close, go ahead and paste what we just copied. Okay. And we need to change a couple things. So let me make sure this is the same relative with 16 nice agency logo. Okay. This looks good. So I see it here and this looks great. I think this, yep, they look the same. All right, awesome. And we can also give it bold. I think bold comes only if you click on it, right? Yeah, not sure. Anyway, <laughs> okay. So after the command group, go ahead and hit enter and create another command group. And we're going to call this one accounts, okay? Like this accounts. And inside this, we're going to say if sub accounts like this and where this is basically converting it into a boolean all right a strict boolean question mark if this exists we'll do something if not we'll do something else okay and in here we want to say if sub accounts dot map we're going to get access to the sub accounts and in here we're going to return um if default open is true question mark we'll return something if not we'll return something else and here we're going to basically return a command item. Okay, a command item like this. And this command item will have a key set to sub And um, what we can do guys is we can actually just copy the sheet close here. Okay, sheet close. Um, or here, yeah, we can copy this default open all the way to the sheet close. Okay, command item. Yeah, I think this should be good. So what we will do here is let's go ahead and remove this default open. Let's return this command either way. Okay. And inside this, we'll return this default open link, and then we'll show something. Okay. So in here you want at the bottom, you want to say no accounts found. Okay, or just no accounts. 
And this here is now going to change to sub accounts. And this will this one, all this stuff, so just select everything, will change to sub accounts. Okay. Dot name. And this one specifically will change to a uh, sub account ID, sub account logo, sorry. And up here as well, this will change to sub account logo. And let's refresh that. And we're not going to see anything right now, of course. So we should see um, this. This is just like this is just going to say accounts. Awesome. Okay. Great job. And now we also need to create the ability to create the um, account, right? We have to have that ability. So let me go ahead and build that out. Okay, one more thing. One more thing, guys. We have to change this also to sub account. Sorry, I missed that out. So sub account, sub account. Yes, and everything else should be good. I think. Yeah, you can change this to sub account logo. All right, and after this, you want to go to the bottom of the command list and you want to say the following. So you want to say user dot role equal to equal to agency or user dot role equal to agency admin. So wrap that in a bracket. Then you want to say and turn a button with a plus icon. Let's refresh the page and that should render. Okay, awesome. So this will basically show a create button. Now, when we click on this create button, we should actually show a modal on the screen. So if you you see this example when you click on this create button it shows a modal and you can create an account now a lot of people use a library like zoo stand to man maintain the state we're not gonna do that guys we're gonna build a library like that from scratch so that we can maintain modal data across our entire application how amazing is that right so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your providers and create a modal provider file okay go ahead and create a modal provider file and this is going to have that new thing that we're going to create okay so create an interface called modal provider props pass in children which is react dot react node and make sure you put use client up top and then you want to create a modal data so anytime you want to create a modal and have data pre-populated inside it you have to come in here and you have to create a type so let's just say we were creating a contact so we'd say contact which is optional and import contact from prisma client if you're creating a ticket then you would put ticket in here and so on and so forth that's just how it goes okay for now we just need the user i'm just going to only put user in here and uh, we'll also create the other stuff like sub account let's say agency for now we might need agency right so we're going to say agency which comes from prisma client like this and maybe sub account this is okay for now we'll get back to that if we need to okay and then you want to create a type called modal context type which is equal to data which will have modal data the modal data we just created up top here and then we're going to have is open like this and this is going to be a boolean and then we're going to have set open and this is going to be a function and this function is going to return void so nothing in here but this is going to have the modal which is a react dot react React node and it's also going to have a fetch data function which is optional okay and this is going to be a function that returns a promise of any just like this and after this we're also going to have a set close that we can also close it and we're this is going to just return void awesome and then export const modal context equal to create context from react and this is going to take our modal context type that we just created up here and you're going to invoke and pass in an object to and you're going to say data is an empty object. This is just default stuff. And is open is set to false. And then you want to pass in the set open is set to an empty function that has the modal, which is a react dot react node. OK, we'll just do this here. And for this, we're going to say fetch data is going to be a function here that is optional. And this is going to return promise any like this. OK, and after this, we also need a set close function, which is going to be just a function that returns this. OK, awesome. And then sorry, guys, this is not return. This is just an empty arrow function. OK, sorry about that. And then we're going to create the modal provider. So the provider is equal to react.fc. OK, and we're going to pass in the modal provider props which is equal to this function right here. OK, and I think we made some errors here. This is this. 
and this is going to be equal to this. Sorry about that. And in here, let's destructure the children like this. And inside this, we're going to return null for now. And what we're going to do in here is we're first going to create a const state called you can also use the snippet guy. So you can say is open and here it changes to is open set this to false by default and then import use state from react and then say use state snippet again. And this one is called data and set data and the data is going to be an empty object set to modal data like this. And then we want another one. So you state snippets. This one is showing modal. OK, so set showing modal and set this to null. And this is going to have react dot react node. And after this, finally, we need them is mounted because modals create a lot of hydration errors. So we have to say is mounted like this and set this to false. OK, and this is the same thing we did in the other component, the sheet component, if you guys remember. So use effect pass in an empty dependency array for now. And inside this, we're basically going to set is mounted to true just like this. And after this, go ahead and say const set open equal to an async function, which is going to take in a modal which is react dot react node node like that. And it's also going to take in a fat data function, which is optional. And this is just going to be a function that returns promise of any. And in here, we're going to say if modal exist, we're going to check if fetch data exist. Then we're going to set data to be this object with everything inside data. But then we're going to invoke this like this. And we're going to say everything inside await fetch data like this. OK, invoke that. And after this, you can pass in or an empty object just like this. OK, and after this, we want to set showing modal to be the modal that, that was provided and then set is open to be true like this. And now after this part down here, we're going to say const set close, which is another function. And all this does is it sets is open to false and it also sets the data to back to an empty object. OK, and now we need to check if not is mounted. We're going to go ahead and return null just like this. And if not, we're going to return the modal context dot provider just like this. And we're going to pass in values, which is an object with the data with set open, set close and is open like this. And inside the provider, we're going to pass in the children as well as the showing modals, the modal that we want to show. That's literally it. Okay. And finally, to use this, now we need to create a hook. You can create another hook folder and you can put it in there. I'm just going to put it in here. Okay. So we're going to say export const use modal equal to an empty function like this. And then const context equal to use context. Invoke that. Let me make sure I import it from use context. Okay. Uh, import it and pass in the modal context. And if there is no context, we want to throw new error saying use modal must be used within the provider. OK, and after this, we're going to return the context. Awesome. And finally, export default the modal provider. There you go, guys. Now you need to go to your your layout file. So go into your root source app, go into layout file in here. OK, and uh, right inside this wrap everything in the modal provider. So put the children component inside like that. And that's basically it. That will wrap everything. OK, and we're also going to need toaster. So I'm going to import toaster from UI to toaster like this because we're going to need this and let's also bring in sonar. I don't know if we're going to use this, but if I just want to try it out and see it's uh, new guys, it's it's new in chat CN. OK, if we need it, we'll come to that. OK, so yeah, now we have this. So now we can go back into our component that we were using. Let me close this right in here and now we can actually open that modal. OK, so let's do a quick test here. So if this one has on click, then we can actually do that. So we need to pass in that on click. And inside here, we're going to basically say sets open. Oh, we have to import it. So go up all the way up top 
uh, right above all of this and say const something equal use modal and invoke that like this. Let's bring this down. Okay. And in here, we're going to get set open. And I think that's pretty much about it. We'll only need this for now. And let's go down to the button. And now we need to say set open, invoke that, and we're going to pass in a custom modal. Okay. Now this component comes from the globals folder. So go into global, create a file, call it custom modal.tsx. Okay. And let's just return this. And in here, also, I'm going to let me just change this to custom modal like that. And we're going to add some props. So we need the title, which is going to be a string. We need subheading. So I'm going to say subheading like this, which is also going to be a string. And then we're going to need a couple more. So children, which is going to be react dot react node, we're going to need default open, which is going to be Boolean. And now we can destructure that stuff from here. Okay. And now in here, we need to get access to the use modal hook. So we're going to say use clients up top. Let's come in here now. And after this, we're going to say const is open equal to use modal invoke that. And we're also going to need the set close in here. Okay. And let's change this to the dialogue component from UI dialogue like this. And we're going to say open is equal to is open or default open. Okay. And then on open change is going to be equal to set close. And in here, we're going to pass in the dialogue content which comes from UI dialogue like this. And this is going to have a class name. So I'm going to quickly put that in here. Class name of overflow scroll from medium devices. Max height is going to be 700 pixels. Okay. And then from medium devices, height is going to be fit like this. And height is going to be screen on mobile and background is going to be card. And inside the content, let's use the dialogue header like this. And inside the header, we're going to have a dialogue title and the title. Uh, so first let me give this some styling. So for the header, we're going to have padding top of eight text dash left. And the dialogue title is going to have a class name of text dash two Excel font dash bold. I'm just going to change this font dash bold. And inside the title, we're going to pass in the title. And after title, we need dialogue description like this. And let's pass in the subheader, subheading, sorry, not subheader, so subheading. And after the description component, after this, we need to also pass in the children. And that's it for this custom modal component. So let's go back in here now. And we're going to say custom modal. Okay. And we're going to pass in the title. And this title is going to say create a sub account and it's going to have a subheading and the subheading is going to be you can switch between sub accounts. Just put some information here. OK, your agency account and the sub account from the sidebar. OK, just like this. And we can we also need a couple more things, I think, in here. Let's see. Uh, OK, we need to pass in the children component. So now we're going to pass in another component called sub account details, which is basically a copy of the agency details. OK, so what I'm going to do is the reason why I created a separate component is if we ever needed to make some changes to sub accounts, then it's going to cause a big problem. So go into forms. OK, and inside the forms, you're going to create another file called um, sub account details .tsx, And I'm just going to return this or actually I'm going to copy everything in agency details like this. Let's get out of this and in the sub account, I'm going to paste it and we're going to change a bunch of things. Okay. So let's go up top. So we need to change some stuff. Let me see what we need to change. Okay. So the, the sub account details is basically almost exactly the same as the agency details. There's just a couple of things that are changing. For example, we are not creating a new user. Okay. Um, we are also changing the API request. Like we're not deleting the agency, right? We're going to be able to delete only sub accounts from here. And so that's the only thing that's changing. So here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Go to the GitHub. Okay. Save yourself like one hour. Okay. Go to this go to source, go to the components, go to forms, and you're going to find the sub account uh, details right in here. Copy this and we're going to see, I'm going to also explain any differences that are in here. Okay. Some uh, server actions might be different and we're going to build that as well. So let's go in here. Let's copy this. 
and I'm going to shrink this real quick and let's go ahead, remove everything and just paste it. Okay. And let's see what else we need to build. So, okay. We have file upload, which comes from global file upload. Um, what do we have instead? I think we have a different component. Let me see file upload. Okay. So I think we can just say something like this, right? And upsert sub account. This is a new query. So let's go ahead and build this upsert sub account uh, query. Okay. So go into your queries, which is in here and let's bring that out. Out. And let's say export const this equal to an async function. And this one needs a couple uh, props. Okay. So this one needs the sub account. Okay. Like this. So I'm going to say sub account is going to be of type sub account from Prisma client. And in here, we're going to say if there is no sub account dot company email, then we're going to return null and const agency owner is equal to await db dot user dot find first where agency has an ID equal to sub account dot agency ID. And we can hit enter here so we can see clearly. All right. And also the role is agency owner. So we need the agency owner for this agency. Um, and then after this at the bottom, we're going to say if there is no agency owner, we're going to actually throw an error or you can just, uh, yeah, let's just return console dot log error and let's put a nice emoji here. So I like to put the red emoji and just say error with the error message. Oh, actually there's no error message. So yeah, let's just say this. Okay. And then we need to basically basically say const permission ID equal to V4. And you can also use cryptography library, whatever, uh, but we're just going to use V4 const response equal to await DB dot sub accounts dot upsert invoke this. And we're going to pass in where the ID is of type sub account dot ID. And we're going to update the sub account or we're going to create the sub account. And you want to say everything inside sub account, but you want to set the permissions to something else. So we're going to create a new permission with access to true email is going to be set to the agency owner dot email. Okay. And the ID is going to be set to permission ID. And after that, we also need the connect. So we're going to create this and we're also going to connect it to the sub accounts ID where the sub account ID is like this sub accounts dot ID. And then we need the ID to be the permissions ID. So we're just connecting this permission together. Okay. And after connect pipeline, we're going to create a pipeline. We were just creating default data for them. Okay. And this is going to be an object with name with name equal to lead cycle, something like this. And we're also going to create the sidebar options So go in here. Let's see if we can get to that function, uh, which is in here. So click on that and you can go into the queries file. Okay. It's going to take you to that. And this is default data. Okay. These are the sidebar options that we're going to use for the sub account. So copy this array. Okay. I'm just going to copy the whole sidebar options. So copy sidebar options and just paste that in here. So we're just creating up some default sidebar options to show very similar to the agency. Okay. Awesome. I hope this is not too confusing. All right. It's the same repetitive stuff guys. And let's go back in here. So now let's just quickly look at this sub account stuff that we just built and let's see what it is. Okay. And you also have two challenges. Uh, one is the sub account guest. So how do you do this? And this is fine. If you guys don't want to, um, it's not a requirement for the project. Okay. But here's one challenge. Basically the layout.tsx right now will only render once. Okay. I explained that before. So when the page re-renders, it's only going to uh, render once. Okay. And that means if you remove permissions for someone, it's not going to um, show new updated data. So how would you do that? Do some research and see how we can figure that out. Okay. And so what we're going to do in here is it's the same thing. Okay. We have a, the same form schema. There's nothing different here. And, uh, we're just using the sub account logo instead of agency logo. Okay. And then we're going to, you guys can also copy paste this. All right. Copy paste it and follow along with me. If you haven't paused this right now, pause it, copy and paste it and then continue. Okay. And here we're going to create an on submit function, which has that, that form schema. And we're going to create a upsurge sub account query. Okay. We're going to wait for the response. We're going to pass in this data. Okay. Which is data details.id uh, v4 address is going to be 
be value.address. The sub account is going to be this. The city is going to be this. Same thing. Okay. Everything is literally the same. Now, here's one thing I want to point out differently, and I wish I changed this. I didn't actually change it somewhere else. So the details here comes from partial sub accounts. So instead of this, we can actually let me think real quick. Why did we actually do it this way? Because we're going to use this component, not as a modal, but as a form field. Okay. So if you look in here, I'm going to show you what that looks like. If you go into settings, we're actually going to embed that form right in here like this. Okay. So that's why we're not using that modal provider. And after the on submit, so we have something here, what's wrong here, response dot agency ID. I don't think we returned anything here. Did we go at all the way to the bottom? And let's return this. Okay, so now this function would have some return value. Okay, and sub account is response sub account ID is response ID. All right, sorry about that. We just need to change some names there. And yeah, we're just using the toast. We're closing uh, and now we're closing the modal. Okay, so if a modal was used, we're basically closing that modal if you're creating the sub accounts and then we're resetting the form data here. We have a loading state. There's nothing different. It's the same exact thing. Okay, copy paste this. You guys are going to be happy. And we're also returning that loading component that we created. Nice. Good stuff, guys. So now let's go ahead and just see what this looks like. So when we create a sub account like this, if we click this, it shows a modal. OK, but now we need to pass in that component. OK, so let's close this. We're passing the custom modal. So let's go ahead and pass in the details, which is the uh, sub account details, I think. Right, right here, sub account details form. And um, we also need to pass in some data in. So that's so just give me one second, guys. Let me uh, see what we need to pass in. OK, so let's go ahead and say agency details is equal to agency details like this. Or we can just uh, pass in. Hmm, let me think. Think, what can we pass in here? Okay, we can just say user dot agency. Yeah, I think this should be good as agency like this, right? What does this need? Okay, as agency. And we also need the user ID, which is going to be user dot ID. And we can pass this as string. Okay. And then finally, we need one more, which is the user name which is also going to be user dot name. All right. It's not causing any issues. Yeah. So now when we create, let's see what happens. Custom modal is throwing an error. Default open prop is missing. Okay. This default open is optional. Forgot about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. And now if we create this, okay. So it went behind this. That's probably something we need to actually fix. Uh, let me go up here first and let's turn off this open. So remove this, undo this. So now we can actually control that state. So yeah, here it's going to work, but on the mobile device, it's not working because we have to close this. So we need to set is open to something else. Okay. Let me think how we can do that. I think we would have to wrap this component. Yeah, we would have to wrap this in the sheet close. Let's see. So I'm going to say sheet close. And let's put this button into this. Okay. Let's give that 400 milliseconds. <laughs> let's click on this. And if you hit this, all right, there we go. Awesome. Okay. So now it's showing the sub account and you can go ahead and create a sub account. How awesome is that? Check this out, right? Okay. Let me see if it closes for, okay. It's not closing for, okay, great. It's not closing for the desktop. I didn't want that to happen. That would be bad. Yep. All right. Nice. Yeah. So you see the power of this new custom modal creator, right? It looks amazing and we can use it for any component. You just have to pass in a new form every single time. And that's how we can build a uh, different forms for each item. Okay. Awesome. All right. Now, after this popover right here, go ahead and create a paragraph tag and give it the following class names, which is text dash muted dash foreground text dash XS and margin bottom of two. So we're going to say menu links after this paragraph. Just go ahead and use the separator and you can give that a class name of margin bottom of four. And after this, you want to use the nav tag. Okay. Give it the class name of relative. And inside this, we're going to use the command component and in, uh, inside this, give it a class name of rounded. Let's give it large and then overflow hidden or actually overflow visible. Okay. And then you want to give it a background of transparent and inside this command, we're going to create a command input. 
and give it a placeholder of search. And this is basically for all the navigation components, okay? After this, go ahead and create a command list. Give it a class name of padding bottom of 16, overflow of visible. And inside this, we want to create the command empty. And uh, the command empty is going to have, so we're just going to say no results found. And then command group, give it a class name of overflow visible inside this command group we're going to have our sidebar option so sidebar options dot map okay we're going to get the sidebar option like this just to return null for now okay and before this we're going to say let a value const result equal to icons dot find and this icons you have to import it from our uh, from our constants file dot find where for that specific icon we want to say where the icon dot value is equal to sidebar options dot con okay and once we find the results we're going to say if results value is equal to the result dot path now in here right after this we're going to return something so we're going to return a command item and the command item is going to have a link component and now let's set the props for these components so for the command item go ahead and say key equal to sidebar options dot id and the class name is for medium devices we want the width to be 320 pixels and then we want width to be full and then for the link we're going to say href is equal to sidebar option uh, where, why is it not showing up okay this is because we said sidebar options when in reality this is a sidebar option that's okay sidebar options dot link the class name is going to be flex item center gap dash two hover bg dash transparent and after that we want to say rounded dash md transition all md with dash full so for medium devices and then width is supposed to be by default 320 pixels and inside the link we're going to put the value and we're going to create sorry we're going to put value like this and we're going to create a span with the sidebar option so we'll say sidebar options dot name. Okay, awesome. There you go. And I see something wrong with the background color. So go into the command item. Area selected is BG accent. We're going to change that to primary. And let's refresh this and see what it shows. Okay, so much better. And on the large device, okay, it goes underneath. Perfect. It is text dash accent dash foreground. We're going to change that to text dash white. Okay. And we're going to set one more. So for area selected, we're going to say font bold. Okay, so let's close this. And there you go. Now you can see looks really cool. And also the search looks a little weird. So let me see if we can fix that as well. So what we'll do is let's go into the input and see if we can change this input item as well. Okay. Okay. So right here, guys, where we have this div is the wrapper for everything. What we're going to do is after this, we're going to say dark uh, BG dash muted. OK, so now it should. There we go. And let's also give it a rounded of MD. Let's see. All right. That looks good. It looks like it has some extra padding, but that's fine. You guys can do whatever adjustments you like to make it look exactly like what you want. OK, now let's give this some padding as well. So I'm going to go back in there where our list starts. We're going to just set the padding Y four should be just perfect or two. All right, this looks good, right? Awesome. So now you can actually search for items. You can search for a launch pad. So let's say in the future, if you gave the user the ability to create sidebar options for their sub accounts, right? Let's say they wanted to show some custom pages or something, they can actually do this, all right? And you can make this insanely powerful. For example, let's say if you created a funnel, you can take the, the hosted page and you can host that page inside an iframe, right? That would be insanely powerful because now the user can literally create whatever they want for their sidebar items. How awesome is that, right? All right, awesome guys. So let's go ahead and move on to creating the info bar and our blur page. All right, so go ahead and open your directory. You want to go into our layout page, which is inside main agency, agency ID, and the layout page that we were using. And this layout page in here is going to have the info bar, which we'll get to in a second. 
And after the info bar, it's going to have another div. And this is going to have a class name set to relative. Let's take these children items and we're going to create this blur page component. And inside this, we're going to pass in the children items. Okay. And now you want to open up the global components. So go into global and we're going to create a blur dash page dot TSX. And we're going to say TypeScript RAFCE blur page like this. And this blur page is going to get access to the children, which is react dot react node. And we're just going to extract the children prop from here. And we're going to return that in here. Okay. And let's go back and import the blur page that we just created. Let's go back into this. And now you should see all the children. All right. Awesome. So you see even the padding, everything is created. So now we just have to create that blur page. So in here, just give it a class, just follow through with me. Okay. So let's go into source into components. Let's go into global and we're going to find that blur page. So go ahead and copy this entire class name till the end. And let's paste that class name for this div right here. Awesome. That's it. And if you want to know how that works, it's because this component here is absolute. Okay. And we made top right and left zero. Um, and we brought it in front. Okay. And the wrapper inside the layout pushes this component by 300 something pixels. So that's how it doesn't get, you know, blocked. It doesn't get hidden under this. Okay. Awesome. Now that's about it for the blur page. Let's go back to that component. And now we have to also provide the other one, which is the info bar. So above this relative, we're going to create the info bar like this. It's a component and it's going to take the notifications and that should be equal to all notifications that we just created. So copy the info bar, go into your globals file and you want to create the info bar dot TSX. And in here, just use a TypeScript RAFCE and change this to info bar just like this. This is going to take the all notifications, the notif notification that we created is equal to an array. So this is actually either an array or notification with user, go ahead, copy this, go into your types file inside libs. And we're going to say export type notification with user. So let's go into this, go into libs, go into types and let's search for that component right here. I'm sorry, that type. So copy this type and paste that in here, import the role from Prisma clients. We have to import this too from Prisma clients go back to the component and let's just import it from our types. And now the role here is going to be optional. We're just going to pass in a string like this. And then we need the class name, which is going to be optional, which is a string as well. And then finally, we're going to need uh, one more, which is the sub account ID, which is going to be a string and go ahead and just bring this, just import all these in here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say const all notifications and set all notifications equal to use state and pass in the notifications we just got in and let's import this use state and change the component to use clients. Okay, nice. And after this, we're going to say const show all and set show all equal to use state again with false as a default value, um, or we can say true because we want to show it by default here. We're going to return a react fragment. Okay. And we're going to say div with a class name tailwind merge invoke that. And we're going to pass in fixed, or this is a really, really long class. So um, let's go to the source components global, and then let's go into uh, maybe I created somewhere else. I probably created it outside this. Okay. Yeah, don't worry, guys, this will be in sync with our project. Okay, this is going to be slightly different. Okay, so yeah, you see, this is a pretty long class. So just go in here and copy this tailwind merge thing here and just replace it. Okay, save yourself some time. After this, we're going to create another div in here and give it the following class name. So flex item center gap dash two and margin left of auto gap dash two. All right. And inside this, we want to pass the user button, which comes from clerk. And that is going to have an after sign out URL, which is going to be equal to slash like this. And after this, we want to have a sheet component 
from UI sheet, which um, will have a sheet trigger. This is for the notifications, by the way, if you're curious. Um, and inside the sheet trigger, pass in a div and give this a class name rounded dash full with dash eight and height dash eight bg dash primary flex items dash center justify dash center and then text dash white and inside this div we're going to use a bell icon so the bell icon comes from lucid react and they have so many here so the bell from yeah this one okay pass in the size and set it to 17 all right, let's go back and try to import that info bar. So go in here and let's import info bar like this. And now the info bar might ask for some props, but some of the stuff here are actually optional. So role is optional. Sub account ID is also optional. So when you click this, it has to show the notifications, right? So go down here after the sheet trigger and we need to pass in the sheet content. So we're going to say sheet content from UI sheet with a class name of margin top four, margin right of four, PR of four, flex and flex dash call. Okay. So let's say sheet header and give this a class name of text dash left. And let's have the sheet title and say notifications. Okay notifications and then we want to have the sheet description like this and this description will have um, a quick check in here so we're going to say if role equal to agency underscore admin let's let's use a different thing in here so we're going to say role from prisma client so we get some typescript so agency admin so if it's equal to the agency admin or role equal to agency owner, then we're going to say and, and we're going to return a card component from UI card. Okay, cool. And give this a class name of flex items center justify between and padding of four. Okay, nice. And now we want to pass in the some text in here. So we're just going to say current sub account. And then we're going to have a switch here, which comes from UI switch. And we're going to pass in on check change handle click, which we can just create up top. So const, okay, this is equal to a function up here. And let's quickly go and just build out the logic for this function too. So this function is going to say if not show, if um, the opposite of show all is true, then we want to set all notifications to notifications. Else we want to see if notifications dot length is not equal to zero and if this is true then we're going to say set all notifications to be notifications dot filter where the item has item dot sub account id is equal to the sub account id and then at the end you can do this and just put this array in here okay nice and after all of this after this we're going to say set show all to something like this an arrow function and the previous value with the opposite of previous value like this okay good so now when you click here it shows something and let's scroll to the bottom here let's refresh this page actually okay so we said this this should actually show us the card component why do i not see it let me see all right so the reason why this is happening is if there are no notifications right then we are returning that so that's the problem and in here just to make sure we are we are returning the response but we are not getting any notifications right because there's none so we have to show some message in there so that's the reason why i think uh, so let's go back in here and what we're going to do is yeah we can pass this in here okay so let's go into the component and let's quickly show all the notifications in here okay so scroll down right after the sheet header you want to say all notifications dot map invoke that and we're going to get the notification okay like this and once we get this we are going to say div and this div is going to have the key set to notification.id. And we're going to pass in a class name of flex, flex dash call, and then gap dash y dash two, margin bottom of two, 
overflow dash x overflow dash x dash scroll text dash ellipse like this for inside this we're going to have a div with a class name set to flex gap dash two and we're going to pass in the avatar component from ui avatar with the avatar uh, image set to source src set to the notifications dot user dot avatar url and then we need to also pass in the alt tag we're just going to say profile picture and after this avatar image i'm just going to close this tag avatar fallback like this with a class name set to bg primary okay and then inside this we're going to have notification dot user dot name dot slice so we're only going to get the first two letters zero to two dot two uppercase and just invoke that so we're not going to see anything right here of course after the after this avatar go ahead create a div with a class name of flex flex dash call and inside this ap tag you can pass in a span give it a class name of font dash bold the first one is going to have notification dot notification dot split at that pipe that we created so split at the pipe but we're going to take the first section okay and just duplicate this three times and in here this one is going to have text dash muted dash foreground and this one is going to be the first one and then this one can be text dash xs um, actually this one can just be font bold it's fine and we're going to take take the second element and after the span, after this P tag, create a small tag here and say class name text dash excess uh, text dash muted dash foreground. We want to say notification dot created at and we're going to pass this into new date. So new date like this. OK, new date. OK, and then we're going to say dots to local date string. Just invoke this. It's fine. You guys can do any for some cool formatting. Just use chat GPT and get some cool formatting and you can put it in there. OK, and then after this, we're going to say all notifications dot length equal to zero. And we're going to return something. So we're just going to say div flex items center justify center and margin bottom of four. And inside this, we're going to go ahead and say you have no notifications. Now, if you click this, you're going to see you have no notifications. And let's also make this uh, text dash muted dash foreground. So let's go back to our components. Okay, let's shrink this it's not letting me shrink. Okay, so our nav bar works You can close that you can also search through here. And let's go back into our agency ID layout.tsx and just make sure everything looks good in here. Yeah, I think everything is good. All right, great job, guys. So now we're going to move on to creating each and every page uh, to show all the all the cool data and things like that. All right. Now, here's your next challenge. OK, so go ahead and open your directory, shrink everything so it's easier. Go into source, into app, into main, into agency and for each agency. So that means inside the agency ID, you are going to create new paths. So what is the requirement of this challenge right now? As you can see, we can access the agency for a specific agency ID. But what I also want to access is the settings page, for example, or I want to access a team page like this. So you need to basically create directories which will render out a component in here if it was like this in the nav bar. Go ahead and give this a shot, okay? This is how you get better by simply guessing and failing and trying, okay? So pause this video, give this a shot. If you don't know how to do it, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you in just two seconds. Go ahead and give this a shot. All right, awesome. So the first page we will be building is the settings page. And before that, I wanna make a quick change to our info bar. So go into our info bar, which is inside the global components folder. And we need to add one more icon here. So first, I'm going to change this to width and height nine. So they're equal to the same height and width. OK, it looks slightly better. And now after this bell icon, we need to add something in here. OK, so after user buttons, I'm just going to shrink this sheet. After this, I'm going to use the mode toggle uh, button in here. So then uh, that way I can also change the, the toggle, the, the theme, OK, directly inside. And yes, of course, this is completely compatible for all uh, dark mode and light mode devices. OK, um, awesome. So, yeah, now that we made that change, let's go back to the settings page, which is in here. P 
page.tsx and now we're just going to build this out. So for this, we're going to need two things. First is the agency details or the sub account details. And then we need to also show the user details so the user can change their user information. And the user details is literally the same thing, guys. Okay. There's only one thing that is different, which is the most crucial thing. And I will get to that, which is the, uh, the permissions for each user. Okay. And I'll show you how to do all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so what we want to do in here first is we're going to get access to the params, which is um, going to have going to consist of the agency ID, okay, which is going to be a string. So let's go in here and extract params. And um, I, I think, yeah, I think that's all we need for now. So we're going to say const auth user equal to await current user, which comes from clerk. And if there's no auth user, we're just going to return. Okay, we'll return null. It's fine. And um, this needs to be an async component. So let's change that. And then we're going to say const user details equal to await db dot user. This is the power of server side components. You can actually make API calls directly in the component. Okay. So user dot find unique. Okay. Where email is of type auth user dot email addresses at zero dot email address. If there's no user details, Oops, we spelled this wrong. That's why if there's no user details, we're just going to return uh, null again. And after this, if this exists, we're going to see we're going to say agency details equal to await DB dot agency dot find unique unique like that, where ID is going to be params dot agency ID. And we also want to include all the sub accounts in here. So we're going to say sub account true. Awesome. And then we're going to go to the bottom here and we're going to say if there is no agency details, then we're just going to return null. And then finally, we're going to say const sub accounts equal to agency details. We're just extracting it from there. Okay. You can just, you can destructure directly here if you'd like, but um, if this is null, it's going to cause a problem. So that's why I'm doing it like this. After this, we need to return that component. So go in here and for this div, pass in a class name, say flex from large devices. We're going to make this important and say flex dash row. And we're going to say flex dash column on mobile devices. And then we're going to say gap dash four. And now in here, we're going to pass in the agency details that we created. And we need to pass in the following uh, stuff, which is data is going to be equal to agency details. And then we need to also create a new form called user details. Okay. And we're going to get to this in just a second. So let's just pass in um, the stuff in here. We're just going to say type equal agency and then ID equal params dot agency ID. So we're going to, this is going to work for both sub accounts and the agency. That's why we need this. That's why we're passing it in here. Okay. And then we're going to say sub accounts are going to be equal to sub accounts. And then user data is going to be equal to user details. So let's go ahead and copy this component and let's go into our forms and let's create user dash details dot tsx and in here just return a component and let's change this to user user details and let's go back and just quickly import this component now let's go into this component again and in here we're going to pass in the id which is going to be a type of string or null we need to pass in the type which is going to be of type either agency or it's going to be of type sub account like this and then we need the user data which is going to be optional which is going to be partial of user, which comes from Prisma clients. Okay. Not clerk. And then the sub accounts, which is also optional, which is going to be of type sub account from Prisma client. And it's going to be an array. And here we can go ahead and just destructure all this stuff. So first we need the sub account permissions. Okay. And then set sub account permissions. Let's come in here. Permissions like this equal to use state. Let's import that. And we're going to say this is going to be a special type, which we're going to get to in just a second. We're just going to pass in null for now. And then um, this one right here, we're going to let's go ahead and actually create that type. So it's going to be user with permissions and sub accounts. It's a little long, but um, it's OK. <laughs> so let's go to the same folder structure in the GitHub repository and let's click on this user uh, with permission stuff and let's go into that types and let's go ahead and copy this and let's go into our types folder, which is inside libs types like this. And let's go ahead and export. Actually, we already copied that. Yeah, 
And now this is actually a function. It's a server action. Let's go ahead and get that server action. So click on that, go to the queries and let's also understand before we copy paste. Like it's very simple, nothing crazy. Okay. Go into queries at the bottom of this, go ahead and um, just paste that. Okay. So what is this? We're going to get the user permission with a specific user ID, literally nothing but going to the database, going into user, finding unique where the ID is like this, and we're going to get the permissions. So we're going to select permissions and we're going to include the sub accounts. So all the sub accounts that the user has permissions to access. Okay. And now inside the types, go ahead and import it. And let's go back into our component as well. And you're going to see that error here. So we can import that, um, that permission uh, type. Okay. And then we want to set or null. So two different types here. Easy, right? <laughs> Not too complex. Now we also need this, which is coming from use modal. So we're going to import this and we're going to get access to data and set close. So this is an example of how we can use that, that data stuff that we just created from um, our custom provider, right? Which is really, really helpful. So const role state. So we're, we're just going to create some stuff in here too, which is role state and set role state is equal to use state invoke this. And we're just going to pass it nothing for now. And then we need the const loading. So I'm going to use a snippet here and just say loading permissions. Okay. Like this and set this to set loading permissions. And this is going to be false. And then finally at the bottom here, we're going to say const toast equal use toast from UI use toast and just invoke that. And then we also need router router equal use router, which comes from next navigation. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get the auth user details in here. Okay. Um, so we're going to get the information also one more state. So let's go ahead and create the state const auth user data and set auth user data equal to use state invoke that. And we're going to pass in a new custom type in here. Okay. And we can copy that in just a second. So just say null right now, go back to that exact file. And we're going to copy this type here. It's a really long name. I rather prefer a long name than name that has no information. Okay. And can put that in here or say or null and let's go into click on this. It's going to show you this, go to the types, which has that type in there. And let's copy this entire thing. Let's go to the type. I'm just going to click this to get a shortcut and I'm going to scroll to the bottom and just paste that in here. Okay. And now this is get auth user details, which we already created. So I'm just going to import that right here. So now this will actually get all the types and it will do it automatically. So this is really, really helpful here. So let's go back and quickly import that. And now let me close this and let's go back to our component. Okay. Now that we have this, we can now go ahead and get the auth user details. So say use effect, invoke it, pass it an empty dependency for now. Actually, let's pass in the data that we get in um, from, from the modal. And in here, we're going to say if data dot user, we're going to say const fetch details equal to async. So it's a function and we're just going to fetch the details down here. So I'm just going to call this async function, async function. After this, I'm just going to invoke this like this. Awesome. And inside this, I'm just going to say const response equal await get user, get auth user, user details, invoke that. And now we're going to say if the response exists, okay, just copy this and paste it in here. If response exists, we're going to set auth user details equal to the response just like this. Awesome. So now we have that data store. So when this component renders, we will have all the data stored um, directly in here. And now after this, we're going to go ahead and create a form schema. So this is redundant stuff. We already did this the first time. So it's the same thing. Let's go in here and copy this. It's called user data schema. And we can paste that. Um, we can paste that here. It's okay. So go in here and paste it like this. And let's import Z from Zod. Okay, nice. And now let's scroll down here and let's say const form equal use form invoke that and pass in Z dot infer put in another angular bracket and say type of user data schema. So I'm going to copy this paste it in here. And in here we're going to pass in resolver is going to be Zod resolver guys. And if you want more information, how we did this exactly, and you need some help to understand even more, the previous video does a, a much in-depth a breakdown of every single thing. So if you need some help, just go to our YouTube page and there's a full breakdown of an amazing application that we built 
last time. Go take a look at that. Everyone loved it. I'm sure you're going to love it too. So here I'm going to say default values and the default values is just an object. And all the default values are is the user data. Okay. If it exists that, uh, let's put that data in here, or we want to uh, populate it with anything that's in the modal and same thing. If we passed in something, we're going to use that. Uh, actually this user data comes from, yeah, it comes from the props. Okay. So if it's passed in, we're going to use that. If not, we're going to use anything that comes in from here. Same exact thing for every single thing. Okay. After this, we're going to have another use effect and this is going to get the permissions. So we're going to say use effect like this. Okay. Pass in a dependency with the data and the form. Okay. So in this form updates and in here, we're going to say if there is no data dot user return. And then we're going to say const permissions equal to an async function. And let's quickly get permissions invoke this here. And inside this function, we're going to say const permission equal await get user permissions, invoke that and pass in data dot user dot ID is potentially undefined. So what we'll do here is we can just say if data dot user does not exist return. Yep like this, we can just return this. Okay. And then here we're going to say set sub account permissions to be permissions. Okay. Awesome. So we're just setting that and we are also getting the data here. Nice. Awesome. And then finally we need to do a reset. We already did this last time. So let's go in here, copy this. It's just a reset, paste that in here. Nice. And then this part is a little complex. So we will, we will break this down. Okay. And the on submit is pretty straightforward as well. So I'll just copy the on submit and I'll explain that to you. So we can delete this and we can just say console.log error, something like this. Okay. So let me import this. And this is going to be sub accounts ID. So um, we have to create this function. So basically what is this doing? It's saving the user information. If the user data exists or data dot user exists, then what we're doing is we're just absurding the values. So everything that's going to be in the form, which is going to be all this, all this stuff in here. And you can see what it looks like in here, right? All this, the name, the profile picture, email, and the roles, right? See, I cannot change it here because I'm the owner. So all this logic. So basically we're going to um, give the ability to change that. Okay. And that is stored inside values when you submit. And we're simply going to go ahead and upsert the value upsert. If you don't know what that means, upsert is update if it exists or create if it doesn't. Okay. Very straightforward. And, um, so what we're doing here is we're saying auth user details dot agency dot sub accounts dot filter. Okay. Um, where this one, okay. We're going to filter for the auth user data permissions, and we're going to filter for each of the permissions and for each of them, we're going to create an activity log. Okay. So, uh, we're just creating some things saying updating this person's information, just like this. All right. Pretty straightforward. And then if the updated user, so if we successfully updated the user, we're just showing a toast message and closing the modal if it is open. Okay. And then we're just doing router dot refresh and same thing here. If not, we're going to throw an error, just show a toast saying cannot update and uh, show an error message at the bottom. Okay. So let's go ahead and create this. And this is also a very, very straightforward function. So let's copy this. Let's not waste time. So click on that, click on this uh, function from the queries, go ahead and copy this. Okay. And we'll look at this in just a second. And let's go back into our queries file, scroll to the bottom and let's paste it. So const update user just requires partial user because it's update. Okay. And then we want to, we don't need this anymore because we're not even using it. And we're going to say const response equal await db.user.update where this is true. Okay. We're just going to update the user because why are we updating? Because the user is already created, but, um, but yeah. And then, um, update, is it upsert or update? What do we use here? Oh, this is update. Sorry guys. But anyway, I already explained what <laughs> upsert means. And that makes sense because we don't need to create the user anymore. And here we're saying await clerk client dot user dot update their uh, update the user metadata. Okay. And we're going to say for this ID, okay. For this response ID, which is basically the user, we're going to change their private metadata to whatever was changed, whatever was changed in here. Um, or whatever was provided, or we're going to, going to set them to the sub account user if nothing was provided. Okay. And we're just returning. That's it. So let's go ahead 
and import this. And that's literally it for this function. Now let's go back into the browser so we can see what we're building. So let's go to the bottom. Let's remove this and we're going to return a card. Okay. From UI card. And this is going to have a class of width full. And inside this, we're going to have the card header. Okay. And inside the card header, we'll have card title. And after this, we'll have card description. And the card title is going to say user details. And the description is going to say add or update your information. And after the header, we'll have the card content. Make sure I imported it. Okay, from the correct place. Nice. <laughs> and then inside this, we're going to have a form component with everything in from the form. And inside this, let's go ahead and have the form with on submit set to form dot handle submits, invoke this and pass in the submit handler. We just created this on submit in here. Okay. Like that. And what is this saying? Form is not defined. Let's import that from UI form. Okay. Much better. And um, this is also going to have a class name set to space dash Y dash four. Okay. And inside this form, we're going to have each and every form field. You already know how to do this. Okay. So by the way, now if we click on settings, let's see what happens. Okay. We see some error errors in here because we didn't make this a use client component. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Awesome. There we go. We see it. It looks great already. I mean, we see a bunch of stuff, right? So let's scroll down and it's the same thing, guys. We're just creating forms again. So since we already built the first form, I'm going to go ahead and copy each form field. So click on this form field inside the form and do this with me. Okay. Do this carefully with me because we're going to ignore only this one part. Okay. So copy it till the email, copy it like that and just replace whatever, uh, just insert this inside this form. Okay. And now you can scroll on top and just copy the import statements for the form. So copy this scroll up top and I'm going to go to the bottom and just paste it in here and the form file upload. Let's go ahead and import that too. And we have an input which we need to upload uh, import as well. And that should solve that problem. And now if you look in here, you can see we have that stuff, the user's avatar and things like that. So what are we trying to build here? What we're trying to build is um, it's a special type of um, component here called the role. Okay. This one right here. So this role is actually pretty crucial. We don't want the owner to end up changing their role. So that's one thing we need to create in there. Okay. And the other one is uh, going to be the save. And also if it is an agency owner, Okay. If it's an agency owner, we're going to use the same form to actually change the team member settings. So let's go into team. Oh, this is actually not the one let's go into team here. And there's a bunch of team members here. If you edit this, you can see, you can actually change each user's access to each and every sub account and they will, they will see this. Okay. They will see, uh, they will see their sub accounts in here, only the things they have access to. So that's what we're trying to build. So that's all that also needs some logic, right? We can't just show it to everyone. So how do we do that? So in here, first, let's go ahead and create the select component, go ahead and say form field. And this form field is going to have disabled set to form dot form state dot is submitting. And you can actually create this uh, up top here. Let me do that. Oh, we also did it everywhere. Okay. It's fine. And, um, this is going to have the control set to form dot control. And then we're going to have name set to role. And then we want to have the render prop set to a arrow function, which gives us access to the field. So I'm going to get that from there. And for this, I'm going to return the form item component like this. And the form item component is going to have the class name set to flex dash one to just to take maximum width. And then inside this form label is going to be user user role. And these inside this, we're going to use the select component. And if you don't know how to use this stuff, go into shad and UI and you can see all the components in here. Click on select. Where is that select? And you can see the code. Okay. This is what we're trying to build the select component. And you can see the code here. It's very simple component. Okay. It's a very simple component. You can just copy everything and paste if you'd like. Okay. So let's go back here and let's say select and import it from UI select. And we're going to set the disabled prop equal to form dot form state dot is submitting is submitting like this. Awesome. 
And we also need one more, which is on value change, which is going to give us access to an arrow function, which gives us the value. So we're going to take that value and we're going to say if value equal to sub account user, I actually want to copy this because I don't want to make an error in that spelling. So we can go in here and I'm just going to copy this one here. And I'm going to say if the value is equal to sub account user or sub account guest, okay? We're going to set role state to be um, this, which is just a string. You have to have sub accounts to assign sub account access to the team members. And then else we're going to say set role, set role state to be empty, okay? And then after this, we're going to say field dot on change. We're going to put the value in here. So it changes and then we can save that data. Okay. And then the next prop we need is actually called default value, which is going to be set to field dot value like this. Okay. And inside this, we're inside the select, we're going to say form control select trigger. Okay. Let me make sure I imported this in the correct. Okay. It's the correct place. And inside this select value. Okay. Let's save that. And in here, we're going to say placeholder select user role dot 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 like this. And inside the value, we're going to, oh, we don't have to actually, yeah, this component will automatically show everything. So you can just set it like that. Okay. Nice. And inside after the form control, so hit enter and say select content from UI select content. Did I import something from the wrong folder? Oh, uh, there we go. See, I knew it guys. So let's go ahead and remove this and let's import this from UI select. And then we want to use the select item from UI select item. And we're going to set the value equal to agency admin. And we're going to say agency admin. Okay. And the same thing, we're creating multiple different um, options, but one option is going to be hidden, which is the user uh, which is the user, um, the ad, so the agency, <laughs> agency owner. Okay. So if data dot user, okay. If this exists, this is undefined here. So I'm just going to put this, if data dot user dot role equal to agency owner or user data dot role equal to agency owner, then we're going to return a select item. Okay. A specific select item. And this one is going to have value set to agency underscore owner. And in here, we're going to say agency owner. After this item, we're going to say select item value is going to be equal to sub account. So same thing. So I'm going to go in here. It's just literally the same thing. So sub account user and sub account guest. Okay. So let's replace this and paste that in here and awesome. And then after this entire select component, just have a P with the class name of text dash muted dash foreground. And we're going to say role state. So it's just going to give us some information in there. Okay. And now let's see what we have. So if you see this, we can change this, even though I am the agency owner, which is bad because now I can actually change my state. Okay. So inside this select, we have the disabled prop. Um, okay. So this disabled is if it is submitting, but this has to be different. So since we already have that here, we don't need this. We're going to say field dot value equal to agency owner. Then we're actually not going to give the user. There we go. Okay. So now you can't change this because the user is just going to change their, their info. We do not want that to happen. Okay. After this, we're going to create a button. This is just a submit button. Okay. Uh, but there's a couple more things in here because we need to also have the access. So if you see this, we have the access control, right? Right here, right here at the bottom, we have the access control with the predefined values. We need to also provide that. So um, let's go ahead and quickly build that out. Not too complex. So let's say button. Okay. And let's also see what we're building. So button like this, this button comes from UI button. And we're going to say disabled is equal to form dot is sorry, form dot form state dot is submitting. Okay. And then we're going to have the type equal to submit inside this. We're going to say form dot form state dot is submitting. If this is true, we're going to return something or we're going to return something else. Okay. So if this is true, we're going to return our custom loading component from here, or we're going to return save user details after this button in here. Now we're going to return 
all the other stuff. So in here, we're going to say auth user data dot role. If this is equal to agency owner, only then we're going to give the ability to change all this stuff. Okay. So we're going to just return a div and we'll, we'll uh, put a separator in here. And the separator is going to have a class name of margin Y of four. And after this, we're going to use a form label form label and we're going to say user permissions and after this a form description like this and I'm just going to copy this so first I'll give this a class name okay class name of margin bottom of four and let's go in here to github copy this description it's just text okay just put lorem ipsum if you want it's fine but um, if you want to put this on your resume I think it's better to have some design right so at least some meaningful information so users who's using it can actually see okay Cool. And after this, we're going to use a div here with a class name of flex, flex dash column and gap dash four. Okay. And inside this, we're going to render all the sub accounts. So sub accounts, sorry, sub accounts dot map for each of them for each sub account, we're going to return something. So let's do this. And inside this, we're going to say sub accounts, sorry, const sub account permissions details equal to sub account permissions um from here dot so question mark dot permissions dot find okay where the permission so i'm just going to say p this is easier and we're going to say where p dot sub account id is equal to sub account dot id and if this uh, once we get this data we're going to return a div like this and let's pass in the key and the key is going to be sub account dot id and in here we're also going to give this a class name we're going to set it to flex flex dash call flex dash call let's see what we're building to okay flex dash column and um items dash center and then we need justify between and then rounded lg and border of uh, yeah, just put border and P4. Okay. And inside this, we'll go ahead and return a div. Okay. It's not letting me close that automatically. And let's go ahead and put a P tag and inside this sub account dot name. And after this, create a div, uh, create a, um, what do you call that? A switch. Okay. So after this one, create a switch, SWTCH switch from UI switch. And we're going to set its disabled property equal to loading permissions. We're going to set the checked value to be equal to sub account permissions details if this exists dot access and then we're going to say on checked change is going to be a function which gives us access access to permission and in here we're going to say on change permission which we need to create okay so let's go up top scroll up top here actually let me just put on change permission okay and i'm going to copy this function go up top here and I'm going to paste that right above this so const on change permission equal to async function and we're going to get access to the following so what we need is the sub account ID which is going to be a string we need a string like this we need the value which is going to be a boolean we need the permission ID so we're going to say permission SSI ONS permissions ID which is going to be a string or undefined now we got to pass that in or it's going to scream where is that okay okay so invoke this and now we need to pass in the sub accounts dot id and then permission i made a spelling error here so i'm just going to change that the permission and then the sub account permission details dot id go back up here and let's uh complete this function so if there's no data dot user dot email then we're just going to return and we don't need this let's shrink one more line okay and we're going to set loading permissions to true. And in here, we're going to say const response equal await change user permissions. And this is a new um, action which we're going to create. Permissions ID. If this exists, we're going to pass in the permissions ID from here. Or we're going to pass in v4. Let's import that and just invoke it. A lot of people actually rename this to UUID. You can do that if you want to. And then data.user.email. We don't need this actually. Data.user.email. Okay, something is wrong. Okay, we just need to put a comma there. And sub account ID. And then finally the value. So this is going to be value. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this. Let's go into our queries file. And we're just going to create um, this change user function. Okay, so this change user function is going to be right here. So I'm just going to close this so you guys can see. So export const is going to be 
an async function so async function and this is going to take in the following so permission permission id which is going to be a string or undefined like this okay permission id user email is going to be a string we have the sub account id which is going to be a string as well we're going to pass in the permission which is going to be boolean and we need to put this comma here so here we're simply going to say try catch okay and we're going to say const response equal await db dot permissions dot upsert okay upsert where id is equal to permission id update the following so we're going to update the access set to permission or we're going to create the permission like this and we're going to create access equal permission and then we need email equal user email and sub account id is going to be sub account id and then just go ahead and return the response like this and let's also console.log let's put a red emoji could not change permission and just paste the error message now let's go ahead and import this um, this action in here so import the action and now we have access to that so in here after we change the permission we also want to check if the type equal to agency so that we can save an activity log okay right here let's go ahead and just copy this so do the same thing okay copy and paste and go ahead and import that okay and sub account id so basically we're saving an activity log for the agency id like this and then the description is gave user data dot name and access to um whichever sub account they got access to okay and we're going to put the sub account id we're going to link it to that so that even the sub account can see that and after this we're going to say if response then we're going to return a toast just a simple toast message and then here inside this if statement if the sub account permissions exist then sub account permissions dot permissions dot find oops i forgot to put the closing bracket okay dot find where the uh, i'm just going to say perm as in permission and if the perm dot sub account sub account id equal to our sub account id then we're going to return everything inside perm but the access is going to be set to something else so we're going to say access is going to be opposite of perm.access and um, something looks wrong here oh we also need to return i think so return perm like this okay something is wrong here guys let me fix this what's what's up what's happening okay nothing just this <laughs> finally after this response if nothing exists we're going to return the error toast which we also have here saying destructive fail could not update the permission of the user so now you will not see this in here, but from the teams, when you create the user, you will actually see that, okay? This actually looks so good, guys. If you put this on your resume, you are going to get hired, man. No way. Like, I actually sent this to one of my clients as well, and they were very excited. Alrighty. So after this else in here, say router.refresh, and then you want to set the loading permissions to false. So now, because we have already changed it. Awesome then what else what else do we have to do i think we did everything guys i think we already finished it this looks absolutely amazing and we're already there we're getting there we're almost there okay we finished the settings so let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next part now hey guys just a quick announcement for our free freelance course so if you want access to that just listen up one of the most important skills as a web developer apart from the web development stuff is knowing how to freelance and how to make money on your own. And there's a lot more benefits that you can gain as a freelancer than doing a nine to five job. Because the problem with only having a job is that you're exchanging your time for small dollars. Now, why do I say small dollars? Well, it's pretty obvious. You only have so much time. Whereas when you freelance, you're basically exchanging your expertise and the value you have to offer for a fixed price. And one of the best rewards that you get out of freelancing, apart from the monetary part, is that you can work from anywhere. 
Like it really is possible. You could sit halfway across the world and deliver the same, if not better results for your clients. And just through freelancing alone, you learn so many things like how to get leads, how to run an entire sales call, how to show somebody your expertise and have them build trust in you to invest in your services. And the best part is you get to work with other people, build a team, and you're building a brand for yourself. So here's what I want to do for you. We have opened up limited spots in our private community. And I want to give you access to this community for free because I want you to start learning. And the fastest way to do it is be a part of a supporting community that's already making money doing freelancing. Be around people who are where you want to be. So I want you to get access to this knowledge because it's not available anywhere else. So I am creating a completely free freelance course to get you guys started. And that course will be available for anybody who is a part of that private community. And here's the best part. If you join before we actually lock this community, every course we release in that community will be completely free for you. Now, here's the criteria. If you join the community, you have to have a display picture because people want to know you and I'm sure you want to know other people. This is not a discord channel. So if you want to just hang around and this is not the place for that, this is the place only for success minded individuals. This is only if you want to meet successful people and see some real progress in your career, please be understanding because we are only opening up limited spots in that community. So if you try to log in and your request gets denied, it's probably because we're either at cap or we're no longer offering this opportunity. If you want to start freelancing and also get personally mentored by me and be a part of a community that is absolutely crushing it in the field of freelancing, scroll down to the description and you are going to find the link there. Click on that and join and I will see you there. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to build is the launch pad. Okay, but I noticed something here. We made a small change. We need to make a small change. We'll just change this to launch pad. Okay, so now when we try to access the launch pad, it does not throw any errors. Okay, so it was throwing an error before. So I'm going to change this to dark mode and now it actually renders the launch pad page. Awesome. So go into the launch pad page and what we're going to return here is simply uh, a div. Let's remove this and put a class name of flex flex dash column. So flex dash column. And we want to say justify center items center. Okay. And inside the div, go ahead and return another div uh, with a class name of width of full height of full. And then max width is going to be 800 pixels. Okay, cool. And inside this, we're going to use a card component from UI card. And then we're going to pass in a class name of border none. And inside the card, we're going to use the card header. Oops, sorry. Header component and then the card title component. And for after that, the card description component like this. And inside the card title, we're going to say, let's get started with an exclamation. And for the description, we're going to say, follow the steps below to get your account set up. Okay. Like this. So this, this way, every time you get a client and they log in inside here, they're going to see this and they're going to start, you know, uh, setting up their stripe and all that kind of stuff. All right. And in the, after the description, we're going to have the card, uh, sorry, right below this card, uh, content. Let me make sure. Okay. We imported it from the correct place and the card content is going to have a class name of flex flex dash call and gap dash four. And it's just going to be like an onboarding guide guys. So if you go in here, let me extend this. If you go in here and if you look at what the launch pad looks like, it's just an onboarding, like an onboarding form. Okay. So let me extend this so you guys can see clear. All right. So you see, it's just an onboarding form. And this is something that you guys can add additionally, if you like, and it shows a stripe uh, if it's connected or not, and also fill in your business details. So if your business details are not completed, we need to get that information. Okay. And it's completely responsive as well, of course. So let's go into the content and we want to render out the following. So the first one is going to be a div with a class name set to flex justify center, justify between item center with dash full border and padding of four and then rounded LG and gap dash two. Okay. And inside this, we're going to have another div that has a class name of flex MD items dash center gap dash four flex dash call from medium devices. We want flex to be row. 
Okay, awesome. And you can already see that kind of form there, right? Awesome. And inside this, we're going to use an image component, which comes from next image. And we're going to pass in the source equal to slash app store. I think it's app store.png. Let's see if that's correct. Okay, we need to pass in alt. And we're just going to say app logo like this. And then we're going to say height equal to 80 and width equal to 80. Okay. And finally, a class name of rounded dash medium object contain. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Already looks great. And after this image right here, use a P tag and say, save the website as a shortcut on your mobile device. Okay. This is just like a, um, just some text in here just to show something, but you can go ahead and take it up as a challenge and see if you can actually get this done. Okay. It's possible. So you can, you can do some research and check. Okay. So we're going to use the button component and we're going to pass in start like this. So it just shows right there. Okay. Looks awesome. And now after this, all you're going to do is copy this div here, this div from here. Oh, actually, yeah, this entire div and paste it below three times, two times. Okay. So you're going to have two cards there just like this. And now we're just going to go and change these logos. So for the second one, we're going to change the logo to stripe logo dot PNG. So it shows the stripe logo. And we also want to change the text and we want to say something like connect your stripe account to, to accept payments and see your dashboard. Okay. Awesome. So now you can see that here. And finally, for the last one, we can change this one to, um, the agency detail. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see, um, here, let me actually think what we're going to render here. Cause we have to render a new dynamic image, right? So let's remove this and we're going to change this source to agency details, which we're going to get in just a second. So let's, let's actually go up top and uh, fetch all this information. Okay. So go up top and you want to, you want to get access to the props, which is going to give you the params, which is going to give you agency ID, which is going to be a string. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're also, also, we're also going to get one more in here, which is called search params. Okay search params, and that's going to give us access to code, which is a string. If you remember, we were kind of getting this set up, right? So that's where we're going to use this in here to actually create the, um, the connected account once they have successfully come back from Stripe, right? So in here now, what is this error? Okay. It's just a source. Never mind. So in here, we're going to say const agency details equal to await DB. So import this and change this to an async component db dot agency dot find unique. Okay. Where ID is like params. Sorry. Let me change this actually destructure params and search for uh, the search params. And we want to get params dot agency ID. Okay. So we want to get the agency details for that. And we want to say if, there are no agency details return. Okay. And if they do exist, we're going to say const all details exist equal to agency details. So it's just a bunch of and statements. So go in here, go to, um, source, go into app, go into main agency, agency ID, launchpad page.tsx. Okay. And you see this copy. It's just bunch, bunch of if statements to make sure that all information exists. Okay. And just replace this right here. Awesome. So now that we have that, all this other stuff is extra guys. We're not doing Stripe right now. We'll get back to Stripe in just a second. Okay. And let's go back in here. And now we want to go to the bottom and you want to say agency details dot agency exists. Um, actually that's not the one what we need here. We need agency details. Sorry. So we're going to say agency details dot agency logo. And now when you copy paste this for sub account, I'm sure you know what to do. You just have to change that logo. Okay. Something. All right. There we go. I thought something was wrong there. It was not rendering. All right. 
look, looks nice, right? And every time each of these are checked, we're going to show a check icon. So right now we're showing this, right? Uh, fill in, let's replace this. And we're going to say, fill in all your business, any SS business details like this, right? Okay. And after this div here, we're going to return this button, but instead of this button, we're going to say all details exist. If that's true, do something. If not, do something else. And if this is not true, then we're going to return the button that we just copied. And if this is true, we're going to return a check circle icon, which comes from check circle icon here. And if you hover over it, okay, that's the perfect one. And we want to set the size to 50. And we want to set the class name to text dash primary like this. And we want padding of two and flex dash shrink dash zero. So that's, that's what it looks like. Okay. And here we're also going to return a link. So actually let's not return a button here. Let's return, return a link so that we can send the user to that page if they need to change it. So href equal to um, slash agency like this agency slash dollar sign params dot agency ID slash settings. So we're going to take them to that page where they can start and let's provide a class name and set the class name to BG dash primary PY dash two PX dash four rounded dash MD and text dash white. Okay, nice. So now you can actually change that information for some reason. If something was not saved, you can, uh, you can show that to the user. Okay. Very simple. And let's move on to the next page. Now component we are creating is all the sub accounts. So go into all sub accounts and in here simply say const user equal to await get auth user details, um, user details like this invoke that. And this has to be an async component because of this. And this also gives us access to the params. So let's say params is going to be an object with agency ID set to a string. Okay. And now we can destructure the params from here. And after this, after we get the user data, we're going to say, if there's no user return here, we're going to return an alert dialogue. Okay. And let's, okay. See, I imported from the wrong side, uh, wrong folder. So I'm just going to say alert from components. Okay. And this is going to have a div with class name set to flex flex dash call. And inside this, we're going to have a create button. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to say button. Okay. From components UI and set it to create. Okay. We'll come to this in just a second. And in here, we're going to say command component, command component like this, which is going to have a class name of rounded dash LG rounded dash LG like this BG dash transparent. And this command component is going to have a command input, which comes from again, the same folder. I'm just going to make this a closed component here. This one is going to have a placeholder set to search accounts. Okay. Like this. And after this, we're going to have the command list like this. And in here, command MT command MT like this. And we're going to say no results found. And after the command MT, we're going to have our command uh, items, right? So we're going to say, actually, hmm, let me take this command item out of here. And I'm going to say, if no user dot agency dot sub account dot length, then return this component. So we're also going to return it. Then actually, I think this would work without this too. Let me see. So let me go to all sub accounts and see what we have. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Whether we show it or not, it's not going to work. So if we search something eh, interesting stuff. Okay. So let's go ahead and create the other parts. Okay. Which is the command group, put this in here and the command group is going to have a heading set to sub accounts. And inside this, we're going to say user dot agency dot sub accounts dot length. If this is true, then we'll do something else. We'll do something else. Okay. And in here, we're going to say user dot agency dot sub accounts dot map dot map. And for each of that, we're going to get access to a sub account. And in here, we're, uh, we can put some type. I think this would have any type. Yeah. So we have to put a sub account type from Prisma client. And in here, we're going to return a command item. Okay. So return command item just like this. And let's pass in the key, which is equal to sub account dot ID. 
And inside this, we're going to pass in, um, actually, we need to pass in some styles for this too. This is a lot. So what I'm going to do is just go in here, go into agency ID, go into the all sub accounts, page.tsx, and copy this styling. Okay. So right here we have this. I'm just going to copy that and paste it right here. Okay. I'm only doing this because we have some more stuff to actually type out. So that's why I only need this. Okay. Command item. And inside the command item, we're going to pass in a link. So when you click on this, it should take you to that page. So href is going to be equal to slash like this sub account slash dollar sign sub account dot ID like that. And we want to have class name set to flex gap dash four with dash full and height dash full. Okay. And inside the link, go ahead, create a div with a class name of relative and width dash 32. And inside this create an image tag, which comes from a uh, next image. And we're going to set the source equal to sub account dot sub account logo. Okay. Like that. And the alt tag is going to be sub account logo, something like this. And Oh, okay. Never mind. And we want to put the fill in here. And after this, let's put a class name of rounded dash md object dash contain bg dash muted divided by 50 and then p dash four okay and in after this image so we have this div here hit enter and create another div with a class name of flex flex dash call justify between okay and uh, inside this create another div here like this and say class name flex flex dash call and this is going to have the sub account dot name like this. Let's go ahead and refresh. So we don't have anything in here. That's why we're not seeing anything. Okay. But when we create a sub account, we will see that in here. Okay. And after this, go ahead. Um, sorry, inside this. So after the sub account, hit enter, create a span and give this the class name of text dash muted dash foreground and text dash excess. And inside this small say sub accounts dot address. Okay. Awesome. And now Let's create an alert dialog trigger. Okay. And this is needed when we try to delete the sub account. So as child and in here button, and let's give it a size equal to SM. And we want to say variant equal to destructive. Okay. And then we want to say class name text dash red dash 600. Okay. With dash 20 hover BG dash red dash 600 and then hover text dash white. Okay. And in here we want to say delete so we can delete that account. We need to create uh, what we call the, uh, the alert dialogue body, right? The content. So in here, go ahead and say alert dialogue content. And inside this, give it the alert dialogue title. So alert dialogue title. I think we need to use a header. Yeah. Alert, alert dialogue header from here and hit enter and move this not trigger. This is alert dialogue title. Okay. And the title is going to say, are you absolutely sure? Okay. And let's also give us a class name of text dash left. And after the title, we need alert description right here. And the description, oops, sorry. And the description is going to say class name text dash left as well. And we're going to put in this action cannot be undone. This will permanently, or this will just delete the sub account and all data related to the sub accounts. Okay. That's it. And after this, we need to have a footer to cancel and delete, right? So after the header component, say alert dialog footer. And in here, we're going to say alert dialog cancel, and we're going to have an alert dialog action like that. And for the cancel, we're going to say cancel, cancel like this. And let's go ahead and give this a class name of flex item center. And um, actually, never mind. This class name is for the footer like this. And this cancel is going to have a class name of margin bottom. So class name margin bottom of two. Okay. And the action here is going to have a class name of BG dash destructive. Okay. And we're going to say hover BG dash destructive as well. Cool. And in here, just we're going to create a button called delete sub account button. Okay. And this button is kind of like a helper a client helper because we want to create this server side. So what we're going to do is inside this all sub accounts, create a folder called underscore components because we're not supposed to use this anywhere else. Okay. And create a file called delete button.tsx and TypeScript RAFCE and delete button inside here. 
Okay, and let's go ahead and let's import that component in here. So we're going to say delete button from this folder. Nice. And this is going to have one prop, which we'll pass in, which is sub account ID, which is going to be equal to sub account dot ID. Okay, so copy this, go in here and pass this in here. So say this is going to be a string. What this is going to do up here is it's going to be a use client component. So it's a client component and then const router equal to use router from next navigation. And then we're going to create a button here. So change this. So since this is already a button, so the action component is a button, we cannot return a button. We have to return a div. So we're going to say on click async arrow function and we're going to just pass this in here and then in here we're going to say const response equal to await get sub account details we're going to invoke this and we're going to we're going to create this in just a second okay and let's go ahead and just in, import that and say sub account sub account id so let's first go ahead and just build this so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to go into this component go into the delete button click on that and i'm going to copy this function so click on this function click on that inside the queries it's a very simple, simple query. Okay. So copy that, go into your query file, which is inside libs queries, scroll to the bottom and just paste that in here. And let's go back and import this from queries. Awesome. And now what we want to do here is we want to also update um, the activity log. So save activity logs notification, and we need to pass in an object in here with the agency ID set to undefined. And then we need to pass in the description, which is going to be a string like this deleted by deleted a sub account and pass in a pipe and this, and we're going to say response dot name this response. I spelled this wrong response dot name. Okay, cool. And after this, we need to pass in the sub accounts ID, which is going to be sub accounts ID that we're, we're getting in. Okay. So we can just pass this in like this, I think. All right. Nice. And then after this, we need to also pass in a delete sub account action, which is going to take in the sub account ID. So let's copy this. Let's go to the queries file and we're going to say export const delete sub account, which is going to be an async function. And it's going to take a sub account ID, which is going to be a string. And in here, we're going to say const response equal to await db dot sub account dot delete where so remove this where ID is sub accounts ID. So we're just going to delete this I'm going to hit enter here so we can see clearly and then we're just going to return the response like this. I made this error again response. Okay, and let's copy this go in here and let's import this query. Awesome. So once we get this, we want to do router dot refresh and just invoke it. So it kind of refreshes all purge data. And in here, we're going to say delete sub account. Amazing. And let's see if we already imported this. Okay. We, oh, we did. Okay. Nice. So yeah, that's about it for that. And at the bottom here where we're returning this, we're going to return a div with a class name set to text dash muted dash foreground text dash center, not clip center and then we're going to say padding dash four and we're just going to say no sub accounts so if you refresh this it says no sub accounts okay because by default it will not fetch that okay nice awesome guys great job so far you are doing amazing if you have come so far okay this is going to be one of the best projects that our account our channel will ever create because i think this is amazing okay so let's go ahead and test this out so let's open this here, create a sub account and let's go ahead and add some images. So I have some uh, placeholder images. Uh, I'm just going to upload one. Give me one second. Okay. I'm just going to upload some image here. I'm just going to give it some name. Um, I'm just going to put some accounts here. So this is, yeah, we'll put prodigies testing to United States and let's go ahead and try to, oh, we need to upload this. Okay. Let's give that a second. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a new picture here, assets like this. We're prodigies, prodigies testing too. Okay. All right. Awesome. So I just went ahead and populated some data and let's go ahead and save this account information and boom, there we go. The account is created. And if you refresh the page, you see it right here. Now, if we click on it, it's going to take us to the page, but we're going to see, oh, okay. It looks like we already created that. That's why it's taking us to that, um, to that sub account. Yeah, we have a, let's see what we have in here. We have this. Uh, component in here. It took us to sub account slash an ID. 
Um, let me see what is going on in here. Something looks a little off. Not sure what it is. We will, is it coming from here actually? No, this is domain and this is paths. I'm just gonna say path. Maybe it's rendering this path out. Hmm, interesting. So it went to sub account. Okay, because we don't have a page here, that's why it's rendering that path. So if I had a page.tsx in here, and if I just use TypeScript refce and said this is the sub account main page like this, let's go ahead and try to refresh this, see what it does. Okay, it took us to that page. What does the wrapper page do in here? Okay, so hmm, sub account sub accounts okay we have a page sub account main page we have a layout that wraps all of this okay something is wrong here i think maybe we would need to have this up uh, set up with yeah you would need oh okay we have sub account but we need to have the sub account id okay and that has to have a page.tsx let's see if this solves our problem and we're going to say sub account page ID. There we go. It should. All right. There we go. Much better. So because of that, it was actually rendering um, the wrong component. It was thinking it was of that route. All right. All right, guys. Awesome stuff. Um, let's move on now. On. We also need to fix up the create button, right? So there was a button here. Just replace that with a create sub account button and go into the components folder and just create that component. Okay. And that component is going to do the following. So we need a couple props in here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, we need user, which is of type user from Prisma client. And this is going to have agency, which is going to be this right here, which is going to have uh, put a pipe here and just say agency from Prisma client. Um, or this is going to be another bracket null. And so we're going to extend this and we're going to say sub account, which is going to be sub account from Prisma client, which is an array. And after this, we're going to say sidebar option is going to be agency sidebar option and make that an array too. And after this part here, so since this is in this bracket here, after this, go ahead and say null like this. Okay, cool. And then we want to say ID, which is going to be string and class name, which is going to be a string as well. And now we can extract that from here. So go ahead and extract it like that, just destructure. And here we're going to say const set open equal to use modal. And let's make this entire component use client. And in here we want to say const agency details equal to user dot agency. And then here we want to say if there's no agency details, we're going to return. Okay. And here we're going to just return a very simple button button from components UI. Let's have a class name and we're going to set this to tailwind merge invoke that and say with full flex and gap dash four. Okay, nice. And the second parameter is going to be the class name that we pass in. And then in here, we're going to have an on click, which is going to be a function, which is going to do the following. So again, we're going to use the power of that set open function, uh, modal provider that we used, and we're going to return a custom, uh, modal like this. And this is going to have title prop set to create a sub account and then description. Oops, it's not showing subheading. Sorry. That's not description. <laughs> subheading is equal to, you can switch between just put some text in here. Okay. Just put whatever you want. And then after this, we're going to pass in the child component, which is going to be sub account details and render this. And we need to pass in the agency details, which is equal to agency details, which we got from here. Right. And then we need user ID, which is going to be user.id. And then we need the user name, which is going to be user.name. Okay. Awesome. Cool. And after this, we also need to put a plus icon. So inside this button, use a plus circle icon with a size set to 15 and the create sub account text in here. So now we can actually go and create that. All right. Um, see what happened here. Okay. Clearly, cause we did not pass in these props. So let's go back to the component and now we need to pass in user. That's going to be equal to user. We need ID, which is going to be equal to params dot agency ID. And we need the class name, which is going to be set to width dash 200 pixels self end. I'm not sure if this would make a difference. Um, let's see self end. Yeah, I don't think it's going to make a big difference, but anyway, and self end and then margin of six all the way around. 
Okay, yeah, self end. Yeah, that's fine. We want it to be on that side. That's why. So if you click this again, you can go ahead and create sub accounts from here as well. Okay, awesome stuff. Now we can go ahead and create our other components. So what else do we have? We have billing and team. Okay, so let's move on to just creating the UI for billing page and we'll put it on a pause. Okay, awesome. All right, guys, so I just thought about it. I think it makes more sense to put a pause on billing and not go to that yet. And let's finish the team page first, okay? Because uh, this is, you know, we have all the data that we really need here for the Stripe stuff, we actually don't. So let's come in here and we're gonna get the params, which is going to give us the agency ID, which is gonna be a string. And in here, we're gonna quickly just extract this and get access to this. So we're gonna say const auth user equal to await oh, so this has to be async component okay and by the way this is the team page.tsx okay so we're going to say await db dot user dot find many okay where our agency where the id is params dot agency id okay and we're going to include something so after where go ahead and type include and we want to include the agency and set this to include um, the sub account okay and set this to true and then finally, we want the permissions. So permissions, and we're going to include the sub account. Okay. Oh, actually set this to true. Sorry. This way we can show the users with their uh, permissions. So what they have access to. Okay. And after this, if there is no auth user, we're going to return null just like this. And here we're going to say const agency details equal to await db dot agency dot find unique from here, invoke that. And here, this is wrong, so it's going to be equal to where ID type params dot agency ID. Okay, and we're going to include something in here too. So we're going to say include the sub account set to true. And then after this agency details, if no agency details, we're going to return. And after this, so we're going to use this component, the data table. This is a little more complex, but I want to show you guys how to use it because the documentation is actually really, is not that great. So let's try to build out this component. So what we're going to do here is if no agency details return. So we're going to get access to data table. Okay. And here we're going to open our directory and we're going to create um, a page here called data-table.tsx and we're going to create columns.tsx, okay? And inside the data table, we're going to return the following. So first, make this a use client component. Let's shrink this and we're just going to return something like this, okay? So I'm going to set this to data table. So we're going to create an interface called data table props like this and in here we're going to get access to columns like this and the columns is going to have a column um okay it's not getting imported so let's go up top and try to import the stuff so go up here after this react and we want to import something okay from at slash components slash ui slash table okay and what we're going to import here is basically the table we also need table body um, like this and then we're also going to need this column stuff right so you're going to import from trans stack table okay so import from um at trans okay we might have to install this so here's what i'm gonna do i think it maybe didn't yeah probably didn't get everything when we did add all components so go to the code here go to data table and we're going to copy this uh add table here oh okay it says we have to install this so copy the bun command quit this here paste this command and hit enter and install the trans stack table for us and then we're going to say bun run dev like usual and let's refresh the browser and while that's uh, loading up, we can go ahead and import. So now we're going to say column definition. Let's uh, refresh that properly. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So I'm just going to import something from trans stack react table. And what we're going to get here is column def. We're going to get flex render. Um, and then we need a couple more things. We need get core row model. Then we need get filtered row model. And then we need to use use react table like this and now here this column is going to have column def with this type with this generic type here and we're going to say t data and this t data actually comes from uh, somewhere else 
uh, let actually no this is just what we're sorry guys this is what we're creating here okay so for this data we're gonna get some generic values in here so we're gonna say t data and t value from here and we're gonna use that in here so t data and comma t value we're gonna pass that in here and then the data is going to be t data but an array and then we're gonna say filter value so filter value is gonna be a string and then we're gonna have action button text which is optional which is going to be react dot react node and then we are going to have the modal children which is optional react dot react node just like this okay awesome and now we can take this interface and we're just going to say react dot fc and pass this in here and now we can go ahead so we need to get those two types right there i think we can do it let me see so t data and t value Okay, so here, actually, I, I know how to do this with the regular function component. So um, we're going to say const default function data table, and we're going to uh, say t data and t value. Okay, and let's invoke this. So function like this, something is wrong here. Let me see what's wrong here, guys. Export default. Okay, so data table like this, and this data table is going to have columns. So data table props has to be passed in here, right? Hmm. So we need to pass this in here. Okay, there we go. That was the issue, I think. So this needs these two values right here. Um, let's see if we can pass that in. Um, so columns, I think I'm making some, some errors here. Oh, we need to pass in, what's this error? Generic type requires these two things. Okay, so T data and T value like this and this should actually fix that error now let's see columns yeah okay and let's get all the values that we need and what is it saying here export default you cannot export again okay so awesome so that sorry guys um i was a little confused with the data types there and now we need to say const equal to use modal invoke this and in here we're going to get is open uh, we don't need is open just set open of this and after this we're going to say const table equal to use react table invoke it and we're going to pass in our data our columns our get core row model we're going to set this to get core row model and we're going to invoke it and then we need to pass in uh, a couple more things so what is the issue here it says okay something wrong with the data we'll, we'll come back and fix that data okay and after this, we need to pass in something in here, which is get filtered row modal and invoke this. OK, all right. Let me see what's the problem with this. Guys, give me one second. OK, so here we made an error it's supposed to be an array. OK, we put this and that, that's not how the columns are going to look. It's basically going to be an array. So that's how we're going to create this. OK, so after this, now we have to return something So return a react fragment first and then we'll return a div inside that so return a div here with the class name of flex items center justify between and inside this pass in a div with a class name of flex items center again padding y of four and gap of two and inside this we're going to pass in the search component from lucid react and an input component from components UI. And this is gonna have a placeholder of search name, okay? Just like this. And we also have to pass in a value. And the value is gonna be set to um, table. So we'll put this bracket here. We'll say table.getColumn, invoke this, and we're gonna pass in filter values. And um, after this, we're gonna say question mark dot get filter value like this invoke that and we want to say as um string okay and after this we can put question mark and pass this okay awesome and i'm going to close this input component here and after this we also need an on change and the on change is going to give us access to a function which gives us the event like this and this event in here is going to be table dot get column okay and put in the filter value question mark dot set filter value so set it um to event dot target dot value like this okay and that's for that i think that's good yeah and now let's go ahead and pass in a class name and the class name is going to have a height of 12 okay and let's go to this component actually we're not going to see anything right now because there's no column data but if we go to team 
um, yeah, we're going to see a bunch of errors because we didn't import anything or do anything. OK, but um, that's fine. So let's see if we can import that component. So where are we in here? Let's import data table. And this needs action button text is going to be equal to something like this. And we're going to pass in the plus icon from Lucid React with the size set to 15. And after this, we're going to also pass in add like that. OK, and in here, modal children is going to be the send invitation. So we're going to create this in just a second. So for now, I'm just going to create a react fragment. And after this filter value is going to be equal to name and then columns is going to be equal to columns. We need to import columns. So we need to create some stuff. Yep. Sorry about that. And let's go ahead and pass in the data. So we'll say data is equal to team members. Okay. And team members is actually going to come from, um, so inside team, we got the auth user. Okay. After getting the auth user, something is wrong here. I think I made a mistake. I don't think agency details. We got that. If there's no auth user, we're returning null. We got the auth user. So this is actually from user. Okay, guys, this is not the auth user. This here is actually the team members. Yeah, it's the team members. And this is the auth user. Auth user equal to await current user from clerk next. Sorry about that. Okay. So now we have this and the team members here. Let me make sure this is correct. Agency ID. We want to include this. Okay. This is correct. Okay. So we're going to go down here and we're going to pass in the team members into our data. Okay. Sorry about that guys. And let's close this, go back into our data table. Okay. And we still need to finish this up. We, we left somewhere. Where did we leave? So we have the on change and we need to pass in a class name. And after the class name, we have this div. Let's create a button from components UI button. We're going to pass in a class name of flex gap two. And this is going to have an on click. And this on click is going to say if modal children exist, then we're going to set open, invoke this and pass in the custom modal component with the title of add a team member and the subheading is going to be set to send an invitation like this. Okay. And in here, we're going to pass in the modal children. We remember we never created this. Okay. We never created that component. So we're not going to see anything, but we're almost done with this. And inside this button, we need to pass in the action button text. Okay. And after this div, go ahead and create another div here and say class name border BG dash background rounded dash LG like this. And in here we want to create the table component and we want to give this a class name, actually no need of any class name here. And in here table header and inside the table header, we want to render something. So we're going to say table dot get header groups dot map. And we're going to get access to the header group like this. Sorry, this is group. And here we're going to render a table row component from components UI table. Okay. And this row is going to have a key set to header group dot ID like that. And in here, we're going to have the header dot is dot map. And in here now we need to get access to the header. And for this, we're going to, we can just say return and we're going to return the table header from components UI table. And we're going to pass in the key set to header dot ID. And in here, we're going to say header dot is placeholder. If this is true, we're going to return null else. We're going to return something in here. We're going to say flex render like this, and we're going to pass in header dot column dot column def dot header and pass in a second parameter, which is header dot get context and invoke this. Okay. Yeah. I know it's a lot of stuff <laughs> to build a table. Honestly, I think this component's a little, little crazy. Um, let's see. All right. It's okay. Uh, we're learning here. Okay. So table body. And inside this, we're going to say table dot get row, uh, model dot rows dot length. Okay. If this is true, do something, if not do something else. And in here, we're going to say table dot get row model. So get row model like this. And we're going to say dot rows dot map. And we're going to get each of this. So we're going to call this a row. And for each row, we're going to return a table row like that. Okay. 
And in here, we're going to set the key equal to row.id, okay? Oh, what just happened here? Row.id, like that. And we also need a data dash state. And this is going to be equal to row.get is selected. We're going to invoke that. And if not, we're going to return um, selected, okay? Like this. And inside this table row, we're going to have the row get visible cells, invoke that dot map. And then inside this, we're going to get access to something in here, right? So we're going to get the cell. And for each cell, we're going to return a table cell. I imported from the wrong place. I know that table cell and the table cell is going to have the key set to cell dot ID like that. And each cell is going to have flex render invoke that pass in the cell dot column dot column def dot cell and the second parameter is going to be cell dot get context okay like that okay we're almost done guys we're almost done we just have to show one more row here so if this is true then we're going to say table row invoke that table cell invoke that too i'm sorry not invoke that just open that and we're going to say call span equal to columns dot length and we're going to say class name equal height 24 text dash, dash center. And inside the cell, we're going to pass in no results. Okay. Just like this. I think this should be more than enough. Now we need to create the columns. Okay. So for the columns, what we're going to do is we're going to open this. I'm going to copy paste and explain. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in here and it's going to take us one hour to build that out. I want to say, save us as much time as possible. Okay. So what we're going to do is go into source, go into app, go into main, go into agency. We want to go into agency ID. We want to go into team. And now we're going to see columns in here. Now this is a big component, but it's just, it's repetitive stuff. Okay. I'll explain what it is in detail. So it's so much easier for us. Let's make sure we import everything. Okay. We have some um, types, which we'll also create in a second. Okay. But let's first look at this component. So we have this columns here and what are these columns? So how this works, if you go to shad CN UI, you will notice that um, the columns, okay, right here is just each column. What would that look like? So we have status, email column, amount column, etc. And whatever data you pass in, right, you can actually get each column data from it. You can get each column data from that thing that's used. Okay. And basically you can also fire events on each of these rows to get data. So right here we're firing in, uh, we're, we're calling the cell function to get access to the row. And then we're getting specific values like the avatar URL. And we are then rendering out some components, some specific um, components in here. Now, is this overkill? I think it is overkill. And the reason is because there is another table component where you can just render, but why do you need this component? There are some insanely powerful features like uh, sorting, um, selection, like you can do a bunch of stuff. Okay. So that's why I use that uh, component here, just to give you an idea of how it works. We might use this, I think in one more area and that should be it. Okay. But, um, it's just going to help you understand how this works and it makes it actually, it's very easy to, to, you know, create a table like this. Once you create it, you can just reuse it everywhere. You can copy paste it. Okay. So that's what we're doing for each column. We're returning an ID with the header. So this is a hidden item, I think. So that's why we're hiding this. So no header for the name. We are using a header, but we're returning a custom component and the custom component is the avatar URL. Okay. It's just an avatar with the image. And then we have another one, which is a hidden item here. Okay. And I realized I made a small um, error here when I was reading the documentation, you can actually call the actual value from the row itself. So there's something called origin and original. Okay. So you don't have to create these hidden values in here and hide a column and then get the data. You can call the original row and pull data out of it. Okay. So yeah, guys go to the GitHub, copy this entire component and follow through with me. We're going to just make quick changes here and there. Okay. So the custom modal, first of all, let's import custom modal. I'm just going to hit enter and that's going to import it for us. Where is that? Let's see. Okay. It imported it right here at the bottom. Okay, cool. And then we need two more, two more queries. So we're going to get that. So let's go in here to the GitHub 
we have delete user click on that it's going to take you to the function click on this one let's wait for it to load close this copy this very simple query okay and we're going to go into the libs slash query go to the bottom and just simply paste this in here and now go in here and you can import this uh, like that okay and for get user okay it's right here so copy this get user go back into the libs queries go to the bottom and we're just going to paste that right in here and now that should solve that error now this is a specific type how do we get this type same process go back i hope you guys are doing this with me okay if you have any problems just copy paste okay it's not too hard and click on this type here close this we're going to copy this type, okay? And we're going to go into lib slash type, and we're going to paste this. And now this is a custom function that we're not going to use, so it has underscore. So I'm going to click on that, go to that uh, function. I think it's somewhere up top. Okay, copy this, okay? It's just a function we're not using just to get some types, all right? Import this DB, all right? There you go, awesome. So now you can go back and you will not see any errors. All right, looks great. So yeah, guys, just returning some new rows with custom components. Now, there's something at the bottom called cell actions. What is this? It's basically an alert dialog. I'm going to show you what it does. So if you go into team, you're going to see this in here. You have an alert dialog in here. So when you click this, you have a remove user, which shows an alert dialog. So we have that. And we also have a drop down menu. So if you click this, we have drop down menus that can you can copy the email okay you can edit their details and this is the most important one right here okay we want to be able to edit so that's why we have um that component uh, in here the drop down menu okay so it's very simple it's a drop down menu with the trigger drop down menu with all the content okay all the way to here okay and what is the content it is literally a drop down menu so we have drop down menu items with copy with the separator with a menu item right here which is a custom modal that says you can change permissions only when the account uh, has an owned sub account something just you know some titles in here and user details so when we click on this and hit edit okay you see this is for the edit details it's going to show this and um you know it's giving a bunch of stuff in here so you can change uh, the permissions here so if nothing is here then it's going to show something else and let's go ahead and close this and let's look at anything. Okay, we have one more thing in here, which is remove user. So you can click here and you can delete the user. So it's gonna remove them from the account, okay? And if you wanna know how that works, um, actually this is not set up um, and I'm gonna leave that up as a challenge, guys, because we want to speed this, okay? There's a lot of stuff to go. We have the editor, we have so many cool things. So um, basically all you would have to do is remove them from the accounts okay so remove this uh agency and uh, make sure you remove this sub account or whatever from from there so they have they no longer have access okay cool so awesome so now what we're going to do here is we're going to close this and go back guys if you have any questions just ask okay just ask around the discord we're going to help you so let's go ahead and import these columns now and now let's take a look at what we have what's our output like let's refresh the page and now you have all the account details, okay? So if you click on this, you can edit their details, but you cannot uh, remove for, um, you know, for, um, well, this person, obviously, since they're the owner, will automatically have access to Web Prodigies. I don't like, I think that we made some small error here. So let me go into, hmm, this comes under our user details, right? So let's go into that. So let me shrink this real quick, okay? Let's scroll to the user details component, which is inside the forms, user details. Let's shrink this. And all the way at the bottom, we have flex dash call justify between flex dash call. This should work flex sub account name in here. So this has to have flex dash call. Why did this not work? Did I spell it wrong? Guys, am I, am I missing something here? What the hell? Anyway, I just removed that and it fixed the problem and I'm happy now, okay? So I'm going to close that again. And uh, yeah, so just go ahead and remove that flex dash call. Not sure why that broke this stuff, but... Um, oh, flex dash call, okay. All right, flex dash call column is going to put it onto the next line. Flex dash row is going to put it side by side. I think that's what's going on there. Okay. All right, so now that we removed that, we can actually add users. So let's go ahead and see... Um, this add button. So this add button now is not wired up. 
Okay, so we need to wire up that add button. So let's go straight into that. So to wire up the add button, you're going to go into your team folder into page.tsx and in here for the modal children, okay, we need to pass in that component and that component is actually a form, okay, that we're going to create. So open this up, go into components, go into form and create a new file in here called send dash invitation like this.tsx. This is a very, very simple form. So I'm not going to type it out and waste your time. Okay. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to copy this. So go into the GitHub repository, test plura source components forms, send invitation, go ahead and copy this form and paste it in here. Okay. And we just have to change a couple things. So we're going to change that in just a second. So this is insanely simple. So basically it's a card with a form with two form fields, the email form field and the role, which is the select item, which we already built the last time. Okay. And it's a button. So if you don't know how to build this select, go back, scroll back to where we were building it and watch that one more time. Okay. But it's the same thing. So I'm just going to paste this in here and we're just going to fill this up real quick. So first we need the send invitation uh, action. Okay. And again, this is also a very, very simple action. So what we're going to do here just to be more productive is click on the send invitation and click on this one and it's going to take you to the queries file. Just go ahead and copy this and we're going to look into this in just a second. Okay. I'm going to explain this as well. So click on the queries file, scroll to the bottom and just paste that in here. And now you will not have any problems. Okay. Role has to be imported from Prisma client. So go ahead and import that. Okay. So what does this do? Very simple. The send invitation takes the role, the email and the agency ID for what we want to send an invitation for. Okay. So all it does is it creates an invitation by saying DB dot invitation dot create with the data, with the data that we just provided. Okay. Now behind the scenes, when we store this invitation, whenever a user is new into the software, right? They're new. They just signed up and they are trying to access the dashboard. We are going to check if they already have an invitation. And if they have an invitation, we are not going to create an agency for them because our entire SAS application only allows for one agency per email address. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So that's why we need this invitation stuff right here. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to say const invitation equal to uh, the clerk client dot invitations dot create invitation. And what this does guys, clerk actually has an invitation, um, sort of like a email sequence. Okay. It sends them an actual email. All right. I'll put the screenshot on the screen in just a second. There you go. This is what it looks like. It's just an invitation that gets sent out that says, Hey, you know, here you go. go feel free to click on the link and access it. And the redirect URL is going to be process.env dot the next public URL. URL. Okay. So we're basically going to be able to access that link through the email. So that's what this does. Okay. There's literally no point of this. We don't even have to create this, but we want to actually give that premium experience. So we're sending an email saying this person asked you to join. That's literally it. Now let's go back in here and we need to complete one more thing. Okay. So this has to change to sub account ID. All right. That's about it. So let's look at this component. So first we have the same toast. Okay. We have a form schema. All right, which has email and a role. And if you guys don't know how to create enums with Zod, this is exactly how to do it. You say Z dot enum agency, admin agency, sub account user and sub account guest. Okay. Because you cannot create an agency owner. All right. And then same thing here. We're going to have another, uh, we're going to have the actual form schema here. Okay. I'm sorry. We're going to have use form in here, which has the default values and the mode on change with the Zod resolver. Okay. And the on submit function is literally nothing but creating the invitation. That's it. Very simple. We're going to invoke that query that we just created. Okay. And we are going to simply pass in those values that come in from here, values.role, values.email and agency ID that we actually get from the uh, props. Okay. And we're also going to create the activity log. Uh, by just passing in this information that whatever information we have. Okay. So since it's an um, agency that they're joining into, we don't want to show the sub account. So that's why we're only populating the agency ID. Okay. And then we're just going to have the toast saying success or error right here. And this is the same thing. Take a look at this. Nothing form, form field, form item, form label, form control with the input. Same thing for everything, guys. You just have to say form field, form item, form label, and the input right here. The input is select. 
right here, the input is input, okay? Similarly, if you're using switch, the input would be a switch. We already did a great example of that. And then finally, we have a button at the bottom here that has a disabled prop and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. I hope this makes sense. If for some reason you don't like this or it's, you feel uncomfortable, we're going to help you out. Just reach out to us in the Discord, okay? So let's go back in here. Let's go to page.tsx under team. And in here, we need to import that component. So let's go in here. And uh, what we want to say here is send invitation, send invitation, import that component. And we're just going to pass in the agency ID because it needs that. Okay. Which is agency details dot ID, just like this. Awesome. And that's it. Now we actually have this set up, I think. So let's click on that. Let's refresh the page. Actually, I think I have to run this one more time and let's refresh this. Just give me a second. Okay. And that's it guys. When you go here and click on the add button, now it shows you that that add a team member form. And all you have to do is put the email and change their role. So if you want them to be an agency admin, you can put that or the sub account user or sub account guest. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to kind of test this out. So we're going to send a, a sub account user um, access. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and send sub account user. And I'm going to send it to one of my testing accounts, which is this one right here. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and send the invitation. Okay. Something went wrong. Great. Now we can test it out and see what happened. So let's see, it should show up on the service side. So let's see what the issue was invitate. Okay. I know what the problem is. So here is a problem with uh, the clerk thing. Okay. So if you have already sent an invitations, you cannot send it one more time. So it makes sense, right? They're trying to save resources. So that's why, but technically we have actually saved all the data in the table. So let's take a look and confirm that. So go into Prisma studio. If you don't know how to open this, you want to run bun X Prisma studio. Okay. And let's go ahead and refresh this. Um, okay. If you click on invitations, you now see this person is invited to join. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to log out of this. So let's go back in here. We're going to close this. Let's go ahead and log out. So sign out. Okay. And we're going to be taken back to this page. We're going to try to log in with that new email address. And if everything is correct, it's not going to prompt us to create a new account. Okay. So fingers crossed, let's give this a shot. So we're going to uh, log in here. I'm going to put this email address because that's what we have saved. All right. Let's see what it does. And now it takes you back to this page. If you hit login, awesome. It takes you to the sub account page. That is exactly what we wanted because we gave this user a sub account access only. Okay. Let's just make a quick fix in the settings page. So go into your agency ID settings page.tsx and change this from LD to LG. Okay. You'll notice it doesn't, it's not on the same line because of that. And now it'll actually be on the same line and it will wrap after large devices. So what we're going to be working on now is the sub accounts. So when you access a sub account, so right here, if you click on this, we have to go ahead and show some stuff in here as well. Right? So that's what we're going to be working on and any billing related stuff. We'll get to that in the end. Okay. Awesome. All right, so go ahead and just shrink everything in here. Open the source folder, app, main, sub account, and inside this, we're going to do a bunch of stuff. Okay, so the layout page is already completed. So let's go into page.tsx and let me first explain what is this page, right? It's very, it's literally the same thing as agency, right? Where we are first doing some logic to check if the user has been verified and accepted, right? Uh, and we're also checking if they have an agency ID that is attached to them. If not, they are unauthorized and we'll have to send them to the unauthorized page. And we also want to get the user's details. So if they landed on this page, we want to find the first sub account that they have access to. And we're just going to send them to that sub account. Okay. Awesome. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So first thing, go ahead and change this to an async component. And inside the props here, we're going to get the search params, which is going to be um, an object with the state set to string and code set to string. Now, if you don't know what this is, um, of course, I don't, I don't expect you to know what this is because it took a long time to figure, you know, where we can get this from, but this comes from Stripe. And when we wire up Stripe, when the user comes back into this page, after they have connected their, uh, their Stripe accounts, we are going to get access to the state. And what is the state? The state is basically the um, sub account ID that we're going to send them to. 
Okay, uh, th that's what that is. And the other thing, the code, this code is needed to basically just do some log. We did that for the agency as well, right? I hope you guys remember. So that code is what we need in here to just kind of finish up the whole authentication process. All right, so come in here first, and we're going to say const agency ID, agency ID equal to await, verify and accept invitation. So we're going to invoke this. And we're going to say if there is no agency ID, then we're going to return unauthorized component like this. And at the bottom here, we're going to say const user equal await get auth user details. And if there is no user, we're just going to return. And after this, we're going to say get first sub account with access equal to user dot permissions dot find. And we're just going to invoke this and we're going to get access to the permission here. So we're going to say permission and we're going to say permission dot access equal to true. OK, so now we have that first sub account where they have access to. And then if the search param. So now we're checking for that stuff. OK, so let's go ahead and extract it from here. So let's get search params and I'm going to say search params dot state. If this exists, then we need to do something. So I'm just going to remove this stuff here. So inside this, we're going to say const, sorry, const state path equal to search params dot state dot split. Why is it giving me that? I don't want this. I want this. <laughs> okay, dot split. And you're going to put um, three underscores. Okay, that's how we're going to be splitting. So put three underscores here. Please be careful. Do not mess this up. You're going to be in big trouble. Okay. So if you just copy paste this, if you'd like, I'm, I'm, I'm much more happy. I'll be happier if you don't get any errors with this stuff, because it's going to be impossible to debug this. So put these three underscores here. Okay. So we're going to split that. We're going to say const state sub account ID equal to search params dot state dot state dot split at again, we're going to put um, the uh, what do you call that the three um, underscores here, and we're going to get one. Okay, the first one. So we're passing different state data in here separated with an underscore. So we're just trying to extract it from that. Okay, so if there's no state sub account ID, we're just going to return unauthorized because there's something wrong when the data came back. If not, we're going to return redirect, which comes from next navigation, use the back ticks here. And we're going to say slash sub account slash dollar sign state state sub account ID. And then after this dollar sign state path like this. And after this, we're going to append that code to the URL param. So we're going to say code equal to dollar sign search params dot code. OK, and that's it. And after this, so um, after this part here, after the state params, we're going to say if. OK, just just put this curly bracket here, if get first sub account with access exist, so they have something, we're just going to return redirect to use the back takes again, sorry, sub account slash, we're going to say get first account with sub account access dot sub account ID. In case we're going to return them to that URL. And if all of this fails, that means something is wrong. So we need to return the unauthorized component like this. OK, awesome. And now let's go into this page.tsx here, uh, right above this page.tsx. And we're going to create a new component. OK, and this component is called loading.tsx. We never did this in the other page as well. So I'm just going to do it in here. And I'm just going to copy something and paste it right here. It's just a very simple component. Okay. Basically, it is a div that has height screen, width screen, flex, justify center, and items center. And then finally, in here, it's going to say loading um, uh, like this, the loading component that we created from global loading, right? So we're just going to use that in here. And we can also copy this guys. And let's go into agency. And we can paste that in here as well. So we have that loading um, in here for this component. So anytime it loads, it's going to show that spinner. Okay, awesome. And uh, let's see. So it says sub account page ID. So what that means is inside the sub account, right? Uh, let's close this agency sub account sub account ID page in here, it says this. So here is where we need to uh, basically do our logic of, you know, getting uh, this is the dashboard page, right? So let's go ahead and uh, build out the layout page for this so we can render out the navigation bar. So go ahead and say 
layout.tsx, okay, and just return something in here. So I'm just going to return a component in here. And inside this layout component, I'm going to first change this to oh, what just happened there. Let me redo that one more time. I'm going to say sub account layout. And in here, we're going to render that layout component. Let me shrink this so you guys can see more. So first, get access to children, which is react.react .react node. And then we also need params, which is going to be an object that gives us access to the sub account ID, which is going to be a string. And in here, I'm simply just going to destructure these values. Okay, just like that. Awesome. And in here, what we're going to do is first, we're going to say const, sorry, const agency ID is equal to await, verify and accept uh, invitation. So if they try to access this directly, we need to do this here as well. After this, we want to also say if there's no agency ID, we want to return unauthorized component like this const user equal to await current user. And if there's no user, we're just going to return redirect the user back to this page. Okay. And then we're going to get the notifications here. So basically the same thing we did in um, the agency guys. Okay. So let notify. So actually, you know what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to copy this because it's the same exact thing. Let's not waste time. Okay. So let's copy this. I'm also going to explain it in detail. All right. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this in here and we're going to go over this in just a second. So we might need to import something. Let me see. Get auth user details. Import that. Nice. Get notification and user. What is this saying? Agency ID is not assignable. Um, something is wrong here. Let me just take a quick look at this. Oh, OK. So this is an object. It's not supposed to be an object. It's just supposed to be a function that takes in this as the parameter like that. Okay. And it's going to wrap to the next line, which looks horrible, but that's just what it does. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'm just going to go ahead and import the sidebar, import our info bar and um, role is what's let's see what the issue here. Let's remove this return statement here and let's put it in here. Let's see if that solves the problem. It's just copy paste guys. So just copy this stuff. Okay. There's nothing crazy in here. There's no magic happening in here. All right. Look, it already did it all for us. How amazing is that? So Okay, what seems to be the problem with this role? I need to take a look at this. Give me one second, guys. Okay, so basically in the info bar, we had as string, but if you go into info bar, it has to be of type role. So all you have to do is just say role like this as type role, because that, that's how it works, right? We can only have these types. Nice, that's it. And now we have our sidebar built for our sub accounts. And as you can see in here, it shows which sub account we are on. And if you go back to the agency, it says we're in the agency. How amazing is that? All right. Awesome. So let's quickly go ahead and build out the rest of our sub accounts now. Right before we go and start building everything, let me just explain this. I'm really sorry. I told you I would explain it and I totally forgot. But here we go. This is what's happening. Okay. So inside the sub account layout, we're verifying that they have access. If not, we're creating it. Right. And we are checking if there is a user that exists. So in here, first, we're saying if there's no user to private metadata. So if they don't have a role, return unauthorized. OK, and in here now we're checking if the user has permissions to access the sub account. So we're just saying all permissions equal get auth user details, which has the permissions in here. And then we're checking if they have permissions by simply saying all permissions dot permission dot find that permission where the access and the permission ID. So the access is true and the permission ID is equal to the permission sub account is equal to the sub account ID we got that they're trying to access from the URL. OK, I think I explained it very simple, but that's basically what it is. And if they don't have permission, return unauthorized. Now we're going to go ahead and get all the notifications. So we're going to say so here we just created this in here and set it to an empty array. So there's no um, errors, right? So here we're going to say const all notifications, get the notification for this agency ID. Here we're going to say if the user dot private metadata role is agency admin or it is the agency owner, then the notification is going to be equal to all notifications. But if not, then we're going to do filtered notifications. So that's why I wanted to explain this because it's kind of important. OK, so um, we're basically since I'm the agency owner, I can actually filter out the current sub account or agency notifications as well. The filter notification is going to be all the notifications dot filter where the item. So filter each notification where the sub account ID is equal to the sub account we're on. So basically, if there were any notifications in here that belong to the sub account only, 
we can actually filter that right from here, directly in here as the agency owner, so we can track all the activity from our sub accounts. This way you have control over what's happening. And then this is nothing, it's the same thing, okay? We're returning a div with height screen, overflow hidden with the sidebar, and then th this is literally the agency's layout, okay? Also here we're passing in sub account instead of agency. That's the other change in here. And then here we're gonna say MD padding left of 300 pixels, info bar, and now we're just gonna pass in the notifications, the role, and we wanna change that as role and the sub account ID. And then finally a div with relative set to uh, the children. And inside here, the children are going to be wrapped in the blur page component. That's why we need that in here. So I see something in here. This one seems to be, okay, this is actually not needed. So we can go ahead and just simply remove that, okay? Because it's not gonna reach that re returning this. That was just an accident. That's it, okay? Awesome. So now let's go ahead and test to make sure that our sub account logic is working. So if we go into our agency, you'll notice that Emmanuel Joseph, this person right here is a sub account user, but has no access to any of the accounts. So if we try to edit their details, you will see, oh, I have to refresh this page. All right, there we go. You will see they don't have access to that sub account. So technically speaking, if I hit log in here, I should no longer see that weird sub account ID or whatever at the top, but I should see unauthorized page. So if I hit login, there you go, guys. It shows that this user is unauthorized. This is exactly what we want. And they can go back home and same thing, okay? So if they also try to access an agency page like this, right? Let's just say, let me take this agency ID here, okay? And let's see what happens. If they try to access this, we hit enter. It says unauthorized because they are not accessed. They don't have access to these pages, okay? Awesome. I also want to point out one more thing. So if you are seeing this error, I don't think you will, but if you are seeing this problem where it just says module not found, the I think this is just a local test environment problem. It's not going to be in production. It's just because of the hot module reloading. This is what I assume, and I think it's something to do with my computer. But if you are facing that issue, just go up top, delete node modules, okay? Delete the folder, come back to the terminal, do bun i, okay? So bun i, like this, do bun i, okay? And hit enter. So if I do that, it's just gonna install all the packages, and then you can go ahead and say bun run dev, okay? And that should solve the problem. I don't think you're gonna face this problem, but if you do, that's the solution to that problem for now, okay? All right, so let's head back into our sub accounts. So inside this, we have Web Prodigies. Let's click on that. As you can see, that really cool loading animation happened. So what we're gonna do here now is we just need to build out these pages. So the first one we're gonna build is the launch pad, okay? So let's go ahead and open this a little bit more. Go into sub accounts ID, and then in here, you wanna create a folder called launchpad.tsx, not launch path launchpad.tsx. This is not a, okay, this can be a folder, no problem. And in here, we're gonna say page.tsx, okay? And then let's just quickly return this and we're gonna say launch pad, okay? Just like this, awesome. And in here, we're gonna get access to the following. So params, which is going to be a uh, an object with sub account ID set to a string. And we're also gonna get one more thing, which is the search params, okay? So I'm gonna get that as well, search params, which is gonna get us the state which is gonna be a string, and the code, which is gonna be a string as well, okay? And now we can go ahead and import these, uh, sorry, destructure these from here. Now, what is this page? You guys have already built it. You can pretty much copy paste and change some values, okay? But let's go ahead, let's go bit by bit. I think that's the best way to actually do this. So first we're going to actually get the sub account details. So we're gonna say const sub account details equal await. So this has to change to async db let's go ahead and import that from lib slash db dot sub account dot find unique where the id is of this type okay and once we have these details we're going to say if there's no sub account then go ahead and return and now we also want to show you know that all the details exist right so if you remember we have that page where it shows like you know a check icon for each page each uh, settings that has been completed, right? So we're just going to return that. So all details exist. Sub account detail dot address. The address is done twice. We don't need this twice here. Okay. Dot sub account logo, city, phone, email. If all of these exist, that means all the details exist. Okay. And then there is some Stripe stuff that's also, you know, going on in here. We're just going to skip that for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, work in progress wire up Stripe. Okay. 
like this. Okay, this is causing an issue. Um, there is one more statement here. So I'm just gonna end that. Yeah, just remove that and, okay? And now we're just gonna say wire up stripe in here. And now what we're gonna do, we're going to scroll down to the launch pad here. We're gonna return blur page like this. And inside this, this is no different from the other thing, okay? The one in agency, just a couple of things are changed. I will show you exactly what it is. So I'm going to copy it, go to the, uh, go to the GitHub repository. Okay. I already showed you guys how to do this. So go to GitHub, copy it from the same file, uh, same file, and just paste that in here. We're going to uh, walk right through this. Okay. So let me import blur page first. Okay. Nice. And go ahead and just import each of these things. So import card, the card header, just take a second, pause this video and import this. Okay. And then come right back. Okay, so hopefully you went ahead and uh, copy pasted it and you imported every single thing. Now you will see one error right here, which is connected Stripe account. Okay, all you have to do is remove this because we don't have Stripe wired up yet. Okay, I hope that didn't alarm you, but you guys need to understand anything that has Stripe right now, just ignore it till the end. Okay, forget about it, it does not exist. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and refresh this. I'm just gonna refresh uh, this page here and uh, we'll access the sub account in just a second, okay? So let's go into sub account. Let's click on the launch pad. Okay, so it's showing um, an error here. Okay, launch, let me see what is the issue. So it accessed slash launch pad. Okay, whoops, I just made an error in the folder name. So I changed this to .tsx, just remove this, okay? And if you click out and if you change the import statements as well. And if you refresh, there you go. It shows the page we're supposed to see. Great job, guys. And you also see the blur page, right? It does the same exact thing in here as well. Nice. And uh, now you pretty much have the setup. So let's move to the next folder now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna build is the media component. And in the media component, basically, we are just showing the user all the media files they have uploaded inside their uh, accounts. This way, when we get to the awesome website builder, we can actually use this media component anywhere we need inside this application to give the user the ability to directly copy paste the URLs of these uh, files, okay? So it makes it very easy to use background images, um, and all that kind of stuff. So let's go in here inside the sub account, create a media folder and inside this create a page.tsx and we're going to just uh, um, return something in here. Okay. So I'm just going to say, we're going to say media page like that. And inside this media page, we're going to get access to the params in here. So we're going to say params, which is going to be sub account ID, which is going to be a string. And let's go ahead and extract that from here. Okay. Um, it made an error. So extract that. Just do that. All right, awesome. And in here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna get media, and this does not exist, so we have to import this. So let's change this to async component, okay? And get media does not exist. All right, so we're gonna build that right now. So go into your queries file right in here. Where is that inside your queries, libs, queries like this? And inside this, we're going to go all the way to the bottom. And we're gonna say export const get media equal to async component. Um, async, sorry, async function. And this is going to get the sub account ID, which is going to be a string. Okay. Uh, why is it doing that? String like this. And inside this, we're going to say media files equal to await db dot sub account, db dot sub account dot find unique. Okay. So we're going to get these details. So find unique where ID is going to be sub account ID. And we're simply just going to include the media true. Okay. And um, then we're also going to return the media files that we just got. And also you can just go into the table. I don't know why I did it like this, but that's fine. Just do this and go in here and let's quickly import this. So import that. All right. Nice. No errors there. Great. And in here we're going to return, okay, a blur page. And this is going to have a new component called media component. And the reason why we're doing this is we want to reuse this anywhere we need the user to have access to this. So let me just pass in a couple props. The data is going to be data that we just got. And the sub account ID is going to be the params dot sub account ID. Okay. And go into your components. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here. Where is that? So go into components and just create a media folder in here and just create an index.tsx and just return something from here. Awesome. And we're just going to say media component. And let's go ahead and import this component from here. Nice. So no errors now. And let's go in here back into the media component and let's get 
those props. So data is going to be get media files. And we're not going to have this right now. Just give me one second. We need to create this type in just a second, but let's get the sub account ID, which is going to be a string as well. We're going to take this and we're going to just destructure this from here. Okay, nice. Now to create this type, copy this, go into your types folder right in here. Where is that? Yeah, right here. Go down and we're going to say export type, paste that equal to prisma dot promise return type. And we're going to say type of get media. Okay, so import that nice. And let's go back to that file. And let's import that type right in here. Okay, that should fix that error. Nice. And now in here, we're going to remove this. And all we're going to do in here, it's actually a very, very simple component, we're just going to show all the media files, right? So let me try to access this uh, page, media, hello, media, okay, all right, <laughs> open the media component. So um, in here, we're going to change this or remove this from here. And we're going to say class name is going to be flex flex. Oops, I just made an error. Sorry, guys, one second. Okay, there's no error. Okay, yeah. So we're going to say flex flex dash column gap dash four height full and width full. Okay. And then we're going to create another div in here. And this div is going to say flex justify between items center. Okay, then go ahead and create an h1. And this is text 4l the class name is text for Excel. And it's it's going to be uh, called media bucket. Okay. And then finally, we're going to need the upload button. So this upload button is another component we need to create. Okay. And uh, let me see where we can get this from. Okay, so this comes from Okay, so this is not the upload button that we created, we're going to create a custom upload button, All right, just give me one second. After this, uh, we're going to basically have the search functionality and all that stuff in here. So go into your media folder, and we're going to say upload dash button dot TSX. And inside this, we're going to return the following. So just return this right in here. And um, let's also change this to upload button. Uh, maybe you want to change the name for this actually. So let's say upload button, media upload button, this makes more sense, right? Okay, media upload button. And I'm just going to go ahead and quickly import this component like that. And let's go back into the upload button. And this is a client helper, right? So we're going to go up top, and we're going to say use clients up here. And this is going to get access to the uh, sub account ID, which is going to be a string. So let's go ahead and destructure that quickly from here. And inside this component, we're going to say const is o so we're basically getting um, is open set open and set close from our modal. So I'm going to say modal like this. Oops, just need to put that in there. Okay, use modal. And there you go, you already see the button rendering, right? Nice. And we're just going to return a simple button component, nothing crazy. Okay, so just say uh, return here button from UI button. And this is going to say, um, what is it going to say upload in here, right? Okay, upload like that. And in here, we're going to have an on click. So on click, we're going to say this is going to take a callback function. And in here, we're simply going to set open, and we're going to um, open one of the modals so that we can um, upload that stuff. Okay, so we're going to say set open in here and say custom modal. Okay, set the title to upload media and the subheading is going to be upload a file to your media bucket. Okay, I'm just going to paste some string. And inside this, we're going to have the a new component called upload media form. Okay, just like this. And it's going to take a prop. So I'm just going to pass that right away. So we save us some time. Okay, so sub account ID, just like this. And now we're going to go ahead and create that upload media form. So let's go into our forms, which is right in here. Okay, so forms, and we're going to say upload dash media dot TSX. And let's just return some component in here, we're going to say upload uh, media form component like this. Okay. And um, I'm going to try to import this as well, upload media form. And let's go in here and quickly get the sub account ID, which is going to be a string. And let's go to go ahead and extract it. Oh, it says sub account. I think we only need sub account ID. Yeah. All right. So we'll just pass in the sub account ID. And then we'll do the following um, stuff inside this component. So this is actually a very, very simple component, I'm just going to build this form out. So you guys get some practice, okay, I don't want you to always keep copy pasting. So let's go ahead and first say const form schema. So go ahead and type it with me right now. Okay, z dot object. So let's go ahead and import z from zod. And you want to say object, okay, object like this, we're going to we're going to invoke this. And inside this object, we're going to pass an object, but we're going to pass another object with the link set to z dot string. 
dot string like this, invoke it and say dot minimum is got to be one. And the message is going to say media file is required. Okay, like this. Okay. And then after this, we need the name of the media file, which is z dot string again. And this is going to have dot min of one and message is name is required. Okay, nice. And now we can use this form schema in here. And now um, another thing we need is this has to be a client component. So we're going to say use client up top. And inside here, we're going to first get access to toast. So const toast equal to use toast, which comes from UI use toast, let's import that. And then we also need router. So const router, router equal use router like this from next navigation go ahead and invoke that. And after the router, now we're going to say const form equal use form, use form. And let me import this from react hook forms. And we're going to say this is z dot infer type of form schema like this. And in here, we're going to pass in an object with the resolver set to zod resolver. Okay, and invoke this and pass in the form schema. And the mode is going to be on submit for this one. Okay, we can use on change too, but I'm just going to do this. And the default values are link is going to be an empty string and name is going to be an empty string. Okay, and now let's go down here and let's return a card component from UI card with class name of with dash full like this. And inside this, we're going to have the card header, card title and card description like this. So card header, card title and just put some title in there card description, put some description inside this as well. And then we're going to have the card content. So after this, say card contents, card contents, and this will take a form component. So form component from UI form and use a spread operator and put everything from form inside this and inside this use a native form component and set the on submit to be form dot handle submit, invoke it. And we're going to pass in a function called on submit on submit. And let's go up here. And we are going to basically create that function. So we're going to say async function on submit. Okay, like this. Oops, we don't need this. Okay, on submit. And this is going to have values set to z dot infer type of form schema. Okay. And inside this, we're going to have a try catch. So we're going to say try catch. Oh, they made an update. I didn't know they made that update. Nice. Const response equal await. So this has to be an async function. Okay, await create media, which does not exist. So just say create media, and we're going to pass in the sub account ID and values like this. Okay. And now to create this quickly go back into your queries file like this. And at the bottom, we're going to say export const create media equal to an async function async arrow function. And this is going to have the sub account ID, which is going to be set to a string. And inside this, we're going to say const media files. Sorry, um, we need one more thing in here, guys. We need the media files as well, right? So we're going to say media file is going to be create media type, which does not exist. So let's go ahead and build that type. So we're going to copy this. We're going to go into our types file. And we're simply going to say it's pretty much very similar to this. Okay. Um, but Okay, actually, there's one thing different. It's not exactly the same thing. Sorry about that. So we're going to say export type create media type equal to prisma prisma dot media um, create without sub accounts input. This is what we need. So if you hover over this, you'll see the type. This is all we need to create. And it also shows the optional stuff. So let's go back in here and let's go ahead and import that. And let's make sure there's no errors. Okay, cool. And in here now, we're going to say const response equal await db dot media dot create invoke that and pass in an object and we're going to say data is going to be link which is media file dot link the name is going to be media file dot name and the sub account id is going to be the sub account id we just received okay put a comma here okay i think there's something wrong here what's okay i know what's wrong ah we spelled that wrong in okay there we go and finally we're just going to return response not redirect response like that okay and let's go ahead and quickly import this so go back into your file upload media a form and let's go ahead and say create media and go ahead and import that okay okay cool nice no errors in here so nice and now we're going to say await save activity notifications and we're going to pass in the agency id which is going to be undefined Okay, we're going to pass in the description, which is going to be backticks. And I'm just going to pass this in here. You can put whatever text you like. 
which is uploaded a media file and put this pipeline and you want to put this in here. Okay. And then sub account ID is going to be sub account ID like this. Okay. And you can just remove this to reduce a, a number of lines of code. Nice. And then here we wanted to say router dot refresh. Okay. And before this, actually, let's just say toast invoke this and we're going to say title success. And the description is just going to say uploaded a media file like this. Okay. So description is uploaded uh, media media. That's fine too. And if an error exists inside here, we'll print the error message and we'll simply just show another toast right in here. Okay. So now if I click this, let's see what happens. Nice. I see something looks great. Okay. <laughs> and let's go ahead and build the rest of this. So inside this form, this is where we're going to have the form field. So if you guys remember, we built this 4 million times. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in here and just import everything. So import field, sorry, import form field, import the form item. So go ahead, pause this and do this. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I went ahead and did that. So now when I hit uh, upload, it shows the form field name. Okay, nice. And the final one is the file upload, which is also done before. So I'm going to copy this here. And after this form field here, I'm going to enter this. Let's go ahead and import file upload. That's pretty much it. So now when you hit upload, it shows you this. And uh, now you can actually submit that. And to submit that, you need a button. So after this component, go ahead and place a button component from UI button with the type equals submit classes margin top of four and say upload media. So now when you click, you can actually upload something. Nice. Looks amazing, right? So let's go ahead and try to upload something. Um, so, okay. So before we upload, we have to actually build out that that layout to show those components, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to close this real quick and we're going to go into that upload form media in here. Okay. We actually don't need this. So here, let me get out of this. Okay. Go into the index file and now we can actually show those, uh, the media files. So go ahead and say command. Okay. Which comes from UI command. And this is going to have a class name of BG transparent. Okay. And inside this, we're going to have a command input component with a placeholder set to search for file name. Okay. I'm just going to import that. And then we're going to have a command empty. So if this is empty, um, actually, sorry guys, we want to have a command list and then inside that we'll have that. So go ahead and say command list like this. I'm going to import this as well. Okay. And class name of a uh, padding bottom of 40 max height of full. And inside the command list, we're going to have the command empty. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and import this from this like that command empty and it just says no files, uh, no media files. Okay. And now we're going to inside inside this, we have to show the list. So create a div with a class name set to flex flex dash wrap gap dash four and padding top of four. And inside this div, we're going to loop over the data dot media dot map. Okay, so for each of that, we're going to get a file, for example, and we're just going to return a command item. So we're going to say command item. Where is that? Command item here. Oops. Command item like this. And this is going to have a key set to file.id. And inside this, we're going to have a class name. So this class name is going to be set to padding of zero, margin, oh, sorry, max width of 300 pixels width full rounded lg important background transparent font medium important and text white important okay and in here we want to have our media card so now we need to create this media card so quickly go into your um okay inside this is uh, itself create media dash card dot tsx and just return a component in here change this to media card and inside this media card we're going to do the following so in here get access to file, which is going to be of type media from Prisma client. Okay. Let's go ahead and import this, uh, sorry, extract this, and we're going to create a state. So this has to be a use client component. And in here, go ahead and say loading set loading equal to use state and import that. Okay. So import this use state. And then we're going to again, get access to the router. So let's go ahead and import router from router. So I'm going to say const router equal use router from next navigation. Nice. And now we're just going to have an alert dialog. So 
This is just a redundant component, okay? There's nothing crazy happening, and I'm going to explain everything in detail, but I'm going to copy this and paste it, guys. So go to the GitHub, go to this media card, copy and paste it right in here, okay? And I'm going to explain exactly what we did. So copy that component, paste it in here, and go ahead and import each and everything, okay? Go ahead and import all that stuff you need. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste that, import that as well. Okay. And of course, you're going to see some other stuff here. So let me go ahead and import this. So pause this video and just import it. You will see some errors, but if the errors are coming from the components, import that. But if they're coming from something like this, we will fill that up in just a second. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Hopefully you didn't get alarmed or anything, but if you copy it, you'll see an error here for toast. You'll see an error here for delete media and this toast as well, okay? These are the only three errors you should see. If you see other errors, just see if, make sure you imported the components correctly, okay? So all this component does is basically, it's an alert dialogue, okay? And um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's basically an alert dialogue that allows us to trigger a drop-down menu. So whenever a card is shown, we can hit on the more icon and we can change some properties like delete, update, well, all that kind of stuff. That's what we're doing in here, okay? This is not needed. I'm just going to remove this from line 54. That's just redundant. All right. So um, that's what we have this for in here, okay? And let's go ahead and break this down. So I'm going to try to actually create, let me first solve these errors. So toast comes from toast, uh, from use toast. And I also realize, guys, you don't have to do use toast. You can just say toast like this, okay? I actually was creating it here and then importing it. Yeah, well, I just learned. You don't have to do that. So just say toast like this, okay? And this other, one more function. You're going to have this one more query error here. So let's fix that. So go into queries, and we're going to say export const delete media equal async arrow function. And this delete media function is simply going to delete the media from that, that folder. I'm sorry, that table, okay? So let's change this to media ID, okay, which is going to be of type string. And inside this, we're going to say const response equal to await db dot media dot delete, where the ID is media ID. Okay, so go ahead and delete it. And after this, we simply want to return response if we need something. And okay, I made a spelling error here, response, and let's return response like that. Let's go ahead and import this now. So go in here, delete media and import that. Nice. So now we should not see any errors. Okay, so um, now I will explain what this does. Okay, so it's just a, um, a drop down. So go ahead and type this with me if you had some errors so you can just build it out and have nothing to worry about. Okay, so we're going to have wrap this in an alert dialogue and we're going to wrap this in a drop down menu. Okay, these are context providers. And in here, we're going to create an article saying class name border with full rounded LG background slate 900. And then we're going to have a div here with the image. So this is the file link to show the image on the screen. Okay. So that's what we're going to do there. And after that, we're going to have the title. So which is the name of the file. So create a P tag, put the file name. And then we're going to have a div here saying P dash four relative. And we're going to have created at. So when was this created? That's what we're going to put in here inside a P tag. And we're going to also put the file name. Okay. And um, here we're going to say drop down menu trigger more horizontal, okay, inside this div. So that way, when we click this more horizontal, it's going to show this drop down menu right in here. So, what is this? It is a drop down menu content, is going to have the label saying menu, and we're just going to have a separator, which comes from drop down menu separator. And the drop down menu item is this. The first one is a copy icon to copy the image link. And all we're doing in here, this is important, okay? Navigator, this is a native thing, okay? Navigator dot clipboard dot write text file dot link, okay? And then we're just gonna show this copy to clipboard toast when the user copies that. That's it. And then after that, we're gonna say alert dialog trigger. This is a delete file. That's why we wrapped it in that uh, alert dialog, okay? So when we click on this, also put as child in here, don't forget. And you want to say drop down menu item. So we're creating another item, which is a trash icon to delete. So when we click on this, you have to delete this item. Okay. So this right here um, for this delete is simply the same thing that we did at the bottom here. Where is that? Let me go ahead and find that. 
Okay, so just copy this logic inside this on click, go up top. We just had deleting that file, right? And change this on click in here. That's it. Okay, so const response equal await delete media. Um, this one, and we're just we're just copying the same thing here. So we're saving some data for the notifications. We're creating a toast, setting loading to false, and we're just refreshing the page. Okay, and what's else? What else? Let's see. All right, that's done. Now, what does the alert dialog look like? The alert dialog just says, "Hey, are you sure you want to do this?" And guys, if you don't know how to create these components, it's literally inside chat scene UI. Click here, go to alert dialog, and you will see, click on code here. It also shows you a preview. This is what it looks like, continue or cancel. And if you click on this code here, you just have to copy this. You can hit copy here and paste it into your code and you can change everything as you like. That's what I did as well, okay? So change that and um, everything else should work as expected. And I'm sure you guys can understand. You guys are experts now. You can understand what this function does, okay? All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and test. So let's create a file. So hit upload, change this to um, Web Prodigy's banner image or something, and just upload something. So I'm just going to upload my banner image in here and hit upload media. Okay, something. Oh, I need to. What seems to be the problem here? Let me see. This might be some spelling error. Media file is. Okay, media file is required. Uh, let me go into that component, guys. So let's go into the form. I'm curious why we have this here. So this is for this. So it's showing some error. So upload media. Let's go in here and say name is required. Media file is required. Okay, that's just all right. Never mind, guys. So go ahead and upload that. That was basically the um, the label that just turns red. I got confused for a second. It's like, wait, is it for this one? Never mind. So go ahead and upload that. Okay, awesome. My banner is uploaded and hit upload media and success. The media is uploaded. And if you refresh the page, okay, something seems to be wrong. Maybe we are not actually, are we rendering the component? I'm not sure. Let me go ahead and take a look at that. Um, media page.tsx, we have media component. Inside that, we have a command item. All right, we're not returning anything in here. And as a result, we're not seeing anything, okay? So sorry about that confusion. So let's go back to our component. So go back to media index.tsx and let's continue this so we can see something, all right? Sorry about that, guys. So inside this item, we're now going to import that media card that we just created like this. And let's show the file, okay? And um, after this, uh, so there you go. It already shows, looks great, right? And there you go, looks amazing, right? And one more thing, so after this, if there's no media files, which is after this command item, so you have command item here, hit enter after this. So if data.media.length, okay, if this exists, if this does not exist, so there's not, no items, then we want to show this folder search icon, which comes from Lucid React, just set it to 200 size. So we're just showing something like, hey, empty, no files to show. You don't have to, you can just remove this, okay? You don't have to show that. I just wanted to show that. So by default, if we deleted this, let's see, delete, okay, delete, oh. <laughs> Okay, guys, I know what happened. I know why I don't have that. So let's go back into the media card. Inside this delete, where is that? Okay, alert dialog, delete, on click. Where is that? Let me search, just give me one second. Okay, delete file. This is actually, okay, remove this on click. We don't need it, okay? Because the other um, alert dialog is actually doing it for us. So we don't need to do that, okay? So there you go, you see that icon. If you create this one more time, let me go ahead and create that, upload that in there. I'm just gonna say Web Prodigy's banner image upload, and let's just give that a second. Okay, awesome. And now if I upload this media, it shows uploaded media, and it also refreshed the page. So now when I hit delete, it's gonna prompt this and not immediately delete it, okay? That's what we want. So that's why I did that. And if you want, you can just directly delete it and remove all this alert dialog stuff, okay? It's up to you, but there we go. Now we can copy this link and it says copy to clipboard so I can paste it anywhere I want. Okay, something happened wrong here. Append child, parameter one of node. Hmm, what is this error? Okay, something is wrong with this component. I'm gonna go back into the index file and let me fix this. Give me one second, guys. All right, guys, so I found the problem and I did not expect this to even be a problem, but basically um, you have to have a command group for every command 
uh, list you're creating. Okay, so I mean, for anything, if you have a list here, a bunch of items, they have to be inside a command group. So that's why it's not showing that stuff for us. Okay, <laughs> so I went ahead and just say command group, and I put that entire list, that div inside that command group. And don't forget to give it a heading, and we're going to change this to media files like this. Okay, and that's it. Now it works. Now we can search for web prodigies or banner image, and it does the logic for you. Awesome stuff. So now we can reuse this component anywhere we want. So go ahead, knock yourself out create like 10 pictures or whatever you want okay for those of you who are still here i am super proud of you because you have come so far and there's so much more you're going to learn because now we are going to move on to pipelines and if you have seen there's so many videos out there that talk about how to create this pipeline kanban board we're going to build that entire video in this video how insane is that okay and Please keep the GitHub ready, okay? Keep it open. We're gonna do a bunch of copy paste, but at the same time, I'm gonna explain anything I copy paste, okay? And I'll make sure that you don't face any errors as well. And if you do, I got you in the Discord, okay? So go in here to your folder structure. We're gonna shrink everything, go into source, app, main, sub account, sub account ID. And in here, we're just gonna create something called pipelines like this and inside that a page.tsx and we're just going to return something for now we're just going to call this pipeline so so the pipeline id or the pipeline page for this page right here is going to have the pipeline but then we also need to access each pipeline id right so we're going to have another pipeline id in here so create a folder and call this pipeline id and inside this a page.tsx and we're just going to return a component in here call this pipeline page okay and in here we just called it pipeline okay fine so um yeah so let's go ahead and build that so first thing we want to do is in here um inside this pipeline folder go to the page.tsx and we're going to do the following okay so first up here let's quickly go ahead and get the params which is sub account id which is a string like this okay and i'm just going to go in here and extract this from here and now i'm going to get the pipelines very simple query okay we're going to change this first to an async component and we're going to say pipeline exist await db.pipeline.find first where the sub account ID is the params.sub account ID. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to say if pipelines exist, so some pipeline exists, then we're going to return the redirect. So um, let's go next navigation to sub account. Uh, use backticks, guys. Return redirect sub account params dot sub account ID slash pipelines and pipeline exist dot ID. OK, and then we're going to do a try catch in here. So let's go in here quickly and let's do that. Just give me one second. So enter here and we're going to do the following. So I'm just going to remove this toast. I don't know why I have toast in here. Anyway, so I'm just going to console.log if any error happened. Okay, like this. Nice. And what we're going to do in here is if some error happened in here. Okay, so we're going to say um, try catch. Okay, const response equal awaits db.pipeline.create data uh, dot name first pipeline. And we're going to say sub account here. Sub account ID is going to be params dot sub account ID. Then we're going to return redirect this stuff. Actually, now that I think about this, guys, I don't think we need to do this because see here, if we go into our queries, um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. OK, so where's our sub account? Let's see. here. OK, we have Launchpad, whatever, whatever. Right. Pipeline. There we go. We created a default pipeline called lead cycle. So we no longer need to do this process in here. All right, I think I know why. So if there's no pipeline, then we need to show no pipelines exist. So I think instead of that, I just prefer to create a pipeline and just route them to that pipeline if they have zero pipelines. Okay, that's probably why guys. And um, I don't know if you like that logic, feel free to just remove this entire try catch if you like, okay? So now let's open this in here and we're going to create a loading.tsx. And this is a very simple component. It's basically, we're just going to have this loading page, which comes from global loading page. And we're just going to return a div with negative margin top of negative eight and height of screen. And we're just going to return the loading page. Okay. And we've already created the loading page in our global folder. Okay. Let's go back there to the other component. Now let's open this folder structure and we're going to create a layout.tsx. So in here, pipelines, inside the pipeline, not inside pipeline ID, be careful, please. We want to create layout.tsx, layout.tsx. And inside that, we're going to do the following. So we're just going to return the blur page 
along with the stuff. So we're going to say pipeline layout. We're just going to get access to children, which is react.react node. We're going to return a blur page with the children. Okay, that's it. And inside this pipeline ID, we're now going to create um, everything related to the pipeline in here. Okay, so what we're going to do is let me click on that. Okay, so it's showing the pipeline page. Nice. And we're going to go up top here quickly, get the params, which is going to be sub account ID, which is going to be a string. And in here, let's go ahead and extract that. And now we're going to say const pipeline details equal to get pipeline details, which we need to create. OK, so because this is a wait, this has to be an async component and this uh, query we need to create. So copy this right here. OK, we need one more thing from here, guys. So we're going to get pipeline ID. So also add that in here. OK, pipeline ID is going to be a string like this. Now this will not show any error. OK, so let's copy this go into queries file and I'm just going to scroll to the bottom here and let's just say export const this is equal to an async arrow function and this is going to have the pipeline ID which is going to be of type string okay and in here const response equal await db.pipeline.findunique where the ID is like this pipeline ID that we passed in and we're just going to return that so let's go in here and import this uh, from that query file and now what we're going to do is we're going to return that pipeline stuff in here. OK, so before this, we also need to make sure this details exist, right? So if no pipeline details exist, then we're going to return and redirect the user to sub account slash params dot sub account ID slash pipeline. So we're going to go back to that page and then accordingly, the logic might create a new pipeline and so on and so forth. OK, and then in here, we're going to say pipeline equal await DB dot pipeline dot find many where sub account ID is params dot sub account ID. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to also pass all of our pipelines into a drop down component so that we can see and select all the pipelines. And then finally, we need the lanes. So what are lanes? Uh, pipeline is the Kanban board. Lane is each uh, column. Think about it that way. So to get the lanes, we're going to say lanes equal await get lanes with tickets and tags because we need all this information. First, import this lane details here. Oh, actually, we need this lane details. The lane details is going to be lane. So go into your types file. And in here, we're going to export a type called lane details, which is going to have the lane from the Prisma client. And we're going to extend it with tickets is equal to ticket with tags. Now, where is ticket and tags? So how do we get this? We're going to create this right here. So go up here and say export type uh, ticket like this and tag, which is an array and all come from Prisma client. OK, this Prisma client, Prisma client um, and assigned also comes from Prisma client and contact also comes from Prisma client. And uh, now we have this setup in here so we can go back and let's try to import these types. So import this. Now we need to also build this um, query. So I'm quickly going to go into our queries file. So I'll click this here, which will take me in there. We're going to say export const get lanes with the tags. OK, equal to an async function. And this is going to have the pipeline ID, which is set to a string. And in here now we're going to say const response equal await db dot lane dot find many where pipeline ID is the pipeline ID we get from here. And we're also going to order by something. So order by order of ascending. OK, this is important, guys. Don't forget to do this. OK. And uh, we're also going to include the following. So we're going to include tickets order by order is going to be set to ascending. And after this, we're going to include the tags and set this to true. We're going to say assigned, set this to true. And we're going to set customer, set this to true as well. So we're getting all that data. And at the bottom, just return response like this. And let's go back and just import this uh, query from the file. Nice and no errors. Perfect. Now we're going to use the tab list from Shad CN UI. If you don't know what that is, um, it's simply tabs that you can click between. So it looks like this. OK, uh, we're going to use this component. So let me go back in here and I'm going to try to access this. So where is that pipelines? OK, so I see. OK, loaded and I see pipeline page right in here. Nice. So we're going to go in here and so scroll down here to the bottom. We're going to change this to tabs, which come from um, components UI tabs and inside default value going to be set to view 
okay? And the class name is going to have width of full. And inside the tabs, now we have to render a tab list, okay? So the tab list is going to have the following. So just say tab list like this, um, not from Tremor guys, from component UI tabs, okay? And the tab list is gonna have a class name set to BG transparent, border of border bottom of two, height of 16, width of full, justify between, and margin bottom of four. And then we're going to have an info bar inside this, okay? And this info bar, it's a special type of info bar called pipeline info bar. Okay, so let's go ahead and pass that in here and I'm gonna show you how to create this component. So go in here and inside the pipeline ID, uh, we're gonna create, actually outside the pipeline ID. So inside pipelines, create a folder, call it underscore components, okay? And inside that, we're gonna create a file called pipeline info bar. So in here, pipeline dash info bar dot bar dot TSX and let's return something from here, nice. And uh, this is gonna have some errors. So let me do that one more time. We'll say pipeline info bar. Pipeline info bar, nice. So it's just returning that component. And now let's go ahead and import that from here like this, nice. And we're gonna have some errors with the um, props. So let's go ahead and fill that up as well. So inside our pipeline info bar, we're going to go up top here inside the props and we're gonna say sub account ID is going to be a string. And then we need pipelines, sorry. Actually, let me do this guys. I'm just gonna copy this, okay? Save you some time. So sub account ID is gonna be string. Pipelines is gonna be pipeline, but an array of pipelines. So let's import this from Prisma client. And the pipeline ID is gonna be a string as well. And this is going to be a client component. So go up here and say use client. And in here, we're gonna create First, we're gonna get access to the modal. So do use modal, set close, set open, but we're gonna rename this to set open modal, okay? The reason is because um, there's something that clashes with this, okay? So do set open like that. And we also need another one in here, which is called open and set open, okay? And this open, is actually for something else. And I'll show you in just a second. It's gonna make it's gonna make sense when I show you. So in here, now we're gonna create another one called set value and uh, value here and pass in the pipeline ID. Let's go ahead and extract all these values from here. Nice, so we put the pipeline ID in there. In here, now we're gonna return that component. So let's create a div. And inside this div, we wanna create another div and we wanna give it a class name of flex items end gap dash two. And inside this, we're gonna use the popover API, okay? So I'm just gonna copy this popover. It's not popover API, sorry, it's popover component. Man, I remember making a video about Google's new popover API and that kind of got stuck in my head. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Okay, components, import this popover component from there. Oops, I need to close this and put the popover trigger inside that. So say popover, and this comes from our components UI popover. Open set to this open and open state uh, on open change set to the set open. So that's why we need needed to rename this right here, okay? And um, in here, we're gonna say popover trigger as child, and let's import this as well. And the button, import that. And also, I'm gonna input the chevrons up down. So what is this? This is basically a drop down that allows us to see each and every pipeline we have. So right now you see the lead cycle in here. That's basically what we're building. So now we need to show the popover content. So the popover content, I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna explain it in just a second. So follow up with me, just follow through with me, okay? So after the popover trigger, hit enter and paste this in here. You don't have to paste it, I'm gonna explain it. So just give me one second, I'll import it in just a second and I'll explain it to you. Hopefully you went ahead and imported everything that you needed to and you will see one error right here, which is handle click create pipeline. And we're gonna build this in just a second. So scroll up top right up here and we're gonna say const handle click. So let's go ahead and paste that. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go up top here and say this is equal to an async, uh, sorry, just a an arrow function. And we're going to utilize the set open modal from here, in here. So we're gonna say set open modal. We're going to get a custom modal, the same thing guys. And we're gonna say create a pipeline. We're gonna put some subheading heading text, use whatever you'd like. And now we need to build this form, okay? So it's also a very simple form, nothing too complex. So uh, this actually has only one field. So we will be copy pasting this entire form, okay? So let's copy this first, copy this title name, go into your forms. Oh, we have to go into components, then go into forms and create a create-pipeline dash form.tsx file. And we're gonna say um, TS, and I'm just gonna paste that. And now I'm gonna copy, so go into GitHub, 
copy this create pipeline form. There's nothing in this form. I'm going to explain it. It's, it's super, super simple. Okay. You will see some errors such as the types and queries. That's it. And we're going to fill that in in just a second. Okay. I see one more error here. So we'll fix that. So first thing to do is scroll down here to the activity, change this to sub account ID and then scroll up and we need to create these types. So I'm going to build that type right now, actually, just to save us some time. So um, create pipeline form schema, uh, go into libs types, scroll to the bottom. You can put it in here if you'd like. Actually, I think it's better to put it right in there. So, okay, it's fine. Just keep it in here. Okay. So import Z uh, from Zod, just do this. And now that error will be solved. And now for, so for this one, it's basically name. So create pipeline form schema Z dot object name Z dot string minimum of one. Okay. And you can have a message if you'd like. And then in here, the upsert funnel. So we need to build this type. So the upsert funnel is going to be the following. So I'm going to copy this name here and let's go into our queries, scroll to the bottom and I'm going to say uh, upsert. So export const upsert funnel is async function and it takes in three parameters. The first one is the sub account ID, which is a string and the funnel, which is of type Z dot infer type of create funnel scheme form schema. So where did, okay, I need to create this one as well. So let me go into the types file. So go into your types and we're going to just create that right here. Okay. So the create funnel form schema is basically this create funnel form schema equals Z dot object with the name description, subdomain name and favicon. Okay. And it's the same thing. Copy paste. You can put min one for each of these. No problem. Okay. So go ahead, pause this video. If you need like a quick break, pause it and type it out. Okay. Awesome. I'm trying to speed this up. So because we have to build these so many, we have to build so many things, right? So once this is done, let's go back and let's import this. Okay. Hope we didn't have any errors. That's nice. So once that's done in here, let's also import Z from Zod like this. So what we're doing here is we're creating the funnel. Okay. But we're having this extend live products. So we're extending it with one um, extra object. Okay. So when we pass that in, we can get access to these live products and um, then we're basically doing something in here. Okay. So then in here, we're going to say const response equal await db dot funnel dot upsert um, where ID is funnel ID where update, sorry, and we're going to update the funnel or we're going to create a new funnel with everything inside this funnel, but the ID is going to be funnel ID, or we're going to create a new ID using V4. Okay. This is basically UUID and sub account ID is going to be the sub account ID we passed in. And let's go ahead and return this. So now that will solve one of our problems. And then finally we have one more, which is the upsert pipeline. And I'm going to go ahead, go back into queries, scroll to the bottom, and I'm going to paste this, which is basically export const upsert pipeline Prisma. I'm just going to import Prisma from Prisma client. And you can put this in the types file if you'd like, but it's an async function with the pipeline set to prisma.pipeline unchecked create without lane input. Okay. So hover over this. There you go. And you'll see what it's supposed to look like. Okay. Nice. And then we're going to say const response equal to const response equal to await db.pipeline upsert where the ID is this pipeline ID that was passed in, or we're going to create a new one. We're going to update the pipeline or we're going to create a new pipeline. Very, very simple. Okay. Now let's go back in here and you should not have a single error inside this component now. Okay. If you have errors, guys, pause this video, watch this step by step or, and, and I'm also reading each and every line. So you can type as I'm reading. And also I'd like your feedback. If you guys prefer this method where I'm giving you some copy paste and I'm only explaining the more complex things, uh, go ahead and just put it in the comment section and, you know, let me know. All right. Now that we have completed that form, let's go ahead and import it. So click on the pipeline info bar and go ahead and import this component from components forms. And now when you click on the drop down, you'll see the create pipeline button, which, you know, of course comes from here. When you click on it, our form uh, shows up on the screen. Okay. And of course it's responsive and all that kind of stuff. Great job guys. Now head back into your pipelines. So right in here, so click on pipelines, the page inside the pipeline ID. And now we can con continue this from here. So after the info bar right here, you're going to create a div 
and this div is going to have a tabs trigger inside it, which comes from components UI and have the value set to view and class name set to important BG transparent like this. And we also want uh, width dash 40. And just to help you understand what this is, is just the buttons that show different tabs that exist. So the first one is pipeline view and then copy this right below. And this one is going to have settings as the value and everything else is, stays the same and just change this to settings. Okay. Okay. What seems to be the problem? I'm having that issue again. Just give me one second, guys. I'll just go ahead and restart uh, my server. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this class name, by the way. I don't like it. It's acting a little weird here. Yeah, that is so much better. Just go ahead and remove that class name. All right, guys. Now that we have these triggers after this tab list, we're going to use the tab content. And this one has to have the value set to view. So what to show if the trigger was clicked and it, the value was view, anything in here is what will be shown in here. We're going to just say pipeline view for now. And we also want to create another content right here. And this one is going to be called settings and change this to settings view. And now when you click through this, you should see it change. All right, awesome. So now we're just going to replace these strings with the actual components. So this one is going to be called pipeline view component, which we'll import and create as well. And the other one, actually, let's first work on the settings because that's a little easier, right? So we'll just say pipeline settings like this. Okay. And let's go ahead and create this component. So open your folder like this, go into the components and create pipeline dash um, settings dot TSX and just return some component in here. And I think we can paste that. Okay, nice. So this is basically a form. Okay. There's nothing else in here. It's a form uh, that allows us to, you know, change some stuff. Okay. So, um, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, the components in here and we're also going to have an alert dialog. Okay. So again, guys, this is very, very similar to everything that we have done in the past. So I'm going to copy and explain in just a second. Okay. All right, there we go. So I just pasted that in here. So the only thing that is different is the pipeline thing in here, which is the delete pipeline query. So copy this. Don't worry. I'm going to explain everything. Okay. Just give me a second. So we're going to go into this queries and we're going to create that uh, delete pipeline query. Okay. So since we have done so many uh, queries already. I want to, I want you to take this up as a challenge. Go ahead, pause the video and try to create this very, very simple query just to see test, just test yourself to see if you actually know, um, you know, what you're, what you've been working on so far, right? So go ahead, pause this video, create the delete pipeline query, and then come right back to this video. Okay. Hopefully you did it and you got it right. If not, this is what you're supposed to do. So you're supposed to say export const delete pipeline, which is an async function, which takes in the pipeline ID. And we're simply going to say await db.pipeline.delete where the ID is the pipeline ID. That's it. Okay. So let's, let's go back here. Sorry. Let's go back here <laughs> and let's import this pipeline uh, settings component. Okay. And um, also, I'm just going to quickly explain what this component is. So in here, um, forget about this alert dialog. So I'm just going to skip through this. Okay. So we're just going to have a form. There's nothing else in here, guys. There's just a form. And that form is basically going to, um, it's just going to allow us to update the pipeline information. Okay. So I see some error here. Let's see what seems to be the problem. Well, the, okay. I know what the problem is. The problem is we actually did not pass in the values inside this component. So let's go ahead and pass in uh, all those, com uh, all those values real quick. So first, um, this is going to have lanes set to lanes. Okay. Let me go into actually, sorry guys, this is the wrong thing. Um, Okay. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to pass in the pipeline ID is going to have params.pipeline ID. The pipelines is going to be all the pipelines that we just captured in here. Okay. And the subaccount ID is going to be params.subaccount ID. Okay. 
So now when you click on this, very simple, you see the information of that specific pipeline. Okay, looks great. So let's also understand what's going on here. Nothing, it's just an alert dialog. So we have an alert dialog trigger and the alert dialog content. So when you hit delete, it shows this alert dialog. That's why you have all these complicated things. I wish, see, this is the thing. If you're using chat CNUI, everything is like an independent piece. Okay. Um, so that's the reason why it looks so complex. But if you're using like Tremor or some other MUI, you would just use the component uh, like this. It would look like this. Okay. So it's a, not a drawback really. I personally like this because you can customize everything as your uh, as per your liking. Okay. So we just have the alert dialog header, which has the title and description. Okay. And the alert dialog footer, which has the cancel button and the alert dialog action button. So if the action button is clicked, we're just going to go ahead and delete this, um, you know, delete this pipeline. And if not, we're going to go ahead and just, um, you know, skip it. This is what the cancel button does. And again, uh, you can take up a challenge here. So here's a challenge. Go ahead and save the activity log. Okay. So activity log. All right. Go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, take this up as a challenge and build this. Awesome. So now for the pipeline view, go ahead and go into your components, create a file, call it pipeline dash view. Okay. Dot TSX and just go ahead and return something in here. So I'm just going to say pipeline view like this. Okay. And now to let's just kind of understand what this pipeline view is. It's very simple. The pipeline view is the Kanban board itself. Okay. That's it. Nothing, nothing complicated. Okay. So we need a lot of information in here. So I want you to pay close attention. Uh, this is kind of crucial because uh, we're going to need this. Uh, we're going to understand this logic here and then we're going to implement it later. And then we have a challenge for you at the end. Okay. So just pay close attention to what we're going to be explaining right now. So go ahead, scroll to the top and change this to a use clients component. Okay. And in the props, we're going to, we're going to need access to lanes, which is uh, lane details. And I'm just going to paste the types in here. So the lane detail is basically a custom type. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create the lane detail. Just give me one second. Oh, it's already created. Sorry. Just import lane, de uh, lane details. And it's an array of that. And then the pipeline details is going to be um, a new type. So let's go ahead and create this type. So head over to your types, uh, your types file, which is inside libs types. Okay. We're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to create that type. So all that type is, is basically export type this one. Okay. This variable prisma.promise return type get pipeline details. Okay. Awesome. And now if you go back, you can import that type. All right. Nice. And let's also go ahead and import this lane and import the ticket. And I'm just going to explain what it is. So we need the pipeline ID, sub account ID, the pipeline details is everything right with the tags and the tickets. And if you don't know what the tags are, don't worry, we're going to look into that. I hope you watch the whole demo. I really, really recommend if you skip the demo, go look at that because you really want to be proud of what you're building, right? So with that demo, it's going to help you understand everything that you'll be building. And that way you can also you know, speak to your employers or your clients and show off, you know, whatever you've done. So now the update lane order is basically a function here. Okay. And, um, this one, the ticket order is also a function here and it gets access to the lanes, which is an array of lanes and the ticket, which is an array of tickets. So you can kind of change, uh, change the order basically. Okay. So what we're going to do now is let's go back into our pipeline ID. Uh, inside this page.tsx and we're going to pass in these props. So go in here and we're going to pass in the following. So the lanes are going to be equal to lanes like this. The pipeline details is going to be the pipeline details, the pipeline IDs, params.pipeline ID, sub account ID is going to be params.subaccount ID, the update lane order and this one, these two things are basically a new query. Okay. So go into your queries, which is right in here. Okay. And scroll to the bottom and we're going to create 
this update lane order uh, query. Okay, so I also need to import lane here. Okay, nice. So in here, we're going to say try uh, const update, update this, okay, and transaction, and we're going to say lanes.map. So for each of them, we're going to get the lane, and we're going to say db.lane.update, where the ID is lane.id, and the data is going to be order lane.order, okay? And um, after that, here, we're going to say, oops, sorry about that. Let me quit this. What did I do here? Okay. And then here we're just going to say await db dot transaction dot uh, um sorry up uh, and invoke that and pass in your transaction which is this right in here okay and then just do you know we can do console dot log or console dot log here as well okay nice and then finally we need one more which is update ticket order so let's go to the bottom here okay and the update ticket order is going to be an async function with the tickets set to a ticket array array of the ticket which comes from Prisma client okay and we're going to do a try catch we're going to create another uh, transaction in here. We're, we're going to say tickets.map ticket where db.ticket.update where the ID is a ticket ID and the data has the order set to the ticket order and the lane ID set to the ticket lane ID. Okay, nice. And here we can just go ahead and say db.transaction and we can invoke that and pass in our transaction. And here we can just say done reordered and you can also put the error, uh, print the error in the console. Okay, now if we go in here, we need to import this. So go ahead and import both of these. Okay, I went ahead and imported and we also need to import this component. I forgot to do that. So let me go ahead and import that component as well. Nice. Now we don't have any errors. So let's go back in here and now we can go ahead and build out the component. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, get the modal. Okay, so we're going to say set open and equal to use modal. We're also going to get router. So I'm going to say const router equal use router and let's import use router from next navigation. And then we're going to need a user. Actually, we're going to create another state guys. And this state is going to be called all lanes. Okay. And go ahead and import use state and lane details. So this use state is basically going to have all the lane details. And you can see here, it's the lane details and it's tickets with the tags. Okay. All lanes and set lanes in here. And then finally, we're going to create a use effect. And this use effect is going to, uh, let me use effect like this. Okay. And in the dependency array, you're going to pass in the lanes. Okay. And let's see what happened here. Okay. That's because, okay, we did not import e everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, extract uh, destructure all of our props and now we can we can say lanes in here okay so in the lanes updates we're going to set all lanes to be the lanes like this okay nice so what this is doing is just setting the uh, when it loads it's just setting all those lanes in there and the next thing is we're going to um, scroll to the bottom here, okay? And we're going to render out some, some stuff in here, okay? So to make this whole Kanban board possible, we are going to use the help of uh, React Beautiful DND, okay? So go ahead, open your terminal. I'm just gonna quit this server like this. I'm gonna say bun add react dash beautiful. I don't know why I said beautiful like that. That felt weird. B oh, I, t I spelled that incorrect. Sorry, guys. One second. Let me just copy this. So I don't make any unnecessary errors. Okay. So bun add uh, react beautiful DND and just go ahead and enter and that should install the package for you. Okay. Awesome. And now we can actually use this to create, you know, our drag and drop functionality. So in here, remove this and you're going to say drag um, drop. Okay. So it's not importing. Um, let me go ahead and import that from up top. So go up top here and import this. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so I think it needs the types. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to import these types from here. Okay. Uh, okay, so go ahead and say bun add and paste that and it should import the type for you. And now this should not throw an error anymore. Okay, nice. So if you scroll here, you can now enter uh, that drag and drop context. So say drag drop context like this, okay? And this is gonna need an on drag end. So the on drag end is going to have um, our a function that we're gonna create right here. So this is a really big function. So just pass in a regular, a normal function for now, and then we'll come to this in a second, okay? So for the drag, do, uh, drag uh, drop context, it also needs some children. So create a div with a class name and set the class name equal to the following. So it's going to have BG dash white by 60, dark BG dash background by 60, rounded XL P4, 
use automation zoom in. So this is going to be a special um, CSS animation that I created. And if you have copied and pasted the CSS file, you will have it in there. You can just take a look. It's very, very simple. Okay. And inside here, we're going to create another div. And this div is going to have the following class names. It's going to have um, let me say class name equal flex item center justify between. Okay. And then we're going to create an H1 tag with a class name of text to Excel. And we're going to pass in the pipeline details name. Okay. And let me see what's happening here. Let's go ahead and import this guy. So let's come in here. I have it in here. What seems to be the problem? Do I have to? Okay. That's because we didn't say bun. That's why bun run dev. And let's refresh the server. Nice. Now it works. So let's go back into that component and let's continue. So after the pipeline, uh, after the pipeline name, we're going to create a button here. Okay. And I'm going to import this button real quick right here. And this is going to have another uh, function. Okay. So this function is basically going to be built here. We're going to say const uh, handle add lane, which is an async function. Um, and we're actually, this does not have to be an async function. We're just going to say custom modal and create lane form, which does not exist. So we will have to build this in just a second. Um, so let me see if we can, we might be, okay. Yeah. Let's just go and build it guys. It's easier to build this way, right? So copy this, go into your forms right in here into components forms and create uh, a form called la uh, lane lane form.tsx and just return a component in here. And I'm just going to paste that. Okay. I don't like this being called create lane form. I think it's better if it's just lane form. And I will also change this component from here to lane form. And I'm just going to go ahead and import the, um, the lane form from there. So we can use that in here. Okay. So this needs access to the pipeline ID. So I'm going to go into this component and now we're going to build this. Now, again, this is very similar to everything that we're built before. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm also going to change this one to lane form. Just give me one second guys. Okay. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to paste it. Okay. I don't want you to get stuck. So just copy what I'm doing. So you see the name of the component right now has to be lane form. So I'm going to change that, change this to lane form. Okay. And we have a type in here. So I'm going to copy this type called create lane form. And I'm just going to change that to lane form schema. And we're going to go into libs type. Okay. Now we can build out that type in here. So just scroll to the bottom and I'm going to paste this here, which is export const lane form schema. Okay. Which is Z dot object name Z dot string minimum of one. And now that should solve that problem for us. And then we have a new uh, action, a new query in here. So it's called upsert lane. So let's go ahead and build that uh, function as well. So click on the libs query. And if you don't know how to do that, guys, here, hold command on Mac and click libs queries. Okay. And it's going to take you to that file. So at the bottom, I'm just going to say export const upsert lane, which is an async function. The lane is going to be prisma dot lane unchecked create input. Okay. And in here, we're going to say let order is a number. If lane, um, if there's no lane dot order, then const lane equal await db dot lane dot find many where pipeline ID is of type lane. Uh, pipeline ID is lane dot pipeline ID. And then we're going to say order equal lanes dot length. Okay. And if you don't know why we're doing this, we're basically creating one, cre getting the first order for that lane. Okay. The first number, and that should be the length. So if it's zero, it's going to be zero, or we're going to do the same thing in here. Okay. We're going to say lane dot order. So whatever was passed in here, and then we're just going to say db dot lane dot upsert where the ID is lane dot ID or create a new lane. Uh, and then we're going to update that lane or we're going to create that lane. So depending on what we want to do, that's why we're using upsert in here. So let's go back to our form and let's, okay. So now if you scroll here to 51, you're going to see this. So I'm going to change this occurrence across the entire file. Okay. So this occurrence will no longer happen. We'll no longer have this error. So I'm just changing it to lane form schema and that's going to solve that problem. And then I have something here, change this to sub account ID and that should fix that. Now let's go back to our pipeline view and we have the plus icon here. So I'm going to go ahead and import plus icon from lucid react. And now I can actually create a lane. So there you go. So if I create a lane, it's showing lane details, and you just go ahead and put in the stuff and that's about it. So let's look at this lane form as well. Uh, just really quick to understand what's going on. Nothing. It's the same thing as the, um, as the pipeline as well. Okay. So we have a card card header. 
card content, which has a form, and that form has one form field in here, and that form field has a form item with the form label set to lane name, and the control here with an input inside it called name. Okay, you can change this to lane name if you like, no problem. And finally, the button is going to have a disabled set to is loading, and is loading basically comes from form dot form state dot is loading. I know I hope you recollect us doing this before. And then type is going to be submit. And then form dot form state is submitting. If it's submitting, we're going to have the loading um you know component or we're going to we're going to say save. So now you can save it like that. Okay? That's about it. Now if you go back, let's go ahead and close this here. Okay. And um give me one second. Okay, and after this button, guys, you have a div here, right? So hit enter, and we're going to create a droppable. So this droppable right here, so say droppable, and this droppable uh, is going to have the following props, okay? So it's going to have the droppable ID set to lanes. The type is going to be lane. Uh, direction is going to be horizontal, and key is going to be called lanes, okay? And it's going to say children is not a function because how React drag and drop works is you have to pass in a function in here. Um, so let me put this curly bracket. And in here, we're going to say uh, create a function. And for this function, we're going to return something. So in here, we're going to get access to provided, okay, like this. And inside this, we're going to return a div. And this div is going to have the following class name. So class name equal to flex item center gap x of 2 and over scroll, overflow of scroll, okay? And inside this, you have to also use the spread operator and pass, pass the provided dot droppable props. And we wanna say ref equal to provided dot inner ref, like this, okay? And inside this, we're just gonna create a div. So say div with a class name of flex and margin top of four, okay? And inside this, we're going to create all lanes dot map for each of this. We're going to get access to the lane here. So I'm just going to say lane and we'll also get the index and let's create a pipeline lane component like this. OK, we, of course, haven't created this yet. So we'll just come to this in a second. Um, I don't know why we have this in here, guys. Oh, that's because we have this curly bracket. So remove the curly bracket and that should return that component. And after this curly bracket here, we're going to create another one and say provided dot placeholder like this. Okay, nice. Now, this pipeline lane is going to be another component. So let's go ahead and build out that component. Okay, so go into open, open your directory and in here create a pipeline dash lane component dot TSX. And uh, please guys just follow with me. Okay. Don't forget, uh, keep following with me. You're gonna, you're gonna see what this looks like and looks like in just a second, okay? And I'm gonna copy this. So go into the GitHub, copy this entire component, paste it in here. We're going to go step by step across this entire component and understand how this works, okay? We're gonna have a lot of errors. Just bear with me. I'm going to, you know, walk you through this. So the first one is let's finish. Let's just import everything, okay? So follow. Just follow with me. So first we need the delete lane. So go into the queries file, okay? And this, uh, just scroll to the bottom, all the way there. Wow, we have like 700 queries. <laughs> That's a lot, so yeah. And we're just gonna say const delete lane equal async function with the lane ID, which is a string. And we're gonna say const response is await db.lane.delete where the ID is a lane ID, okay? And we're just gonna return this. So that's done, nice, you wouldn't have that problem again. Now ticket with tags. What is this? This is another. Uh, this is another type that we're gonna import. So go into your libs type, scroll to the bottom, and we're going to say this right here. And now we need to create this function. Okay, we need to create this um, this type. Uh, sorry, this query. So tickets with tag is Prisma promise return type type of this specific query. So go into your queries file. Okay. And I'm going to scroll to the bottom, uh, scroll to the bottom, and I'm just going to say const get tickets with tag equal pipeline uh, async function with a pipeline ID as a string. We're going to say db .tickets .find many because there are many tickets in a pipeline. Okay, where the lane is pipeline ID. Okay, where the lane 
And for that lane, the pipeline ID is equal to the pipeline ID. Okay, and we're going to include the tags assigned to and customer. Now, let me explain what our tag is if you guys are kind of confused. So when we're creating tickets, we can actually create custom tags and assign those tags to each ticket. That's what these tags simply are. Okay, it looks nicer and it has more meaning. So go back into your types file and uh, sorry, it brings more meaning to the ticket. So go ahead and import that query now and let's go back and see what other uh, things we need to import real quick. So, okay, pipeline ticket. That's one more thing, which is another component. And what else do we have up top? We have the custom modal. So this looks like an issue. So custom modal, where's the custom modal? Custom modal has been imported, but it's saying cannot find. Let me do that one more time. So I'm just gonna import custom modal by, you know, manually, okay? And that looked like it solved the problem. I think it was just, oh, maybe our name was different, okay? And let's remove this ticket form. And um, where is the ticket form? This ticket form needs to be created. So copy this ticket form, okay? And you're going to go into your forms right in here. I hope you're following through with me, okay? Just pause this video if you're getting stuck, all right? But follow up with me, okay? So go in here and say ticket-form.tsx and just return a component like this. And inside this component, uh, we are going to have a bunch of stuff, okay? so. What we're gonna have is we need the tags, we need any, we need the contact, our search results. When we are searching for the tags, we need contact list, right? Because we need to assign some contacts. We also have an assigned to, which mean we can, which means we can assign a tag to a team member. And so there's a bunch of stuff in here. Okay, so just play, uh, pay close attention. We're gonna work through all of this. And I'm gonna build this entire component from scratch. Um, only some things like the input field, I'm not gonna waste your time, I'll copy that and you will just have to follow through me and you'll understand what I'm doing, okay? So go up top here and we're gonna say use client. And first I'm gonna import this ticket form from that other component. So go ahead and import that. And now in here, we're going to have the following props. So we're gonna have lane ID, okay, in here, which is a string. Sub account ID, which is a string, and get new ticket, which is going to be ticket with tags, uh, the first one. So that's just a ticket in here. Okay. And now in here, we're going to uh, also extract these. So, okay, extract those props. And in here, we're going to create a couple uh, states. So, first, let's also use the modal. So, I'm going to import this. Okay. I'm going to say default data from, uh, from this data. We're going to say use modal. And then we also need the tags. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to create um, a state called tags with set tags. And it's a use state. And it's going to have a type of tag, which is an array array of array of tags. Sorry. OK. <laughs> and then we're going to have the contact because a ticket can be assigned to one contact only uh, contact and set contact like this. And then we're gonna have search. And this is what we're searching for, searching for tags, for example. So search, set search, and now the contact list. So let's say we're searching for contacts. We want to show that contact, right? We wanna show that contact along with other similar contacts with that name. So that's why we're gonna create this list. So in here, say uh, const contact list equals set contact list equal u state. And I'm gonna import this contact from, from uh, Prisma client. And then finally, uh, actually not finally, there's a lot more. <laughs> so we're gonna have assign to and set assign to with u state default data is uh, default data dot ticket. So why do we not see this? Well, the reason is because we haven't created this inside our provider. So let's go to our provider file, which is inside our components um, right here. Where is that? Providers, and let's go into modal provider. Okay, right in here. And now we need to uh, update that in here. So you see this, right? After agency, hit enter. And you wanna say ticket, okay, like this. And this ticket is going to be of type ticket details. Uh, ticket, give me one second. Okay, we need to probably create this. Oh, I don't think we have to create this, do we? Huh, maybe we have to create it. Never mind. Well, we'll do that, no problem. So create, uh, we need to create this ticket details and we're just gonna get the first one, okay? So let's uh, copy this and we want to go into our types, which is uh, in here. So go into your types file and uh, we're gonna create the following, okay? So 
down here, we're going to say ticket details equal to Prisma to promise return type, type of get ticket with all relations. Now, this is a function we're not supposed to ever create. So uh, not supposed to use. So it has an underscore. So right above this, you can put it in here or you can put it in the queries file. So in the queries file, just uh, we're going to say this. We're going to say export const underscore get tickets with all relations, which is an async function with a lane ID set to a string. And we're going to say await db.ticket.findMany, where the lane ID is the lane ID, and it includes assigned customer lane and, and the tags. Okay, we're going to return this. So I'm going to go back to that type file and import this, um, uh, this query as well. Okay, and now let's go back to our modal provider and let's import that ticket details. So now inside our create pipeline, uh, create, sorry, sorry, create, the uh, ticket form, we will not see that error anymore because it exists on our modal provider. Okay. Now, after this, we're going to create one more thing called save timer ref. And if you guys remember from that insane, amazing project we built last time, we used this, which is to debounce the uh, user's input. Okay. So as you're searching, we want to debounce the user's input and send it to the database to fetch information. So that's why we need this save timer ref. Okay. Awesome. So you've created a bunch of states. Going to move this up here so it looks a little more organized. Nice. Now we're going to create a use effect. Okay. So this use effect in here is going to say, uh, let me also import this like that and get sub account team members. We have to create that and set all team members as well. So what is this? Looks like something is wrong here. Okay. We need to create that. It's one more state. So after this, just go ahead, just go ahead and say uh, all team members and set all team members equal to um, type user, an array of users. And now what is this use effect? So when this component loads, we're basically going to get the sub account team members. So all team members that are, are you know, sub account users. All right. And that's it. Nothing else. We're just going to get that. And we're going to save that information here so that when the user is creating a ticket and wants to assign that to a sub account to one of the team members, they can access that from, you know, this list. Okay. Uh, so click on this and we're going to go ahead and build this out. So let's go to our queries file. Okay. And um, I'm just going to copy and paste. So just follow this with me. So we're going to say export const get sub account team members equal async sub account ID, which is a string. And we're going to say const sub account users with access equal to await db.user.findMany. Okay. Where the agency and its sub accounts, where some of them have the ID of the type sub account ID in here and the role is sub account user. And we're going to get their permissions as well. Okay. I hope this makes sense. And let's go back into our ticket form and let's import this function right in here. Okay. Awesome. And now let's proceed. So after this use effect, we can, um, I think we have a bunch of other stuff. I might as well do that. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's just build it as we go. So we're going to get set close as well, which comes from use modal so scroll up top and say set close like this. And we also need router. So I'm going to say const router equal use router from next navigation. And now we're going to uh, scroll down here. And since this is use form, I'm actually going to put it up here. Okay. After yeah, right here. So I'm going to say, or let's just put it. Yeah. Let's put it right uh, below the router. Okay. So const form equal use form. And it's going to be a function like this. It's a hook. Actually, let's import that hook and we're going to pass in a type here. So this type for this is going to be Z dot import ticket form schema. Uh, we need to create this ticket form schema, don't we? Okay. Yeah, we do have to. So go into types and, um, in here, we're going to say ticket form schema. So, uh, the ticket form schema is going to be Z dot object, uh, Z dot string for the name, right? Z dot string minimum of one and description is Z dot string optional with the value set to Z dot string refine the value where the currency number regex dot text uh, dot test for that specific value and the value must be a, um, a valid price. So this is a helper function that we're just going to build up top. It's, I mean, it's not a, 
it's not a function, sorry. It's just a regular expression test. And this is what it is, okay? So copy this from the GitHub, okay? Don't mess this up. And this basically uh, tells if a value is a, um, <coughs> a value is a valid price, okay? Nice. And now let's go back into our component and let's import that ticket form schema, okay? Nice. And now we're gonna have another use effect. And what is this use effect gonna do? So let's look at that. So this use effect is gonna check if default data dot ticket exists. If it does, then we're going to set that information. So if we ever wanted to update a ticket, if we click on the ticket, right? Basically, we're going to uh, we're going to populate that. Uh, we're going to pass in that function, right? And that's how we have the data stored inside our modal, right? Our modal provider. So that's how we're getting it from there. We're going to say default ticket dot ticket dot default data dot ticket dot name description default data ticket a description and same thing here for the value and um, if the default ticket dot customer ID so this is some stripe related stuff we're gonna set the contact set contact to default data dot ticket dot customer ID okay and then in here we're gonna say const fetch data equal async um, const response equal await search contacts so this is another query that we have to create. So go back into your queries file. I'm just going to click one of these. So it takes me in there. Okay. And we're going to say export const search contacts equal async search terms. Okay. Which is the string that you're searching for, right? Like that, which is a string. We're going to check db.contact, find many where the name contains the search term. Okay. And let's go back in here. Let's import this right here. Okay. Nice. Okay. No error. And I had this TypeScript ignore. Okay. This type TypeScript ignore um, has to be here because it's just throwing some errors. So just, just put this in here. Okay. Nice. And um, so, yeah. So first we're going to fetch the data. We're going to search for the contacts when the default data updates. Okay. And then we're just going to get all of those contacts and we're going to save it in here. Uh, and then uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Okay. And then we're going to set the contact list to that response. Nice. And now let's also extract is loading. So I'm going to go up top where we have our form. Oh guys, it looks like we haven't completed that form stuff yet. So sorry about that. Let's go back and let's finish that. Okay. So const form is going to be equal to use form here. Let's move this. Let's move this stuff to the bottom. Okay. Right below all this. So default values Zod result. Okay, it just needs Zod resolver. So use form z dot infer type of ticket form schema. The mode is on change. The resolver here is Zod resolver with the ticket form schema, and the default values is going to be name uh, this here or this. Uh, description is from uh, this one or empty and the value is going to be uh, this one or zero. Okay, cool. And uh, th that's how we can also extract is loading uh, right here. Okay, nice. And now what we're going to do is after the is loading, we're going to create our on submit function and on submit is also pretty simple. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it in here and let's take a look at this on submit. So on submit is an async function which has values z dot infer type of ticket form schema. And uh, we have, oops, sorry about that. And if there is no lane ID, we want to return. Okay. So if there's no, no lane ID return, but if it does, uh, then we're going to upsert ticket, which we have to create. So let's go into our schema file again. Where is that? Uh, search contact. Let me go from here. Okay, nice. And we're going to go ahead and upsert that ticket. So I'm going to paste this in here. Go ahead and build this out with me. Okay. So first import this tag from Prisma client. And in here, we're going to say upsert ticket is an async function that takes the ticket, which is prisma.ticket.unchecked create input. Okay. And the tags is going to be an array of tag. We're going to say let order number like this. And then if the, there is no ticket order, we're going to create the order like this. Okay. And same thing here too. We're going to create that ticket order or we're going, or we're going to create that ticket order with the length or we're going to set the ticket order to this right here. Okay. And then after that, we're just going to say db.ticket.upsert where this ID is equal to ticket ID or a new, a new ID. And if it, if it does exist, right, we're going to update it with this information and the tags, we're going to set the tags to uh, these tags, or we're going to create it and we're going to connect the tags with that, with the, uh, with the tags that were sent in. Okay. We're going to pass in the order as well. And we're going to include assigned customer tags and lane. And we're just going to return this response right in here. And let's go back and let's import this upsert ticket now. 
Okay, nice and no errors. The screen just flickered, I don't know why, but okay, no errors there. And now we have the save activity. So um, you guys know about this. So import that and change the sub account ID like this, okay? Nice. And then finally the toast. So to do toast, I'm just gonna import it from UI use toast, okay? And that solves that problem. So you guys are seeing a pattern here, right? There's nothing different. It's literally the same thing on and on. So let me go ahead and refresh this, guys. I'm seeing this problem one more time. Uh, bun run dev. All right, just give me one second, all right? All right, now is a good time to go ahead and pause this ticket form because we just needed it only to show um, these components, okay? So go ahead, pause the ticket form that we were creating, go back into the view, and we need to import some stuff and kind of first figure out the lanes and then we'll figure out the uh, the tickets, okay? So go into your form view and in here, so this is, um, sorry, not form view, it's pipeline view, and we're going to pass in the following props, okay? So the props are all tickets equal all tickets. Okay, so go up top right here, okay? And we're gonna create uh, some values in here, okay? So create this const ticket from all lanes equal ticket and tags. Go ahead and import that. It's an array of this and that's equal to an empty array. Okay. And then we're going to say lanes dot for each items dot ticket dot for each. So for each of these tickets, we're going to say ticket form lanes dot push. Okay. And if you're wondering how you can do this, it's const. You can do that. It's fine. And after that, we're going to create another state in here. And this state is going to be called all tickets is equal to um, the use state with tickets from all lanes. Okay, we're just going to pass that state in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create some um, some stuff in here. Just give me one second. Okay, so what I meant was after this. So just scroll to the bottom. Okay. And after this droppable component in here, we're going to say all lanes dot length equal to zero. Then we're going to just return a div like this. And this div is going to have the following class name. It's going to say flex item center, justify uh, center with full and flex column. Okay. In here, create another div like this and give this the following class name. We're going to say opacity and set this to 100. And in here, create a flag. And this flag comes from Lucid React. And we're going to say width is 100% and height is 100% as well. And that's it. So that's it for this. And you can see, looks great, right? <laughs> you can also make that, um, you can change the color if you like. So say class name, text dash muted dash foreground. So it looks a little subtle. All right, much better. Okay, nice. And now we're going to go ahead and import this first. And we need to also change a couple things. So here it's asking for the pipeline ticket and uh, we did not create the pipeline ticket yet, right? So that's why we're having that error. So we will solve that error in just a second. First, let's go down here and remove this. And we're going to just say sub account ID. So sub account ID. And then uh, we also need to solve this error here. So where is this being used? It's being used in here. So I'm just going to return a div and set the key equal to ticket dot ID. Okay, just for now. And let's go up and just hide this here. And let's create a work in progress flag. And we're going to say um, wire up tickets. And now if we go back, we should not have any errors here. Awesome. So if we create a lane, we should see that lane in here. Let me just cross check. Give me one second. Okay. So it looks good, but I think I may not have explained this area. So I'm going to just go ahead and quickly look through this pipeline lane. So basically we're going to have these props. We need these props, set all tickets. Um, and then we need all tickets. And this is a dispatch this is set state action. Okay. And then we're going to get the tickets with tags. And then we're going to get pipeline ID, lane details, sub account ID and index. Okay. And in here, we're gonna get the set open and the router, and we're gonna create this amount to basically kind of uh, use this to format the currency. And we're gonna say new um, INTL, number format, undefined, and we're gonna pass in an object with the configuration set to style currency and currency is USD. And then the lane amount is going to be uh, use memo, okay? And the reason why we're doing this is every time the tickets change, only then are we going to create the lane amount. So we're going to get and recalculate our lane amount. And that's why we need this so we can cache that. Okay. 
we can memoize it. That's the right vocabulary to use there. Terminology, sorry. So we're going to say tickets dot reduce the sum and the ticket, and we're going to say sum plus number. We're converting the ticket dot value to a number, or we're just setting it to zero. And then I also did this really fun thing here. I just create a random color using this hashtag and basically creating this back tick here. And we're going to say math dot random dot two string sixteen dot slice two to eight. And here I'm going to say add new ticket. So this is a function here, and this is going to basically just get access to the ticket with the tags, and we're just going to set that to this ticket. So if we're adding a new ticket, then we can use this, okay? But that's not important right now. I just want to show you the lane stuff, but I just wanted to read through that. And then we have a handle delete, and we have a handle edit lane. Okay, so this form, as you know, we created this lane form, this lane form right here. This lane form basically has also the default values, right? The default data that we can pass in. So that's what we're using there uh, to update if we need to. And then delete, very straightforward. We're just creating a delete lane function that will basically delete for that lane ID, and we pass in this description, which is delete lane and the sub account ID, and then refreshing it and not, nothing else. Just console dot log an error. And here, what we're doing is we're creating a draggable and this draggable is supposed to have a draggable ID okay so we're gonna say draggable ID equal lane details ID dot to string and then we're passing in the index and we're passing in the key okay just follow through guys it's gonna all sum up okay and then we're going to also uh, pass in this provided so this is a function for a draggable component pass in a function like this and what you're gonna return here is just put the curly bracket and inside the curly bracket you're gonna say if snapshot dot is dragging just use this typescript ignore we're going to say const offset equal to an object with x and y axis x set to 300 and y set to zero and then again typescript ignore a const x equal provided dot draggable props dot style dot left minus offset x and now you may ask why are you doing this the reason why I had to do this is because React Beautiful Drag and Drop has this weird thing where when you have an absolute container, it's using fixed by default. So because it's using fixed by default, when you drag the element, it snaps to some other location in the page. So I had to manually push it around and make it work. So that's what I did here. So just follow through and this should work. If it's not working, tweak this number a little bit until it looks perfect. Okay. And then const y equal provide a draggable props dot style dot top minus offset y. And then again, the same thing here. And we're going to say provided dot draggable props dot style is equal to an object with everything except, you know, the style here, but top y and left y. Then in here, we're basically saying uh, creating a div with, you know, this provided draggable props. And we're passing in a ref with the provided inner ref and class name is height full. And then in here, we're passing in alert dialog. So all this is basically like redundant, like not redundant, but this is not really complex, this part. Okay, this is just a component that has a drop down with a delete icon, edit icon, and a create ticket icon. And that comes when you click the more icon, right? So you can see all those things. But anyway, let's go up here and we're going to just create a drop down menu. Just wrap this inside a drop down menu provider and the alert dialog provider. Create a div here with the following class name. Okay, you guys can see here. Pause the screen and type this out. And then we're going to create another div in here and pass in all the draggable props. Okay, and then that's going to have a class name of this one. Pause the screen and type it. And then here we're going to have a div with the class name of height full, flex, item center, padding four, justify between, cursor grab, and a border dash bottom of one pixel. And then we're going to say flex items center with full gap inside this div. And this one is going to be another div with the random color. So you can think about this as the lane uh, header. It's like a top section of the lane. OK, and you're going to see what it looks like in real time. Just give me one second. And then finally, we're going to have the the drop down menu trigger. OK, also, we're going to have a badge here with the amount dot format, the lane amount. So whatever we created, where's that? Oh, right in here using that use memo. That's what we're passing in there. OK, and then we have the trigger right here and we're going to have a droppable component so that we can drop that lane. OK, that's going to have the droppable ID key and the type is ticket. And then we're going to pass in a function here. Same thing provided. And in here, we're supposed to pass in those tickets. OK, so this section is pretty much doesn't apply to us yet. So you can comment it out if you want or you can, you know, just keep it there. No problem. And then the drop down menu context is just the option with the separator and it has the alert dialog trigger. So when you click on this menu item, it's going to show the delete alert dialog. And then we're going to have an edit which, um, you know, does the handle edit lane, which basically sets a custom modal. And then finally, we're going to have the create ticket.
okay, which will show the same ticket form for creating, okay? And then finally, the alert dialog content. So what do you wanna see inside? And you guys can pause this video and just type this out or copy paste it as well. Both are good. So let's go ahead and see how this looks, okay? So let's create a lane and we're gonna say lead start. No, what's good? What's a good name here? I think something like interested, right? And let's just say save, okay? So something happened wrong. Just give me one second. Okay, I think this is the weird error. Just give me one second, guys. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and click on the create lane. So let's just say lead and just hit save. There we go. Now we have a lane right here. And now you can drag this, right? But it's not going to do anything, of course, because there's nothing there. We also don't have the on drag setup. Okay, so yeah, the tickets are going to be in here. So we're almost there. Let's go ahead and create more lanes to make sure our styling is um, good too. So let's create another lane. So new lead. Okay, engaged. And now if you want to change this, you can hit edit. It's going to show this and now you can remove this and you can change it to something like awaiting payment and hit save. There you go. And that updates. And you see this won't work because um, we don't have that on drag end set up. Okay, cool. So looks great already. And go ahead and create some more if you want to just, you know, make it look nice. We're going to proceed with the other sections now. Okay. All right. Now we can go ahead and proceed with the uh, pipeline tickets. Okay. So you want to scroll up here. Um, let's see. Where did we leave out on that stuff? ticket right here. I think this is where we left it, right? Yep. So we're supposed to pass in a pipeline ticket here and we already created uh, created our pipeline um, add handle create ticket function right here. Okay. So we know what this looks like. It's, I mean, we, we know we kind of built this a little bit, right? So we have to proceed with that, but I'm trying to see if I can also render out a pipeline ticket before that. So you guys can actually build that first. So, okay, let's, let's try that. So I'm just going to pass in the pipeline ticket right in here. And um, I'm, we need to also create this component. So I'm just going to copy this, go in here and inside the components, I'm going to say pipeline dash ticket dot TSX. And let's just return something in here and quickly paste that. And now if you go in here, you can actually import this component. So there we go. Awesome. And now what's what's the matter here? Okay, so the problem is because we didn't I totally forgot we didn't even do anything in here, right? So let's just go ahead and build this out so we can see what it looks like. So let's go to the bottom um, right here. And we're going to do the following. So let's remove this. And we're going to create this div. And this div is going to have uh, that prov um, that provided stuff. Okay, actually, first, we need to create a droppable draggable. Sorry. So since this ticket is draggable, let's go ahead and create a draggable like this. And we want to say draggable ID is going to be equal to ticket dot ID dot to string. Okay. And we don't have this yet. So hmm, let me think if we don't. Okay. So we will have to actually pass this in here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get the props from here, which is set all tickets, which is dispatch like this and set a uh, state action going to import that as well and ticket with the tags. Okay. So, um, that's the first one. And then the ticket is the tickets with tags, sub account ID, which is a string, all tickets, which is tickets with uh, the tags. And then we have, um, index right here and a number. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and import this. Okay. Awesome. And I think that's it. And in here, we're going to also uh, put in some stuff inside this draggable component. Okay. So inside the draggable component, go ahead and hit enter here, and we're going to create a function. So the function looks like this, and this function is going to give us access to the provided and the snapshot like that. And inside here, we're going to say if provided. So if, oh, sorry, if snapshot is dragging, so if it is dragging, then we're going to do that offset thing that we did. Okay. So const offset equal to an object with X at 300 and Y at 20. And then we're going to use this TypeScript ignore, forget this error guys. It's going to here. Let me just solve this error real quick. Return a div. Okay. So, and in here, what seems to be the issue here? Okay. We need to pass in the index. So we're going to say index equal to index. Okay. And um, then we want to say const y equal provided draggable props dot style dot top minus the offset y. And then we're going to just create the object here. Okay. And in here, we're going to return a div 
and this div is going to have the following. So we're fir first we're going to say um, uh, provided. So use a sp spread operator, and we're going to say provided dot draggable props, and then in here create another uh, spread operator. We're going to say provided dot handle drag uh, props. Okay, uh, drag handle props. Okay, and then the ref is going to say provided dot inner ref. All right, and in here we're going to say alert dialog which comes from components, uh, components UI. And this is basically the provider, right? And then we also need the drop down menu. This is another provider. And then we're going to do uh, the following. So this is going to be a card. So I'm going to go ahead and create the card component. And it's going to have the following class names. So you're going to say margin, uh, margin Y of four dark of BG slate dash 900. Um, and then you want to say BG uh, shadow none and then transition all. Okay. Is this wrap? Okay. Does wrap. Why is it stuck there? I don't know. All right. And inside this, we're going to have the, um, the card header. So the card header is going to also have title and description. So in here, go ahead and say card, uh, header like this and card header is going to have a class name of, um, class name of padding of 12 pixels like this. And inside this, we're going to use the card title component and the card title is going to have a class name of flex items dash center justify dash between. Okay. And inside the card title, we're going to have a span with a class name of text dash LG and width dash full. And we're going to say, um, ticket dot name. Okay. So it's going to be the name of the ticket and, um, it's kind of like the header. How do I explain it? Um, <laughs> like the top section, right? And inside this, we're going to have that more horizontal icon. So we're going to say drop down, uh, wait, give me a second. Yeah. Drop down menu trigger. Okay. Menu trigger. And this is going to have a actually no class name on this. And inside this, we're going to have the more horizontal icon. Okay. And it's going to have the class name text dash muted dash foreground like that. And, um, I'm also going to close this component here. Use it as, okay. Yeah. That's so much better. And now after this, um, trigger after the card, um, yeah, after the trigger, we're going to actually close. Hmm, let me think real quick. Sorry guys, this drop down trigger has to go inside this title. Yes, it has to go inside the title. So just put it in there. Okay. So after the span, go ahead and put that drop down trigger inside that. What is this error? Span does not exist. What do you mean span does not exist? Oh, TypeScript is so weird sometimes. What? Give me a second, guys. Let me see what's going on here. Okay. It was just TypeScript. <laughs> anyway. So yeah. And after the car title, go ahead and create another span. So hit, uh, just say span like this and give it a class name of text dash muted dash foreground. And inside, actually, let's also say text dash excess. And this one is going to be uh, the date. So we're going to say new date in here. So new date, uh, in, uh, so new date, invoke it dot to local date string and invoke that as well. Okay. And then after this, go ahead and create a div. So after this span, create a div with flex items, center flex wrap gap to and tickets. So we're going to map over the tags and then we're going to um, say tags dot map and we're going to show a tag component. So what tag was uh, was used, okay? And um, the tag component is going to be something that you actually have to copy because it's just, just styles, okay? So let's go into the pipelines in here. And actually, this is a global component. So I'm going to go into components, go into global, and I'm going to create the tag.tsx. Okay, and in here, we're going to say uh, TypeScript RAFCE, and I'm just going to paste uh, tag component like this. Okay. And, um, this one actually I'm here. Yeah. I'm just going to copy paste from GitHub. Uh, so don't forget to copy paste. Okay. And the tag collector, uh, tag color comes from this right here. Actually, we don't need this. So I'm just going to remove this. Sorry guys, this is not needed. So just remove that. And we're just going to render this component. So just to explain what this component is, it takes in a title, the color name and the selected color. So this is a function that gives us the selected color. Okay. And, um, uh, basically, Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, return a div and this div is going to have the following styles. So we're using CLSX here and these are just standard. So pa uh, padding two, rounded small, um, flex shrink zero, text small, accessory and the cus uh, cursor is going to be pointer. And then in here, uh, we're going to, uh, sorry, we're going to say um, BG. So and we're going to put this hex code So go ahead, pause and type all this or copy from GitHub. OK, and we're going to say text dash and uh, this one. So the text is going to be this color and the background is going to be this color. OK, 
and that's true only when the color name is of type blue and then the same thing for this it's like a like a peach color i guess and a salmon color i guess and you can put this in here the text as well and the color is going to be orange all right and for rows uh, we're going to be use this and text this with rows this so same thing all right and also we're going to add a border and the border is going to be um right here okay so this one's going to be dimmer and the border is going to be super bright and then we're going to say blue and no title so if there's um yeah so if this one this one and this one so if this is true right then do this it's it's ternary operator okay and same thing in here as well and then the key is going to be the color name we don't actually need this key do we hmm. we don't need this key all right i'm not sure why i put this key in here why do i put a key in here okay sorry guys and we're gonna have on click or let's just put it i don't know if it maybe okay if it's not wired up it's fine okay we'll remove it later and then on click right here so if we have passed in a function then we're going to get the selected color so why do we need this so basically um um, when we are using those tags, right, we want to just use the same element for kind of like a color swatch. Like we're going to show color swatches like this and the user can click on the color swatch and then we'll get access to that color that they selected. And then we can create a tag with that color. Okay, really cool feature. So, and then, yeah, we're just going to pass in the title in here. So if there's no title, it's just going to show a box like this. And if there is a title, it'll look like this thing right here. You see something like this. Okay, nice. And now let's go back into our component right in here and let's import this tag component right in here. Okay. And now after this div, go ahead and say card description with a class name of with full. Okay. And I'm just going to import that as well. And it's going to say title dot description in here. Okay. And now we're going to use something called a hover card. And if you don't know what that looks like, it's a newer component, I think, or maybe I'm wrong. Let me see. Um, okay. Hover. Okay. It's not a newer component. It just looks really cool. It just shows more information like this. So we're going to use this component to show the contact information. Okay. So after this card description, go ahead and say hover card. Okay. Like this. And in here, we're going to say hover card trigger. And we're going to set this to as child. Okay. And inside this trigger, we're going to pass in a div like this with padding to text muted foreground flex gap to hover BG muted transition all rounded large cursor pointer and item center. And this is going to have a link icon. So let me go ahead and say link icon like that. Nice. And then a span with the contact. Okay. And after that, we're going to have the hover card content. So after the trigger, say hover card content. Okay. And we're going to say side equal right. And the class name is going to be with dash fit. Okay. And inside this, we're going to do the following. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it right in here. Okay. Nice. And what this is, is it's just a div. Okay. So I just copied this div with flex justify between space X dash four <laughs> space X. That's cool. And inside that we're going to have the avatar going to import this avatar image, the avatar fallback. Okay. Um, did this event import? It did import. It's just taking time. Uh, the avatar fallback, fallback, and this is going to say ticket dot customer dot name dot slice. So the first two characters, and we're going to set that to uppercase. And then we're going to get a div in here. We're going to, I mean, we're going to create a div in here with space Y of one. H4 is going to say text SM font semi bold ticket dot customer dot name. And then we're going to have a paragraph in here. Okay. With the, with the customer's email, with the text set to muted foreground and small. Okay. And then we're going to have the contact to, so I'm just going to import this from lucid react and I'm just going to give it the styling. So so pause this and type it if you want or copy paste from GitHub. And then we're going to say span text SS XS text dash muted dash foreground joined like this. And then we're going to put this basically when they uh, when they join. So ticket dot customer dot created at dot local string. OK, that's it. And um, let me think what else we have. So after this header, we're going to say card footer. OK. Let me make sure I imported this card footer from the right. Okay, from the correct folder. All right, everything looks good. Let's go back to the bottom now. And this card footer is going to have the following uh, class name. So we're going to say margin zero padding two, border top of one pixel, border muted foreground 20, flex item center, and justify between. And inside the card footer, we're going to have a div. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this too. 
um, give me one second. And we're going to say div class name flex item center gap two. And inside that we're creating an avatar, the same thing. Okay. And the avatar image is going to be the ticket dot ticket dot assigned avatar URL. So the, the basically the sub account user that was assigned to this ticket. Okay. And the fallback is either going to be the um, assigned name. Okay. Assigned dot name, or it's going to be, if nothing assigned dot user ID does not exist, then we're going to just use this icon. Okay. We're going to set uh, the size to 14 and the BG is primary and text is white. Okay, cool. And then in here, we're just going to say um, who they're assigned to. So div flex flex column justify center span text excess, sorry, te text SM texted dash muted dash foreground. And we're going to say ticket dot assigned user ID with the assigned to or not assigned. Okay. And then ticket dot assigned user ID. If that exists again, we're going to return a span with a ticket dot assigned name. And that's just going to have the following styling. Okay. So just go ahead and do that. And then after um, this div, so we have a div right here. So after that, there's one more div here, hit enter and create a span. And we want to say text SM font bold. And if there's no ticket dot value, okay. So, I mean, not no ticket, we're creating, we're converting this into a Boolean. Okay. So ticket dot value. And why are we doing this? Sometimes the value can be zero. And if you did this, right, it's going to actually show, show zero if you did something like this. So that's why I have to convert it to Boolean. And we're going to say, and we're going to convert that number using that number formatter. So you're going to say a new INTL number formatter undefined with style currency and currency USD dot format uh, plus ticket dot value. This actually is a trick to convert something to a number. Okay. And um, that will actually convert that. And then after the, um, after the, the card footer, we're going to also have the drop down content. So after this, go ahead and create the drop down content. I'm just going to go ahead and import all of these. Okay. Hopefully you went ahead and imported all these uh, components. And now the handle click edit, I'm just going to go up top and I'm going to create that function. So let's go up top right in here and um, inside this. So where is that inside? Hmm. Okay. We can go completely outside this. That's fine. So in here, I'm just going to say custom modal ticket form, and we're going to also need the uh, set. Um, sorry, what is this? The set open. So I'm going to go ahead and import set open, and we also need router. So let's go ahead and import these two. So use router from use navigation and use modal. Nice. And that's going to be set up there. And now we have the ticket form and the get new ticket is going to have uh, the edit uh, new ticket function. So let's go ahead and pass that to, okay? So this edit new ticket is basically a function that gets the tickets with the tags, okay, at zero. So just one ticket, basically, it looks like this, okay? And then we're going to set all the tickets to um, all tickets.map. So if t.id is equal to ticket.id, then we're going to return the ticket. If not, we're going to return t, t. Okay. All right. And um, so that's how we can edit that. So why is this not imported? Oh, sorry, guys. I put this inside the handle click edit. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put this up top. All right. Sorry about that. And um, yeah, that should fix this problem. Edit new ticket. Even the edit new ticket Let's let's remove this out out of this uh, function right in here, and that should solve that problem too. Okay, much better. And now let's scroll back to the bottom, and that should solve our handle click edit um, error that we had um, right here. Okay, and now we need um, a couple more things. So now that we finished this. We need the, just bear with me guys. I know this is a bunch of redundant stuff, but it's going to be super, super impressive if anyone's, in fact, I actually submitted something very similar to this to, you know, um, a big project in the past and I got the job. So <laughs> it's going to work for you if you do this too. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and um, just do what I'm doing. And this is going to be one of the best projects you have ever seen and you will ever have on your resume. So we're going to create an alert dialog here. So I'm going to say alert dialog content and just go ahead and um, just import this. So just copy this from the GitHub or just pause the screen and type it. And I'm just going to go ahead and import. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. So this handle, so uh, I'm sorry. All right, so hopefully you went ahead and copied it and imported all the components. We have to also fill in this handle delete ticket. So I'm going to copy um, the function and I'm just going to build it. It's a very simple uh, async function that basically makes an API call. Okay, just give me one second. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to scroll to the top 
And after this here, I'm just going to paste it in here. So handle delete ticket is going to basically set all tickets to ticket.filter. So we're just changing the local state. Okay. And we're going to say await delete ticket. So this needs to be created and we're, it's an async. Uh, basically it's a query. So we have to build that in a second. And then we're just going to show a toast. So let me import this toast from use toast. Okay. And we're going to just say deleted, deleted ticket from the lane. Why is this throwing an error? Okay, never mind. And then here we're also going to pass this in. So I'm just going to import this too. And we have to change this if you remember. Okay, nice. And then let's just go ahead and create this uh, query. It's a very, very simple query. So copy this. I'm going to go up top. If I see query in here, I'm just going to click on that. Nice. Scroll to the bottom. And um, I'm just going to say const delete ticket equal async function. Okay. With a ticket ID as a string. And we're going to say const response equal await db.ticket.delete where the ID is a ticket ID. And we're just going to return that. So let's go back in here and let's import that real quick. Nice. Okay. No errors. Everything looks great. And I think we're almost done with this. I think we're pretty much done. Yeah. All right. We, we are pretty much done. Now, one problem is we did not do the tag component. So if you, um, so if you go to the tag component uh, in, sorry, if you, we have to complete our ticket form, I remember. Right. So let's go into our lane and in the lane, you should be able to create a ticket. Where is that? Let's find it. OK, right here. Handle create ticket and let's go into the ticket form. OK, and the ticket form is where we're going to have um, a bunch of other components. Right now, we only have this. Right. It's just a placeholder. So let's go ahead and build that out. OK. Also, I'm not sure if you guys saw this part. I may not have showed this. You might you may just have something like ticket or something like that. But uh, basically, I just created a card with the card header and the title and card content. OK, and I hope you guys have all of this. It's just an on submit um, the use effect. I think you do because I did mention this. Yeah. All right. I think you guys do have this. All right. So let's proceed to this part. So inside the content, we're going to say form. OK, not this form. We're going to use the form from UI and then we're going to use the uh, we're going to destructure form in here. Let's make sure we have also created that. Where is that form? OK, cool. Destructure form. And in here we're going to use native form. And this is going to have the on submit and the class name set to form dot handle submit on submit. And the class name is going to be flex flex column gap four. OK, and inside this form, we're going to have the form field. So I'm just going to paste this and I'm just going to go ahead and import this as well. So this one is for the ticket name. OK, I see some error here. Let me see what is the issue. So it looks like it already is imported. Don't know why we had that issue anyway. So um, yeah, this is for the name of the field, the name of the ticket. OK, so ticket name. And then we're going to have the description of the ticket. So right here, we're going to say form field description like this. And in this one's going to use a text area. So I'm just going to import that from UI text area. And then we're going to have a H3 tag. So after this, an H3 tag called add tags. And let me see if we can create a ticket. OK, cool. We can see that. And after this, we're going to use the tag creator component. And the tag creator component um, is not created. We have to actually create this in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this for now. And then we're going to get back to this in just a second. OK, and in here, um, also, I'm just going to put a work in progress flag so I don't forget. Um, let me see work in progress. OK, work in progress. Add tag creator. OK, don't want to miss any of this stuff. And I will also do a full check at the end to make sure we didn't miss anything. So after this, we're going to say form label assigned to team member. OK, and if you need to import. Yeah. And if you need to import this component, just, you know, go ahead and import it. And then we're going to create a select. So this select, I'm just going to copy and paste it and I'm going to explain it in detail. All right. So after this, it's a very simple uh, select component. OK, so select first, I'm going to go ahead and import everything. So I'm going to you can also, by the way, guys, you can go in here, click on select. So if you were ever building it from scratch, right, let me show you a cool way. You can just copy this import statement. OK, and in fact, I'm going to do that right now. So it's quicker. There you go. And that should solve these problems. OK, I did that a lot. I mean, that's how I was building it. Now you guys have GitHub in production. You're not going to have me. <laughs> so that time, this is what you have to do. OK, um, so I'm going to use avatar image, avatar fallback user two. OK, and that should look good. All right, cool. So I went ahead and imported everything. These errors should disappear in a second. All right. And I'm just going to explain that real quick. So we're going to have a select. OK, with the on change set to set assigned to and the default value is going to be assigned to. So if we got anything 
um, from the API call, right? Or whatever data we got. If you see this default data dot ticket dot assigned dot ID, right? We're basically going to use that in here. And then uh, as the default value, then we're going to create a select trigger with the select value having a placeholder. And that placeholder is going to have div class name flex item center gap two. Okay. And let me see if we can see this. Okay. Just like this. All right. And then we're going to put an avatar image with the contact and the avatar um, fallback is going to be the user two size of 14. Okay. Just like this and a span. And we're just going to say not assigned because by default, it's not assigned to anyone. Right. Cool. And after this, we also have to have the, um, the select content and the select content is going to be all team members dot map and get the team member and we're going to return a select item. Okay. And the select item is going to have a key. It's going to have a value set to that team members ID. And for each team member, we're simply going to have the avatar image. Okay. And we're going to have, um, what is this? The source, which is team member dot avatar URL and the avatar fallback is going to be user two. Okay. Just give me one second. Let me make sure. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to, and we're just going to have the team members name in here. Okay. All right. Awesome. So let's see if we can actually test this because I want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go to our agency and um, let me go into team and I'm just going to assign this team member. So let's go in here, click on edit and let's turn that on. Okay. Awesome. So they now have access and let's go back and see if we can actually find this user. Okay. Okay. Our dashboard is not wrapped in blur page guys. So don't be alarmed. That's why. Okay. But we're going to go into pipelines. All right. Let me click here, create ticket. There we go. Awesome. You can assign a ticket to a team member just like this. Okay. The exact same thing happens for tags as well. Just, you know, a little more complex and the same thing happens for customers. Okay. So I'm just going to build that. I want you to go ahead and take this up as a challenge. This is not easy. I know I understand. And if you can't do it, it's fine. You need to try. So pause this video, give it a shot. After after this, so right after this select component, you want to create the customer component. Okay. Very similar to this. And the logic is already done, I think, right? Let's see. Okay. We have the contact list and we're already setting the contact list from here. So we're getting all the contacts, search contacts, right? From, you know, where this search term is like this, try to see if you can do this. Okay. You have to have a, um, just give you some quick tips. So what you're going to need here is you're going to use the command component. It's the popover command component. You can scroll in here, go to the command component and imagine when you make a search here, you want to basically set, you want to use declare timeout and you want to get those contacts and save the contact list through an API request. Okay. That's literally it. And when you get the results, you want to set the contact list to that result. And that will basically show the result of your search with the contacts. If you can give it a shot, go ahead. If not, no problem. I'm going to show you in just a second. All right. So now you want to go in here. If you got it right, great job. If not, this is exactly what you have to do. And I'm going to show you uh, from scratch. Okay. So let's go ahead and say pop over like this from UI pop over. And this is going to have the pop over trigger. Okay. So I'm going to say pop over trigger components. And this trigger is going to say as child and we're going to say class name of width dash full not fit full okay and inside the trigger we're going to have a button so this button is going to be the following variant with outline and let me import this as well it's going to have a role called combo box and it's going to have the class name set to justify between and all we're doing in here is we're saying contact if the contact exists then we're going to say contact list dot find where the contact dot id is equal to this contact Okay. And this contact is basically a string, right? That's why we just did contact here. If that does exist from the contact list, we're just going to get their name and show their name in here. And if not, we're just going to say select customer. Okay. And this is the Chevron up down icon. Just going to go ahead and import that as well. Nice. And uh, outside this pop over trigger right here, we're going to use pop over content. Okay. And this is going to have a class name of width set to 400 pixels and padding is going to be zero. Okay. Like this. And inside the the popover content, we're going to have the command component. 
So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to explain it in detail. All right. So let me hit enter here. Let's paste that in here. And I'm just going to take a second to just import this. Okay. So all you have to do is create a command component and that command component is going to have a command input. Okay. So first put a command input inside that and we're going to say placeholder search and class name of height nine and the value is search and on change capture. What we're going to do is we're going to have an async component. So when we change the value here, right? Cause it's an input, we're going to say set search to value.target.value. Okay. And then we're going to say if the save timer ref dot current exists, we're going to clear that timeout. And then we're going to create a new timeout by saying save timer ref dot current equals set timeout and pass in an async function. Okay. And this async arrow function is basically going to say const response equal await search contacts. This is another query we created, which needs the search term. So go ahead and say value dot target dot value. Okay. And just use TypeScript ignore here. It just does some really weird stuff. So yeah, put that in here. And then after that, we're going to set the context contact list to the response that we get. And we're going to set search to empty. Okay. And set that to 1000 uh, milliseconds. So this is how it works. Okay. So when you make a search, we create a timer. And when the timer expires, it searches for the results and sets it. And if you make a change before the timer expires, we're going to clear the previous timer and create a new timer. Okay. I hope that makes sense. And then we're just going to say command empty in here. And after this, we're going to create a command group. Remember, I told you to create a command group. And we also have to give a name here but that's fine. I think it's working here. So I think in that situation as well, you don't have to have a command group with a name and we're going to say contact list. So all the contact list dot map, and we're going to get the command item. Okay. And this command item is going to have the key set to the, the contact ID. The value is contact ID and on select. So when we select this contact, we're going to say set contact to be current value equal to the contact. If true, then put an empty string. If, if this is true, just use an empty string. If not, we're going to set this current value. Okay. Which is a string right here. And then in here, we're just going to put their name. Okay. So the contacts name, and then we're going to have a check icon. And this check icon is going to say if the user is selected, right? If that contact is selected, then we're going to say class name CN function, just import this. And we're going to say margin left of auto height of four and width of four and the contact, if it is equal to the contact ID. Okay. That means which one is selected. Then we're going to set opacity to 100. If not, it's going to be zero. So it's going to be hidden. Okay. That's literally it. That's it, guys. If you got this right, you are amazing. If not, no problem. You're learning and you're going to learn so much more. So now after this, we also need a button to submit all of this data, right? So after the popover, go ahead and create a button here. And we're going to say type equals submit and form dot form state dot is submitting. If that's true, we're going to say loading component from global loading, or we're just going to say save in here. All right, done. Now we have one more thing that we didn't build that is very, very important, which is this. Okay. So I did the work in progress flag and I found this. And this is not a, it's not a very simple component, but it's not too bad. Okay. And we're going to look at that. Okay. Actually, it's not too bad guys. It's not too bad. Okay. I promise you. So I'm going to uncomment this and let's go into our global components. And we're going to say tag dash creator dot TSX. Okay. And we're just going to return something from here and I'm just going to paste that whatever I just copied. Okay. So this component is going to be a use client component. Okay. And how this component works is when the user searches for some tag, Let's just say this is an input field. If the user searches for an input for something in here, we need to show, we need to filter out the tag and show what they're looking for. That's the first thing. Then we also have to have the ability to create a tag directly in here. So if they are searching for something like priority, let's just say difficult. Okay. If they're searching for something like this, then we need to basically search that and show it to them. But if it does not exist, we have to give them the ability to create that tag. Okay. And for creating a tag, we need the color and we also need the title. So what name, right? So it's not too complex. I promise you. All right. So first thing in here is we're going to have the following props, which is sub account ID, which is a string, the get selected tags, which is going to give us, which is a function here. And it's a tag of array. It's an array of tags. And the default tags is going to be an array of tags as well. Now let's go ahead and destructure all of these from here. Okay. Awesome. And inside this, we also need to create another type guys. So this type is called this right here. I'm just going to put it right up top. Const tag colors is blue, orange, rose, purple, and green as const. Okay. And then we're going to export a tag color type in, in case we need to use this. And it's going to say type of tag color at number. So we can actually get from here. Okay. We can get it like this. And then inside this, we're going to create 
some states, okay? So the first state is to keep track of the array of tags, okay? So this array of selected tags. So let's go ahead and say set selected tags and selected tags equal U state, and let's import this, which is an array of tags, okay? And it's going to have default tags or an array. And after this, we're going to also get access to all the tags. So these are the ones that were selected, and these are the ones that should be on this page, okay? So tags, and we're going to, again, put the same thing, same data type in here. And then we also need routers. I'm just going to get that as well and just import this from use navigation. And then the, next, we need to have the value, okay? And the value is basically what they are looking for, okay? And then we also need the selected color. So if they are selecting some color, we want to save that state as well. And this selected color should be of this type, but that's fine. We can just put it as a string for now. And then we're going to create a use effect. And this use effect is going to do the following. It's going to get selected tags. So when this spins up, right, when it spins up, a function is going to be provided to us from the props. We're going to invoke that function and we're going to pass in all these selected tags. Okay. So every time these selected tags change, we're going to give that function the new selected tags. That's basically what's happening here. After this, we're going to do a bunch of stuff, but let's move on to the design part. And then as we need, we'll just keep filling it. Okay. The, I mean, we're already pretty much done. It's not too complex. So we're going to say alert dialog. And in here, we're going to have the command. So, and the command allows us to get the functionality of that search feature, right? We're going to say command, command from UI command. And we're going to say class name is BG dash transparent. Okay. And inside the command, we're going to say, we're going to do the following. So we're going to say this right here. Okay. Which is select the tag has a length. If length exists, then we're going to do the following. So we're going to return a div. Okay. Which is flex, flex wrap, gap two, padding two, background is background, border two, border, border, and rounded medium. And then we're going to say the selected tag dot map. Okay. We're going to map over all the selected tags and we're just going to return each tag. So if you're wondering what this would look like, it would look like this. Okay. So imagine this is a tag, right? It would look like that. Another tag next to it, a tag next to it, and it will just have their titles in there. Like for example, pro, right? Some, something, whatever there are words in here that have some meaning, right? So that's what it would look like. And um, in here, we're going to also import this tag component that we created. And we're also going to import X. And I'm going to expl uh, explain this in a second. Okay, nice. And um, in here, we're going to say could return a div with the key set to uh, tag.id. Class name is flex item center. And we're going to say tag component. Okay. And we're going to say title and color name. And in here, we're going to have an X icon. And this icon is if you click on it, it's going to remove the tag from the selected tags. Okay. And the handle delete selected tag is going to be a function. So let's go up here and just create that. So const handle delete selection is equal to an arrow function, which gets the tag ID that we just selected. And we're going to set the selected tags to be filtered out to where the tag ID is not equal to that tag ID. Okay. So it's, it's very simple. After this, we're going to do, uh, we're going to create another div. So hit enter after this here and say div flex item center gap dash two margin y um, dash two. Okay. And we're going to say tag colors and this tag colors, all of this, right? Dot map color name. We're going to return a tag component for it with no title. Okay. Let me see if we can actually get a glimpse of this. Let me refresh. Okay. Tag creator is not defined. Um, let's go in there and let's import this component. Sorry guys, tag creator. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. Okay. Tag creator. There you go. So now it shows the different tags, right? So you can click on these and that will basically set the colors. So now it's set to orange, red, you know, something like that, right? So this is what we need that for. So let me open that one more time and let's go into this, this tag uh, creator and let's continue from here. And after this, we're going to create another div. So hit enter here and say div class name relative and command input. So I'm going to import that is type of command or search. Sorry, I copied this from chat C and UI. <laughs> so search for tag. Okay. And then this is going to be a plus circle icon. So let me input that as well. Did it? Hello. Did you input? Okay. There we go. And this is uh, another function we're going to create, which is handle add a tag. So when we add a tag, we got to keep in mind, we first have to add it locally. And then we also have to add it. So locally in the sense to our states, right? To our selected tags. And we also have to update the database. So keep that in mind. Okay. So let's go up here. I'm going to create the following and I'm going to explain it in detail. So const 
handle add tag is an async function if there is a value. So if they were looking for something, okay, remember the input field in here, okay, on change is actually setting that input field value and the value is set here. So we're setting that value and saving it in here. So if there's any value, then we're gonna, if there's no value, we're gonna just say, hey, tag needs to have a name and we're gonna return. But if, and if there is no selected color, we're gonna say toast, destructive, please select a color. So let's go ahead and import this. Okay, nice. And you can also import this from Sonar, guys. It's a newer uh, newer toast uh, from another library and I think it's actually amazing. So you can use that if you'd like. I'm just gonna use this one for now. And I think somewhere else we're going to actually use Sonar. <laughs> we'll see if we ever get to that. Okay, cool. And in here, we're going to say if there's no selected color, throw in, it's just like show a toast. Okay. And then we're going to say const tag data equal to, ta it's of type tag. And we're going to just pass in these values. So let me import V4. So we're going to pass in the color created at ID, name, sub account ID, and the updated at. Okay. And then the set tag. So we're going to set all the tags that we have to everything that's already in there, plus the new tag that we just created in here. Okay. And then we're going to set the value to empty because we already created the tag, right? And we're going to set the selected color to empty as well. Nice. And now we need to create this action. So now we need to save it in the database, right? So copy this and we're going to go into our queries file and we're going to create this function. Okay. This query. So let me see where can I find that? Okay. Nothing in here. So let's go down to libs queries. I'm going to scroll down and I'm simply going to say export const upsert tag. It's an async function with sub account ID set to a string. And the tag is going to say prisma tag unchecked create input. And this one is going to say const response equal await db tag upsert where the ID is this tag ID or a new ID. And the sub account ID is the following sub account ID. Okay. And we're going to update the tag or we're going to create it if it, if it didn't, if it did not exist. Now let's go back and let's import this. Okay. No errors. Nice. And now we're just going to throw a toast and say created the tag. And we're also going to uh, use this to create a notification and let's change this right in here. Nice. And this is going to say toast variant destruct could not create the tag. So if some error happened, we're going to show that in there and we're almost done. We're almost done. Okay. Now we also need to delete the tag, right? So just remember that. So we created the tag. Where's that? Um, right here. Um, and now we need to delete this as well. So after this div, we're going to get another command list. Okay. And in this command list, we're going to show all of the tags that have been fetched. Okay. So now we have added tags, but now we want to fetch all those tags and show them in a list, right? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this here and I'm going to paste and explain in just a second. So give me one second. Also, I'm just going to import this. Okay. Okay. So I just went ahead and imported it. I'm mean, sorry, imported all the components and you're going to have two errors here. The first one is add handle selection and handle delete. But anyway, we're just going to ignore this and we're just going to look at this line by line. Okay. So first we're going to create a command list, pass in the command separator and a command group and set the headings, a heading to tag. Okay. And after that, we're going to have a command empty and we're going to set this command empty to no results found. And inside the command group, we're simply going to loop over all the tags. So dot map for the tag, we're going to return some tag, right? And that tag is a command item. So we're going to say command item, and we're going to set the key to tag.id like this and the following class name. So hover BG secondary, BG transparent, flex item center, justify between font light and cursor pointer. And then we're going to have a div in here. And this div is basically to create, to had handle the add selections. So we're going to say tag component. Okay. We're going to create this tag component and div on click. So when we click this, we're going to add that tag. So what is this function? So we're going to go ahead and create this function uh, right up here. Just give me one second. Okay. So let's scroll up here and we're going to say handle add selection is going to get the tag, which is of type tag. And we're going to say if selected tag dot every, okay, where t dot id is not equal to tag dot id. Okay. Then we're going to set the selected tags to this. So what does this mean? Basically it prevents us from adding a duplicate tag to our selected tags. That's it. So we're just making sure that uh, this tag does not exist in this array. That's, that's what we're trying to do here. Okay. And uh, we want to make sure, right? We don't want to duplicate that on and on. So that's why we did that. And then we have an alert dialog trigger here, which is if you want to delete the tag itself from the sub account, you can click on this trash icon and all that trash icon will do 
is it's going to send a alert dialog and it's going to say are you sure with the description and the footer is going to have a cancel button and if you are if you're sure you want to actually delete um, this tag then it's going to give you this uh, section right here okay so let's go ahead and create this function so i'm going to scroll up top right here and i'm going to say the following so handle delete tag is an async function which takes in the tag id and it also takes a string here so we're going to set the tags to tags.filter so we're just locally updating our state okay filter where the tag id is not equal to this tag id and then we're just going to say try catch and in the try catch we're going to say const response equal delete tag and this is a new server action so let's go ahead and quickly create that i'm going to scroll up top queries go to delete tag where's that actually i like to click on this so it takes me to this and then i can paste it here so that's easier right because we want to put all related stuff together so upsert tag after that you want to say delete tag async function that takes a tag id const response equal await db.tag.delete where id is tag id and then we're going to return this response let's quickly close this and let's scroll down here and let's go ahead and import this delete tag from here. Okay, so now we can actually delete that and we're going to send a toast and we're going to say deleted tag. Okay, and now we're going to also save the activity log. Okay, change this to sub account ID. Oops, that's it. And then router.refresh and we're also going to show a toast. Okay, nice. And you also don't have to do this. Let me see. Okay, you have to do this because... All right, because the, the, there is still cached purge uh, cache data. So even though we locally are setting this, we have to purge that cache data. So we have to do router.refresh because if you come back, the same API response is going to be cached. So it's going to give you the same data. That's why we're uh, doing router.refresh. Okay, so let me scroll down. That's about it, guys. Awesome, right? So let's see. <laughs> I can't wait to see this because this was this looks amazing. So let's go in here and I'm going to create a ticket. Okay, so there you can see you have this. If you click this, it's going to say tag needs to have a name. So I'm just going to and also there are no tags. So it says no results found, right? So let me just create something, say, uh, let's just say high priority like this. And we're just going to add this and it's going to say it needs a color. So let's say red color and let's create that. Boom. There you go. So now if you click this, it shows it on top in the selected tags. And you can also remove this from here. That's how amazing this is. And now if you actually click out, right? And if you try to create a tag, um, let's refresh that, okay? If you try to create a tag, okay, so it looks like something did not work. Let me see what happened. Guys, give me one second. Okay, so the reason why we are not seeing data here, even though it is in the database, is because we're not fetching them and setting them. So let's quickly do that. So at the bottom here, or with all the use effects, that's where's the other use effect? Okay, right here, we're going to hit enter. We're going to say, we're going to say this, okay? We're going to say, if subaccount ID exists, const, const fetch data, we're going to fetch data here and then we're going to say async function we're going to get await get tag for sub account which is a new function new query so let's go ahead and quick quickly create that it's very simple so i'm going to go up top click on this i taught you guys all the tricks okay <laughs> going to go in here and i'm going to say get tag for sub account which is an async function which needs a sub account id which is a string and we're going to say const response equal await db dot sub account dot find unique where the id is a sub account id and select is uh, and we're going to select the tags and we're going to set it to true so we're going to get all the tags for the sub account we're going to return those tags now let's go here and quickly import that and if response exists we're going to set our tags to response.tags and there you go now it actually updates okay so every time you know we create a new tag it's and refresh i mean we go out we come back in here you're going to see that populate just like that okay awesome guys great job all right now let's go ahead and give this a shot and see if it works first okay i also want to see if we're also rendering some uh, some tickets. So let's go into the sub account, sub account ID pipelines. We want to go into the pipeline ID page and let's just see here. So we have the view. Let's go into the view. Um, we are rendering pipeline lane. So let's go into the lane and let's search and see if we are rendering any tickets. So here we are rendering a ticket and the ticket is has already been built out as well cool just wanted to make sure that we have that stuff so let's go ahead and give this a shot um, right now I'm just going to create a ticket okay let me expand this and we're gonna set this name to um, let's just say website request okay the customer wants a full redesign isn't that amazing and now we're going to select this tag and maybe let's create another tag called web development 
Okay, and we'll go ahead and select the blue color and hit this plus. And now we can select those tags as well. And let's go ahead and assign it to this team member. And just to show you that this works, if you look for something, you see it made a request. And since there, were, there was no data, it just removed everything and it showed nothing in here. So this is actually working. And now let's go ahead and hit save. Awesome guys, there you go. Now you have tickets and this will not work. And the reason why this will not work is because we don't have that on drop end function wired up. That is kind of like the magic here. All right, it looks like we missed one field, which is the value field. I don't see it in here um, and you see it's set to zero. So let's search for value ticket dot value at the bottom. Yeah, we need to have that value field. So give me one second, guys. Let me go ahead and find that. OK, so let's put this value field after the description. So I'm just going to search for description like this. Um, OK, and we have OK, this is the pipeline ticket, guys. We need to go into the ticket form. And now I'm going to look for value. OK, and actually, I don't find the value here. So let's go. Yeah. So let's go to this description. And after this, I'm going to say form field disabled is loading control form dot control name is going to be value. And for render, we're just going to return a form item with the form label control the input, and it's going to have value as the placeholder and you know everything uh, using the spread operator from here from this field. Now let's go ahead and try to first let me try to delete this tag. We never did that before. So I'm going to delete it. Awesome. Deleted. Perfect. Now if I create another tag here, we're just going to say website redesign again. And I'm just going to say customer wants a rebrand. OK, um, and then we're going to come here and we're going to change this ticket value to let's just say five thousand dollars and let's make this high priority and set it to web development. Let's assign it to someone and let's go ahead and create that. So there you go. It shows the ticket value and the lane basically shows the total of all the tickets that are in that lane. And if you don't know how that works, I already I hope I did explain it, but basically it is very simple. In here, we have that memoized value, right? So, so let's go ahead and find that. There you go. It's a memoized value, right? And that memoized value loops over all the tickets and it reduces everything to one single number, okay? And that number is what you see in here. So every time the tickets get updated, so when a new ticket comes in, basically this lane amount gets, you know, kind of refreshed, right? Because it's using use memo and you will get the new cached value. That's what's happening here. Okay, the new memoized value. So that's how you see this value. Awesome. OK, so now please pay close attention because we are going to do something very crucial to make this entire drag and drop feature possible. OK, so you want to go into your pipeline view. OK, and right here we have the on drag end, right? We have to do a bunch of stuff in here. So it's one function that we're going to build out right now. So scroll down all the way to the bottom and we're going to say const on drag end equal to a function that has drop result okay and this drop result is of type drop result so let's just go ahead and do that let me also just console.log in case we need to print this out i don't think we need to but i'm just going to say console.log drop result so we can see what's going on all right and then we're going to say const okay we're going to destructure from the drop result we need destination we need source and we need the type okay and then we're going to say if there is no um, destination, so I'm just going to paste this in here. If there is no destination or the destination dot droppable is equal to the source dot droppable and the destination dot index is equal to source dot index. So this means that we are not dragging over some new elements. Okay, we're just dragging over the same element, right? So uh, if that is the case, we're just going to simply return from here and then uh, we want to check of uh, the drag and drop. OK, so now we're going to do a switch statement. So just say switch like this. OK, and we're going to put the type in here. And inside this, we're going to say the case is equal to lane. And if this is the case, then we're going to do the following. We're going to say const new lanes equal to an array with everything inside all lanes. OK, but then we're going to say dot to spliced and we're going to say source dot index comma one. OK, and then we're going to do two spliced again and then we're going to say destination dot index 
and then we're going to pass in zero and all lanes is going to we're basically going to get this uh index from this array so we're going to say source dot index okay and uh once we get this we want to say dot map okay and we're going to loop over that and we're going to say lane and index okay or here let's just do this so dot map and we want to say lane and let's just spell this index and then in here we're going to say return an object with everything inside lane but order is going to be equal to index okay like this all right awesome so now we have basically just um you know kind of refresh this locally in our local state right nice and then after this const we're gonna set all the lanes so let's go ahead and set it to the new lanes like this and then we want to say update lane order okay and this one comes from the api uh, query we passed in right um, when we created it initially so we're just going to pass in the new lanes like this and it's going to create a transaction and it's going to get go ahead and update that for us okay now what if the case is of type ticket so go to the bottom here after this blue curly bracket we're going to say case ticket and we're going to do the following we're going to say the new lanes equal to all lanes okay and then um, we're going to say const origin lane is equal to new lanes dot find lane where lane id equal to source dot droppable id and then we're going to say const destination lane so which destination do we have to send it to equal to new lanes dot find where the lane id is equal to the destination dot droppable id and that's basically the same thing okay so and then um after this we're going to say um if one does not exist right uh, for example, it's dragged outside the border. Then we're going to say if no origin lane or no destination lane, then we're just going to return. Okay, just like this. And then we're going to rearrange the tickets here. So to rearrange the tickets, we're going to say if source dot droppable ID equal to destination dot droppable ID. Then we're going to say const new order tickets. So let me go ahead and copy this so I didn't make any spelling mistakes. So const new order tickets equal to everything in origin dot tickets okay but dot to spliced source index to one and then to splice destination index zero to origin uh, lane dot tickets at this index and then we're going to say dot map and we're going to return a new item okay with a new order and then after this so uh, inside the if statement itself we're going to say origin tickets okay equal to new order tickets and then finally let's go ahead and set the new lanes right here then we need to update the ticket order so go ahead and update the tickets order and let's go ahead and refresh uh, the page as well so we're updating it in the server right and let me make sure yeah it takes in the tickets a new order of tickets all right nice and then it just goes ahead and you know just refreshes the page and then finally if this is not the case so right here else we're going to say and we're going to say const current ticket. So we're just destructuring this from here. So the origin uh, lane dot tickets dot splice source to uh, source dot index to one. And we're going to just get the first one. So current ticket, and we're going to put it in here. And uh, then we're going to say um, at the bottom here, uh, origin lane dot tickets dot for each for the ticket and the index. We're going to say ticket dot order equal to index. Okay. And then we're going to insert it into the destination lane. So we're going to say destination lane dot tickets dot splice destination index. Oops, sorry guys. Destination in dot index to zero. And then we're going to say a uh, current ticket lane ID and destination dot droppable ID. Okay. We need to we have one more step, which is to rearrange these tickets. So rearrange the destination lane. So we're going to say destination lane dot tickets dot for each. Uh, ticket index and ticket dot order equal to index okay and then finally let's go ahead and set the states uh, so set all the new lane states like this and we need to update the database so i'm gonna say update ticket order to destination lane dot tickets and origin lane dot tickets and finally let's go ahead and refresh okay nice now i'm gonna go ahead and spin up the server give me just a second Okay, so now I just went ahead and spun up the server. And the next thing we need to do is go to this drag drop context and we're going to remove this and we're going to put our new on drag end function in here. So now we can actually do this, right? Awesome. So let's hope everything works. Fingers crossed, okay? So let's, uh, oops, let's extend this, sorry. Wait, give me one second. Yeah, so let's go ahead and move this here. 
And now if we drop it, there we go, guys. It updates and also the value of this lane changes as well. How awesome is that? So if you bring it back to this one uh, right here, oh, why is that not working? Oh, okay, never mind. We just had to move it somewhere else. So there you go. Now it shows $5,000 here too. And now if we change the lane, there we go. The lane order also changes. So let's try to refresh the page. Awesome, guys. So it's working perfectly. So go ahead and, you know, you can create as many tickets as you like. And you see, we're just hovering over this. It's not showing anybody here because we haven't assigned it to a contact. But once we get to contacts and we create a contact, then we can actually assign them to this and you will see their details in here. Okay, great job, guys. I'm super, super proud of you. We have so much to learn in just this one single video. So let's just keep pushing through. Now we're going to go ahead and finish up the settings page. So go in here and I mean, we already created the sub account details page, right? So we just have to render that component. So scroll up top to your sub account and create a folder called settings. And then inside that create a page.tsx. And then um, all you're going to do in here is you're going to render out two things. OK, so I'm going to shrink this so you guys can see more. And I'm going to return uh, the uh, sub account settings page like this. And in here, we're just going to do a couple things. So first thing, go ahead and uh, type in params. So params is going to be an object with sub account ID set to a string. And now let's go ahead and destructure this from here like that. And in here, we're going to say const auth user equal to await current user from clerk next JS. And then we're going to change this to an async component. And let me move this aside a little bit more. And after this, we're going to say if there is no auth user, then we're just going to return. OK, and then we're going to say const user details equal to await db dot user. So let's go ahead and import db like this dot user dot find unique where email is auth user dot email addresses at zero dot email address. OK, like this. And then we're going to say if there is no user details, we're just going to return again. And then here we're going to get the sub account. So we're going to say const sub account equal await db sub account dot find unique where the ID is of params dot sub account ID. And then if there is no sub account, go ahead and return. And then once we get that, we also need the agency detail. So let's get the agency detail so we can show some stuff which is agency.findunique, where subaccount.agency ID is this, okay? And um, let's go down here. And then we want to say, if there's no agency details, go ahead and return. You don't have to return null. I'm just gonna remove this. I'm gonna just quit this server so we don't see this uh, error. And after this, we're going to return the component. So in here, return the blur page component. And inside this, go ahead and create a uh, div like this. And we're gonna give it the following class name. It's gonna have flex, from large devices, flex row, flex column, and gap four. Okay, and let's remove this too. And inside this, we're gonna have that sub account details. So go ahead and import that component, and we're gonna pass in the following props the agency details, the details, user ID, and the username. Okay, and after this, we also need to have the user detail form. So put that in here. And let's import that from our components and that's going to have type of sub account. OK, so if you look in here, we have type which can be agency or sub account. So that's why we have this here. So go ahead and say sub account, put in the ID as params dot sub account ID. And then you want to put in the sub accounts and user data. OK, that should be it. So let, give me a second. Let me go ahead and spin up the server. Now, if you go to the settings page and you click this here, click on settings, you will now see all the details of the sub account. Okay. As you can see, sub account information and all this kind of stuff right here. And you can also change your user information. So if someone else is logged in, they will see their information and they cannot change this here. Okay. Awesome. Great job, guys. So now let's uh, move on to the next part. Hey, just wanted to check in on you. I hope you're having fun, but I just want to let you know that you're just one step away from becoming a prodigy. And all you have to do is subscribe because we are going to be the best web development community on YouTube. And I want you to be a part of this journey. All right. I hope you have fun watching the rest of this video. And I have a really cool announcement at the end for you. All right. Now we're going to build the contact page. So head into your sub account ID, create a folder called contact and a page called page.tsx and just return a component in here and change this to contact page like this. And in here, first, we're going to get the props, which is going to have params, which has sub account 
ID, which is going to be a string. Okay, so I'm going to put that in here and I'm going to quickly go ahead and destructure it from here as well. Like that. Nice. And now we're going to create a type. Okay. And this type is called sub account with contacts. And this is a sub account. So go ahead and import that. And it extends to have a contact. So let's go ahead and create this type. And then we're going to say ticket. Okay, so this contact extends the ticket, which is going to be an array of tickets because a contact can have multiple tickets assigned to them, right? So that's what we're doing here. And now after this, we're going to say const contacts equal to await. And let's go ahead and change this to an async component. And let's import db and say sub account dot find unique. Okay, where the ID is params dot sub account ID. Okay just like this. Nice. And you can also, I mean, if you want, you can destructure the sub account, but that's fine. Okay. Just do it like this. So params are sub account ID, and we're going to include the following. We're going to include the contact, but in here, we also want to include the ticket. And in here we want to select, um, the value. So where value is true. Okay. And after this, so right after include statement, so right here, you're going to hit enter and you're going to say order by created at and then ascending like this. Okay, nice. So let me make sure this is exactly what we're supposed to do here. All right, we have the value. Nice. And at the end here, we're going to say as sub account with contacts. Okay, so now you see this. Okay, it's of this type and this type looks like this. Nice. And then at the bottom, we're going to say const all contacts equal to, let me change this also to capital C equal to contacts dot contact. Okay. Like this. And then we're going to get the format total. So what is this format total? We're just going to get the estimate of that contacts ticket. Okay. So what their value is. So in here, that's the discord blowing up guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we're going to say const like this format total equal to an async function. And this async function is going to take in tickets, which is going to have ticket and an array of them. And if there's no tickets or there's no tickets dot length like this, okay, then we're going to simply return dollar sign uh, in a string dollar sign 0, 0.00 like this, because this is the value of that contact. Okay. And after this, if not, we're going to say const amount equal new we're going to use the um, INTL, okay, INTL, number format, pass an undefined and an object with style set to currency and currency set to US dollars. And then const lane amount equal to tickets dot reduce. So this is where we're changing that, okay? And we're going to reduce it to the following. So we're going to say um, sum. So we get an arrow function, right? So this is the arrow function and this is the default value. So it gives us access to sum and the ticket itself. So we're going to say sum plus number ticket dot value. We're just converting it right here. And then we're simply going to return amount dot format lane amount like this. Nice. And after this, we're just going to return a table component. And this is a much more simple table component. Um, so nothing complex. So here we're going to first do blur page like this. Okay. And then we're going to create an H one. So this needs to have a child. So H one like this, and we're going to call this contacts. So if you go to the contact page, okay, it's not present. So something seems to be wrong here. This should probably be contacts, I think. So let me refresh that. All right, there we go. It's contacts. All right. So just make that change here. Guys changes to contacts and we're going to have the blur page. And then we're going to say table, uh, sorry, we're going to also going to have a create contact button. So we're going to have a create contact button. So we'll come to that in just a second. So I'm going to say work in progress, create contact button. Okay. And in here, we're going to have a table. So go ahead and import table from components UI table. And in here, we're going to have the table headers. So what are the headers? These are the headers right here. So table header, table row and table head import that too. Nice. Awesome. And now that is all imported. So it looks like this. So these are the table headers. Okay. And inside this I'm going to have the table body. So after the header, go ahead and create table body. And it's actually very simple. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. Okay. Nice. And I'm going to import these components like that. 
Nice. So go ahead, pause this and just go ahead and import everything. Okay. So I went ahead and imported everything and you will probably have this error here, which is to import format. And this format actually comes from a package that's already imported. Uh, that's installed from chat CNUI. So let's go ahead and say import format from date slash FNS slash um, format like this. Okay. And now that error should go away. Awesome. Nice. Okay. And now basically when a contact comes in, it's going to basically show up in here. Okay. And it's going to have, you know, their avatar logo and all that kind of stuff. And the avatar logo is actually just a fallback component, nothing else. Okay. So now let's go ahead and fill in that create button. So I'm going to remove this work in progress in here and let's go ahead and create that button. So this button is called create contact button. And this is actually, let me just close this component. I want it to be a closing tag. And this component is going to take the following. So let's go in here first. And inside the contact create a folder with underscore components. Okay. And we're going to say create contact button dot TSX. And let's simply return something from here. And I'm going to change that name. And in here, we're going to get access to the sub account ID, which is a string. And let's go ahead and destructure this from here. And now we're going to first get the modal. So now if we need the modal, this has to be a use client component. So I'm going to say use client and let's go ahead and import use modal. Nice. And now we're going to create a create handler, which just shows a form on the screen. Okay. So take this up as a challenge. Okay. I'm going to build just this one part here. So you get the idea right here. So we're going to have a button and here is your challenge. You are going to create this handle, create contact button. What this button has to do is when the user clicks on this button, a form should show up to get the contact information, which is only the username and stuff like that. So let's see right here what we have. So let me go into the contact so we can see more in depth. We have contact in here. So the contact, oops, sorry, we need to go into a Prisma schema. Where am I going? So we have a contact, okay? And this contact is gonna have the name, the email, and of course it, uh, you know, we also have to send in the sub account ID and this ticket, okay? I hope that makes sense. All right. And this ticket here um, is just an array, so you don't have to add anything, but I'm just giving you an idea of what you have to create. Give this a shot. Okay. If you can't build it, I'm going to show you in just a second. So go ahead, pause this video, give it a shot and come right back. All right. Hopefully you got it right. If not, this is exactly what you need to do. So go ahead and create a function called handle create contact. Okay. And this set open, we're going to invoke it. And the first parameter, I mean, the parameter is going to be the custom modal. So let's go ahead and import that as well. And we're going to pass in a new form called contact user form. Okay. So let's go ahead and create this um, contact user form. So go into your components in here, go into forms and say contact user dash form dot TSX. And let's just return a component from here. Okay. And inside this, it's a very simple component. Okay. We're only going to have name and email. That's it as the field. So I'm going to replace this guys. Don't worry. We're going to break it down in, in depth. Okay. So in here, we're going to have first the use modal use router, and we're going to do the form stuff. You guys know how this goes, right? We have the form, we have the use form and a Zod resolver and the form schema is going to be the following. So we need to create this. So let's go into our types right in here and we're going to create the contact user form schema. So just paste this in here. And this is basically Z dot object with the name, which is Z dot string minimum of one and required. Okay. And the email here is also minimum. Uh, I mean, is it's email field. Okay. So let's quit this, go back here and that looks great. Now, um, the other thing we need to do is let's just read this and we'll fill it as we go. Okay. So now we have a use effect that basically checks the, um, data. So this data comes from our modal. Okay. So when this modal is opened, we are actually populating it with data. So we're going to say data.contact. So if contact information exists, then we're going to basically do form.reset data.contact. Okay. And it's saying contact does not exist on modal data. So try to make a guess. Why is this happening? Hopefully you got it right. And if you didn't, it's because inside our modal provider, we don't have the contact in here. So let's go ahead and say contact. Okay. And import the contact like this from Prisma schema. Okay. From our Prisma. That's it. Now, if you go back in here, contact does exist. 
Awesome. Great job. Now in here, we're going to simply reset this once the data changes. So when data gets populated, we're resetting the form. And now we're going to have the is loading here. So form dot form state is loading. And then we have an handle submit. So when the form is submitted, what are we doing? We are upserting contacts and we're saving all the contact details. We're saving the email. We're attaching and connecting the sub account ID and we're also passing the name of that contact. Okay. You can do other stuff too, like mobile number, you know, whatever you want. No problem. Okay. But this is what we need. And here, what is this? Sub account. So go ahead and change this to sub account ID. All right. And then we're going to show a toast once we uh, upsert the contact, which we need to create in a second. And then we're going to refresh, show the error if something happened wrong. So let's go ahead and create the upsert contact. So I'm going to click on this uh, libs queries. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to do the following. We're simply going to say export const upsert contact is an async function that has contact set to prisma.contact unchecked create input. This is what it looks like. Okay. And then we're going to say const response equal await db.contact upsert where the ID is contact.id or create a new ID. And we're going to update the data if it exists, or we're going to create a new contact if it doesn't exist. Now let's go back and that should solve that error. Looks amazing. Now, what does this look like? Very simple. There's nothing in here. Two fields. We have a card. We have the card header, card title and description. Okay. We have card content. So let me shrink this. So it looks so simple for you. We have the card content, the form, and you know, this form. And now we have two form fields. What are these form fields? First one is name. Second one is email. That's it. And then we have a button at the bottom, which has type of submit and the is loading states. And if form is, is loading, right? Then we're going to show this loading or we're going to show the save contact details. So if you got this right, great job to you. All right. You deserve that. And that means you've really learned a lot from this video. If not, don't worry, just keep doing the same thing and you're going to understand something called pattern recognition. Okay. And as time goes, you're going to understand how to write things without even knowing what happens behind the scenes. Then learning behind the scenes is easy because the discord is open to you. So all you have to do is say, Hey, how's this actually working? And we got you. Okay. Awesome. So now let's go and import that contact form. So import this nice. And we also have to import the create contact button. Nice. And this needs the following. It needs sub account ID, which is equal to sub account ID, which comes from params dot sub account ID like this. All right. And uh, give me a second guys. I will go ahead and restart the server again. All right. Awesome. Now, if we try to create a contact, the form is going to show up. And now if I say something like, uh, let's just say Jacob. Okay. And we're going to say Jacob fake email at gmail.com. And if we save the contact detail, there we go. We have their information and they are set to inactive because the value of this contact is zero. Zero dollars. So they are an inactive contact. Now, if we go, I want to show you something really, really cool. If we go into pipelines and whoa, that animation is really cool, right? And if we go in here and if we try to edit this, we can actually assign a contact. See, we can assign Jacob. So if I search for Jacob like that, we can click on their name and we can hit save information. And now that is updated. So if you hover over the contact, you now see Jacob's information here and he is assigned to this ticket at $5,000 value. Now, if we go into contacts, we see they are an active client that has a $5,000 ticket value. How cool is that? You can really, really run an amazing business just using um, this, you know, feature because you can see your estimated pipeline value, um, which we will build in just a second. Um, and your clients can see that on the screen and they can know how much they are expected to close and make if they closed all their pipelines, basically. Awesome guys. Great job. I'm super proud of you. Let's move on now. All right, guys, we just have to make a really quick change here. So if you click on the notifications and if you have a bunch of them, you're going to notice that all these notifications are kind of cramped. Okay. And the reason is because of the flex. So go ahead and remove this flex and flex call and that should fix that problem. But now you can't scroll. So you want to say overflow scroll. Okay. And now you should be able to scroll like usual. All right. Awesome. And the other thing you're going to notice is this does not work. I tried it. I thought it, I thought it was wired up, but I know the problem and the problem is actually happening 
right here. So on our switch component, instead of on change capture, we need to do on checked capture. Okay, so I'm going to use on checked here. Let's do that one more time. So on change. And now when we change this, now you see it's actually updating. Okay, so that was the problem, guys. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I messed that up. But yeah, that was the solution to that problem. So now if you log in with a different account, so just to show you, right? So right now, this is a sub account, they will not see that anymore, right? They won't see that thing up top, but they will see all the sub account related information. So updated a ticket, updated a contact pipeline, and so on, and so forth. But they will not see this one up top, which is updated a sub account because that is only available for the agency. So right here, as you can see, um, I created another sub account, right, called cloud. So that's the notification that's showing right there. Okay, and you won't see that in there. And of course, you won't see this joined as well um, inside the sub account. So that's what we needed to fix. So all right, let's move on now. All right, guys, if you have come so far, I am super, super excited for you because you are going to see how to use Stripe to connect any account into your application because that's what we're going to be working on, which is Stripe. OK, and we also have a really, really fun feature that we're going to be working on shortly right after that, which is the funnel builder. It is a full website builder that I built from scratch and I could not find a single resource on the internet that uses a decent engine okay so we did not use any package for that nothing it's completely from scratch and i'm going to show you guys how to build something like that okay and with the help of that funnel builder guys you can build almost any website i'm sure you guys saw in the demo so i would love to see you guys build out some websites and put them in the discord after this video okay so what you're going to do first is you're going to go to Stripe, all right, and go ahead and click on Start Now, and it's going to prompt you to log in. So go ahead and log in and come back once you're done. All right, so once you're done logging in, go to Connect. So you can search for Connect here and click on Connected Accounts like this, and it's going to take you to this page, okay? And also, guys, if you want, you know, I do have that entire breakdown fully documented of the entire Stripe process. And if you guys want that, just let me know, okay? And I'm, I'm sure I would have probably put some links somewhere for you to access that as well, all right? So what you wanna do now is to click on Get Started with Connect. So make sure you're on test mode, first of all, and click on Get Started with Connect. And it's gonna do something here, and in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're going to populate these three fields. So. Because we're working with Stripe, we need to populate some of our environment variables. So I'm going to go ahead and quit our server like that. And the first thing is the subscription percentage. So as the platform owner, that means since you own the platform Plura, you get to charge a percentage of every single transaction uh, that happens through a subscription. And that is going to be 1% of every single transaction, whether it's from the agency, sub accounts, whatever it is. Okay. And then you're going to have a one-time fee of $2. So if there was no subscription and there was a one-time, like a product or something like that, the sub accounts were selling on their websites, you charge a $2 fee. Okay. And then finally, we're going to have the platform agency percentage. This is a challenge for you. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you a bunch of stuff and I'm going to give you the right guidance to, you know, do this to how to transfer money into another account. But with the knowledge you have right now, which I'm going to show you in a bit, you will definitely be able to do that. And if you don't know, you know, the discord is open because this is a real challenge for you. Okay. You need to take action and try. Okay. <laughs> so go in here. And once you're done doing this, you're going to go to connect and it, it's just going to spin up some stuff. And first you need to verify your email. Okay. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to do it. So just give me a second guys. Okay. So I went ahead and verified my email and then you're going to scroll down here and you're going to click on complete your platform profile. So open this and go ahead and click on start. Okay, awesome. So once you come to this page, scroll down here and click on website building or hosting, and then go ahead and hit continue. Okay, so where do your customers purchase products or services? Well, from your seller, service provider, uh, from your platform, website, let me see which is the best option. The first one looks like the best option. So select that and go ahead and hit continue. 
So whose name is listed with the transaction on the customer's credit card statements? So for us, it is the service or the seller, right? It's not plural, right? So we're going to see this one, which is Squarespace customer, see the business they purchased from on their credit card statement, or we have Lyft riders see Lyft on their credit card statement. We don't want this. Uh, we want the business they purchased from on their credit card statement. Uh, this one looks better. So go ahead and hit continue. So who should customers contact if they have a dispute? So we're going to say this seller or the service provider. Okay, A Shopify customer would contact the business about an issue with a product or service. They're not going to speak to Plura. Okay, We don't do anything. We just make money. <laughs> okay, We just make a month-to-month -month subscription. That's it. So go ahead and review this. Make sure everything's okay. And click I'm not a robot. Apparently I'm not a robot. And go ahead and hit submit. Okay, Why does it say an unknown error? Okay, maybe you just needed me to sign in one more time. Let me do that. Okay, great. Hello, Stripe. Oh, what is going on? Guys, let me let me sign up one more time, okay? Give me one second, guys. Okay, I just refreshed the page, and it took me to this, which looks like the correct page, and I guess it works, okay? So, um, creating a connected account, we're going to... Let me just click on this real quick which is recommended. So we want to click on that. Okay, so it's just routing me to that. Okay, so these are the different options, right? You can have a standard account that can be connected. You have transfers where you can allow connected accounts to receive funds from your platform. So this part would be your challenge, but we're just going to skip this, okay? And then we're going to have the direct charges, which means it's the easiest way to enable your accounts to process payments, okay? So guys, again, I broke everything down in the documentation. You will go crazy, guys. I spent months literally looking through all this documentation. All right, awesome. So give me one second. I will uh, move forward to the next process now. All right, awesome. So um, once you're on this page, right, this is where we were, click on connect settings. Just click on these breadcrumbs and it's gonna take you to this page. All right, guys, I really hope you're doing this with me. So just continue, okay? If you haven't, just follow through, okay? so. Um, this one is going to say a different country, even though I'm not here because I was here as a vacation. Never mind. And everything else looks good. I think so. Give your connected accounts full access to Stripe dashboard, which is good. Okay. Capabilities, card payments, allow connected accounts to process their own cards. All right. Required. Re All right. So here we're just going to say um, you can create the you know business name. So this one, we're just going to say uh, Plura. Okay. Like this. Uh, copy your brand settings to new connected accounts. Actually, we don't want this. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to also leave this stuff here. And for the brand color, um, you can just change this to, you know, whatever color you like. I think the blue one looks really nice. I'm just going to put blue. Okay, nice. And now um, there's no save button. Save branding. Okay, just click on that. Okay, it went ahead and saved the changes. And now scroll to the bottom and you're going to see this client ID and redirect URLs. So first, let's go in here and copy this test mode client's ID. Okay, go ahead and copy this. And you want to go into your environment variables and you're going to see this client ID right here. Okay, paste this. Now, keep in mind, when you go to production, you have to change this to the real client ID. Okay, since we are in test mode, we're seeing the test mode client ID. All right, nice. Now, uh, what's the next thing? We need to also get um, a bunch of other stuff. So what is this? Enabling an OAuth flow allows your users to onboard to Stripe using OAuth for that account type. Um, so we can actually turn this on. We want this to be on. And there's no save button. I don't think there's a save button. All right, cool. And the redirect URLs, we actually need to set this. So just give me one second, guys. All right, so we're going to click on this add URI and we're going to paste this link in here. Okay, HTTP dot slash slash localhost 3000 slash agency. So add that URL and then we're going to add one more. And this one is sub account. Okay, so these are basically the links that Stripe will redirect the user to after they have connected their account. All right. So once you've done with that, I think uh, connect is only available in test mode, activate your accounts. All right. We don't care about this part. I just wanted to see what that was. Okay, cool. So I think we pretty much have these steps. Let me see uh, what are the other steps we need to complete. Okay. I think we're good there. So now what we need to do is you're going to go and search API keys. Okay. And click on that. It's going to take you to this page. And now you want to go to this publishable key and copy this publishable key. So click on it. It's going to copy that. And now go into your environment variables and you see Stripe publishable key right here. 
go ahead and paste that and it should say PK in front of it okay now we need the secret key so to get the stripe secret key reveal the stripe secret key right here and you're gonna go ahead and copy this from here okay and now you can come in here and paste that secret key in here now this webhook secret ID we're not gonna get right now uh, we will get this in a second okay so just give me a minute I will uh, get you to that page Okay, now the next step is to go ahead and wire up Stripe, um, at least to some extent, inside application, okay? So go in here, inside your libs folder, create a folder called Stripe, and then create an index.typescript, and then actions.typescript, and then stripe-client.typescript, okay? And in the index file, we're going to type the following. So we're first going to install Stripe. So open your terminal first. Let me shrink this and we're going to say bun add stripe and let that install, okay? And now up top, right up top here, we're going to import stripe from stripe like this. And then we're going to say export const stripe equal new stripe like this, invoke it and we're gonna pass in process.env and we want to use that stripe secret key, okay? So put the stripe secret key and then we're going to put the uh, this optional chaining here, and then we're going to put a comma here and an object, and inside this object, we're gonna set the API version to 2023, 10, 16, and then the app info right here is going to be plural app like this, and the version is gonna be 0, 0 0.1.0, okay? Now, you wanna go into Stripe client, which is in here, and in here, we're gonna import another uh, package. So go ahead and say bun add at stripe slash stripe dash JS, and go ahead and install that. Now, we need to import the following. So we need to import load Stripe and Stripe from this package, and then we need to say let Stripe promise is of type promise like this, and we're gonna say Stripe or no okay and then after this we're going to export const get stripe equal to and this is going to be a error function and we're going to pass in some custom values here okay i know this is this is not going to make sense i understand it's fine basically we're creating a function here that allows us to load stripe and if there is a sub account we're going to put in that connected account id okay if it doesn't make sense don't worry just follow through so connected account ID, which is gonna have string like this. And in here, we're gonna say, if there's no Stripe promise, then uh, we're going to say Stripe promise equal to load Stripe, invoke that. And we're gonna pass in process.env dot next, uh, next public Stripe publishable key. And you're gonna pass in this string here. And then you're gonna pass in an object like this. So hit enter, pass in an object. And this is gonna have the Stripe account. Okay, so if you pass in a connected account ID, it's going to use that ID. Okay, if not, it will use um, this publishable key. Okay, I think that's how it's set up, but if not, uh, you'll see as we're using it uh, and how it works. So now we're going to return the Stripe promise like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and build out an action real quick. And this action is going to have, uh, this page is going to have use server up top and what is this action so you can think about this uh like admin actions okay so when we're performing some sort of actions in here that time we want to um when we're performing some actions from stripe which come from our webhook we want to create subscriptions and things like that so that's why we need this okay i hope that makes sense all right so in here first we're going to go ahead and import the following packages from stripe from db and from our local page stripe right here okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to export const subscription created okay so subscription created which is equal to an async function and this is going to take the following parameters which first one is the subscription which is stripe dot subscription and the customer id which is a string okay and now we're going to set a try catch in here and we're going to say const agency equal to await db dot agency dot find first where customer id so customer huh mm, let me see what's happening in here okay so i think we did not actually put this hmm yeah i think we didn't put this in the in the schema let's inspect our schema okay so give me one second 
Okay, so go to the agency here and after the connected account, go ahead and say customer ID like this. Okay, and then because customer ID is only going to be there for the agency, okay, because the customer ID is basically the ID of the user that is subscribed to our services, okay, to Plura basically. So go ahead and put that in there. The sub account will not have that, they will only have the uh, connected account ID, okay. So now open your um, terminal and say bun x prisma generate and bun x prisma db push like this. All right, awesome, and that went ahead and updated that for us, okay, cool. And now um, what we need to do is we're going to go back into our actions here and we're gonna say customer ID like this. And after the where, we wanna include the following. We wanna include the subscription and set it to true. And now we're gonna say if there's no agency, then throw new error and we're just gonna say could not find an agency to upsert the subscription, okay? But if the agency existed, then we're gonna say const data equal to active subscription.status, okay, equal to active. So we're gonna create a data here. Uh, we're gonna create this set here, the data set. And then we're gonna say agency ID is that agency ID with the customer ID. And then we're gonna say current period end date is new date subscription.current period end into 1000. And then we're going to set price ID to be subscription dot plan ID like this and subscription ID to be subscription ID and plan to be subscription plan dot ID. Okay. And after this data, we're going to say const response equal await db db dot subscription dot upsert. Okay. And we're going to say where agency ID is agency dot ID and we're going to create data or we're going to update data like this. Nice. And after this, we're just, I'm just going to print a message here saying created subscription because this will help us debug. So, and in here, I'm just going to print if any error happened. And then finally, I'm going to have one more action in here, which is const export const get connect accounts products. So this is for the sub accounts when they have a website running and they have products online, that time we want to get their connected account products, right? So that will be right in here. So we're going to say async. And this is going to have the Stripe account. This is going to be of type string. And in here, we're going to say const products equal await Stripe dot product dot list. And we're going to open this curly bracket here. We're going to say limit to 50 products. And we're going to expand something. We're going to expand the data dot default underscore price like this. And after this object, go ahead and create another object and we're going to say Stripe account just like this. Okay. And then finally go ahead and return the products dot data. And this, if you hover over this, you'll see it's returning that product data. Okay. And this is an array of a bunch of products. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, now we're going to go into our app folder in here. Let's shrink everything. And inside the API, we're going to create some sort of routes. Okay. So create Stripe in here and inside the Stripe, you're going to create the following folders. So the first folder is called create dash checkout dash session. And um, it's not sessions actually it's session like this. And then we're going to have one more in here, which is called create customer. Okay. And then we're also going to have create subscription just like this. Okay. Nice. So let me cross check. Please don't make any spelling errors here. Take a look at it and cross check as well. Okay. So inside the create subscription, create a route.typescript. And in here, we're going to do the following. So first we're going to import DB from our folder, Stripe from libs. So please be careful. This is from libs, not from Stripe. Okay. Lib and Stripe. And then next response from next server. And then here we're going to export an async function. So I'm just going to say async arrow function or just say export async function post like this. And we're just going to do this. Okay. And in here, we're going to get the request and this request is of type request. And now we're going to say const customer ID and price ID is going to be equal to await request.json. Okay. 
cool and then if there is no customer id or there is no price id we want to go ahead and simply return something here so we're going to say return new next response and we're just going to say customer id or price id is missing okay so i'm just going to put that in here and make sure you pass in the status so the status is going to be 400 like this and then after this, if the subscription already exists, we're trying to find that, right? So subscription exists, awaits db.agency.find first, where the customer ID includes subscription true. And then we're gonna create a try catch block in here. So go ahead and say try catch like this. And the first thing is we're gonna create an if statement. So put an if statement in here, and it's gonna say subscription exists, dot subscription, dot subscription ID. So that means the subscription exists and their subscription is active, okay? Then we're only going to update the subscription instead of creating one because it already exists, right? There's no point in creating another subscription. So we're gonna say here, we're just gonna make a quick check if the ID actually does not exist, then we're gonna throw an error and say could not find the subscription ID to actually update it, okay? And I'm gonna put a message in here so I can actually see what we what's happening, right? So console.log, updating the subscription, and then we're gonna say current subscription details. So let's get their subscription details, which is await stripe.subscriptions.retrieve. The subscription exists dot subscription um, dot subscription ID. Okay, and then we're going to say const subscription equal to await stripe dot subscriptions dot update subscription exists. Okay, dot subscription subscription ID. So we're going to update that ID. Okay, and we're going to set the items to be ID current subscription details dot items dot data at zero dot ID. Okay, like this. And then we're going to say um, this. So deleted uh, true. Okay, deleted true. And then we're gonna say price uh, to, and set it to the price ID. And this price ID basically comes from the URL. So whatever um, from this JSON, okay, from the request. So whatever they are sent, whatever they are clicked on that price ID, okay? And then after this, we're finally going to expand the latest invoice dot payment intent because we need this information to send it back to the client, okay? So after this, hit enter, and we're gonna say return next response.json subscription ID, which is this ID, and the client secret. This is an important one, okay? Which is subscription.latestinvoice.paymentintent.clientsecret. And please put this TypeScript ignore stuff, all right? Um, it's because we're expanding, it's not part of the default object, so it's causing that error. And now if this subscription does not exist, let me search for that ending bracket right here. We're gonna say else, and we're gonna create another bracket in here, okay? So first I'm just gonna say, now we're creating this subscription, so just put a console log message, and go ahead and create the subscription. So we're gonna say cons subscription equal await stripe.subscriptions.create, uh, and we're gonna put a customer ID in here, and then items, um, we're gonna say price, price ID, so whichever subscription they wanted, so that price, and then payment behavior is default incomplete. Please put this, super, super important. Okay, default incomplete. The payment settings is gonna be save default payment method to be on subscription, okay? And we're gonna expand this payment intent so we can send that payment intent to the client. So after this, right here, hit enter, and we're going to say this. So we're gonna say return next response.json subscription ID dot subscription, so this ID here, and the same thing, we're just returning the same object here, and that's pretty much it. Now, when an error occurs, we need to print that, so go in here, we're gonna say console.log error, return new response, internal server error, and we're just gonna send this response here, okay? So we pretty much have this set up, um, and the next one is to create a customer, okay? So now, go in here, go to create customer, and create route.typescript, and in here, we're first going to import the same thing. So I'm just gonna import this. And we don't have this type, guys. We don't have Stripe customer type. So I'm just gonna go ahead and build that, okay? So give me one second. What you wanna do now is go into your libs types, and we're gonna create the following Stripe customer type. So go ahead and say export type, Stripe customer type, and uh, we wanna say string shipping, which is gonna be shipping info, and address is gonna be address. So for shipping, we're gonna have the following types. So the shipping info is simply gonna have address, which is of type address, 
and the address is going to be of this type right here. Okay, this address. And then that's it. Okay, that's it for that shipping stuff. And then we're going to create another type here, which is called price list. Okay, so go ahead and say export type price list equal to this stripe.api list and open this here and say stripe.price. And this stripe actually comes from here. So go up top and import stripe from stripe. Okay, so now you should not see that error anymore. Okay, looks great guys. And now let's go back into our route so we can continue. And we're going to just create a function here like this. So create a function called post request is request. And in here, we're going to first extract the data, okay, from that customer. So we're going to say address, email, name, shipping, which is of type Stripe customer type. And we're going to get it from uh, request.json, okay. And then we're going to say if there's none of this is not satisfied, we're just going to return and say missing some data, okay, with status of 400. And then we're just going to create a simple try catch does the following, which says await stripe.customers.create with this information. And we're going to return that customer ID so that we can save it in the database inside the agency. Okay. So if you realized we actually didn't have this set up in the beginning, right? So we're going to do that. And also again, for the error, just go ahead and do, you know, this thing right here. Okay. So now we're going to go back into your queries. So give me one second. So go into queries. Where do we have that? All right, guys, sorry, that wasn't here. That's actually inside the forms. So I got a little confused there. So let's go into forms. Hopefully it's here and let's go into agency details and let's look for where we are creating the customer data. Okay. Customer. Okay. Customer ID. We have something in here. So that's good news. Let me see. Where do we put this? So this is called customer ID. I'm just going to change this to cust ID like this and okay. So we're upsetting the agency. So that's where the error is happening in here. Okay, so after this response, let's see. So this if statement in here, we're going to say, um, just do the following, okay? So it's const customer response equal await fetch. And we're going to say API slash stripe slash create customer. And we're going to pass in the following data. We're going to pass in the method, which is going to be post. We're going to pass in the following headers as well. So let me get those headers. So we're going to say headers, content type of application slash JSON. And then we're going to pass in this uh, body, um, which is JSON.stringify. And we're going to pass in the body data. And then after this response, const customer data equal this type customer ID, which is await customer response dot JSON invoke that. And then we're going to set our customer ID to that customer data dot customer ID and work in progress customer ID. All right, we put that in here. So here we got to say, okay, I'm just going to remove this and I'm going to say no data dot customer ID and no cust ID. Then we're going to do the following. And in here, we have to go ahead and pass in that customer ID like this so we can create that and that should remove our errors. Nice. And then finally, we have the router refresh, created accounts. Okay, created agency. All right, I think this looks good, guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and delete this agency. So let's go in here, go to bold shift. Okay, I need to spin up sorry, and just spin up the page. And let's go ahead and delete that agency. I can go ahead and do that too. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here into the agency info. We're going to delete this. And let me make sure this is from Prodigy's Testing 4. Delete this agency and just go ahead and delete that. Okay, nice. Now, when we create it, we should actually see some data inside the customer ID. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say Bun X Prisma Studio, so I can open that up right here. And inside Prisma Studio, we can actually keep track. So now there's nothing in here because we deleted everything, right? So let's go ahead and say the following. So what we want to do is I'm just going to create. So go ahead and just create an account, guys, okay? Just create an agency and then come back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this agency information. And that should um, save that. Something is happening wrong. What's what's going on? All right, give me a moment, guys. Let me debug this real quick. Okay, here's the problem. What I did here was wrong. So after this, what we're going to do is we're going to say return here. So if this does not satisfy, how can you actually create, right? So go ahead and return here. And this 
we can just we can remove this here. What is it? A try catch? What is that? Okay, there's no try catch there. So I can actually save that response and I can check the response data too. So I'm just gonna say this. So const response equal await absurd agency. Okay, so we can save that response. And then after showing this toast, we can uh, check here. So we can say if data dot ID, then return uh, router dot refresh. So I'm just gonna save this. And if there is a response, then I'm going to say return router dot refresh as well. All right, hopefully that solved our problem. And I'm gonna try this one more time. So go ahead and give this a shot. Sorry about that error. Um, let me click on this, upload this, and I'm just gonna set some, uh, what is it, bold shift. Okay, that's the name. Just put some info here. All right, fingers crossed. Save info. There we go, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know why I did that mistake. You probably missed that, okay? Awesome. Now, if you go into Prisma Studio, you should refresh and you will see the agency. If you click on that, you will see a customer ID. So we successfully created a customer ID from, um, you know, with the help of Stripe, okay? So nice. So now we have this customer ID, but you will notice here that they are the subscription is not created and we don't have that uh, subscription basically set to active, right? So they don't have a subscription at the moment, all right? So just wanted to do that. So great job, let me just take a quick little break and I'll be, be right back, okay? So now go back into your Stripe dashboard and look for product catalog, okay? It's gonna bring this up, it's gonna bring this page. Let me just expand this a little bit more. And what we're, what we're gonna do is click on add a product like this and you're gonna set the following info. So you're gonna change this to Plura, and you can probably say something like the perfect plan for your agency. And in this, keep it to standard pricing, and I'm gonna change this to US dollar, and we're gonna change the price to 49, uh, $49, that's okay. And this is gonna be recurring, okay? Please make sure you click on recurring. And the billing period is uh, monthly. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if there's any additional price description, okay? We have some stuff in here. So what I'm gonna do is in the price description, I'm gonna set this to basic like this. All right, this looks good, I think. Yeah, nice. And then I'm gonna add another price in here. And this price is also gonna be US dollar. And we're gonna change this to 199 per month. Okay, make it recurring and monthly payment and change this right here. We're gonna change this price. Uh, sorry, we're gonna change this to unlimited SaaS like this, okay? And uh, go ahead and shrink this and you should see two pricing information in here, okay? You don't need any image or all that stuff. You can go ahead and put that if you want to, but that's fine. And um, I think this is good. The statement descriptor can be uh, empty. This looks good, guys. Yeah, we don't need any of this stuff. And go ahead and save this product, okay? So now you should see a product in here um, with the following information, just like this. So two products um, or two, sorry, two prices but one product. So this ID right here, copy this. This is your product ID, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your .env, right? You can put it in here if you want. And we're just gonna say Plura, okay? Next, Plura product ID. And we're just gonna set that to that ID, okay? Just to kind of save it somewhere um, so that we can actually use it, all right? And let me expand this real quick. And now you have two price IDs here, right? Copy the first one for the $49, copy that price ID, go into your code editor, and you're gonna do sh Command Shift F, and you're gonna sh uh, check for price underscore. So wherever you have used this price, we now have to change that, okay? So I'm gonna go into my constants, and now I see some price IDs in here, right? So for the basic plan, I have this, which is MHU, okay? So that's the basic plan, so that's where we have to set the $49 per month. So MHU is this one, right? So I'm gonna change this to that new price ID, okay? And then in my schema as well, you see MHU here, click on that and go ahead and change this, okay? Nice, and now I'm gonna shrink this and I'm gonna copy the next one, which is this one right here, okay? And let me make sure this is FJ9. Why do they have the same ID? Do they? No, they don't. Huh, oh, they don't, they don't, okay. This is so similar. <laughs> Now copy the 199 plan and you just have to change the other one. So I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna go back into this here. Let me expand this real quick. I'm gonna click on this one and I'm gonna change this one to this new price ID. 
Okay. Now open the terminal and we're going to quit this and say bun x bun x prisma generates and bun x prisma db push. Okay. Do you want to ignore the warning? Okay. It looks like there is some warning. Let me just take a look at that. Okay, so I'm just going to hit yes here. It might, I don't think it's going to delete any of our data. Let me take a quick look. If I refresh this, I don't think it should. Yeah, it's not going to delete it. That's fine. Okay, so now we have updated our product catalogs with the correct price IDs. And I think we are pretty much set for this side. Okay, so let's head into our folder structure. In your billing, click on page.tsx. And now we're going to change this page. So first, go ahead and say params and agency ID string. So we're extracting that and destructure and get params from here. OK, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the add on products. OK, now we haven't created the add on products and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. All right. So I'm going to import Stripe and this Stripe actually comes from lib Stripe, guys. So let's go up top and say import Stripe from lib Stripe like this and the add on products. So where do you get this add on products? Well, it comes from the constant file. So let's go into constants right in here and we're going to scroll to the bottom or we can just scroll after this and we're going to just say export const add on products equal to an array with the title priority support and the ID is going to be this product ID. So we have to change this. OK, so what I'm going to do here is just set this work in progress flag just in case change priority support. OK, and we're going to go ahead and create that product as well. OK, so open this up, go into product catalog and go ahead and create a new product. So hit add product. OK, and it's going to show something like this in here. You're going to change this product name to priority support. We can also provide some description and we can just say skip the line and get ahead, you know, get the help you need with this VIP service and the pricing details changes to US dollar. And we're going to change this to four hundred fifty dollars per month. OK, and recurring revenue, I think for some additional. Let me see what we can pass in here. Give me one second. OK, I think for this one, it's fine. We don't need anything in here. We just need the name and the description. So go ahead and save this product and the priority support has been created. So copy this product ID. Go in here and change this product ID to the new product ID. OK, I hope you guys are doing this with me. All right. And now we can remove this work in progress flag confidently. Nice. And now let's go back there and let's quickly import. Add on products dot products like this and we just want to import it. OK, nice. And now after we get the add ons. So by the way, guys, this is a challenge here. So I'm going to put a little note here. Challenge create the add on products. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to create the regular products that we just made. And similarly, you're just going to wire up the add on products. OK, cool. And now we're going to get the agency subscription. So agency subscription equal await db dot agency dot find unique where. Oh, oh, OK, where params <laughs> dot agency ID. OK, and we're going to get the customer ID and its subscription. And then we're going to check the prices. So we're going to say um, const prices equal await stripe dot prices dot list. OK, and now we're going to say product and we're going to get this product from our dot env file. So let's go down here to dot env. Copy this plural product ID. Remove this env again so you can go back here. We're going to say process process. Oops, why is it doing that? Dot env dot next public plura product ID. And then we want to say active and set it to true. So whichever product is active only. OK, I think all these products are already active. Let me take a look. Yeah, they, they should be active. OK, cool. And then we want to go down here and you want to say current plan details. So const current plan details equal pricing cards. So let's go ahead and import this from libs constant dot find where the price ID is equal to agency subscription dot subscription dot price ID. So whichever subscription they have, get that specific uh, plan details from our constant. And then we want to get the charges. So these charges come from the stripe charges dot list and the customer is agency subscription dot customer ID. 
So all the charges that have been made on this specific customer, okay? So go ahead and get that. And that way we can show the, the charges in the, um, what do you call that? The, um, the, you know, the little table at the bottom, okay? So now the all the charges, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, create this variable here. All charges, so const all charges, actually let me just paste this, yeah. All charges equal to an array with everything inside charges dot data, okay? And we're gonna map each of those. Okay, we're gonna return a new array basically, and we're going to get the charge, but we're gonna return description as charge.description, ID as charge.id, date is gonna be new date, charge.created star 1000 dot two local time string, and then we're gonna put a space, and we're gonna put um, another variable in here, which is new date, charge.created star 1000 to local date string. Okay, and we're going to change the status to paid, and we're going to put the amount in here. Okay, nice. And after this, at the bottom here, now we can create our component. So create a Re React fragment, and we're going to create an H1 called billing in here. And let's go to our billing page. Oh, okay, so I have to run this, so bun run dev. Okay, nice. And I just went to the agency and clicked on billing. And after that, we're gonna use a separator component. So go ahead and say separator and import it like this from components. And then after this, we're gonna have another H2 saying current plan, okay? And then we're gonna have a div here, okay? And this div is going to have all the pricing cards and stuff inside it. So let me go ahead and create this div. And inside this, we're gonna create a new component called pricing card, okay? So let's open this up, go into components, and we are uh, just create a file called pricing card if you don't have it. Um, and inside this, we're going to do the following, okay? So you can feel free to actually copy this entire component, but uh, let's just go step by step, all right? I think you guys like that more. So um, first, I'm gonna just return a component in here, and I'm going to change this to pricing card, pr uh, pricing card like this. And in here, we're going to get access to these specific props, okay? Which is the features string, uh, array of string, button CTA, title, description, amount, duration, highlight title, highlight description, customer ID, the price list, which we created, remember? Import that and pass in data, okay? And um, then we need plan exists boolean, okay? And in here, now we're going to go ahead and extract all of this. So go ahead and extract it. Okay. Cool. I think that's about it. That's all we need, really. I think there's one more. All right, that's about it. And after this, we're going to use the modal. Okay. So go up top and change this to use client component. And in here, go ahead and import this modal. Okay. So basically, when we click on the button, inside the pricing card, it has to show the modal where they can actually click on the plan they wanna purchase, okay? So now I'm also gonna get the search params in here. So I'm gonna import search params from next navigation, and I'm gonna get the plan from the URL, okay? From the URL params. Why am I doing this? Sometimes, by default, we wanna get access to what, you know, the user is trying to access. So that time we can actually use this to show, okay? Um, it's kind of like caching the value, like saving it, right? And then we can actually show it on the screen. And then we're going to go scroll to the bottom here. Let's remove this. Let's create a card. And inside this, pa pass in the following class name. So we're going to say flex, flex dash column like this, okay? Justify between LG width of uh, half the screen. And inside this, create a div. And inside the div, create card header, okay? Card header. I made a spelling error there card header like this and go ahead and import this component and inside the card header we're going to pass in uh, the following class names we're going to say flex flex column from medium flex row and justify between and then create a div and create a card title title like this and we're going to go ahead and import this okay and create the card description okay description and let's go ahead and import this component as well and inside the title you're going to pass in the title that came in and for description pass in the description that came in now let's go back and let me see what we have in here okay so we have this i want to actually import that pricing card 
component. Okay, let's do that, guys. Let's first import the pricing card and let's pass in some data. Okay, so I'm going to say pricing card. Okay, and I'm going to make this a closed component, closing tag, and I'm going to first pass pass in plan exists. Okay, plan exists, and then I'm going to pass in prices and then the customer ID, which we have already gathered. Then we need the amount, which is going to be the following, which is agency subscription dot subscription dot active. If it's active, if it's true, then get that specific price. Okay. <laughs> from the current plan details. If not, we're just going to return zero dollars. OK, and then we're going to have the button CTA in here and then we're going to have highlight. Uh, we're going to have some description text, right? So I'm just going to put some description in here. I'm going to just say highlight uh, description, want to modify your plan and, you know, something in there. And then we're going to have a highlight title. And this one is called plan options. And then we're going to have another description in here. And this description is from the uh, the plan details. OK, so if they have a plan, if they have an active subscription, get it from the current plan details. And this is what it looks like. Okay, we have a description in here. And if you see up here, there you go. You see that. Okay, we're getting it from there. So after that, if not, we're going to just return something custom in here. Okay, let's get started. Or we're going to return something. Let's get started. Pick a plan that works for you. OK, and after description, we also want to pass in the duration and we're only using per month. And the features here are going to be the following agency subscription. If they have if the agency has an active subscription, go to current details dot features or return an array. And the feature is an array. So if you click here, you see it's an array of strings, right? So we're going to return that in here. And after features, we also have title. So go ahead and put the title. If they have a plan, return that specific details title or just return starter. OK, nice. Good job. So now you already see it working. It looks great already. Awesome, guys. Look at that. But of course, it looks horrible. we got to go fix it. Right. So go into this pricing card and we're going to just make the couple make a couple changes in here. OK, so let's look at this after the description. We want to hit enter. We're going to create a paragraph tag and we're going to say class name is text dash six XL font dash bold. OK. And then inside this, we're going to say AMT amount, and then we're going to create a small tag. OK, we're going to set the class name to text dash excess font dash light. OK, font dash light and text dash muted dash foreground. And in here, we're going to say duration like this, not donut chart. What duration? OK, uh, duration where you at? All right, right there. Nice. And now it just says zero dollars per month. OK, and after the card header, create the card content and inside this pass in ul and inside this pass in features dot map for each feature we're going to return something so get access to the feature here and we're going to return a list element okay not this it's li like this and let's pass in the key equal to feature like this and we're going to pass in an, an, a class name. So go ahead and pass in the following class name. OK, list disk margin left of four text muted of foreground. And inside this LI, you're going to say feature like this. OK, nice. And now um, let's see if it shows any features. OK, zero. I think it does. It, does it have any features? Let me print it out here. So console.log features. Let's see what we get. OK, we have an array of zero. So nothing's in there. I think. Hmm. Let me see what's the plan. Uh, what's what's happening, guys? Give me one second. OK, OK. So what we're doing here is if there's nothing, we're just returning an empty array if they don't have a subscription. But the free plan actually has something in there. So what we're going to do is a pricing cards dot find. OK, like this find where the where we'll just say pricing or feature. Yeah, let's just say pricing like this. OK, and we're going to say something in here. We're going to say where the pricing dot title equal to and let's go into this actually and I just want to take the starter pack uh, package in here. I'm going to say this and we're going to pass get the features from that. OK, now this is going to say it cannot return undefined. So I'm just going to return an array in here just so it doesn't scream. But um, yeah, and then in here we can also return this like this. OK, or we can remove this. This is fine. I think that should work too. Let's see. OK, so since there's no features here, we actually have to pass this in uh, right here. So this can technically just be an empty array like this and we won't have any problems. OK, so let's go back in there, guys, and let's fix this up real quick. So now we have the features. Let's go ahead and render out a footer. So after card content, after this div, hit enter and you're going to say card footer 
is going to have a card like this, another card in here, and we're going to have with full. We're going to have a div in here with flex, flex column, and flex row on from medium devices, item center, justify between, rounded large, border, gap four, and padding four. And then create a div in here with a paragraph tag and another paragraph tag with the title and the description. And this is going to have text small, text muted foreground. And then let's create this button. Okay, and then we're going to have a function called handle manage plan. Okay, and we're also putting the button CTA in here. So what is this handle manage plan? It's basically going to show a form. Okay, it's a form that we're going to create, which is called subscription form wrapper. And we're going to show a bunch of stuff on the screen. So um, scroll up here. Okay, and go ahead and create that function handle manage plan. And let's import the custom modal. All right, see this modal stuff is so so you know useful so i love that and now we need to create the subscription thing so as you can see in here this is what it looks like okay so it looks great now and it's nice okay cool so um huh, something seems off is it this month not sure what the problem is but something looks off maybe it's just the device size guys or maybe this card content goes inside the card header which would be weird but highly oh no Oh, that's awful. Let me go back. Okay, card. Let me just take a look, guys. Give me one second, okay? Okay, I think everything looks good. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, but that's okay. We just need to move on. You guys can fix the styling and stuff, okay? So now that we have this, we need to create this form, which is subscription. It's called subscription form wrapper. And all it does, okay, is it takes in the customer ID and the plan exists. So if they have a plan already, okay? And what this... um subscription form is going to do is it's going to show the different plans available and we get to select you know something from that so let's go ahead and create a form in here so go into components forms and create um, a, a folder actually because we're going to need multiple for the subscription form okay so subscription subscription dash form and inside this create subscription dash form dash wrapper dot tsx and then just create one more it's called subscription or just say index dot typescript okay and in here we're going to return a component and just say subscription form wrapper like this and for this one we're going to return not index but did i say t typescript or t okay i said typescript so this has to be index dot tsx and let's return the subscription form like this okay and first thing we're going to work on is the subscription form wrapper so in the subscription form wrapper scroll up top and make this a use client component so go into that wrapper component make this use client and in here we're going to get access to two things right we need the customer id and plan exist and now let's go ahead and destructure this from here okay and then in here we're going to basically first get the modal so const data and set close equal to use modal and then we're going to say const router equal use router okay and then we're going to get the selected price ID. so this is, i mean we're creating a state here called selected price id and set selected price id and let's import use state and it's going to be of type plan which comes from prisma client so only these two okay or an empty string and then we're going to say data dot plans but this does not exist so let's see if you can make a guess you should get it right now but why do we not have this here? Good. If you said it's because we don't have that in the modal data, that's correct. So let's go into our provider, modal provider, and we just need to create that type in here. So say plans is going to be an object with the default price ID, okay, set to plan. I'm going to import this from Prisma client. And the plans is going to be data uh, price list at data like this. Okay. And let's go back now. And now you will not see any error. Good job if you actually guessed that correctly, okay? Nice. And after this, after we create this state, we're going to create one more uh, state right below called subscription and set subscription, which is a which is going to be an object with these two things, okay? Subscription ID and the client secret. This is what goes into Stripe's form, okay? And after this, we're going to say const options equal Stripe element options, and I'm going to import this Okay, from Stripe, um, Stripe JS. Give me one second, guys. I think we actually have to give me one second. Okay, so just go ahead. Yeah, so just import this. We also have another another package to import, and we'll do that in just a second. So import use memo as well. And this is basically going to memoize this object, okay, which is going to have client secret and appearance theme flat because we're going to use components from Stripe React 
components, okay? And that actually needs this object to, you know, get the client secret, so it'll render the Stripe form, and it needs the appearance flat on it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the terminal, quit the terminal now, refresh the page, and say bun add, okay, bun add, add Stripe slash React dash stripe dash js okay and go ahead and hit enter and there we go that installed it for us already so now we can use this okay i think we might need types let's see if we do if we do we'll install that as well so cool and now we need a use effect so when this component renders what we want to do is we want to fetch the uh we want to create a subscription okay which gives us a client secret and then we're going to store that and then render out the form. So I'm going to say bun run dev so we can see what we're building as well. And let's go ahead and build out our use effect in the meantime. So here, go ahead and say use effect, okay, which is going to be a function here with an empty dependency array for now. And um, like this. And this, this dependency array will now need data, selected price ID, and the customer ID. Not custom, sorry. Customer ID, like this. And inside this use effect, we're going to do the following. So if there is no selected price ID, return. Okay. And if that does exist, then we're going to say const create secret equal to an async function. Okay. Like this. Oops. Sorry. And in here, we're going to um, say const subscription response. So const subscription response equal await fetch like this and inside this we need to pass in first the endpoint and the endpoints is api slash stripe slash create subscription let me make sure we also built this i know we did i just i just want to make sure so stripe create subscription routes all right nice yeah we built that um let me go ahead and close this okay and we want to say this endpoint, and then after that we have to pass in the method and headers right so after this put a comma and you're going to say the following create an object say method post headers is content type application slash json and the body is going to be json.stringify with the customer id and the price id okay and then after um this right here so after this fetch command hit enter and we're going to say const subscription equal to subscription response data equal await this response dot json okay because that's where we get the client secret and then finally we're going to set the subscriptions uh subscription state to hold that client secret and the subscription id okay now if the plan exists so go actually inside this itself if the plan exists in here i'm going to import toast give me one second import toast as well if plan exists and where does this plan exist come from this plan exist comes from our props okay if a plan already exists then we're going to say your plan has been uh, successfully upgraded okay and then we're going to set close so we're going to close that and router.refresh okay nice <laughs> Good job. I know that was a lot of stuff, but you're getting there. And at the end of this function, go ahead and invoke this create secret. So when this spins up, we're basically going to show this. So if I click on this, well, nothing is there right now, right? We don't have that subscription form wrapper uh, imported. So let's go ahead and import that subscription form wrapper. I think I made a spelling error here. Let me copy this subscription. Okay, I'm just going to copy whatever I have here. I'm going to paste subscription form wrapper like that. Okay. And now that solves that problem. And let me go into the subscription form wrapper so we can continue this component. And after this is done, remove everything in here inside this and say class name is equal to border none transition all. Okay. And then create another div with flex um, flex dash call and gap dash four. Okay. Like this. And inside this, you're going to create an object. Oops, this has uh, done the same problem. Just going to quit this. All right, guys. Let me know if you see that, by the way. It might be because of the middleware and, you know, everything refreshing, but I didn't see any problem in production. Okay, please let me know if you guys see that see that error as well. And in here, we're going to say data.plans.plans dot plans like this. So data.plans.map.map. Dot dot, uh, dot plans dot map dot map. Okay, and we're going to return a card, okay? And this card is gonna have a key set to this plan in here. So I'm gonna say price actually, and we're gonna say price dot ID, okay? And then an on click and some class names. So let me first put the class name. So the class name here 
is going to be CLSX. I'm going to import that and relative cursor pointer, transition all, and this. And border primary if selected price ID is equal to price ID. So whichever one they're selecting on, we're just changing the color, the border color of it. Okay. And um, after this, we're going to have this card header. Okay. So the card header is going to be very simple. It's just going to have the following. So I'm going to import these components and it's going to have the card title, card header, right? Card header, card title, which is price unit amount. And we're just going to convert that divided by 100 uh, or we're just going to send zero. And then we're going to save the price nickname. Okay. Hmm, I don't know if we, did we even put the price nickname? Let me see. So in here, huh, we'll see. Okay, if it shows up, nice. If it doesn't, well, too bad. Okay, and let's go ahead and import our pricing cards. Okay, just like that. And this is just, guys, this is simple stuff, okay? We're rendering a paragraph. I'm not going to explain this. You guys are not newbies anymore, okay? You're a pro, all right? <laughs> and after this, after the header, go ahead and say selected price ID equal to that price ID. Then we're going to return this. It's like a, just like a round emerald a green color button that shows on top of the card if it's selected. Okay, that's it there. And then finally, after the card, so hit enter here, we're going to say options.client secrets so of that exist. Then we're going to say, um, and also make sure that there's no plan, right? Then we're going to say H1, and we're going to get elements and the subscription form. And this elements comes from Stripe. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Give me just a second. So first thing you want to do is I think we already installed a package, right? I think, I think we did install the package. Yep. So let's go up top and I'm going to import elements. We don't need this. So just elements from react stripe JS. Let's scroll to the bottom. Okay. Right here. And now we're going to import get stripe from our libs and we have our options, which is a memoized value and the subscription form, which we're going to create in just a second. But right before that, at the bottom, after this, we're going to say, if there are no options, sorry, um, where is this? Hit enter here and say, if no options are client secret and the selected price ID, then we're going to return this div with just a loading screen so that basically we're loading the client secret. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, render out the subscription uh, form which is in here. So I can actually import this right now. Subscription form. Why is it not importing? Let me see. Subscription. Oh, what is this? Subscription form. Okay. Just import that. <laughs> All right. And now, okay, there we go. Now we can see it. All right. So go into the subscription form and this is going to have the following props. So it's going to take the selected price ID and it's going to be of type string or a plan. And then we're going to destructure this here. Okay. And in here, we're going to say use toast. So if we do this, we have to make this a client component, right? And also since we're using this in a client component, we have to make it a client component anyway, or, you know, Next.js will convert it to a client component um, either way, right? And now let's say elements equal use elements. This is from React Stripe, okay? And then we need the Stripe hook, which comes from use Stripe. So I'm going to import that as well. All right, nice. And after this, we're going to say price and price error. So if there was any error, we want to show that right there. So import use state. And then we're going to create the handle submit, which is a little big. So let's first just create the form. Okay. So scroll down here and I'm going to say return form on submit equal to a handle submit and payment element, which comes from Stripe and the button which comes from component UI. See how we're uh, combining both Stripe and ours, our stuff too, guys. So this is why, you know, I didn't find this personally very easily on the internet. So it took me a lot of time. So I'd really, really appreciate it if you gave this a like, okay? Awesome. And that way I can provide more, more free value for you guys. So I'm gonna put, close this bracket here, I actually remove this, sorry about that. And now let's go ahead and create that handle submit function right here. So this handle submits, don't worry if you got overwhelmed, I'm going to explain it. Okay. It's very, very simple. So this handle submit function, let's shrink this. So it looks nicer and easier for you to understand. All right. Look at that. So much easier. It's an async function, which is a form event. Okay. And if there is no selected price ID, we're going to set the price error to, you need to select a plan to subscribe because they click submit with no price selected. Okay. Then we're going to set the price error to empty if there's, you know, if the price ID exists and then we're going to prevent default. Okay. And then we're going to say 
if stripe hook, or if no stripe hook, or there's no elements, return. Okay, and let's reduce this to one more line. Nice. And then we're going to set a try catch to say const error await stripe hook dot confirm payment. Okay, elements and then confirm params. We're going to say return URL, which is process dot next public URL slash agency. Okay, we're going to send them there and then it's just going to reroute. So now, why are we doing this? So we're doing this because um, we want to kind of, you know, create that code and all that kind of stuff too. Right. So that's why we have this in here. Then after that, if there is an error, we're going to throw this error. And, you know, um, we're also going to show something in here, like a toast. And let's open this. And here we're going to catch that error and show the destructive variant and console.log the error. Okay, cool. Now let's go back, make sure we, I think we already imported the subscription form. Okay, I want to give this a shot. I'm very curious to see what happens. So let me do bun run dev. Give me one second, guys. Let me restart my server. All right, so now if we hit the get started, there you go. You see this right here? It shows this. And if we click on a plan, okay, let's see what happens. So if we click on something, okay, something seems wrong. What's wrong? We will figure it out. Okay. So first thing is when I click, nothing is happening. So that's the first thing I notice. So let me go ahead and fix that problem, guys. Give me one second. Okay. So when I click on this, Okay, so it has to be some on click stuff. So we have card header, this card. Okay, there we go. There's no on click. So how's it gonna work? So create an on click, which is a function. Okay, and in this function, we're gonna just set selected price ID to price dot ID like this as plan. Okay, and now let's see if this works. If I click here, there we go, guys. And now it renders that. And there we go, the entire form shows up. By the way, if your form is not black color, the reason is because I'm using a plugin. Uh, let me see if I can show you, it's really cool. It's called Chrome slash flags or something like this. And basically there's a dark mode and I just, I just did that, it's so much nicer. Everything is on dark mode now. That's why my stripe is on dark mode. You guys don't have this, okay? There we go, see, another cool trick. <laughs> okay, so now stripe works and if we hit submit here, you're gonna notice that this is throwing an error, right? So just leave whatever you're doing. I'm going to explain. Just stop whatever you're doing. I'm going to explain how this works, okay? So how Stripe works is it listens to a webhook, okay? There's a webhook that runs, and every time an action is performed, like a subscription updated or a subscription was created, this webhook will invoke an endpoint you provide. That's it. Now, we haven't created that webhook endpoint. We're going to create it in here, but that's how it works, okay? And that webhook will invoke the endpoint, and the endpoint is going to save the subscription data. So if you see in here, that's the reason why in here, after confirming the payment, we did not update the subscription data, okay? So go into your Stripe folder, and now we're going to create this webhook. It's actually very simple. So go in here, create web hook like this and inside this create a routes.typescript and inside this route first I'm just going to import the following stuff up top which is next request response headers stripe from stripe this stripe from libstripe and then subscription created from our actions okay so that we can invoke that and then we can save it in the database so these are some of the webhook events that stripe fires okay so i'm just going to create a set out of it and put an array and just put all these values in here okay and then i'm going to export um, a function called post like this okay and this is going to take next request like this and first I'm gonna create the stripe event. Okay, so let stripe event equal to stripe event like this. And then I'm gonna get the data. So request.text, I'm gonna extract it and call it body in here. And then we're gonna get the signatures, the stripe signature. So we're gonna say stripe.headers.get signature uh, right here. And then we're gonna get the webhook secret. Now we don't have this yet, but we have our variable stored, right? Right in here, we have the Stripe webhook secret, so we will be using that, okay? And you also notice there is a Stripe webhook secret live. This is not created because in production you would have to put that, okay? We don't have that running right now. And then we're going to say process.env.stripe webhook secret, and then we're going to use a try catch in here. So 
go ahead and create a try catch like this. We're going to say if there's no signature or no webhook secret, throw an error. Okay, just print an error and return. Uh, if this is all good, we're going to say stripe.webhooks.construct event body with the signature and the webhook secret. And then we're going to catch any errors and return a next response if something happened wrong. And then we're going to create the main body of everything. This is where everything happens. So after this, create another try catch. And in the first, in the starting, we're going to create an if statement that checks to see if the Stripe webhook has one of the events that we have. Okay, Stripe event dot type. So this one. Okay, we want to make sure the event that came in through the Stripe event has that specific type. And if it does, then first we're going to get the subscription, which is Stripe event dot data dot object as Stripe subscription. Okay, and then we're going to check if there is no subscription dot metadata dot connect account payments. And if there's no metadata dot connect account subscription, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a switch statement. Now I want to make a quick disclaimer. Okay. So the reason why I did this, and this is one of these most confusing things with Stripe, and I did not know this, this is how it works, but in a local environment, all Stripe webhook events come to one webhook endpoint only. I might be wrong, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, okay? But in production, there are two endpoints, one for Stripe events from the subscriptions, and one endpoint can be set only for connected account payments, okay? So your question is going to be, will this work in production? No, you would have to make that change, okay? And that change is simply, you would have to create another endpoint, okay? Uh, guys, I've taught you so much. You should be able to do this. If not, I'll help you in the Discord. But you have to create another endpoint, and that endpoint is supposed to accept payments uh, for the sub-accounts or connected accounts, and then another endpoint that will accept payments for the agency subscriptions, okay? So to distinguish this in a local environment, I am adding metadata to every payment that has been made or every subscription that's being made through the products that are being sold or this in here, okay? And um, that's how we're controlling this, all right, guys? So let's go ahead and create a switch statement, okay? And we're gonna say stripe event dot type in here. So stripe event dot type like this. And based on the specific type, we're going to do the following actions. So first, there are two types that we're going to catch, which is these two cases, subscription created and subscription updated. Okay. And for these two cases, we're going to do the following. So I'm going to just copy this, paste it in here and explain. For this case, we're going to say if subscription.status equal active, then we're going to say await subscription created. Okay. And you know where this is coming from, right? And then um, you can import this if you don't. And then we're going to say subscription and the subscription dot customer as a string. And then we're going to just print out a message saying created from the webhook. Okay. And then after that, so else console.log skipped at created from webhook because subscription status is not active. Okay. And after this, we're going to say uh, default is console.log unhandled relevant events because none of them are satisfied. And we're just going to print out the Stripe events that was used. Okay. And now after this if statement right here, hit enter, and we're going to say else, um, we're just going to do the following. We're going to just print out a message saying skipped from the webhook because subscription was from a connected account, not from the application itself. Okay, so um, after that, finally, we have to do a catch. So we have a catch here, and I'm just going to print out an error. So in here, I'm simply going to say this console.log error. And finally, at the end of everything, okay, after this, I'm just going to say return next response.json webhook action received true and turn a 200 response. Okay, nice. So now it's going to actually work. Let me also refresh this, guys. Give me a second. All right, now go back into your Stripe. Remember, we need to actually wire up the webhook so we can fire it, right? So go into Stripe, go into your dashboard right here, okay? We're gonna search for API keys, like this, API keys, click on that, and then it's gonna give you this. Click on webhook, and then click on test in local environment. And it's gonna give you something here, okay? Now you have to download the CLI to be able to do this. So click on this, guys, click on this, 
and follow through with this, okay? Follow through with it. Uh, since we are using bun, you can do bun i, or you can also use brew or whatever in here, okay? So make sure you install, follow through this entire process, okay? You can also use a terminal for Mac. So do this, and then once you're done with all of this, log in, do all these steps, everything, okay? The whole login stuff in here. So once you're done logging in, only then come in here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just give me one second. So just as a quick side note, when you try to log in, it gives you a URL. You can click on that URL and then it's going to take you in here and then you can just do access granted or whatever. OK, so uh, it's going to show you something and just give it access. So I see an error message. I don't know why I see this authorization key you provided does not match. OK, but I am logged in, right? It says access granted. Well, let's find out. OK. <laughs> Let's find out what happened. Okay, it's completed. I don't know why it says error there. Maybe the live mode. Okay, we're not in live. That's probably why. Now, follow this instruction. Okay, follow exactly what I'm saying. Create two different terminals. One is going to run this local host terminal here. So copy this. Okay, paste it in here, but you're going to change the following. So change this um, local host, make it 3000. So 3000 like this, and it's going to be slash API slash stripe slash webhook, okay? And go ahead and hit enter, and let's just see what happens, okay? Nice, so it did that and it created some sort of a signature and it gives you access to a key, okay? A webhook key. Copy this entire webhook key. Don't make a mistake here, okay? I really can't save you after that. Copy this, all right? And guys, if anything happens, I'm there in the Discord, I'm just kidding. But copy this webhook key, go into your environment variables right in here, and we're gonna go to Stripe webhook key and just paste that key in there. And now open this, and now we're gonna run a quick little test. So trigger events with the CLI, go ahead and copy this event and paste this in here and just hit enter. Let's just see what it does. Okay, so it said 500, some error has taken place. Um, let me make sure webhook secret or signature does not exist. No responses returned from the route handler. I don't think our route is running. Okay, let me quit this, guys. So quit the server, refresh, and let's do bun run dev again. And let's refresh this, and let's just see what happened, okay? So now I am going to do this one more time. If it throws... Okay, so <laughs> I knew it. I knew it's some stupid problem here. Never mind. I think what happened is because we changed the environment variable, we need to refresh our application. So just quit and refresh the server, refresh the browser, and then restart again, okay? Do bun run dev, and then that should work. Awesome. Now if you see 200, this means your Stripe webhook is working. Now, very, very important. When you're doing anything with Stripe, you have to have your webhook open. I can't emphasize this enough. Well, it's what's going to happen. You're going to create a subscription in Stripe, but the subscription is not going to be saved in your database. And now we're just lost, okay? So the webhook is needed to sync your database with Stripe. That's it, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? So I'm going to keep this running, and we're going to go back in here, and I'm just going to shrink this here. And now let's go back to our billing page. Let me just take a look and make sure our billing page is actually wired up. Okay, so the billing page is not completely wired up, and we're going to update this. We didn't actually complete this fully, right? We have one more thing, which is to wire up the add-ons. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here. So we have a div here. So inside the same div, inside here at the bottom, we're going to paste this, okay? Which is add-ons is data.map.addons. We're going to get the pricing card. Plan exist, we're gonna pass in this data. So just copy paste this. This is nothing different. It's just a bunch of strings. And the only difference is in here, um, which is uh, add on.id, okay, and add on.default price dot unit amount, and we're just dividing it by hundred and converting it to a number. So there you go, you see it's populating. So we created an object, an array of objects inside our constant files with all the possible add-ons available. Okay? And these add-ons simply have the product ID with the title, okay? So populate this with as many as you like, no problem. And in here, we're mapping over them and we're simply getting those product lists. That's what's happening in these IDs, okay? We're mapping and getting the product ID, creating a new array, and that will fetch all the IDs. You can also technically remove all of this and just pass in an array with specific IDs, okay? Now, after this pricing card, we also need to show the payment history, right? So I'm going to uh, put a h2 tag right after, let me see, after this div right here, okay? Put an h2, and then I'm gonna create a table component 
in here, okay? I'm gonna import the table component from component UI table. This is the styling for it, okay? Background card, border one, uh, border border, and rounded medium. And inside this table, we're gonna have the table header. We already did this, right? It's a very simple table. So let's go ahead and import all this stuff, guys. Okay, hopefully you imported it and um, you shouldn't see any error or anything, okay? And then after that, we're gonna have the table body. So after the header, we're gonna say table body is gonna have a class name, a font medium, truncate, okay? We're gonna have all charges, so every single charge in here, we're gonna map over that and we're gonna return a table row. And the table row is gonna have table cells, that's it. It's very simple, this table is actually really nice but it doesn't have a bunch of cool features like filtering and all that kind, right? That's why we, we use the other table in the previous example. So go in here and is defined multiple times. What seems to be the problem? Okay, I see table, I'm gonna remove this and just use this one, there we go. So now you see this table cell is this right here, okay? And all the data will basically show up at the bottom inside this, okay? Good job. I'm going to see if I can fix this problem here with the features. All right. Well, let's test that in the end, guys. It's just design stuff. We will fix that, okay? So, yeah, that's it. I'm going to try to give this a shot. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, it works. First thing I want to make sure, and I want you to make sure, is you have your Stripe running. So, I have my endpoint running, and um, that's about it. And, of course, I have the server running too, right? So, let's expand this, and I'm going to click on this package here, and I'm going to probably subscribe for the $49 per month. And you see it says for serious agency owners, it's literally giving some information. And go ahead and put the fake card information, which is 424242, okay? And 42 for this too, and 42 for this as well. And here, go ahead and just put 42, or just put some something, okay? I'm just gonna put some number in there. And go ahead and hit submit, okay? It took me to Plura, so it's gonna redirect me to the agency page, and boom, that's it. Now it comes back in here, okay? It comes back to this page. They routed me to that uh, agency. And if I go into my billing, okay, so it showed the charge here, but my number has not been dated here. Let me see if I refresh this. Okay, something is wrong, guys. I'm going to fix this. However, the charge has been made, so that's good news, right? So let me go ahead and fix this issue. Okay, so I want to kind of debug on the fly so you guys can see how to debug too. Um, just keep in mind, I might make some errors, <laughs> okay? So just uh, go through with me, okay? So I'm going to open the Prisma Studio. First thing is, where are we getting this value from? So let's find out. We go up top, we have the pricing card in here, okay? And we have the amount. So the amount here is agency subscription dot subscription dot active equal true, okay? And then we're going to say current plan details dot price. So first thing I want to do is I want to go into this and I want to print this out. I want to print out console.log agency subscriptions and let me see what that looks like. Okay, I see a customer ID and I see a subscription of null. So subscription was not created, okay? So that's probably why. And just to confirm, if we go into Prisma Studio and refresh this, you would see no subscription in here. Okay, let me scroll to the right no subscription in here. So that's the problem, okay? And at the same time, did our webhook fire? Let's see. So our webhook didn't actually fire what seems to be the problem. Let me see. So if our webhook was fired, we should see some messages in here, guys, but we're not seeing anything. You see, there's no messages. So that means our webhook did not work, even though it did. <laughs> so done. Let's hit done here. What's going on? Let me see. Add an endpoint, test in local environments. We already did this. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel a subscription from here. So where is that? Let's go back in here. Go into the payments. Okay, damn, someone just paid. Yeah, this person just paid here. I'm going to click on this and let's go into this customer. Okay, and we're going to simply cancel their subscription. Okay, so I have to go into customers first and then I see this here. And then I'm going to click here, delete customer, or you can create subscription. Where can I delete a subscription? I can refund the payments. Subscriptions here. Update, cancel subscription right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel the subscription. They just paid. So cancel the subscription from here. No refund. Too bad. Let's go ahead and cancel that. All right, that subscription is canceled. And I'm going to go back to payments. That doesn't have any problem. Now let me figure out why my endpoint is not working so I'm going to run this one more time 
and hope this works. Okay, let me refresh this page. Okay, and we're going to try to run the subscription one more time. So this might mean that they might get charged multiple times, guys. I'm not completely sure, but we're going to try. Okay, we're going to try. So 49. Oh, let's try the 199. All right, guys. So it's still not working. I'm not sure what's going on, but I am going to find the solution. So just give me some time. I will get back to you with the solution. All right, guys, I finally found out what was going on. And don't worry, I'm going to show you the debugging process as well as what was going on. OK, and the, the solution. So first thing is when you do Stripe login, it's going to send you, it's going to give you this link and you can click on it and open it in the dashboard. And it's going to ask you to just confirm that the pairing code is correct. OK, now when I did that, I think for some reason it was using the live test key in here. OK. So to the solution was to basically do stripe login dash I, which means interactive. So it's manually, uh, we're manually doing it. So once you do that, it's going to ask you, it's going to prompt you for the code. So it's going to say something like, let me see if I can find that. Where is that right here? It's going to say, enter your API key, go ahead and copy your stripe key and paste it in there. Okay. And hit enter. And it's going to ask you, how would you like to identify and just hit enter because we want dev up uh, dev local. Okay. That's it. And it's going to say something like this. It's going to say done. The Stripe CLI is configured and it's going to give you the account ID and that's it. You're pretty much set. Now you can go ahead and forward up. Uh, just do the, the same thing that we did, right? Which is the forward to localhost slash 3000 slash API slash Stripe slash webhook, no, not route.js. Okay. I added a mistake here. So just do that. And then when you hit enter, it's going to wire up that. So see, I made that mistake and I wired that up and it worked and now everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. Okay. And if I fire this succeed succeeded payment intent, I get 400. Okay. It's because something is wrong here. So I'm just going to refresh my browser. So say bun run dev and go ahead and refresh this and let's go back. Okay. And I'm going to quit this and let's just give this a second to load up guys. Okay. And now when you go down here to your Stripe and you forward it to localhost slash 3000 to the webhook. And now if you try to fire the event, Okay, we see 400 and why do we see 400? No signature found matching the expected signature. Let me go in here and hit done first of all. Okay, I thought I just fixed it. No signature. Are you passing the raw request body you received from Stripe? I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure. All right, I guess we're going back to this. So give me one second, okay? Okay, so it looked like, okay, so it gave me a new webhook signature um, signing secret. I need to copy this and ours is outdated. So go ahead and remove that and paste in the new one. And now if you call payment intent succeeded, we need to refresh the browser too, of course, because we changed our environment variables, right? So go ahead and say bun run dev. So re uh, refresh the browser here and say bun run dev. And let's go ahead and refresh this. Let's just give that a second to spin up. Okay. And now if we call this endpoint, nice, there we go, 200. So you see how we debugged, but I want to show you how I actually got to the bottom of this. So the first thing I did was I went to Stripe and I looked at the endpoints, okay? Because everything was wired up. Clearly we were seeing, you know, the success response locally, but everything coming from Stripe was not firing. So that means I think we were doing something wrong with the local listener. So I came in here and I realized there were no local list, like this page wasn't there, right? So then I hit add local listener, or I, I mean, it's it had a test account at the bottom or something. It says add local or test in local environment. So I clicked that and it took me here. And then I went ahead and, you know, put all the info again. And I did the same login process. And then, yep, that's it. And it showed up. It took me a while to get to this, but this is how you debug. Okay, cool. Great job. And now let's go ahead and try to create <laughs> create that subscription for this poor user for the third time. So let's go in here click on this and let's give them the maximum plan. Okay. $199. And we're going to say four, two. So just put this fake credit card information and give me a second. I'm just going to populate this. Okay. And now go ahead and hit submit fingers crossed. Let's see it's loading. It takes us back to localhost agency and it brings me back here. And then when I go to billing, there we go. Okay. So something happened weird. It only signed me up for the $49 plan. Now what happened there? Like when I, okay. So probably when I was clicking, I didn't click correctly. Let me hit change plan and click on 199. 
Hmm, customer subscription updated. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. Let's put in some data in here. Hit submit. Let's see what happens. Okay, all right guys, I know what happened. So this is what happened. The subscription setting is set in such a way that when you update the plan, the user only gets charged at the end of this current existing plan and any prorated amounts are charged. That's what's happening, okay? So that's why when we updated the plan here, we saw the change immediately in here, but in this area, it did not show the 199 plan. And the reason why it was also not showing inside the subscription and was showing as incomplete is because, I mean, it wasn't made, right? We It was still pending for a future date. So that's why that was happening. But like locally, it's updating instantly. Okay, so that's the problem. So now, for example, if I change this plan and I quickly change it to 49, immediately it's going to process everything. It's going to update it to 49 but it's not going to show in here, okay? That's what's happening, okay? So now here is an amazing, amazing challenge for you. If you haven't watched the last video, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but that's okay because in the last video, we explained this, this feature. Basically, if you go into our main page, which is the localhost 3000, you will see that each and every plan has a level of access. So we have three sub accounts, two team members, and unlimited pipelines, right? So what you have to do is based on the, you know, the price or or the, their subscription tier, you have to give access to these, okay? It's very simple, I'll even tell you how to do it. Basically, you are going to check if they are on this tier, and if they are, you're simply going to prevent any action from taking place. So, for example, in the place where we are creating a sub account, we wanna check how many sub accounts they have, okay? And if they have three already, then we're going to show a toast saying, hey, you have reached your max benefits and consider upgrading to get access to pro features. That's what you have to do. So go ahead and take this up as a challenge. And I hope you get this right. And if you don't know how to do this, you can go and quickly take a glance at the previous video, which was amazing. And we had everything covered in that of how to plan options. And to give you an idea of where it is, it is towards the end of the video inside the Stripe configuration. Okay, you can take a look at that if you'd like. All right, guys, so now we want to have the ability to connect Stripe accounts for the agency. Let's go into Launchpad. So you're going to see this Stripe right here. This is what gives us the ability to create that connection feature. So the first thing you want to do is go into your agency, agency ID and page.tsx for the Launchpad. And we're going to do the following. So after this, go ahead and say const Stripe OAuth link, okay, is get Stripe OAuth link. And this actually comes from helper function. So we're going to go into libs. We can go into Stripe. Sorry, let's just go into this one, okay, which is utils. And in utils, I'm going to paste it in here like that. And now we can go ahead and import that from that component, okay? So let me go up to Launchpad and import that right here. So after importing this, uh, what we're doing here is we're getting the OAuth link. So with the agency and we're doing Launchpad underscore this. So we're just creating that link basically, okay? Now, what we want to do is after this, we're going to say that connected Stripe account is equal to false by default. And then we're going to check if there are any search params. So if you remember, I did explain a while ago that inside the page.tsx, right, the root page out here slash agency, what we're doing is we are checking for that code and the state right? And then we're sending them to that specific agency or sub account or whatever it is. And we're also passing in that code. So we need that code here to basically use Stripe OAuth to authorize. That's what we need this for. This Stripe comes from lib Stripe. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to import that. And now if you scroll down here, you're not going to have that error. So what we're doing is we're saying if search params dot code exist, then we're going to check if there's no agency details dot connected ID. So only if there's nothing, then we're going to try to connect. So we're going to say try const response equal await Stripe auth auth dot token grant type authorization code and the code is supposed to be search params dot code pause this video and type this please don't make this mistake in any spelling mistakes here because it's going to be hell for you to debug okay and then here we're going to say await db dot agency dot update where the id is like this and we're going to just set the connected account id to response from here dot stripe user id that's it and then we're just going to say connected stripe account equal to true and then after this here at the bottom we're basically going to use that to determine whether to show the, the check mark for this or not. Okay, so you want to scroll down here where you have this image which and this p tag which says connect your Stripe account. 
we want to basically change this button. Okay, so this is no longer going to be a button. It's actually going to be a link. So go ahead and remove this button and say the following. So we want to say agency details dot connected account ID. If that exists, then we're going to do this. So if this is true, then we're going to check this connected Stripe account. So if this is true or this is true, one of them, then we're going to just show the check icon. If not, we're going to show a link with the following class name. So go ahead and put these class names too. And the href is going to be set to the Stripe OAuth link. And if you see what this is, let's go in here and read it. Okay, sorry, we skipped this. So I, I just wanted to show you that first and then I wanted to explain. So we have the agency and sub account type. So the Stripe OAuth link basically sends the user to this specific address. Okay, and it says type code client ID and it's going to put the client ID that we stored right remember that client ID that one and then it's going to say redirect URL which is going to be this to whichever account type they want so sub account or agency and we're going to pass in another param with the state and the state is going to be that ID that I was talking about okay awesome so that's what's happening so we're going to send them to that page and then stripe handles all the onboarding we don't have to do that manually if you want to do it manually you can do that as well you just have to have like hundred fields to get all their information and it makes it very very difficult so the good thing is stripe actually makes it a little customized where they give you the ability to you know hide their logo and all that kind of stuff well not completely hide but you can brand it to your liking right I don't know if you remember we did that in the start so that's what we got to do in there all right all right guys what we're gonna do now actually before we click on that link we need to make a quick change so go into agency and page.tsx not this ID and here we we're actually only using two underscores. This has to be three. Okay, so change this one too. And let's go into sub account and see if we have that problem there too, which is inside sub account page. We have, okay, here we have three. So now it should work. Now, if you are doing this for the first time, what I would suggest is go and create a Stripe account for this user that you use to log in. I hope you do not use the same account as the owner of, as Plura, because Plura is a business. Right now we are operating as the business owner. We're not operating as the agency, okay? These are just our users for our application, okay? So keep that in mind. We're going to go here to Launchpad, click on this, and now when you click on Stripe, uh, it's going to take you to a page. But basically, create an account in Stripe with this agency's user email, okay? Go create an account and come back, okay? So once you're done creating an account in Stripe, you can also do it through this onboarding process, but the problem is that it's gonna ask you a bunch of information, it's gonna delay it, and I, it's, it's just too annoying, okay? Open Stripe like this and create an account for this agency email. And hopefully, please, if this agency email is the same email that you use to set up Stripe and all the products and stuff like that, go ahead and delete that agency, delete the user too, and log in with a new user. Okay, and that user should not be that same email. So now go ahead and click on Stripe here. Okay, and now it's going to take you to this page. If it shows you this, click on this and click on switch user. Okay, if it doesn't, then just type it like this and then hit continue. Now it's going to take you to a page here. If you do not have the account created, it's going to ask you to create the account. It's going to show you a bunch of stuff. But if you have already created it, it's going to ask you for the password to log in. So go ahead and put that and log the user in. And now it's going to show their unnamed account. So once once you come here, do not hit connect. Go up here and hit skip this form. It's going to fake submit. It's going to go back, take the code, take you in here, and boom, there you go. Now we have connected the Stripe account. So if you refresh this page, there you go, guys. The Stripe account is now connected. So you can go to Prisma, refresh this, and go to your agency, and you would see the Stripe account ID. All right? How awesome is that? Now you can literally do anything with this. You can send money, deduct, do whatever you want, right? Great job, guys. I'm so proud of you. We did a lot of cool things right now, so let's move on. Okay, now we want the sub accounts to also have the ability to connect their Stripe account. So go into their launch pad right in here and we're gonna basically scroll up here and remove this work in progress, uh, work in progress tag, and we're just gonna do the following. So first I'm gonna say Stripe OAuth link and it's the same thing guys, nothing different, okay? So I'm gonna import this and I'm just gonna, you know, say let Stripe account like this, it's literally the same thing. <laughs> Nothing is different, okay? Only the things that are different is the, you know, the different uh, variables that we're passing in here. Like here we're using sub account, and here we're using sub account details.id. So pause it and just type it out, okay? And here I'm just gonna import Stripe like this, and we're gonna do the same thing here. Nothing different except db.subaccount.update. Okay, we're gonna update this and just change all this stuff too, okay? 
you guys know you guys are pros now okay and now we're going to scroll down to the bottom where do we have that connect connect stripe right here and we need to replace uh we need to put a button in here right or the what do we call that the link so after this paragraph tag you have this div hit enter and you're going to say sub account details dot connect id or this exists and if it does show the check icon if not show the link so if i go to the sub account so i created a new sub account here so you're not going to see anything in here because the dashboard has nothing but let's go into launchpad okay and now if you see this it's showing the start link right here so let's go ahead and click this okay and let me see so here i'm using pro okay so i'm using this account let me verify my team members too okay all right we don't have any team members all right looks great so what i'm gonna do now let me go in here okay and i'm going to go to the launch pad click on start it's going to take me to that page and now i'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'm going to switch the user to a different user, okay? I'm just going to use a different account. Go ahead and continue here. It's going to ask me for the password because I've already created um, this user. Create your free... Oh, it's asking me to create. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> okay. And hit continue. Okay, in my... I'll, I'll show you what it looks like, okay? Let's see if it shows um, all that process. So, let's see. Okay, what is this? What if I skip this form? Let's just see. Let's skip this form here and see what it does. Okay, it did this, and now if I refresh, nice, and if I go in here and refresh, go into sub account, okay, there you go. You see a uh, connected account ID. That's exactly what I want to see, right? Awesome. And let me also make sure the account IDs are different. So 10Z10, let's go in here, 10Z0H, hmm, okay, let me go back to sub account. Okay, nice. They're different. For a second, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, cool. Nice. So now even sub accounts can connect. So we have two accounts that are connected in here right now. And since we have connected with that email, I'm also going to connect that, give access to that user. So let's go to team and I'm just going to give access to that user here. So add and we're going to send it to um, this email and they're going to be a sub account user. I'm going to send the invitation. You're going to see this error because, you know, I told you the clerk email stuff, right? And now I'm going to go ahead and log in. All right, guys. So just give me one second. Okay. I also want to show you guys something real quick. Take a look at this. So if we go into bolt shift, let's go back into our agency. Wow, that was fast. And let's go into settings. And if we change this to not, you know, and um, if we remove white label agency and save this, we're going to see, um, let's go ahead and okay so if you go back to another sub account right another sub account user now you will see their logo will show in here so it's like basically we're not white labeling everything right that's what we're doing here so that's why it's called white label so now you see our logo and you'll see their sub account logo nice i just wanted to show you guys that because we never tested it all right all right now we're going to build funnels so this is the really I, I guess the most fun part of this whole project, right? So let's go ahead and open the sub account folder. Inside the sub account ID, we want to create another folder in here called funnels like this and create a page.tsx, okay? So there's going to be a bunch of stuff in here, guys. Just give me a second. Um, we're also going to have, uh, let me think. Yeah, we're going to have the funnel ID. So create a folder, a dynamic folder with the funnel. So funnel ID. Okay, like this funnel ID and inside this funnel ID, we're going to have the editor. So say um, editor in here, editor like this. And that editor is going to have another folder inside it called funnel page ID. Okay, so go ahead and say funnel page ID like this. And the funnel page ID will have another, we'll just have a page.tsx um, inside this. Okay. So I know this was very deep, but that's the only way to do this, okay? So I'm going to go back to the root of this, and let's start from here. So this might be a little painful, okay? And the reason is because we are using the older table in here. So I don't want you to waste any time. So here's what you're going to do. Go to GitHub, okay? Click on Funnels. Don't copy everything because there's a bunch of stuff we need to wire up, okay? Just go to Funnels slash page.tsx. So that page only, nothing else, okay? And you're going to copy everything from that file and paste it in here. Please follow exactly as I say, okay? You see there are so many issues in here. So copy that and paste it in here, okay? Pause the video, do it, and then come back. Nice. Now we're going to go 
into your folder structure. And inside this funnel, you're going to create um, data-table.tsx, okay? And inside this, you're going to go ahead and uh, go to GitHub again, copy everything in that uh, data table and paste it in here. Guys, there's nothing in here. There's literally, the only thing that is in here is, um, what do you call that? Um, is, you know, it's just the funnels, right? It's a funnel. It's just showing all the funnels in a t tabular structure. That's it. Okay. It gets more advanced when we go into the funnel ID. That time we'll build it out. Okay. So copy that and paste it. Now go into columns inside your GitHub too. So go to GitHub and go to columns. And I'm also going to create the file here, so columns.tsx, and I'm going to paste everything for the columns file. And now go ahead and fix this custom modal here. So delete, I'm going to remove this, go to custom modal and re-import that, like that. Okay, nice. Let me close this. And then we have another error inside this page. So the create funnel columns is also causing an issue. So let's see what the problem is. So inside columns, what is the problem there? Let me see. So columns from columns. Okay, so in here we need to, I'm exporting something incorrectly here. Let me go see what I'm exporting from this columns file, okay? So I'm gonna go into columns one more time. Okay, we're exporting, huh, what did I do in here? Guys, sorry, I copied something incorrect. So you wanna go into columns.tsx, sorry about that, and we're just gonna paste this right in here, okay? Sorry guys, I actually copied the wrong file. So copy the, the columns and just place the columns. It's nothing but just, I'll explain it, okay? Just copy it for now. There's nothing in here other than the name of the funnel, the last updated, and the status, whether it's published, and we're not even using this one. So just copy that and paste it. And now I'm going to solve each of these errors in here. So first, get funnels. We need this query. So I'm going to go ahead and um, copy this function, uh, copy this query, go into libs query, scroll to the bottom, and I'm just going to paste it in here. Okay, very simple thing. It's just going to get the funnels where the subaccount ID is like this. We're just fetching, okay, nothing. But the other additional thing is we want to include the funnel pages as well. Okay, that's the only additional thing. So please, please follow with me, okay? Follow with me, you'll be good. And then after that, we're gonna uh, get the create funnel. And this create funnel is actually um, a new form. So I'm just gonna say funnel form, okay? It's renamed and I'm gonna change this to funnel form, okay? So go into your forms now, right here. Where is that? Components forms and create funnel dash form.tsx like this and I'm going to copy so go back into your github go into github go into create funnel.tsx okay that's inside the form all right go into that it's a, it's just renamed if we just renamed it okay so it's going to look like create dash funnel like this okay so rename that to funnel form so that's all, that's all you're doing we're just copying copying the same content from there copy and paste the content in here okay and I'll tell you what this uh this component does too so file upload we need this file upload Upload. What's the matter with this? Let's see. So let me go to the bottom where we're using that file upload component and I'm going to re-upload this, re-import this, and that should fix that error. Okay, nice. And the sub account is going to change to sub account ID like this. You know, you guys know this problem, right? Okay, sub account ID. Awesome. So we solved the error here. So let's go back into the component and import. So this create funnel is now going to change to funnel form. Okay, so change this funnel form like that and that should solve that problem. Nice. And then let's close this and go into your data table. We see custom modal, gonna remove this, go down and import this directly from here. Okay, nice. And okay, that solved my problem, nice. And inside the columns.tsx, I see funnels for sub accounts. Okay, so this is, I think this is another type that we need to create. So what you're gonna do is go into libs type and we're gonna create a type, okay? So scroll down here and we're just gonna say export type funnels for sub account equal to prisma dot promise return type and we're gonna import, <clears throat> we're gonna import get funnels. Okay, go ahead and import that and that should solve that problem. So now I'm just gonna explain what this is. Don't worry, there's nothing here other than a bunch of tables. So if you go into funnels, you're just gonna see tables in here. There's literally nothing else, okay? And it has the create funnel, um, you know, form where you can put the name, description, subdomain. So this is the thing which I'm gonna explain. So let's go back um, just a second. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into our funnel form uh, right here. 
okay? And I'm just going to quick, you know, quickly just go through this. You guys probably know what it is, but I just want to show you. So right here, again, we're getting the modal. Uh, we don't even need this. So I'll remove these things. We just need set close. We need router and we're just doing use form. And this is going to have the name, description, favicon and subdomain. Now, what is this subdomain? Now, the subdomain is where um, the, this funnel is going to be hosted. So, for example, webprodigies.pluraapp.com or something like that, right? So, that is the subdomain. So, that's the subdomain people have to put, the user has to put in here to see their website go live, okay? And then, you know, the description is pretty straightforward. So, if you scroll down, you have the description component right here, which is a form field. So, please, I hope you copy paste it with me. If not, go back and watch and do it exactly with me okay form field in here form field in here for favicon okay and we're not even using this but I put it in here so you guys can take this up as a challenge okay I'm just gonna put a challenge note up top here challenge use favicons okay do some research I already I did a lot of research for you at least you know learn how to use images okay and then we just have the button to submit that's it so when you create that it's gonna show up in here and if you don't know how to create this unique this I mean complex table which has a search functionality and all this stuff you need to go and watch the previous table okay we did it in here right that was for uh, one of the other pages I think that was for team members so go and watch that so you understand how to create this table from scratch but if not just copy paste it okay save yourself a bunch of time nice so now let's go ahead and create a funnel so I'm just going to say let's call this funnel Hmm. lead generation okay and I'm just gonna say this is to get leads and the subdomain is gonna be web prodigies okay and I'm, I'm just gonna skip this for now and let's go ahead and save awesome there you go it saved it and it did this okay and um, this is just you know a lead gen uh, this is a link so if you hover over it you see at the bottom is showing the link there right sub account slash whatever right so when you click this, it's going to take you to the other route. What route is that? Open this folder, scroll up top. I'm going to shrink everything so it's easier. Go into app, main, sub account, sub account ID, funnels. And now it's going to take you to that specific funnel ID. Okay. So that funnel ID in here is going to have a page.tsx. So open this and create a page.tsx like this shrink everything else it's not needed and inside this page.tsx we're going to do the following so let me go in here and i'm going to just return something okay <coughs> sorry just going to return something in here and i'm going to change this to funnel page like this so funnel page okay let me shrink this so you guys can see clear and in here we're first going to get the params so params is going to give us funnel id which is going to be a string okay and we are also going to get sub account so sub account id which is going to be a string like this nice and then let's go ahead and destructure from here okay we get params and then we want to um we want to do the following so first thing we want to do is change this to an async component okay and in here we're going to say const funnel pages equal to get funnel so not get funnels get funnel okay so we're going to go ahead and create this so go into your queries file which is in here scroll to the bottom libs queries and just say const, oops, sorry, not this, uh, const get funnel equal async funnel ID, okay? We're gonna uh, go into the funnel and we're gonna check where the ID is like this, okay? But we're gonna include all the funnel pages and we're gonna ascend, uh, we're gonna, sorry, order them by ascending order, okay? And now we're gonna go back in here and we're gonna import get funnel. Don't import get funnels, okay? Get funnel. And then we're gonna check if there is no funnel page, redirect the user, to the sub account param slash funnels okay and if there is a funnel so a funnel actually exists now we're going to use the same thing we did um you know the tabs right for pipelines right we use some tabs we're basically going to use the same thing in here so was it for the pipeline yeah i think that's where we use it right let's let's see yeah right here we use these tabs right so same thing so what we're going to do here is we're going to basically say blur page so remove this blur page and inside this blur page we're going to pass in a link component and this link comes from next link and we're going to pass in an href and a class name. Okay. The href is going to say sub account slash params uh, slash funnels. And then this one is going to have this thing uh, params dot sub account ID. Sorry guys. And then the class name is flex justify between gap four margin bottom of four text muted of foreground. Okay. And then after this link, so this can just, 
actually, yeah, let's just say back in here like this. And after this link, I'm going to create an H1 tag and I'm going to say funnel page dot name. So let's go back to the funnels here. And if you click this, it's going to take you to that funnel page. Okay. And it says lead generation. Awesome. And now after this H1 tag, we're going to have the tabs component. So I'm going to copy the tabs component. We're going to have some errors. We're going to fix that in just a second. So go ahead and import all these stuff. And even after importing, you're going to see this and this throw up as an error. Okay. That's fine. Throw an error. Okay. So just go ahead and import all of these. Just give me one second. Okay. So now there are two uh, triggers. So two parts in here. One is the funnel steps and one is the funnel setting. So the funnel steps is basically the entire funnel um, structure, right? We are also using drag and drop there. So that's here. And then after that, we have the funnel settings. So for the funnel settings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go into the components, right? Or you can just build it in here, actually. Yeah. So let's uh, inside the funnel ID create a folder called underscore components like this. And inside that we're going to create funnel dash settings. Okay. Dot TSX like this. And inside the funnel settings, we're basically going to uh, return something in here. Okay. Now, um, basically I'm just going to paste this. All right. And we're going to address this one by one. So, uh, first thing is this funnel form. Okay. So create form is going to change to funnel form. And this is funnel forms. So let me go ahead and import that manually. So we have create funnel here. This is funnel form, um, create funnel form. What did we call that guys? Oh, I think I know what's wrong. So let's go in here into our forms and our funnel form has a different name because we copy pasted it, right? So change this to funnel form, copy this and go to the bottom and change this to and now if you go to that component um, inside funnel settings, you can import funnel form. That's that's the problem there. OK, so funnel form is imported. Um, what is it saying card? So what I'm going to do is remove all of these, go down here and import just one. So import card from UI card. And then I'm going to go in here and paste all of these in here. OK, nice. And then we have this funnel products table. Now, this is another thing where we're going to show all the products that can be sold inside that funnel. So how does this work? Well, the user can go into their Stripe account and they can create products in there and Stripe and our app will basically automatically fetch all those products and it will show it on the screen. OK, and now the user can check each product that they want to sell or remove them from the uh, from that specific funnel. And each and every funnel can have you know, a uh, different variation of products. Okay, cool. So this is super advanced. You see, like, I'm sure you've never seen something like this. So what is this? Basically, it's a funnel settings page. Okay, this is not rocket science. And we're just getting the sub account details. Okay, and then we're checking if no details just return. But if sub account details exist, then we want to check if their connect account exists. And if that doesn't exist, then go ahead and uh, return. But if it does exist, then we're going to get the connected accounts products. So right here, sub account details dot connect account products. Okay. So now there's one challenge here. When we try to access the products, right? If the account is not canceled, we should not show the funnel page. So try to use some logic to basically prompt the user to go connect your Stripe to sell products, something like this. OK, I'm also going to show you a great example of this because we're going to build the same thing for dashboard. So that will be a good example for you to um, you know, use that knowledge and build the same functionality for this, too. So in here, uh, we're going to get those funnel products and then we're going to pass those products into this funnel table. OK, so we can show the table and this is just a funnel form, guys, for the, so that they can fill it, uh, fill it in. All right. So let's go back here to the funnel steps where we're seeing that error in this page. And I'm going to hide the funnel steps and I'm going to import funnel settings from here. OK, so we can see something at least. OK, what seems to be the problem? Modules not found. Funnel products table not found. OK, that's because it's not built. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go into these components right here. So remove this funnel product table. Uh, I'm just going to copy this name so it'll be handy. And I'm going to go in here and inside components, I'm going to say funnel dash products funnel dash products. I think products. Yeah. Fu OK. Funnels dot products dash table dot TSX. OK. And in here, we're going to render that um, that funnel products table. 
okay? And this is also a very simple table, nothing crazy, but I'm going to copy it and paste it and explain every single thing in detail. All right. So first thing is I'm going to import everything. So go into uh, go into GitHub, copy this component, paste it in here, and we're going to, you know, import each and everything one by one. Okay. So go ahead and do that and come straight uh, to this video. All right. Awesome. Hopefully you went ahead and, up, uh, up, you know, imported all the components. You are going to have some errors. The first one is the queries because we never created this query. So if you went ahead and already imported that, great job. OK, but if not, I'm going to show you. Don't worry about all this. OK, just forget about it for a second. I'm going to explain. So let's go ahead and go into our queries file, scroll to the bottom here, and I'm just going to paste this update funnel products. So basically, we're going to get the products and the funnel ID. OK, so we're going to say um, data awaits db dot funnel dot update where ID is funnel ID. And we're going to set data to live products to the new products. OK, we're just updating it in there. So let's go back now. And now you should not see that error. So what are we doing in here? Basically, we're first getting some default data, OK, which is the funnel like this. And then we're getting all the products, which is of type stripe dot products. And it's an array of them. Now in here, we're getting router is loading. You know what this means? And then live products. So this is a state we're setting locally. OK, and its default data is being set in here. So I wish I could show you guys what this looks like. So let me zoom out. OK, it's not it's not working. But basically what this looks like is um, it's an object with a product ID, which is a string reoccurring, which is a Boolean. OK, and it's an array of that or it's going to be an empty array. OK, and what we're doing in here is we're saying default data dot live products. OK, we're converting that we're doing JSON dot parse or we're just setting an empty array um, as a string here. So then we can parse that. OK, cool. Now, um, uh, so right here. So we're creating a custom object. All right, guys, don't forget, we're creating a custom object for each and every product. And then we're converting that into JSON and storing it in the database. That's it. That's what we're doing. So in here, um, let's scroll down. So we just have a table, table, table header, table rows all this kind of stuff. OK, and all the steps and uh, uh, all the headers. And then we have a body. So the table body is the following. So we have a row here. So for each uh, table entry, right, we need to have a row. So we're going to say table row. We're going to say uh, for all the products, we're going to map over that and create a table row. But the table cells, so the first cell is going to be the input box. So what is this input box? This input box is basically a checkbox. So if you check it, it's going to go live. If you uncheck it, it's going to, you know, not be live anymore. So um, default checked is pro if live products dot find okay where the product dot product ID equal product dot default price dot ID okay if that is true then we're gonna set that as the default check and then on change we're gonna say handle add product to the product so when you tick it we're gonna handle add product here and this does a bunch of stuff what does that do this is what it does. So it says product ID exists. So if the product ID exists, live products dot find, sorry, um, we're setting this variable here, live products dot find that specific product ID that came in here. Okay. And if we find that, so we're going to say if that exists, then we're going to set live products. Okay. Live products dot filter um, the products where this is not equal to this. Okay. So it already exists. So that means we have to turn it off. So it's not going to be live. But if it does not exist, then we're going to create the new entry. So product in the reoccurring. So remember this right here. OK, that's it. And then let's go down here. And the next one is the image of the product. So this image comes from Stripe. OK, so product.images at zero. And then the name of the product, which is product.name. And then we have the recurring or one time payment. So we're going to put that in here. And then here we're going to also have the default price. So what is the price? Product.default price um, dot unit amount. And we're going to put that, um, you know, value in here. OK, that's it. And then we have a button to save the products. Simple, right? Nothing crazy. OK, so now let's scroll up. Um, so this is for the products table. I'm going to close this and see what we have in here. So yeah, going back to our funnel settings, go ahead and import funnel table like this. So this error goes away. OK, if you refresh now, you go into funnels, click on this funnel. Now you can see the settings. So now you can see the product table in here and you see the funnel details. So you can go ahead and update whatever you like or you can, uh, you know, save the product. So if you save this now, there's nothing. So there's no point. So let's go to um, Stripe and let's see if this works. OK, so this account um, is owned by. Let's see who. So let's go into 
what is that team okay is owned by this account okay so go ahead and log in with that account that you just created so if you create a sub account go and go to your stripe make sure you have already connected this sub account in here so make sure you connected the sub account through the launch pad and i think i have all right i have so now go ahead and log into stripe with that email okay i'm gonna do it so just give me a second awesome now when you log into stripe through that sub account right you're going to notice it's going to show that you are in partnership with Plura right here. This is how cool that feature is, right? This is why we have Stripe Connect, um, you know, wired up. So now if you go to products, so I'm just going to look up product catalog like this. We're just going to go ahead and create some products here. So I'm just going to say uh, website development. Okay. Oops, this is wrong. <laughs> website development. Let's, I'm just going to go ahead and also add some images in here. So I have some already saved. Let me see. Yep, already have some saved. So I'm just going to add this one. Uh, maybe I'll add this one right here. Um, best websites in the world. Okay. And then we're going to set this to a one-time payment and we're going to set it to $4,000. And uh, that's it. That's pretty much all you need. Save this product and just go ahead and create as many products as you want. Okay. So I'm going to go into product catalog and create one more product in here. And this one is going to be a reoccurring payment this time. So I'm going to say uh, design. So web design service. And I'm going to upload an image. I'm just going to use this image. And I'm going to say um, get unlimited support for your design needs. Okay. And then scroll down and we're going to say um, 1997 per month. Okay. On recurring. And that's it. And then you can go ahead and save this product as well. Nice. And if you go to product catalog, you should see both of these products in here. Okay. So let's go to Plura. Let's go to our funnels. Click on our funnel. Go into settings. And now you can see both of those products in here. How insane is that? And also the prices are also, you know, uh, wired up in here. So if you update this and hit save, okay. It's going to save that. And if you refresh the page, that product is now live on, you know, that funnel when it comes. Okay. So I'm going to take down everything right for now. Uh, but this is how you can create products. I'm sure you guys are going to love this because I, I personally think this is one of the best projects I've built. Right. So all you can do is give this video a thumbs up if you really want free value like this. Okay. So let's go to the steps. So I, I hope you guys like this uh, new method, which is, you know, copy pasting redundant stuff that you have done 1 million times and just focusing on the main aspects, right? Awesome. So let's go into the funnel. Um, where is that? Into page.tsx. And now we're going to build the funnel steps. All right. Now go ahead and open the funnel ID page.tsx. Scroll down here. And we're just going to undo this, um, this code right here. And I'm going to copy this go into my components folder and we're going to create funnel dash steps dot TSX and just return a component and paste what I just copied. Okay. And I'm going to quickly import this as well from here. So go and import funnel steps, click on it. So it takes you into that component and I'm going to quickly just place some props in here, which is funnels, which is going to have funnel for sub account like that and funnel page. Okay, subaccount ID and the funnel ID. So now it's not going to scream anymore. Okay, and you see the funnel steps right here. So let's quickly go ahead and also destructure this. So I'm going to say this here, like that. I think um, one more. Okay, and finally, this is going to be a client component. So scroll up and say use client up top. And in here, we're going to do a couple things. So the first thing is, we need to uh, understand which funnel step is being clicked, correct? So let's store that in a state. Very simple. So I'm going to create a state called click page, set click page, and import use state like this. And this is going to be of type funnel page or undefined. Okay. And um, we're also taking pages at zero by default. So we're clicking the first page when uh, by default. Okay. And then the next thing is we want to uh, get the pages state. Okay. So we're going to paste this in here, pages state, and we're going to pass all the pages in here to kind of like store all those pages. Okay. And then we're going to scroll down 
right here to this place and we're going to create the following stuff. So first, this is going to be wrapped in an alert dialog. Okay. And in here, we're going to create a div with a flex border dash one pixel. Oh, actually, I don't think that works. <laughs> Let me do that again from scratch. Okay. So we're going to create a div here. So we're going to create a div here and I'm going to do this and inside this div, we're going to create an aside. Okay. So go ahead and say aside like this. And this aside is going to have a scroll area. So the left side is going to be all the pages and the right side is going to be the settings for that page. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So go ahead and create a scroll area. So I'm just going to copy the scroll area, paste it. And I'm going to explain it in just a second. So shrink this, import the scroll area. Okay. And we're going to say scroll area height of full. And then we're going to say div. We're going to import this check from lucid react to check icon with a funnel steps. Okay. It's just going to say funnel steps up top. It's kind of like the header. Okay. The top section. And then we're going to have this drag drop context. Okay. And this drag drop context guys, it actually comes from, uh, from our react, uh, beautiful drag and drop. Okay. If you remember, so I'm going to scroll up top and I'm going to import all this stuff up here. So drag, drop, uh, drop context, drag, start, uh, drop result and droppable. Cause I'm going to need these things. Okay. And then in here we have that imported nice. And these two functions are needed. So we're going to get back to this in a second. And, um, inside. So we're basically getting all the pages and for each page, we're returning a droppable. Okay. A droppable like this. So, um, yeah, we're just returning a droppable in here and that needs a provided. Okay. The provided function. And that gives us access to something in here. So we're just going to say div and we're going to use the destructure and put this in here and say ref is provided dot inner ref. And we're going to get the pages state dot map. Okay. For each of the pages state, we're going to get all of the pages and we're going to create a funnel step for each of those pages. Okay. Very simple. So this way we can see cards on the left hand side. And if you want to see what this looks like, you can go and go back to the starting and you can take a look at that. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is let's just complete the, this on, on drag start. It's a very simple function. Okay. And this on drag start actually does this. Okay. So let me go in here. And I'm going to say on drag start. So the event is drag start. Okay. Let me make sure I imported that too. All right. Nice. And the current chosen page. So we're going to get this uh, draggable and event in here. Okay. And we're going to basically say value pages dot find. Um, I'm not sure if we're actually going to. Hmm. All right. I don't think this is actually needed guys, but I'm just going to keep it in here anyways. Yeah. I don't see this doesn't do anything in here. I think we, I think I just wrote something and just forgot about it. So yeah, sorry about that. But anyway, so then, um, I'm going to just populate the on drag end. Okay. That's probably what we need, but yeah. So I'm going to copy the on drag end and let's look at that in detail. So what this is, is basically on drag n is a function. Okay. That takes a drop result. And we're going to say const destination and source. We're going to destructure it from the drop result. Okay. Then we're going to say if there's no destination, it's the same thing as the last time. Okay. Or the droppable ID is the same as the source. So we're basically dropping it on the same, right? Same place. So no destination and it's the same position return. If not, we're going to change the state. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say new page order. So the new order is going to be everything in page state dot two spliced source index to one and then two spliced destination index to zero and then page state at zero at, at source dot index. We're going to get all of them and we're going to return a new object. Okay. With everything in page, but we're going to put the new index as the order. Okay. Uh, the new order as the index. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then we're going to set the page state. So now we have them uh, locally, uh, you know, swapped around. And then we're going to just make, um, you know, uh, an API call to save it in the database. Very simple. So this is another async function, uh, async query. So let's go ahead and create this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into queries up here. Okay. I don't have that imported. So I'm going to copy um, this function and I'm going to go into my queries file. Okay. Scroll to the bottom and I'm just going to paste this. So basically what we're saying is 
Um, upsert funnel page, this is gonna need a sub account ID, the funnel page, and the funnel ID. And this type is a custom type. So I'm gonna go to the Prisma, uh, sorry, go to types in here. And in here, I'm just gonna say type upsert funnel page equal to prisma.funnelpage.create without funnel inputs. Okay, good. Now let's go back and import that real quick, like this, nice. I'm gonna also shut down the server, guys, because we don't need it right now, okay? So once you do that, what we're doing here is we're getting the funnel ID, we're just upsert, we're updating that funnel page or we're creating the funnel page, okay? So um, we're gonna say if sub accounts, we're gonna, and I mean, if these are not present, we're gonna return, and if they uh, do uh, exist, we're going to say db.funnelpage.upsert, so we're going to create a funnel page with this ID, okay, or um, empty string, right, and then we're going to say update everything inside funnel page, or we're going to create a new funnel page, and the content, so this part won't make sense right now, but it is uh, basically the default um, component to show, to render, okay, and we're just going to say funnel page dot content, whatever is given in, or we're going to create a new, a new editor. Okay. So we're going to say content, the ID is body, the name is body in here and styles is going to have background color of white and the type is of underscore underscore uh, body. Okay, nice. And this way, when the editor loads, it has this as the first content to show on the screen. Nice. And here we're going to import in revalidate path. Okay. And then we're going to say sub account. So we're going to revalidate this path. Okay. Sub account slash sub account ID funnels funnel ID slash um, like that. And we're just going to say it's of type page. That's it. So this is the upsert funnel page. So let's go back and let's import this now. So that solves one problem and just import the toast stuff too. You guys know about this, all right? Let's use Sonar, why not? Actually, Sonar is a little different, guys. So I'm just gonna use the regular uh, use toast, okay? All right, nice. And let's go down here and now we have to create the funnel step card. So I'm going to spin up my server again. Just give me one second. Okay, awesome. Now there you go. You can see something in here, right? So now we have to, um, let's just skip this for now and we're gonna show the settings in here. So I'm gonna hide this component, okay? Hide the step card. And in here, we're going to go after the scroll area and we have this aside, right? So uh, let me think real quick, guys. Just give me one second. Okay, yeah, so after um, after the scroll area, hit enter, and we're going to create a button, okay? And this button is to create a new step. So import that button right here, okay? And we're going to use set open, which comes from modal, um, use modal, so we don't have that imported. So I'm going to scroll up top, and I'm going to go ahead and import that as well. So let's go ahead and import that just like this, okay? And now I can actually use that at the bottom. So we're going to say set open, bring in the custom modal, and now create funnel page. This is a new page, a new form that we're going to create. So again, um, this is actually very a very simple component, okay? Not too bad. So go into your forms, create another form called um, funnel, um, or let's just call this, is, is it a funnel page? Or I think this is more like the page. So we have funnel form, okay. So funnel page dot TSX, this is okay, this works, okay? And the funnel page is gonna have the following stuff, so I'm just gonna copy it. Go ahead and just copy from GitHub. It's not too bad, okay? There's just a couple things that might alarm you, but we will create it, don't worry, we will, we will look, about, look upon it, okay? Just give me a second. So the first one is a funnel page schema. I'm just gonna import the stuff because I don't like errors on the page. And the funnel page schema, I'm gonna go into types, and here I'm just gonna paste this, okay? So it basically is name and path name. That's it, nothing else crazy. And then, um, what's going on here? Okay, and then we have another function called delete funnel page. So I'm gonna go ahead and Im um, I'm create that as well. So go into your queries file, okay? And I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I'm just going to say delete funnel page where the funnel ID like this is equal to that funnel ID, just delete it, that's it. And then that should solve that problem too. Nice, so two errors are solved. This one, you know, the save activity log error, change that, and then something at the bottom here, save activity log again, okay? Now let's look at this component, okay? 
because you blindly copied it and it looks like there's a lot, but there really isn't a lot, okay? It's just a lot of logic inside the button. So um, now use modal is throwing an error. So I'm going to go back into that component. Um, where is that? The use modal up top. I'm going to import that use modal and also import the, the create funnel page down here, okay? Create funnel page. Um, all right, why is it not updating? All right, it is updating. All right, there we go. Nice. And um, now I'm going to go into that funnel uh, page that we were working on, which is in here. Okay, create funnel page. And that comes from the funnel page right here. So what is this? Very simple component. Basically, um, so let's look at this component again. Okay, so this component is very simple. It has a router toast. We're using form and the default values are path and path uh, name and path name. That's it. And whenever the default data, which comes from the uh, props change, we're going to, we're just going to do form dot reset and we're just going to reset those specific values. That's it. Nothing crazy. And now this on submit is just going to save all the data. Okay. So let's take a look at that. So if the order is not equal to zero, and the values dot path and there's no values dot path name. Okay, then we're going to return an error and say path name. The pages other than the first page in the funnel require a path name, because the first one, okay, um, is going to be just this, like this, and after that it's going to have something like second step, as you see, as an example. So that's why we're throwing that error. Okay, I mean we're just showing the form error and we're returning from there. If that's not the case, then we're going to say absurd funnel page. So we're going to create the funnel page and we're going to say for the sub account ID and um, we're going to say all the values. So the name and the path name for this ID, we're just going to create if there's default ID, we'll pass that or we'll create a new ID and we're going to pass in the order. OK, the order that comes in and um, then we're going to pass in a path name. So values dot path name like this. OK. And this order, if you wonder where it's coming from, this order comes from the create form funnel. So let's go back and see what that looks like. So this order is basically page pages state dot length. Okay. And if you go into this, um, we're basically passing that in there. So every time we create a form, if we create this funnel page, it's going to actually um, use that. Okay. It's going to use that order. Um, now that I think about it, you might want to actually use default data dot order. Hmm. Let me do default data dot order like this, or we're going to just say order. OK, this is much better. All right. This way we are not overriding the data, right? OK, and then the path name is going to be values dot path name or an empty string. OK, and then we want to pass in the funnel ID in here just like this. Nice. Uh, so we're just saving that funnel page for that funnel ID. And then we're saving an activity log, sending a toast, refreshing the page. You guys know the drill. All right. And same thing here. We have two fields, one for name, one for path name. And then we have some buttons here that look a little crazy. So I'm going to explain that. So first one is a submit button. OK, that's just going to say loading or save page. And then we have one in here. This submit button is basically to delete the funnel page. OK, it looks crazy because we put the logic in here, nothing else. So we're just going to say type button, not type submit. OK, very important. We're going to have an on click in here and we're just going to delete the funnel page. OK, with and we're going to pass in default data dot ID. So here we're making sure that the default data exists and then we're going to return this component. That's it. Nothing else crazy in here. So we're going to show a trash icon. And if we are actually deleting, we're going to uh, show a loading icon. OK, and then here we have another one, which is default data dot ID. And this is actually the absurd funnel page. So we're going to update the funnel information. OK, so um, we're going to um, click on uh, uh, we're going to actually first say get funneled. So we're going to get all the funnels. OK, and then we're going to get the last funnel page. OK the last funnel page and we're going to say response.find where the funnel ID is this funnel ID and then we want to get the funnel pages dot length. So we're getting the last funnel page and then we're going to say absurd funnel page. OK, to be the sub account ID like this with a default data ID like this. The order is going to be the last funnel page. If this exists, pass that in as a last funnel page or we're going to say zero. So when we're creating this, right? 
um, we basically want to, let's see what this say, uh, says here. Yeah, save funnel page details. So when you're creating this, we basically want to, um, hmm, I see one more here, which is save details. And this does, what does this do? This is a submit. Okay, sorry guys, I'm just trying to read this to make sure we're doing everything correctly. Okay, so this one is only updating, I think. Okay, and this one is creating. Okay, so in here, if the last funnel page exists, then we're going to use that for the order, or we're going to use zero because the first funnel page. And then visits are going to be, you know, put to zero. And then we're just going to, you know, create a name because, okay, I know what this is, guys. Sorry about that. This is the copy functionality, duplicate functionality. So if we have a funnel page that we want to duplicate, which is going to be so, so important, all we're doing is when you click on that, right, we're going to duplicate it by simply getting the last funnel page. And uh, first, we already have this funnel page, right? We already have this data. So we're going to say default data dot content. And we're going to set the path name to this slash and just put copy. And then we're going to change the name also to copy. That's why we did this. Really, really sorry about that confusion. Um, there's a lot of code on the screen, right? So I'm just trying to read through it. Sorry about that, guys. So that's it. That's what we're doing in here. And that's how we're uh, creating that, um, you know, new entry. Now, let's go back to our page, okay? And after this, we have something else to show. So on the left, on the right side, what are we showing here? Well, we have to show the funnel page details, right? We need to show the exact details of that specific funnel page. So let's go ahead and build that. Okay, so after this aside, go ahead and create another aside. And this is gonna say flex um, 0 0.7, background muted, and um, P of four. Okay, I'm just gonna quit the server. Just give me one second, guys. Let me refresh real quick. Okay, and inside this, we're gonna do the following. So I'm just gonna copy this. Give me one second, okay? And I'm gonna copy this and paste it. I'm gonna explain in just a second. So we're checking for the page length. If the page length exists, only then, only then are we showing um, this stuff in here. Or else we're saying create a page to view the page settings, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and import these components and it's basically the card stuff. So let me go ahead and import that. Just give me one second. Okay. And then I also have this link component to import. So I'm going to import the link component and then we have this lucid react um, edit component. Let's go ahead and import that too. And then we have this placeholder image. Okay. This placeholder image is actually uh, from here. So if you look into your icons, um, you should find it in there, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and import placeholder image like that. Let's see if that comes through. All right, awesome. And then at the bottom, I have one more external link icon. Let's go ahead and import that too, okay? So this looks crazy. I know. Don't worry. I'm going to explain it. So if the length exists, if we have pages to show, okay, something is wrong here. UI card. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and import this um, one by one. Actually, here, I'm just going to update that import. So let's go ahead and say card, go down here. Okay, I'm just going to copy this and I'm just going to say card here, import that. Sorry, guys. Wow, I'm just wasting time. So sorry. Okay, cool. And now that should look good. I'm removing this at the bottom and put this from, why did it not import? Okay, here, I'm going to copy all this, <laughs> just paste it in here. Okay, wow, that took way longer than it should. Sorry, guys. And now let's go down and we see something in here, card header. Okay, all that stuff updates. And what's the error? This might be TypeScript. Okay, so I'm just going to reload this real quick. Let me reload this browser. I mean, this window. Okay, and that solved the problem. Great. Okay, so what is this? We're just returning a card here. Okay, and this card is going to show um, the settings. Okay, so first it's going to have the title of the page description of the page and the description okay in here is actually going to hold all the components okay so please pay close attention so we have a div here which has a border of two it's kind of like a placeholder okay and we have a link for the entire placeholder so it kind of looks like an edit icon okay and then let me go ahead and create one actually let's see if we can see that guys so i'm just going to say um landing page okay and this is default so it's going to have this Thing here let's create that awesome funnel page is created 
And if I refresh this, we will not see this card because we didn't create that, but just to show you what this looks like, okay? So now you see here, we have first this border here, okay? Rounded large, so uh, large border. Um, and then we have small width of 80 like this and width of full on mobile devices and overflow clip, okay? And this is the placeholder image. I just created this in Canva and I converted it to an SVG. So it's an SVG image. So you can actually change the color of this to light and dark mode. Check this out, okay? Okay, the reason why you don't see this as light mode is because I'm using Chrome's default dark mode, okay? That's the reason, but it'll, be, it'll become white basically. There you go, you see that update, awesome. And um, then um, you see you have the name here and all this kind of stuff, okay? So if you refresh this, um, there you go. You see, the, you see the page name, okay? Nice. And now in here, we have this placeholder Okay, and the link is basically sub account slash ID funnels, the funnel ID editor slash that specific editor um, ID. So if you click on this, it's going to basically take you to that page, but we're going to have an error if we do that. Now, here we also have the preview link of the domain. So if you click this, it's going to actually take you to that page. But since there's, uh, I mean, there is a page. So now you see there's a domain right here. Okay, and if, for example, the domain was something else, which does not exist, okay, we're going to do some logic in here to throw an error, okay, not found error. So let's go back to our component. And yeah, this is what it is, right? Nothing crazy in here. And then um, what else? This is just Lucid React. So that's how we're creating this. So copy paste this, guys. It's it's just CSS magic. If you don't know all this stuff, don't worry. Let me know in the comment section and I will help you guys out in the Discord to understand every single thing in depth, okay? Um, and then here we have another link. So this one is actually, um, this is a little important, so let me explain this. So this is basically the external link. So how this works is we say href process.env dot the scheme, okay? And if you go to env file, you'll see what the scheme looks like right here, HTTP, okay? And that has to update to HTTPS when you go to production environment, okay? So change that in production, and then we're gonna say the funnel dot domain, right, the subdomain, and then we're going to have the next public domain. So dot localhost 3000 or whatever. And then we're also going to have the clicked page pages path name. That's it. And then we have a class name in here. Nice. That's it. Okay. And in here, we're just rendering out that thing. So the scheme plus the domain, our website and the path name. So no path name right here. So we just have the trailing slash. Okay. And then at the bottom, we're just using the same create funnel form that we used. And we're just showing that at the bottom there. That's it. Okay. Nothing crazy. And finally, um, we're also rendering this no uh, create this page to view page settings. So if they don't have anything, we're showing that. All right. Now let's go ahead and quickly build out the funnel page step, which is right here. Okay. So what we're going to do for this is I'm going to undo this real quick. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go into my component and I have steps in here. Okay. So what is this? Sorry. What is this step card? Okay. So I'm going to create a funnel step funnel. Uh, what is this called? Funnel step card. So funnel dash step dash car dot TSX. And I'm going to just return something in here like this. Okay. And the funnel step card is going to have the following props. It's going to have funnel page, which is of type funnel page. The index, which is a number, and active page is Boolean. Okay, let's go ahead and quickly destructure this stuff from here too. Okay, and let's import this funnel page card. Nice. And now it should show something in here. So we see some data in here. It just looks horrifying, but we'll fix that. Okay. Now, um, in here, um, so I had to actually create a portal for this, guys. And the reason is because React drag and drop was acting really, really weird. And I know Pangea actually fixed the issue, but React drag and drop was acting really weird here. So <laughs> I had to go ahead and create a portal. So just follow through with me. Okay. We're going to say let portal equal document dot get element by ID invoke that. And we're going to say blur dash page. Okay. And after this, we're going to return something in here. So we're going to return draggable from react beautiful. And we're going to say draggable ID equal to the following funnel page dot id okay dot to string and invoke this and inside this we're going to pass in the function okay 
and this function has to be inside this curly bracket like this. And in here, we're going to get provided, okay, provided, and we're going to also get snapshots. I'm going to say snapshots like this. And in here, I'm going to pass in the following. So I'm going to say if, um, what happened here? Okay. So if snapshot dot is dragging, then we're going to do this. So I'm going to also return something in here so it doesn't scream at me. Return null for now. Or I can probably just, huh, it's supposed to, it's not supposed to scream at me actually. Okay. I don't know what's going on. So droppable, it needs, yeah, it needs some JSX elements, right? So I'm going to say if snapshot dot is dragging, offset is x of 300. And I'm going to do this here, okay? Provided dot draggable dot style left offset dot x. And then I'm going to say provided dot draggable props. And I'm going to create this and pass in x, okay? Nice. And then inside this, we're going to say component. So here, instead of directly returning, we're going to do the following, okay? So I'm going to say const components equal to this. Okay. Just give me a second, guys. I'll explain this in a second. And then after this, we're going to do this in here. Okay. So create portal, go ahead and import that from react Dom and let's do this one more time. So what does this mean? So basically we are creating a component in here. Okay. We're just creating sort of like a component to have all the logic done in here. Okay. And then we're creating a portal. What is a portal? A portal basically creates another section somewhere in the DOM where you can actually insert the element into and handle it relative to that uh, portal, right? It's literally a portal in the document, okay? So we created this here and we're using blur page. So if you go to blur page, you will see that has that ID, okay? Let's actually make sure it has that ID. Um, where is that? Global blur page. Okay, and maybe it's not here. Let me let me check from here directly. So, or maybe we don't have it anywhere. Okay, so we have this blur page as the ID, or maybe we're not. All right, give me a second, guys. I think we have to put that blur page or else it, this may not work. Okay, nice. I'm glad we actually checked that. So go into your global components and go, go into the blur page right here. And we're going to add an ID. After this, say ID equal to blur dash page. Okay, nice. I'm glad we actually checked that. And now let's go back. And now what does uh, draggable say? Draggable is saying something in here. So I'm going to go ahead and read this error. Okay, so first let me just import all this. I think that's probably what's causing this issue here. So card content. Um, let's go to card content and import that too. Mail and arrow down okay yeah all right um uh, was that actually causing the problem not sure let's refresh this and see okay something is wrong here hmm okay so what we're missing is index in here so say index equal to index like this sorry guys that's what we missed now you can see we have this um we have this page here which can be dragged but it's not going to work because the on drag end is actually not set up right so um, just going back to what we were building here, that's what we're doing. We're just building a portal somewhere in the document and we are rendering that component inside that specific portal, which is that blur page. And then relative to that, we're moving the elements around. That's why now it works, um, you know, on this display. Okay. It works fine. Not on mobile device, unfortunately. So nice. And now let's go back and we need to finish the on drag end. So let's go to that. So click here and go into funnel steps. Okay. And after this function, um, let's see. Okay. We have on drag end. Huh? All right. I think we already built it out. So it should, we built it out. So it should work. So I'm going to go ahead and create, let me duplicate this. I'm going to click this and hit duplicate. It's going to duplicate the funnel page. Okay. And if you come back here, it's, uh, let me just refresh. Okay. If you click this nice, it's updating. If I move this up here, refresh, Okay. Awesome. It worked. Great job. <laughs> so now we have the funnel builder working. So how does this funnel build builder order actually work? When we are on a page and we hit next or we create a component, like let's say we are using a, um, what do you call that? Like a customer or contact list form, right? When we hit submit, we want to actually go to the next page. So we want to check what we have, 
right? We want to check if there's a next page and then we want to go to that page. That's why we need that order stuff in here. Okay. So technically this can be used as a website as well. You can just use different pages in here and then, you know, forget about the order, right? You can just have some pages and you know, so on and so forth. So it's completely customizable guys. You can build so many things with this. All right, now go ahead and stop what you're doing. Just give me your attention because we are going to try to understand how the editor works and the architecture, what an element is and all that kind of stuff. All right, please stop what you're doing. Just listen for a second. So first of all, just a quick side note, we are not going to be using any external libraries like uh, Grape.js or anything like that to make this work. We're not even using the drag and drop, React Beautiful drag and drop, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do that you know, natively where you can drag elements and drop them onto the editor. So first of all, guys, our entire editor is comprised of these three parts. We have the navigation, editor sidebar, and we have the editor itself. Okay, pretty straightforward. And we're just going to wrap our entire application inside a data layer. Okay, you guys already did this, which is a provider, right? Like modal provider. And that provider is going to hold the entire editor state. And the editor state is going to have two things. One is the editor itself. And the other one is the history stack. Now, just keep that in mind okay you don't have to focus on what that is exactly yet because we're going to break down what elements are so right now you notice inside this editor we have a couple elements by default we have the body element so if you remember at one point we were creating the editor right we were creating funnel pages and by default we set some default values here which is the body tag if you guys remember that so that element by default will populate in here now the body tag again can have many elements inside it and so on and so forth as you can see in here, we have container, container, and a text element that is like this. Now let's understand what these elements are. So there are two types of elements. We have the custom static elements, and then we have the recursive elements. So what is these static elements? So they are elements that don't have elements inside of them. And for example, like text, video, image, or contact form, these are just one solid, like independent component. That's it, think about it that way, okay? And then we have the recursive elements. So what are recursive elements? So this is more like elements that have things inside it, like other containers or other static custom static elements. So as you can see here, they are elements that have other elements inside them, like a container or other containers inside. Okay. Like payment forms and stuff like that. Now, what we can do is based on what component we need to render, we can either show this or we can show this. So to make this much more understandable, we're going to put that into a master recursive element. All right. Super, super important. Please listen carefully. The master recursive element. It's kind of like a wrapper that determines which element to show whether to show a static element or to show a recursive element. And you can also see here, right? Decides what element to return. Now these recursive elements, these are elements like containers we just saw above, right? Containers and columns and things like that. Like if you have a two column row, then that would be a recursive element because it has one column outside. I mean, one row, right? Which is basically one solid column. And inside that we have two columns. So that clearly means it's a recursive element. This master recursive element just does the logic of deciding which element to show inside the editor. So every element here technically is a recursive element because the recursive element is a container. Okay. It's a wrapper. Awesome. I hope that makes sense. Now let's understand what does that recursive element. So what does that element itself? What does it look like? An editor element is going to have the standard properties, which is ID style name and type and the type right now, this can be some example of different types, which is text section, container, contact form, payment, link, image, video, and all this kind of stuff. Even the body tag is also an editor element. So it's going to be there here as well. Now, every element is going to have a special property called content. Okay. It's a special property that gives more information about that specific element. So let's say this element is a container element. It's content will give us some information about it. So the content can be of two types for different type of elements. So for the recursive elements, our content would be an array, but for custom elements, that means it's a single independent component that doesn't have anything inside it, right? That can have special properties like inner text, source, href, or any custom properties you guys want, literally anything. Like for example, let's say you created a special type of a component called hero section. You can have 
one property here called hero section banner image you can have literally anything you want for that element okay i hope that makes sense so let's look at a quick example to see what that looks like in terms of some code right so this is the json object you can think about it that way so this is an example of a custom element so a custom static element you see it has id name style and type but its content is just the properties itself. That's it. Nothing else in here. And if you go in here, now you will notice that an example of an editor element is it has the same thing, name, right? ID, styles, and type, but two column here. But its content is actually an array of other editor elements. You see this? And you see we are also passing some default styles and its content. Also, if you want to provide some additional default elements inside this, you can go ahead and create whatever you like. And to summarize this, if you ever wanted to create a custom component, Component, like something like a hero section all you would have to do is have this container and that container can probably have the top section which is let's just say title right so you can have one element static element called text and you can set its properties in here just some default properties and you can say inner text right and you can set that to some value and then at the bottom maybe you want to show two buttons so that can be two like a, a container and its content is gonna have two static elements with the type button and then you can just put some default properties properties for it as well. I hope this makes sense, okay? Because I think this is amazing how I got this together. So please remember this because when you are speaking to your employer, you definitely want to impress them and this will definitely impress them. The next super, super cool feature of the entire editor is the history state management okay the history state management such as redo and undo feature so let's just quickly understand it's actually extremely simple so our entire state here is this is one whole state because one our whole editor state has an editor and the history stack okay but I'm just gonna remove this and just explain them independently so the history stack is nothing but a stack that keeps track of different editors so let's say right now but on by default when we spin up the browser right where you spin up the editor you're gonna see some default state so that will be this example then if we make a change it's going to have another editor state we're gonna store a copy of that editor state in here then if we add another element the new editor we're gonna store a copy of that editor inside this state and we will set the current history position to this one right here now when we try to undo what we're doing is we're simply moving that current history state we're changing the Index to point to this one and then we're gonna update our editor state to show from this history stack to show the element number two. And in code, it would be this minus, so the current index minus one. That's what we would do. And of course, all these properties would also reflect exactly what that editor state is. And now this is actually redo, sorry about this. So what about the redo? So for redo, basically, we're just moving the current history position back up one level. So we're gonna check if there's wherever we are pointed at is the last index, right? We wanna check if that is the last index or not. And if it is not the last index, that means there's more elements past it. So then we will move up one level and then we will simply set the editor to this copy. So we're taking the copy and we're setting it right here. Same thing like this here. When we go back, we're taking this copy, setting it right, this copy and setting it right here. So finally, just to show you, when we add an element, this is what happens. So we put the new editor, okay? We create a new copy of the editor, we store it in here, and then we move the position pointer to this editor like this. And then you can see its elements will also update. Awesome guys, I hope this makes sense. This is just the breakdown, the overview of how state management and all that kind of stuff works. I'm also gonna show you inside the code how we are going to transfer data while dragging and dropping components into the editor, okay? It's a simple, very very simple native way of doing it and I'm gonna get straight to that. All right guys, so go ahead and open your directory structure and you wanna click on funnel page ID page .tsx, and in here we're just gonna simply return a component and let's go ahead and extract these props. So we're gonna just say params, okay? Uh, params like this and this is gonna give us sub account ID which is gonna be a string and then we're also gonna get the funnel ID which is also gonna be a string, okay? And then uh, we also need the funnel page ID, which is all going to be a string. And by the way, all these names, okay, I'm sure, I mean, we're too far into this tutorial now to say this, but please make sure they all line up with this, okay? They have to be the same ID, okay? Awesome. And let's go down here and let's go ahead and import all of these. So importing params like this, nice. And inside this first, actually, let's go ahead and change this uh, name. We're just going to call it the uh, page. This is fine. And in here, we're going to change this to an async component and say const funnel page 
details equal to await db dot funnel page dot find first. Okay, we're going to invoke this and let me extend this a little bit more so you guys can see clear. Okay, and in here we're going to see say where the ID is props, sorry, params dot um, funnel page ID. Okay, and once we get that, we're going to check if there's no funnel page details, then we're going to simply return the user and redirect them to the following page. So I'm just going to copy this link because it's annoyingly long, but basically it is the sub account, okay, slash params, sorry, params dot sub account ID slash funnels slash params dot funnel ID, okay? And then at the bottom here, now we're going to return that entire uh, editor stuff, okay? So please just focus, copy paste with me if I'm doing any copy pasting or if I'm typing, just type, e type with me, okay? So in here, let's go ahead and remove this page and we're going to pass in the following class names. So say class name equal to fixed, top zero, bottom zero, left zero, right zero. So it's basically taking the entire screen and Z is going to be 20 background, uh, BG background and overflow hidden. Okay. And inside this, we're going to pass in uh, the following. So first we're going to have the editor provider. So we're going to go in here, go into your providers. Where is that? Providers. And we're actually going to create a folder here, guys. And we're going to say um, editor, uh, editor like this. And inside this, we'll say editor dash actions dot TS uh, TSX or TS actually. Hmm, that's fine. Just with TSX. And then in here, we're going to also say editor dash provider dot TSX. Okay. And um, also, since this is going to be a page that can only be tested on a larger screen. I'm going to try my best to kind of have, you know, two things running. Okay. We might have to go back and forth like this. I hope you guys don't get annoyed, but that's the only way to see it. Okay. Because a funnel, a, a website builder is pointless to, to make on a mobile device. Okay. But for now, we're just going to build this provider to, so just stick around with me. And what we're going to do, guys, this is going to be a lot of code, but just bear with me. Okay. So first I'm going to say export uh, type and this type is the device types, okay? So when we're switching between all the devices, these are the only available devices, which is desktop, mobile, and tablet. And then after that, we're gonna create our first type. And this type is export type editor element, okay? Which is equal to, remember we explained that, right? In the architecture. So we're gonna have the ID, we're gonna have styles, which is react.css um, properties, and then we're going to have the name of that element. And then we're going to have the type of the element. And finally, the content. Now, what is uh, what is this content? Um, okay, we also have to update um, this editor buttons. So go into your const, uh, constants file. And I'm just going to paste this. It's in the, it's of course in the GitHub repository. It's just all the types, okay? All the different types. And I'm going to go ahead and import these editor buttons like that. Nice. And now the content is going to be of two types, right? It's either going to be the editor element and an array of them, or it's going to be, remember that special object. So how do you do that? We're just going to put a pipe here and say editor element and an array. Okay. Or it's going to be an object. And this object is um, essentially going to have, I'm just going to put inner text. Okay. String. And then as we're building, I will update this. So, you know, actually here, let's just keep it like this and I'll show you as we're building how to update this. Okay. Um, let me, I don't think we need to. Okay. That's fine. And, and then after this, um, at the bottom, we're going to create the editor. Okay. The type for the editor and the editor is going to have live mode set to Boolean elements, which is all these elements, right? So editor elements and array of them. Selected element is going to be an editor element. So if we click on something, we want to populate the sidebar, right? The properties tab with that specific elements styles, right? So that's why we need the selected element. And then which device we're selecting. And I mean, we're editing on preview mode and the funnel page ID. Okay. And then we need the history state. So say export type history state, which is equal to an object. And this is going to have two things. First, the history, which is the editor. Okay. So an array of editors, remember the stack that we explained and the current index, which is a number. 
and then we're going to have the editor state. So this is the entire state of our application, okay, of, of our editor, which is the editor and the history, okay? So history is going to have history dot history. I know that's weird, but this is how I could wrap my head, my head around it, okay? And now let's go ahead and create some initial states for each of this. So this is how reducers work, right? You need initial states for it. So the first one is going to be the initial state for um, for the editor. So I'm going to go ahead and say initial editor state is of type editor state at editor. Okay, so this one. And we're just going to pass in the default value. So the first one's going to be body by default, right? So in case something happens, we always want to show this body tag. We're going to say selected, which is, you know, nothing. You can also make the selected item this one by default, but that's okay. I'm just going to put nothing in here. And then we're going to have the device desktop preview false, live mode false, and, and funnel page ID is also uh, empty. Okay. And now the history state, I'm going to go ahead and say history is the initial state. So I've created an array, array and I've passed in this as the initial state in the beginning. So it's nothing right now. And the current index is zero. Perfect. And then finally, the initial state of our entire editor is this, which is editor is going to be this initial editor state, okay, which is this one. And the history is going to be this one right here. Okay, cool. And now we're going to go ahead and create that reducer. So um, we're going to say, oh, fuck, I messed up. Okay, sorry, video editor. I got to do this again. Okay. And now we're going to create that reducer. So scroll down here. We're going to say const editor reducer equal to a function like this. And this is going to get the state, which is going to be editor state. Okay. Like this. And, um, it's default value is going to be initial state. Okay. And the action is going to be editor action, which we don't have. And we're going to get in just a second. So go in here. Um, where is this? Yep. Right here. Click on editor action. And we're going to go ahead and uh, create a bunch of actions. Okay. So go to GitHub, copy the actions file and paste it in here. There's nothing crazy. I'm just going to explain. Okay. So it's just an editor action, which can be of type of any one of these. So anytime we need to change the state, we have to dispatch one of these actions. So for example, we can dispatch an add event or an update element or delete elements, any one of this action, and we need to provide all the values inside it. That's how a reducer works. If you guys know Redux, we're basically creating Redux from scratch. Okay, um, awesome. So it's a gr great learning experience for you. So this editor action is what we need in there. So we're just saying the action can be any of uh, any one of these types. Okay, so go back in here and import that. Okay, awesome, no errors here. And this function is going to be, is going to return this. So I'm just going to say editor state like this. Okay. What seems, okay. The reason is because nothing was returned in here. That's why it's throwing an error. I think, uh, neither undefined nor void nor any must return a value. Okay. Yeah. Because we haven't returned any value. So first go ahead and say switch. Okay. Like this. And this switch statement is going to take, um, the action dot type. All right action.type like this. And based on a bunch of cases, we are going to do the, so see, it's already giving me this. This is insane. So I can, I can just pull every single type. Oh, I never even knew that. That's pretty cool. Okay. So the, to just to solve this TypeScript error, I'm going to create one uh, state here, one case here called default, and I'm going to return state like this. So now this uh, TypeScript error should be solved. So I hope this is easier to understand now. So we're creating uh, actions for each of these um, actions here, right? We're creating reducers. So what to do if this action was dispatched. So let's go to add element first. Okay. And we're going to do the following. So we're going to say um, const updated editor state. Okay. And this is equal to, I'm just going to copy this. So please follow through. So this is going to be equal to the following. So we're going to say, uh, create this object here, and then we're going to say editor dot state dot editor. So everything inside the editor, but the elements is going to be this new helper function we're going to create, and we're going to pass in all the elements that already exist and what we got from the action. Okay. And what that function looks like essentially 
is this right here. So scroll up here and we're going to say the following. We're going to say add an element. It's going to take the editor array. So everything, all the elements, right? Editor elements and the action. And this action can be any of these types. So first we're going to say if the action type is of add element, if it's not of type this, then we're going to throw an error. Okay. Because we can only do this action. And I mean, we, I don't think we need this to throw an error here, but this is what we can do here. And then we're going to return a new array because that's what we're trying to do here. We're going to save that eventually. So editor array dot map. We're going to say if the item ID is equal to action dot payload dot container ID and the array dot is array, right? Then item, um, I'm sorry, for item dot content. So let me try to explain this a little in detail. Just give me one second. All right, guys, I think there's a better way, way to explain this. I'm just going to explain this right now. So this is actually a recursive function. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Okay. And what this recursive function does is when you dispatch this action with the container, let's say if the element was a container that can have, that is inside another container, right? Then we're going to basically search for that container here based on what we get from the payload. And if we find that container, then we're going to put set its contents to everything that's in there. And we're going to add the new element in there. That's what we're doing here. But if we don't find that container ID, right, then we're going to check item dot content. Okay. So that means there's something inside the contents and it's an array. Okay. So uh, the item dot content is an array. Then we're going to come in here. So now it's an array. So this means it's a recursive function. Okay. And in here, we're going to return this item and its contents. We're going to invoke this one more time and pass in the item dot content and the action. That's what we're doing here. I hope this makes sense. Okay. So that's how we're able to add an element to any container on the, on the editor. So if we drag it into a, a container that's completely nested, then with the help of this container ID, we can tell, you know, which one to put that element into. That's how this works because an L, um, a standalone static element cannot be placed inside, you know, nothing. It has to be placed in a container. So that's why this container ID is so important. So until we find the container ID, we're going to keep looping. And when we do, we're going to place the element inside. Okay. I hope this helps you really understand what's going on. Now, um, let's, uh, we still need to complete this. So let's go down here. And after this update, updated editor state, we're going to update our history stack. So I'm going to say updated history, okay, is an array. So we're going to set a new array with everything inside state.history.history.slice zero to state.history current index plus one, okay? And then we're going to put the new updated editor state in there. So this is how we're keeping track of the newest one. Okay. So this is everything else before that. And this is the newest one. Nice. And then after that, we're going to get the, we're going to create another object for our new editor state, which is going to be everything in state. The editor is going to be this one here. And our history is going to be everything inside that history, right? Everything in state dot history and our, um, so everything else inside history. And then history itself is going to be set to the new updated stack. And the current index is going to change to the whole length of the array. So the whole length of that updated history stack minus one. Okay. That's going to be the new index now because we added a new element. And then finally, we're going to say, um, return new editor state right here. Okay. Now I did do one additional feature, but I do feel that is too much for this entire, uh, you know, course, but basically what that is, is how can you save all of this inside local storage? so that, you know, you can spin it up anytime the user, you know, loads the page, the editor, you can spin up the history as well. So I, I mean, I already did it and it's in another repository. I'll put it in the discord if you guys want it. Okay. But I'm just going to skip over that for now. It's unnecessary. Awesome. So now let's go to the update element. Okay. Let me see what else we have here. We have delete element, change, clicked element, change device. Okay. So let's do the change device. Okay. Or let's just do everything. Why not? Right. It's the same thing. So first we're going to perform the logic to update the element in the state and great. I also put comments here guys, so you can literally understand what's going on. Okay. So we're going to call another function called update an element to get the updated elements. All right. 
and that function looks very similar to to you know what we created before so i'm going to go up top here and i'm going to create this function so update an element needs an um an editor element which is an array i'm just going to quit this for now and it also needs the action okay and it's going to return the editor elements array so if action.type is not equal to update we're going to throw um, an error and then we're going to return editor array.map okay editor array.map here we're going to return um, if the item.id equal action.payload.element details dot id so we if we found that element we're trying to update then go ahead and update that element by simply saying return everything in the item but also add the new details in here but if we don't find it if we don't find that item then we're going to say if the content right if there is content and the, it is an array, so that means we can loop over it. So we're going to say items.content, so uh, items, and the content is gonna be, we're gonna re, uh, we're gonna call this one more time recursively, and we're gonna pass in the new contents in there. That's what we're doing in here, okay? And if, for example, we cannot find this, and we cannot do this, that like something is broken here, okay? <laughs> so it's not an array and there's no element, like that makes no sense. So um, that's why, I mean, this is the logic. This is what works here, okay? Awesome. And this is what update element does. So let's scroll down here. So that's how we're updating this. And then we need to continue this. So, so now we're gonna also update our history, okay? So updated history is, um, updated element is selected, okay? So this is the first thing. Um, and update the history to include the entire updated editor state. So state.editor, um, this is actually, this is something else, guys. This is not the correct thing here. So we're just checking if the updated element is selected. And we're going to say state.editor.selectedElement.id equal to action.payload.elementDetails.id. And if that's the case, then uh, we're just going to store that in here. And then we're going to say the updated editor state with the update is going to be everything inside the editor, but the elements is going to be the updated elements, and the selected element is going to be the updated element is selected okay um if this is oops sorry if this is true so if that element is uh, is selected then action.payload.element detail so it's kind of like we are we are just setting that because we updated it so if you update something we want to you know show that element as selected so that's why we did that here or we're just going to put nothing is selected um right here okay and after this we're going to also update our history so um why is this like this? Huh, something seems to be wrong here. Okay, if I click this, it's taking this, even though it should actually take this. Anyway, so I'm gonna say updated history with update, right? Is everything in state.history.history .history slice, you guys know this, zero to state.history.currentIndex plus one, and then everything in the new updated state. Okay, so we're saving the copy right here. And then finally, we're going to create our new updated editor like this with everything in state and the editor is going to be the updated editor state with the update history is going to be the new uh, is going to be everything inside state dot history but history is going to be reset to this new uh you know value here and the current index is going to be update history with update dot length minus one and then finally we're just going to go ahead and return this new updated editor like this okay awesome now what about delete element delete element is actually very very similar to updated element. So go ahead, give this a challenge, okay? Give this, take this as, you know, a challenge and give it a shot and see if you can create this delete element action. Okay, hopefully you got it right. And if you didn't, don't, no problem. I'm gonna show you exactly what to do, okay? So first let's go ahead and delete this element. So we are creating the logic here. So we're gonna get all the elements after deleting the element the user wanted to delete, okay? So let's go up here. Where is that? Okay, after this, and we're going to create the delete an element function. And this function is going to again take the editor elements and the action, okay? And it's gonna return an array of the editor elements. And if it's not of a delete element action, we wanna throw an error. And then we're going to say editor array.filter, okay? If the item.id is equal to action.payload, so whatever was sent inside, then go ahead and return, okay? else if the item.content and the array.isArray, item.content, we're gonna 
send this one more time into this uh, function. So recursively, we're going to call this function and we're going to pass in that item's contents again. So from that, it's going to check if it finds it. No, if it didn't find it, it's going to go back in here. It's going to try to find in here. And, you know, if it's still, you know, if it comes here, it's again going to call this and it's going to keep doing that until we find this item. Okay, that's what's happening. And then if not, after this, we're just going to return true for everything else. Um, we're just going to return true here. Okay, so let's go back down and let's complete this delete element. So now we're going to say the following. We're going to say updated editor state after deleting, okay, is going to be everything in the editor, but the elements is going to be set to this new updated elements after deleting. And then we also need to update the history. So the history after deleting is going to be everything in, you know, the same thing, right? Current index plus one. We did the same thing up here, right? So that's but we're going to put the new editor state after deleting in there. And then finally, we're going to create a new state. We're going to just call this deleted state and we're going to say everything in state. And the editor is going to be the updated editor state after deleting. The history is going to be everything in history, but history is going to be set to this new history state here. And the current index is going to be uh, length minus one. Okay. And then finally, let's go ahead and just return that deleted state like this. And now the next one is if an element was clicked. So change the clicked element. So if you click on something, if you're clicking on one of the elements, we want the state to also keep track of that. So let's go ahead. And this is actually a very simple one. Um, so this is what it looks like. Okay. So basically we're creating const clicked state is everything in state and the editor is going to be set to everything in editor and the but the selected element is going to become action.payload.elementDetails or we're just going to put an empty object so like so if for example we never sent it that's why okay i think this is just for typescript stuff so yeah pass in the element details and the history now is going to be everything in history but history here is going to be an array with everything in state.history.history.slice pretty much the same thing okay to one, I mean, plus one, oops, sorry guys, like this, plus one, and then we're just gonna pass in our new, uh, pass in our state.editor, okay? Because we're saving a copy of um, the state. And then, um, let's go down here. So if you may ask here, you may have a question. Here we're actually saving that um, new updated state in the history, but here we are not, because I don't wanna keep track of everything that's clicked, okay? But I think still, Hmm. It will still do that, but it will keep only one before. Okay, that's what we're doing here. Okay, and then after this, finally, let's just go ahead and return uh, the click state. Okay, nice. And now let's work on our redo functionality. So our redo functionality, let me see that. We have redo. Okay, so I'm first going to do the change device because this is the order we have here. So I'm going to say the following. So I'm just going to say changed device state. Okay is everything in state, but the editor is going to have the state.editor, so everything inside that, but device is now going to become what we pass in through the payload, okay? And then go ahead and return the change device state like this, okay? That's how we reset that. And then we have one here called to uh, toggle preview mode. And for toggle preview mode, all we're going to do is we're going to do this here. We're going to say const toggle state equals state, everything in this, but editor is going to have everything in the state.editor, but the preview mode is going to be the opposite of what it currently is at. Okay. And then we're just going to return this like that. And then toggle live mode is going to be const toggle live mode equal editor state, which is an object, everything in state, but the editor is going to have everything in the state.editor, but live mode is going to be set to action.payload. If this exists, then we're going to say action.payload.value. If not, we're going to set the opposite of live mode. Okay. Um, uh, nice. And then, um, why? Yeah. And after this, we need to also return this. So I was wondering why are we not returning? <laughs> That's why. Okay. We just forgot to do that. So let's go ahead and return toggle, um, live mode. Now for the redo functionality, we're going to basically say if state dot history dot current index is less than state.history.history.length minus one. So only if there is something ahead, we can go forward, right? That's what we're checking here. And then we're gonna get the next index, which is state.history.currentIndex plus one. And then we're gonna get the next editor state, which is next editor state is um, this object here. 
which is everything in state dot history dot history, but we're gonna get at the next index. Okay, cool. And then we're gonna create another object here called redo state, which is everything in state, but the editor is gonna be the next state editor. Okay, and the history is gonna be everything in state dot history, but the current index is going to be the new index here. And after this, we also have to uh, return redo state. So I'm gonna return uh, redo state here. Okay, and if this is not the case, so if they fired this for some reason, we need to also return the state like this. So if they fired this redo, but there's no more, uh, you know, items remaining in the history stack, we have to go ahead and return what we have in the state already. Okay, and for undo, guys, we're gonna say this if state dot history dot current index is greater than zero, so there's something to undo, then we're gonna get the previous index right here which is state.history.currentindex minus one. And then we're going to get from the history stack, we're going to pull out that, you know, editor state. So we're going to say state.history.history at the previous index like this. And then here, we're going to basically basically create a new object called undo state, which is everything in state, but the editor is going to be previous editor state. And history is going to be set to state everything in history, but the new uh, previous index is going to be current. So now when we pr when we redo, it's going to go one up that history stack, okay? And again, we have to return um, undo state. We're going to return it inside this, like this. And if all else fails, like if this condition failed, we also have to return our state. So this is the one that we're going to skip, but uh, I'm just going to copy paste this. If you guys want, you can copy paste it. Just give me a second. Okay, so I just copied something in here. Or, all right guys, actually, instead of copy pasting the load um, local storage data, since we're not using it, I'm actually gonna go into actions and just remove it from here, okay? Why unnecessarily confuse you, okay? So where is this? Um, we have load local storage. Just go ahead and remove that action, right? Nice, now we don't need that action anymore. And then we're gonna do load data. So what this is, is it like we can basically load some new data when we refresh, when we are trying to access the domain, right? Or a page, for example. So we're gonna return a new state with everything in the initial state, but the editor is gonna be um, the initial state dot editor, okay? But the elements is gonna be what we get from dispatch, okay? What we get from here. And the initial editor state dot, or the initial, initial editor state dot elements, okay? Worst case scenario. And then live mode is going to be action.payload.withLive. So this is um, basically when we want to load data from production, that means from the domain directly, that time we're gonna pass this flag in here. So based on this, we will know what to do here. Okay, so if this is not there, it's gonna be false. So by default, you know, live mode is gonna be off. Okay, and then we have one more, which is the set funnel page ID. So for set, funnel page ID. First, let's go ahead and get the funnel page ID from this from our payload. We're going to do this and then we're going to get the updated editor state with the funnel page ID, which is everything in the editor um, like this and the funnel page ID like that. And then we're going to go ahead and update our history with all with that funnel page ID too. So we're going to, you know, create a new stack, um, create a new element, a new editor on the stack here. So pass that in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and create the final state to return, which is a funnel page ID state. Okay, that's what we're calling it. So everything in state. The editor is gonna be the updated editor with um, state with funnel page ID. And then history is gonna be everything in the history, but history is gonna be set to this one. And the current index is gonna be the length of this minus one. And let's go ahead and of course return this here like that. Nice. And there we go, guys. We are pretty, we are done with our entire reducer. I'm sorry if that was a lot of code, but this is complex, okay? I told you guys, this is one of the best projects on the internet, so I don't expect it to be baby stuff, okay? You want baby stuff? There's plenty of other videos. This is for the, you know, the people who want to actually improve on their skills. So I'm going to go ahead and now create our, uh, our context provider. So first go ahead and say export type editor context data equal to an object. And this one is going to have the following uh, properties. So we're going to have device, which is the device types. Okay. Preview mode, which is Boolean. Set preview mode, which is, you know, Boolean here. And set device here as well. Okay. So you can change the device. 
And then we're going to create um, our context. So I'm going to say export const editor context equal create context and import that from React, not from VM. And then state and dispatch. Okay, so dispatch, I'm going to import this from React too. And then sub account ID, funnel ID, and page details. This way, from um, our production, right, from the domain, we can actually pass in this information to get access to the, the specific funnel page details, okay? And I'm also gonna import this from Prisma Client. All right, nice, no errors there. And then we're gonna create another type called editor props. So this is gonna take children, sub account ID, funnel ID, and page details, okay? And then we're gonna return our provider. So our provider is gonna be called editor provider equal props, editor props, okay, so all of these. And um, we're gonna create a state here called state and dispatch. And this comes from use reducer. So all, everything we did was just for this one hook called use reducer, okay? And then we're gonna return our provider and the children. So we're gonna wrap everything inside this, okay? And we're gonna give access to those specific values, which is the state, dispatch, so we can change, you know, dispatch actions, sub account ID, funnel ID, and the page details just like that, okay? And at the bottom, guys, I'm actually gonna create a use editor hook. Um, okay, yeah, let's create an, a use editor hook. So I'm gonna say export const use editor equal to a function, and in here, const context equal to use context, like this, and we're gonna pass in the editor context in here, and then if there is no context, we need to throw an error, basically. So we're gonna say throw new error, and we're gonna say the use editor hook must be used within a editor provider, within the provider, okay? Like this. And at the bottom here, if true, then we're just gonna return the context like this, okay? And that's it. So let's go ahead and export default editor provider like this, default, okay, nice. And now we can go ahead and use this, guys. Great job so far. All right, now go ahead and go back into your editor funnel page.tsx, okay? So this is inside this one, editor funnel page ID page.tsx. And now we can wrap our components inside that editor provider. So go ahead and say editor provider, invoke that, I mean, just import that. And we have to pass in the sub account ID, which is gonna be equal to the following. Oops, what is it doing there? Okay, we're gonna say props, uh, params, params dot sub account ID. And then we also need to pass in the funnel page ID, which is gonna be equal to params dot funnel page, uh, funnel ID guys, not funnel page ID. And then the page details is going to be funnel page details, um, just like this, okay? So let's see, now it also needs children, so that's what's missing. So for now, I'm just gonna put a div here but what we're gonna put in here is essentially the funnel editor, the navigation, the sidebar, and the editor itself, okay? So go in here, inside this funnel page, create a folder, call it underscore components, oops, components, and inside this, we're gonna first create the um, funnel-editor-navigation, okay, dot tsx, and inside this component, we're, uh, we are basically going to render what we see up top, okay? So click on your funnel editor navigation, and we're going to just return a component here, and I'm gonna change this to funnel editor navigation, like this, and this is gonna become a use client component, okay? And inside this, we're also gonna get some props, so let's get the funnel ID, which is gonna be a string, and then we're gonna get the funnel page details, which is gonna be of type funnel page. And finally, the sub account ID, okay? And in here, I'm simply gonna destructure this. You guys know the drill already. And after this, let's import router from use router, like this, from next navigation. And then we also need our use editor hook. So I'm gonna go ahead and import use editor, okay? Don't worry, I'm gonna spin the server up in just a second, but let's just get some of this set up, okay? And um, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So just give me a second, guys. I'll just refresh my browser. Okay, awesome. So I went ahead. Okay, nice. I went ahead and spun up my server. So I'm gonna go back into the page now, and I'm just going to import that component here. 
Um, so we're going to say, let me remove this first. And I'm going to say funnel editor navigation. Okay. And this can be a closed component. Just looks nicer. And let's go ahead and pass in the, the props that were required. Okay. Like this funnel page ID. And I'm also going to remove this here. Funnel page ID, funnel page details, and the sub account ID. So I'm going to go back in here and now we can actually work with this component. So if I click on this, let's actually see what happens. Okay, so we're using some sort of a React component. Uh, you are importing a component that needs use reducer. It only works in a client component. Hmm, so where? Let me see. All right, just give me a second, guys. Okay. So I know what we did wrong. Go back into your provider. Oops, why did that not open? Editor provider. And at the top of the file, there we go. We have to use use client, okay? Because it's a client component. And now we will see our funnel editor. Awesome, right? Looks great. <laughs> cool. And now let's go back um, to our component, which is the funnel editor. And now we can, you know, kind of work with this component right here. So our navigation is going to have a couple things, okay? And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just use a use effect here and we're gonna set the funnel page ID. So I'm gonna import this and we're just dispatching an action called set funnel page ID and we're setting the payload to funnel page ID is this funnel page details dot ID, okay? And this is a dependency we'll also need in here, nice. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and um, return the following. So scroll down here and change this to tooltip provider. Okay. And inside this, go ahead and create a nav component with the following class names. So we're going to use CLSX for this and go ahead and import CLSX. And this is going to have border, border bottom of one pixel like that. Flex, flex item center, justify between padding six, gap two, transition all. Height is going to be zero. Padding is going to be zero. Overflow is hidden, but that's only if state.editor.preview mode is true. Okay. And inside the navigation, create an aside like this with the following class names flex, items, center, gap dash four. Not this, it's a gap dash four. And then we're going to say max width is going to be 260 pixels. So go ahead and say 260 pixels like this. And then the width is going to be 300 pixels. Okay, nice. And then we also have to put a link. So I'm going to create a link inside this. And this link, I'm going to import it from next link. And this is an arrow left circle. Go ahead and import that too. And it just shows the uh, funnel page. So it's showing the um, circle, which looks like this. And it's supposed to show something here. Why is it not showing? Ah, okay. I know why. That's because this is actually showing up on top. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to keep it at around this width, guys. And then once we go, once we, you know, uh, finish this part, right, um, I'm going to actually try to make this a full screen display. And then I'll try my best to, you know, go back and forth. Okay. Sorry if that gets you a little dizzy, but that's the only way to understand this. And now after this link, go ahead and say the following. So we're going to create an input component here. And this one is going to be div flex flex column with full with an input and a span that just shows the path. Okay. And you can pause and copy and paste these styles if you'd like, or you can copy paste with me, no problem. Okay. And now this handle blur title change. What is this? This is a function that allows us to save the title when the user clicks inside it. So let's go here. Uh, when the user clicks outside it. So if you click on it, it becomes an input field and now you can change it. And when you click outside, it saves it. Okay. So let's come in here and I'm going to import this stuff. So focus event handler, import that. And then we're going to have the upsert funnel page, import that too. And I'm going to import the toast like this. And that should solve, I think I did a small problem. Okay. I imported it from Sonar. We want to import it from here. Oh, so this one is from Sonar. So if you want to try it out, let's, let's go ahead and give this a shot, okay? So I'm going to import these toasts from Sonar, okay? Now, um, you see, this is what it's doing. It's saying if the target value is equal to what it had before, then just don't do anything. 
But if it does have something, so if this is not true, then we're going to go ahead and up search. So we're going to save that funnel page details. Okay, we're just going to pass the name, order, all this kind of stuff. That's it. And then if it's true, just show a success message and do router.refresh. So now if I click out, it's not going to save. But if I change this and click outside, it did save, but Sonar didn't work. And I think I know exactly why Sonar didn't work. So that's probably because we did not wrap um, our component in a provider if it needed it, or we did not put it. So give me one second, guys. I think that's that's what's going on. Okay, yep, just as I predicted, go into source, go into app, go into layout.tsx, and below this toaster, you want to import sonar toaster, okay? So I'm gonna just copy this, paste it here, so sonar toaster, and to import sonar toaster, you would have to, I have to manually import it, what? Okay, I'm just going to manually import it. So I'm going to import toaster as sonar toaster from this component. Okay, so now when I click on this, click out, it's not going to save. But if I change it, there you go, it shows. And it's so much, actually, I like this a lot more than the regular toaster, but it actually has some other additional features in it that make it super, super cool. Okay, and now let's go back to our component and let's continue where we where we left off, which was right around here, okay? And after this aside, guys, go ahead and create another aside, and we're going to paste this in here, which is tabs, all right? You guys already know what this is, so um, let me go ahead and import tabs like that. Uh, what is it saying? Okay, and here, device type, import this too, all right? So this needs to have a closing tag like that, all right? So we're gonna pass the default value as desktop with fit, value is going to be state.editor.device, okay? And on value change is going to be this, uh, is we're going to dispatch, we're going to change that to whatever we selected, okay? And I'm going to show you how to get that value. So now we're going to create something called tabs list, okay? Don't worry, I'm going to copy paste and explain everything. So go ahead, pause the video and just import. Uh, I don't think you'll see any errors here. Yeah, so just pause and import all these, okay? All right, guys, nice. So all I did in here, I'm gonna go ahead and explain, just give me a second. So create the tab list, okay? And we're gonna say grid with full, grid columns three, background transparent, and height of fit, okay? And then this is basically gonna be wrapped inside tooltip. So wrap all uh, everything in here inside tooltip. So just say tooltip here like this and tooltip like this. And for this one, we're gonna have a tooltip trigger with tabs trigger, okay? And the first tab is the laptop, okay? And the content is gonna say desktop. So if you hover over this, it says desktop, tablet, and mobile, okay? And the same thing, go ahead, copy paste this three times below, that's it. And you want to just do the same thing for tablet, use the tablet icon from, uh, from um, you know, Lucid React. And for the final one is smartphone. Okay, that's about it. So that's how we can create this feature here. Now, when you click on this, okay, Shadcy and UI does all the logic for you. When the value changes, it goes and dispatches that action. Okay, that's all that's happening. So, uh, so if you don't know where we're getting dispatch here, I already told you up top from this editor, we're getting the state and the dispatch. So we can listen to state, you can do whatever we want here, or we can send actions to the reducer, okay? Now after this aside, we're gonna create one more aside, okay? And this is gonna have the following class names. We're gonna say flex, item center, and gap of two. And this is gonna have a button. So this is basically the undo functionality and things like that. So first paste this button in here. This button is basically um, the preview link, okay? So it's gonna have this ghost icon looking thing, okay? I'm sorry, the eye looking thing, okay? So I'm gonna import this from, um, from what is this called one more time? From Lucid React icons. And we're gonna have this one function. So let's just see what this looks like so you know what I'm talking about. There you go, it's just that eye icon, okay? So this handle preview click, very simple. We're gonna go up top, where is this? Right here. And we're gonna just say handle preview link preview click. We're gonna dispatch um, a function. Huh, what seems to be the problem here? Oh, just type, oh my God, Never mind, guys. So yeah, dispatch for the first type called toggle preview mode, okay? 
and we also want to dispatch toggle live mode. And what live mode does is it removes the borders on all the elements. So that way you don't have those name tags. Okay. So that's why we need to um, change both of them. Now let's go back down. And after this icon, we're going to go ahead and paste the um, undo button. Okay. And we also need the redo button. Very simple stuff. Nothing crazy. No rocket science. Okay. Now go ahead, take this up as a challenge. You learned how to fire and dispatch actions to the reducer, right? So go ahead and try to create this handle undo and handle redo function. It's very simil similar to what we did here. Just dispatch the action and go ahead and, you know, send the appropriate action along with the payload. So pause the video, give it a shot. If you don't know, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Awesome. If you got it correct and if you did this, great job. If you didn't, no problem. Okay. No hard feelings. Don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Just follow what I'm doing. So you want to just create this function here, handle undo, and we're going to say dispatch with a type of undo. Same thing for redo. Okay. That's literally it. Nothing else. That's why I said it's very similar to what we did above. Now, after this button, guys, we also want to have, I'm just going to put some additional, you know, stu stuff here just to make it look nicer. So where is this? So after this button, go ahead and hit enter. And I'm going to create a div here. Okay. A div with flex, flex column, item center with another div called flex, um, flex row and um, item center gap four and then draft. Okay. So I made a small error. This switch comes from components UI. Okay. And then I'm just going to say draft in here. And the other one is published and you can basically turn this off and on, but by default, it's already published, right? So I just want to make it look nicer. That's it. But you can actually change this because there is a value inside inside our Prisma schema that can handle this functionality too. Okay. So I made it in such a way that you guys can actually expand a little bit on it. So after this switch, we have a span here that basically shows the last updated date. So if I change this, okay it's going to update. But of course, if this was tomorrow, right, it's going to show this date, today's date. So I'm going to change this back here. Nice. All right. So our navigation is pretty much done. This is what it looks like on a slightly larger device. And now we're going to move to creating the, um, the other parts. All right, guys, we forgot one more thing here in the navigation, which is the save button. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and create that. It's very simple too. So after this span, uh, after this div, create this button here and we're going to create this function. Okay. And this function is actually, you guys have done this like a million times. Okay. So I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to say handle on save equal async function. We're going to get the content. Okay. And we're going to say JSON dot stringify. We're going to convert it into a string. We're going to convert all the elements. So editor dot elements into a string. And then we're going to just, you know, do the following. So we're going to say upsert funnel page. We're going to pass in that content. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this notification too, and change this problem here. And then we're going to use, uh, okay. I'm using regular toast here. So this is going to be toast. Um, what we can do is we can just use a sonar toast here. This was actually pretty nice. So let me replace this here. Okay. And I'm just going to say saved details, right? Or saved editor, um, like this. And then if it failed, oops, message saying, could not save details. Okay. Or editor like this. <laughs> nice. So now we have a button and if you save, there you go. Save successful. Okay. Save the editor. Nice. All right. So the next thing I actually want to build is the sidebar first. So go ahead and say funnel editor sidebar like this, copy this, go in here and inside your components, say funnel editor dash sidebar dot TSX. And I'm just going to return a component from here and change this to whatever we just copied. Now, this one is a little tricky, okay, because the folder structure is going to get a little annoying. Okay. So just bear with me. So inside this, these components, what you're going to do, let me, let me expand this a little bit more so you guys can see. Okay. So this sidebar is actually going to be inside another folder. So inside components, create a folder here, and we're going to call this um, or, uh, we're going to call this tabs. Okay. Or we can keep the sidebar here too. Um, let me think. Okay. That's, uh, or here, let me just say, 
All right, this is fine. Sorry, I'm just a little confused. I don't know what's the best way, but it's fine. So just create the funnel editor sidebar in here. And inside the tabs, or guys, I actually think this is this makes more sense. So funnel editor sidebar dot TSX. I'm sorry, uh, sidebar like this. And move this inside here, okay? And go ahead and change this to index dot TSX, okay? And inside this funnel editor sidebar, you're going to create another folder called tabs like this, okay? Just... Follow through with me. You're going to understand what's going on in a second, okay? And this is um, this is also going to have um, the following. So also, hmm, are we? I'm not sure. Are we going to be able to access this or not? I don't think so. Okay, here we go, guys. So this is how we can read documentation. I just went to Next.js, and you see this folder opts the folder and all child segments out of routing, okay? Great, that's exactly what I want. I just wanted to make sure because I didn't want to, you know, not end up give, getting access to that. I mean, end, end up being able to access that through the routes. So inside this funnel editor sidebar, we have these tabs, right? So inside the tabs, we're going to create another one called components-tab, okay? And inside the components.tab, we're going to have all our custom components in here. And these tabs, what are these tabs? So these tabs are the sidebar tabs, like for example, the um, layers, media bucket, and the settings, okay? So let's go into um, the index.tsx, okay? And in here, we're going to build our sidebar, the, the skeleton for our entire sidebar. So first of all, go in here and get the subaccount ID, which is gonna be a string, and go ahead and also destructure this from here, subaccount ID, nice. And then in here, we're also going to need access to use editor. So to get that, this has to be a use client component. And then in here, we're going to say const state, and we're going to get dispatch. So dispatch like this equal to use editor, import that and invoke it, nice. And then we're going to return our component. So this is not going to be a div, this is going to be a sheet component, sheet component from UI sheets, okay. And this is going to have, have open equal true by default. And modal is going to be false. Okay. So, okay. So funnel editor sidebar needs to be imported. So go back to your, um, let me shrink this and show you. So funnel page ID page.tsx and import this. Okay. And pass in sub account ID equal to params dot sub account ID like this. Okay. And now if we go back, we should be able to see something in here. Well, not yet because we don't have the sheet component being rendered. Okay. A sheet content being rendered. So first thing we're going to have is tabs in here. So I'm going to say tabs, okay? And this is going to have class name with a full and default value is going to be set to settings. So by default, we just want to show the settings tab, okay? And let's go ahead and create those tabs. So I'm going to say sheet content, okay? Inside this, this tab, sheet content, go ahead and import sheet content from components UI and import the CLSX here too. Okay, and it's going to have tab list. So we're going to get to this in just a second. So this is going to have show X as false, side of right, class name of CLSX, and it's going to have margin top of 97 pixel with 16, Z uh, index of 80, shadow none, padding zero, focus border none, transition all, and overflow hidden. And hidden is going to be true if we are on preview mode. Okay, I'm just going to refresh this. All right, and it looks like this because this is the tiny sidebar on the right side, okay? And check this out, guys. When you refresh, it has this really cool sliding animation. I really like that too. If you can see this on full screen mode, this is what it looks like, okay? Nice, now let's go back. Okay, now open your directory, and inside the tabs, create index.tsx, okay? Not ts, tsx, and just return a component here called tab list, okay? And I'm also going to go ahead and import this component here. So undo this and import tab list from tabs. Okay. And let's go into this component. And this component does not need any props, but it's just a bunch of tab lists. Okay. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in here so you can see what that looks like. And I'm also going to go ahead and import all these components um, into this file. So we're going to have tab list. Okay. That's going to have multiple triggers. So the first trigger is the settings tab, and that's just going to have the settings icon. Very simple. Next one is components tab. It's going to have a plus icon. And then, you know, I'm just going to expand everything now so you can see everything. And then we're going to have this one for the stack icon to show all the stacks, right? So to show the layers 
and then we're going to have the media to show our media file. So if you go in here, this is what it looks like. Okay, very simple. So if you refresh, you see that cool loading animation too. And now let's quit out of this and go back in here. And after the tab list, we want to create another tab here. So um, after this, after the sheet content, create another sheet content. So I'm going to copy this. Just give me one second and I'm going to paste this in here. Okay, sheet content. It's going to have show X as fault, side right, CLSX with margin top of 97 pixel. Width is going to be 80 now. Z is going to be 40. Shadow none, padding zero, margin right of 16, back BG background, height full, transition all, and overflow hidden. And this is going to be uh, hidden only if preview mode is set to true, okay? So this is like a second sidebar. So you see that insane loading animation. I actually really like that. Nice. And inside the sheet content, we are going to render um, which specific tab we're clicked on. So if we click on database, we want to render a database tab. If you click on these layers, you want to return that and, you know, so on and so forth. And yeah, and you can also wrap this in tooltip if you'd like to give more information similar to what we did here, right? So go into your um, your tab components. So not this one, guys, this right here, okay? And we're first going to create, um, actually, hmm, let me see, maybe it's better to first build this part. Just give me one second. Okay, sorry about that confusion. So you want to just go back into your tabs, um, index dot, so sorry, funnel editor, which one is this? So funnel editor sidebar, index dot typescript, and we're going to first build out uh, a couple of the tabs, okay? So the first one is tab, uh, we're going to say div here, so say div like this, and it's going to have the following class names. It's going to have grid, like this grid, grid four, height full, padding bottom of 36, and overflow of scroll, okay? And then we're gonna have the tabs content, and this tab content is gonna have the settings value inside it, okay? And inside this, create the sheet header, and the sheet header is gonna have class name of text-left and padding of six, like this, okay? And inside the sheet header, go ahead and create the sheet title, and go ahead and create the sheet description, like this. And we're just gonna say styles, show your creativity, you can customize every component as you like. And after the sheet description, below the sheet header, we're going to render the settings tab. And this is not created, so go ahead and copy this, okay? And you want to open your directory, go into tabs, and create a file here called settings-tab.tsx, okay? And I'm going to return a component from here and just paste what we just copied. So that's going to be inside these tabs. And now go ahead and just import the settings tab. And now you can head into that component and you can do whatever you like in here, okay? So for the settings tab, it's, I mean, I came up with an architecture that makes sense. It's very long, okay? It's a very long component, but I'm just going to build maybe one or two to show you guys how it works. And trust me, guys, it's the same thing, just copy paste and all you have to do is change an ID for any of the style you want. That's it. So if you want it a uh, font size, right? Just put size, color, just change the ID to color. That's the architecture I came up with that makes it super, super easy for you to use almost any styling you want, okay? Um, so go in here and we're going to use a bunch of accordions, okay? To kind of group everything together. So first thing, this is a client component. So go up top and change this to use client and come down here. And we're going to use the accordion component. So our accordion component is going to say the following. So it's going to say um, accordion here. And I'm also going to import this. And it's going to have type multiple, class width full. Default values are typography, dimensions, uh, decorations, and flexbox. So by default, all these values are going to be open. Okay? All right? Now inside this accordion, I'm going to create an accordion item. So this is what the accordion item looks like, okay? So let me shrink all this so we can explain in detail. So the accordion item is going to have a trigger. So this is called custom. So anything inside this, okay, is custom properties for, um, you know, for the, the content, basically, okay? So I'm going to have one accordion item in here, and this is going to have an input for the, um, basically to show the path name, okay? So domain example slash path name, something like this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and input uh, import these components, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. 
So state, this state comes from our, um, from our use editor hook. So I'm going to go ahead and say use editor and import it as well. Okay. So now that should solve that problem. And now you're going to notice something here. So first is on change. We have this, which is, uh, you know, this is missed out. And then the value here, right here, href cannot be found. It's saying that this does not exist on this. So how do we create that? So this is basically any, any custom values you want to put in here, you would have to create an accordion, like an input field. Okay. And you would just need to um, change this ID for it. So right now I created one called link path. So this is basically a video, I think, right? I think it's a video component. And if the video component is showing, see, let's see here, editor state dot editor dot select element dot type. Okay. Equal link. So if it's a link component guys, sorry, not a, not a video component. If it's a link component, then we want to return this input field so that you can change the link of where it should go to. Okay. So now if you wanted to create a video component, which we are going to create, but if you wanted to create a video component, what would you do in here? Try to make a guess. Nice. If you said you would create another input field and you would have it's set to, you know, you would do the same thing in here and you would check for it and you would change this ID to source, right? I think that's what it, it, that's what it is for the video component. That's exactly what you have to do. Okay, nice. So I'm going to go ahead and go into our provider so that we can solve this error right here. So go into your providers, go into editor and editor provider. And right here, you're going to see the content. Go ahead and say href and make this optional and set it to a string. And now you will no longer see this error here. Okay, nice. And now we need to create this special custom value uh, handler. Okay, so go up here and we're going to create a custom value handler. So there's only two handlers guys, even though we have like a hundred different fields to show, we're not having a hundred, but even though you can potentially have a hundred fields, we only have two handlers for them. So that's the power of this. Okay, so first, the custom handler does the following. So it says const setting property. Okay. So which property is it? We're saying e.target.id. So we're getting this right here. And then we're saying let value equal e.target.value. So whatever value they wanted. And then we're creating a style object. So we're saying creating an object here with that property and the value. Okay. And then we're dispatching an action and we're saying type equal to update element like this, and we're saying um, payload like this, okay? And we're passing in element details as everything in uh, state.editor.selected element, right? And the content is going to have state.editor.element, selected element.content, so everything in there, and everything inside the styled object, okay? And this style object, if you know what this is, it's basically going to be like for example, ID or something like that. Okay. That's what we're doing in here. And, uh, I hope this makes sense. That's how we're basically setting all those, those styles. Okay. Nice. So that's it guys. This is for the custom element. Now, what about, what about a normal element? So scroll down here after this accordion item, I'm going to create another accordion item. Okay. Accordion item like this. And this is going to have the following value set to typography. Okay. And it's going to have a class name of padding X of six, padding Y of zero, border dash Y of one pixel. Okay. Like this. And now we're going to have an accordion trigger called typography in here and the accordion, uh, accordion content as well. Okay. But just give me a second, guys. Let me just go and go ahead and copy this and I'll show you in just a second. All right. And inside here, I'm just going to paste the following, which is flex, flex column, gap two. A, a paragraph that says color and an input field with the ID. And this ID, keep in mind, is the property that we want to change, the CSS property. Okay. And on change, we're going to come to this in just a second. And the value is going to be state.editor.selectedElement.styles.color. Okay. That's what we're passing in here. Nice. And um, that's it. And then this one is the handle change. So how do we create this? Um, we want to scroll up top. After this, go ahead, after this uh, function, we're going to paste this. And guess what? This handles every single element you want to change. Okay. So here's what we're doing. 
we're basically creating a style object again, okay? And in here, we're first getting the ID, so what style setting, the value of the style setting, and then we're just creating that object. And then we're dispatching an action to update that specific element, okay? And the element details are going to be the following. So it's going to be everything inside the selected element, because of course we are changing the styling only of the selected element, right? So we're passing everything in there, but the styles is going to be set to everything that's already inside that specific element's styles, but we want to add this new property in here, okay? Now when you change that value, it's going to overwrite inside. That's how it all works, okay? So if you want to create, it, create one for size, you create another one here, change it to size, and you're done. That's literally it, okay? So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy everything in here. Also, guys, you can change the component. You can change this input to a slider. I used a slider, and I will show you an example too. Um, give me one second, okay? Okay, so I just, I'm just going to use one more component in here, which is a slider, just to give you an example, okay? I don't want to just leave you like that. I want to show you as much new things as possible so that you can uh, you know, implement it as you like, okay? So in here, we're going to have... Um, this, where is this? Yeah. So it's going to just be a div with a label saying opacity, and we're going to use a slider for this opacity. Okay. So we're going to create a div here and say flex item center justify end. So this number is going to be towards the ending. So right towards the right side. Um, maybe I need to refresh my page. Can I see anything? Probably can. All right. Give me one second, guys. Let me just refresh. Okay. Nice. So right now, uh, you see this here, right? So we can adjust this and it's going to change and it's also going to update the state. But now, right now we don't have any elements selected, so it's not going to make any sense, but I'm just showing you what's happening, okay? So you see right here, we have the color. If you change this, it's going to change the selected elements style and it's going to add the color property with this value. So if I change this to something like, you know, H, something like FFF, whatever, right? It's going to actually set that color. And for opacity, when I move this, you see the number is updating here, and it's also changing the style in our global state. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so right here, we have the small val the small variable. This is this one right here, and it's set to justify end. So that's why it's all the way in the end here, okay? And then what we're doing here is we're saying type of state.editor, the selected element styles dot opacity equal to number, okay? If that is true, then state.editor.selectedElement.styles.opacity, okay? Um, for this, we're going to say um, this one right here, right? We're just going to return this value here, so whichever opacity, or we're going to convert it to a float variable. So we're going to say parse float, we're going to pass in that opacity, or we're going to pass in zero, and we're just going to change it, so replace the percentage here with nothing, okay? And then um, that's it. And we're just putting this here too as just for TypeScript and we're just returning a percentage here. So that's how this works. So by default, it's going to be 100%, of course. And then everything else, you know, you can change. Okay, I hope this is fun. <laughs> so all you have to do now is create a bunch of these and also check out the tabs, guys. So if I click on settings, it's showing the settings tab. If I click on plus, it's going to show this. We'll get to that in a second. Um, this one, I'll be even more in-depth, okay? The settings is the same thing. Like, I'm going to literally copy-paste and show you one more. Um, give me one second. Okay, so this one's a little cool. This is actually a background image, okay? So it's a div here, flex border one pixel, rounded MD, overflow clip, and then div here, okay? And inside that, we're just having an input. And the placeholder is URL, and the ID is background image. That's it. Okay, so just keep in mind, these IDs are not the type that you would see in CSS, which is like background dash image. It's not like that. Okay, it's uh, basically the JavaScript version um, of it. And you can use ChatGPT if you want, if you want all this. Okay, there's just it's camel case. That's it. So on change, we're doing the same thing and we're setting its default value um, as well. Okay, cool. So um, that's it. And if you look at it, there you go. You have the, you know, you can put, and I've done a bunch of cool stuff. And this is how powerful this is. You can change the background image to a real image with URL, or you can do linear, linear gradient. You can do literally whatever you want. And whatever you set will also show up here. That's the cool part. So you can see here inside that div, we're setting the background image 
to this property. And we're using the style property, guys, because um, we cannot use Tailwind CSS, okay? It's not possible in here. So, yep. Now, some people may have one more question. What about custom elements that you want to create? So let's say you are creating some sort of a really cool, um, you know, uh, editor here. Like it's not an input field or it's not this sort of a slider. How do you get the value from it? So I'm going to show you an example. So for example, I used something called tabs, okay? Let me just copy paste this so I can show you what it looks like. Just give me one second. So after this, I'm just going to paste this. And uh, we also have some icons here. So I'm just going to simply import these icons, okay? So I'm creating a tab list here. And this tab list is basically for the uh, Flexbox, okay? So I'm just going to say Flexbox. And where is that? Where is the tabs? Just, okay, it's, for, yeah, it is for Flexbox. So, um, you know, you can create, you can create an accordion or whatever you want to do and just put that in here, but um, you get the, you get the idea, right? So this is for justify content and stuff like that. So let me just go ahead and put this in here like that. Okay. And you see this here, right? Justify content. This is like left, right side, center and stuff. So how do you get the value from these custom components? These are not input fields, nor are they sliders. Well, very simple. You're going to have the on value change on the tabs, correct? What you're going to do is you're simply going to invoke the handle on change and hard code the values by saying target is an object with the ID of what you want and the value of what you want. That's it. And this default value, you can just set to this. You can say, um, what is that? Um, states dot editor dot, you know, styles are justify content. And these tabs actually have those values too. So space between space evenly. So this is real CSS guys. This is, this is not tailwind CSS. And if you guys don't know how to use that, I'm very sorry. You have to learn. Okay. Tailwind is not, it's not real CSS. Okay. It's just sugar coated CSS, but yeah. So it's going to go and update this. It's going to save this style with this specific value if this trigger was clicked. So if you click this one, the value is saved with, you know, justify space between. This is a uh, space cent uh, justify center, okay? I hope that makes sense. So I've showed you three different variants. You can go ahead and use, you know, a bunch of these sliders, or you can use a custom, uh, you know, just an input field, or you can use these tabs to create multiple different styles, okay? So copy everything inside my settings and replace it in here, okay? And I have to also change some imports. I think so. If not, I am happy. If if I okay, I don't think I have to. And this is what it looks like, okay? So just you already know how I created this, right? And for the check uh, for the flex box, I have a check box here. Same thing. If you check it, I'm going to send that handle change with those custom properties. And the direction um, here, I just put something in here so you can change it to columns or row, okay? So I just put a text field here. And yeah, this is opacity. Change it to, you know, whatever you like. Oh, I made a mistake here, but you guys can fix that, I think. So for border radius, let's see. Where is that um, border radius in here? What is its value? Default value, okay, see, for border, for border radius, I said this. So this is border radius, okay? And here's the cool part. You get everything from here from TypeScript as well. So let's go ahead and change that. Okay, so now it should work. Uh, refresh. Okay, it's it's working, but uh, the small value, where's that? Okay, up here. So border radius, this also needs to be changed to border radius. Nice, and now it's going to work. Perfect, nice. So yeah, that's it. I just used Flexbox and made these side by side. And I said top, bottom, right, left for padding, for margin. And so these are the section, sections I created. I created custom, typography, dimensions, decorations, and flexbox, okay? So go ahead, copy that, or if you wanna genuinely take this up as a challenge, pause the video, try for yourself. Just give it a shot, create font family, create weight. I use select component here, okay? Just try, all right? Nothing's gonna happen. So give it a shot, try to build some, and if you can, amazing, I'm super proud of you. If you cannot, no problem, just copy from GitHub. Um, it's the same thing, right? We just explained, just some CSS styling. We're putting it left, right, and all that kind of stuff. Copy it, paste it here, and we'll continue with the other sections now.
All right, now we're going to create the media bucket tab. So go into your folder structure and above this, just go ahead and say media dash bucket dash tag uh, tab dot TSX and return a component here. Call it media bucket tab. OK, and I'm going to shrink this so you can see more. And this component is going to have the sub account ID, which is a string because we want to fetch all the media buckets from there. Right. So that's why we need that. So go up here and say use client. And this is a traditional like old you know, school uh, React component. OK, so we're going to have a use effect that's going to do the fetch to get all this data. OK, and we're going to get media. So I'm going to import that. We already created that previously. So when this component renders, OK, first when the component mounts for that, we're going to it's going to call this use effect in here. OK, so when it calls this use effect that time, it's going to fetch the data. So after the component renders, then the first. So once it's mounted, it will invoke this. OK, so after this, we also need to save the data. So we're going to create a state and that state is going to have data and set data and the get media files import it from our types. Cool. So now when this loads, we are fetching all the files and we're storing this in here. Nice. A very traditional style. And then finally, inside this div, we're actually going to return a class name. I mean, we're going to return a div here and I'm going to put the following styles. So I'm going to say height 900 pixel overflow scroll and padding of four and then go ahead and return media component like this. And this is going to have data set to data and then sub account ID set to props dot sub account ID. You can also destructure this if you want. No problem. So now we have this. So go back into our sidebar, which is inside our tabs. And now we have to create that. Sorry, not in here inside this one, guys. So inside funnel editor sidebar index dot TSX. And if you scroll down, you should find this first tab, right, which is the settings. And after this, you need to create that another tab for showing the media bucket. OK, so I'm going to scroll down here after this tabs content and I'm going to put another tab content here called media bucket tab like this. And I'm going to pass in sub account ID into it and no need of any class name. So I'm just going to remove this and the value is going to be media. So when I click on media, this one, it says no media. Let me refresh this. OK, because we don't have any media files. So go ahead and upload some media. So I'm just going to upload an image. I'm just going to upload this one. OK, and I'm just going to call this workstation. OK, or let's just say office upload this file and let's just give this a second. OK, I'm also going to change this to office room and go ahead and upload this specific media. OK, and now when you click on this media, now you will see this. So literally users can copy image links and go into the settings and they can change the background URL so they can say background URL and they can paste that in there. How awesome is that? Right. That's why we have that feature. That's why we have the media buckets directly in. Here. Great job, guys. Now we're going to skip two processes for now and we're going to get back to that at a later stage. OK, so those are basic basically the two different tabs, which is components tab and the layers tab. OK, because we need components on the screen to show the layers, right? So it doesn't make sense to build layers first. So that's why we're going to skip that. So now go into funnel page ID and click on this page .tsx, OK, and if you look in here, you're going to realize we have the navigation in here and we also have a sidebar in here but we're missing the editor. So go ahead and create a div. And this div is going to have the following class name height dash full flex justify center. OK, and inside this div, we're going to create a component called funnel editor, and it's going to take the sub account ID as a prop. So go ahead and pass that in as well. Just, you know, might as well and copy this. Go in here, go into components and we're going to create a folder in here called funnel dash editor. OK, and inside that create index dot TSX and return a component in here and just paste what you just copied. All right. Now we want to go back into page dot TSX and let's go ahead and import this component from here. OK, and let's go in here and through the props. Let's get the sub account ID, which is a string. And let's also destructure that value right in here. OK, now let's understand the purpose of this component. This component is basically going to act as the first element for our editor. So you see our editor here, right? It's going to return one element. And let's see if you can guess what that element is. Nice. If you guessed recursive element, that's exactly what this editor is going to return. Just one recursive element. And that recursive element is going to decide whether to return more recursive elements or to return a static component, a static element. OK, nice. I hope that architecture helped you kind of understand at least a little bit of what's going on. OK, so let's go in here. And what we're going to do, guys, is first change this to a client component. So use client top. And in here, we're going to get access to the sub account ID. Right. And we're also going to get access to a couple other things. 
All right, sorry guys, this is not sub account ID. This is actually funnel page ID. So go ahead and change that to funnel page ID like this. Copy this pasted here and let's go back and also change this as well and change this to funnel page ID. Okay, sorry about that. And let's go back into this component and inside this component, we're going to first change this to a client component and let's also get our use editor hook set up. So use editor, not use effect like this, invoke it and let's get state and dispatch from here. Okay, these are the only two things we need. If we need other things, we'll import them as well. Now, first we are going to have a use effect. Okay, and this use effect is going to do the following. So basically, it's going to check if we have passed in live mode. Okay, so I'm going to also have one more in here called live mode, which is optional and it is Boolean. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and also destructure it from here. So if I have passed in live mode and live mode is true, then we're going to dispatch and set and toggle live mode to true. Okay, and we're going to pass in a value here and set it to true. That's what we're doing here. Why do we need this? Well, in production, inside our domain route, CC inside this domain route in here, we're going to render that component, right? So when we render that component, if it's in production, this is pretty much in production, we want to render that live mode. So that way we can hide all the borders on the elements, the navigation bars and all that kind of stuff. Okay, nice. And now there's one more thing we need to do in here before we move to the bottom, which is to get all the funnel page ID information. Okay, now here's a challenge. I'm just going to put it here for now and I will address it later. Okay, and if I don't, you guys can at least keep this in mind. Okay, because there's so many challenges across the entire project. So this challenge is basically to make this more performant. Okay. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So this is the use effect. So what we're going to do here is when this page loads, we're going to basically get all the details of this page. Okay. We're going to get the details that way we can get access to the details and we can set the state to hold those details. Okay. So that way we can pass in the contents, right? We want to show the specific content on the page. That's why we need that. So I'm going to go ahead and create this get funnel page detail query. So go into queries here, libs queries. And at the bottom, I'm just going to say get funnel page details, which is an async function with funnel page ID, which is a string. And the response is db.funnelpage.findunique where ID is funnel page ID. Okay. We're just going to return this. I'm going to quit this here and go ahead and import this. Okay. And now when you import this, basically what's going to happen in here is we're going to fetch these, this data. And then if there's no response, we're going to return. But if we did get a response, we're going to dispatch the load data action, and we're going to set all the elements, you know, to those elements. And we're going to change with live to say, if this component had live mode, then convert that to a Boolean and pass that in here. Okay. I hope this is making sense. And why do we need this? Like I said, in production, when we, you know, spin up the page, we need to basically show something on the screen, right? So that's why we need this right here, live mode. That's it. And now what do I mean by make this more performant? Now think about this. If this is being rendered on the client, that means if you're fetching the page information on the client, that means in production, when we're accessing that domain page, and if we refresh and try to load it, don't you think it's going to take some time, right? It's going to take some time to load because it's going to fetch the information on the client side. So basically what you will see is a black screen or the background screen, which is this color right here. And then after a second or half or whatever, however long it takes to load, it's going to then populate the state. So don't you think that's going to take some time? right? So you would basically have to fire this load data from somewhere. But how is that even possible? How can you do that? That comes in handy. This comes in handy through the use editor hook. So basically you can pass in some values into this use editor and you can probably, you know, set the, the state manually, or you can also just um, use the provider itself and you can set the states manually. So what I mean by that is inside the domain, you basically get the information of the page details and inside the provider, you want to pass it as a prop. So when the component renders, because it is server side render, it already has access to the page details. Okay. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, the discord is always open. I'm going to sit there and explain until you do. Okay. All right, guys. So let's go back here now and we're going to return the component. So I'm going to shrink this. You can see more and remove this and return a div with the following class names. So this is important. So just copy it from GitHub and I'm going to explain in a second. Okay. So paste this here and import CLSX. So what is this? 
based on whether we are in preview and live mode, we are going to show this, right? Which is padding of zero and margin right of zero, okay? So what that means is right now, the margin right is actually set to something else. So if we go in here, oh, right in here, you see we have the margin right set to 385 pixels, right? But when we are in preview mode, we want this, which starts from here to take the whole screen. That's why we're setting it to margin right of zero and padding of zero. So it's completely flush with the screen, okay? And also if it is on tablet mode, we're gonna change the width. Mobile mode, change the width. And desktop, we're gonna make it full screen, okay? And then we're gonna have an on click. So when we click on this element, when we click on this, because this is the body element technically, right? We're just gonna assume it's the body element. We're gonna do something in here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dispatch an action. And this action is change clicked element. And we're gonna pass in no payload. So it understands that, you know, it's the default element that's supposed to be selected. Okay, cool. All right. Now, the other thing I wanna show in here is a little preview icon, okay? Like this eye icon. So when you click on this preview mode, you see it goes away, but now I wanna show that in here, right? How can I show that icon so I can go back? Very simple. We're gonna create a button here. And this button is basically going to have this eye off icon inside it, okay? And we're gonna have an on click in here too. And basically when the state editor is in preview mode and the state editor is in live mode, okay? Then we're going to return this component, okay? So let's, let's see what that looks like. So if you click this, you see that, okay? But when we are actually inside the live, okay? If we are only in live mode, preview mode will not be selected, correct? It won't be true. So that time we will not see this eye, this eye icon, it won't be in here, okay? So let's go ahead and finish this up. So to uh, handle this preview, very simple, we're gonna go up top, create this function. We're gonna dispatch two events, toggle preview mode and toggle live mode. So two events are gonna be fired. So now when you go in here, click on this, it does this. When you click on this, it shrinks. So check out those animations, guys. Oh, if you show this to your employer, <laughs> they are going to hire you. There's no way they're gonna be like, oh, this is such a bad project. Who is going to tell? And look at look at that. That's so nice. I just want to do this all day. All right, anyway. And after this, we're also going to return some components, right? So this component is going to be the body tag, basically. So let's go ahead and build that. Okay, so now you want to open your directory and you want to go into the funnel, funnel editor and you want to create another folder and you want to say funnel dash editor dash components, okay? And this component is going to have the recursive component and all components with respect to the editor, not this one, okay? We're not building this now, we're building that later, okay? So, and now we're gonna go inside this funnel editor components and we're gonna create a file called recursive.tsx, okay? And this file is very simple, it's just a switch statement, so go ahead and just return a component and just return recursive there. Okay, and this is just going to be a simple switch statement. So I'm going to remove what we see in here and I'm going to say switch. Okay, and this is going to get some props in here. So we're going to get the elements, which is going to be of type editor element, import that. And we're going to say destructure this too and say element like this element dot type. So based on the type, we're going to return specific components. So the first case here is going to be type text. Okay, so I just made an error here. I said case like this and I put it. That's why it wasn't showing. So you wanna say case, okay? And then put this. And now you can pick each and every type. So I'm gonna just say text. And for text, we're gonna do the following, okay? So remove this and you'll be returning some specific component like text component like this, okay? This is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna return this text component. And of course we don't have this and we're gonna to get to this in just a second, but for default, we're gonna return null. So if you don't return, if you don't have anything in here, we're just gonna return none. Now go into your folder structure inside these editor components and create text.tsx and return a component in here. And we're gonna change that to text component. Let's go back and quickly import this component like that. And I'm gonna go into this component and it's gonna get access to the element, which is the editor element. Okay, and I'm also gonna pass this in here. So I'm gonna say element equal to element like this. Okay, nice. And also inside this component, we are gonna do a bunch of stuff in here. So we're gonna have the component itself we're gonna be able to also change its properties. So we have to have that ability, right? So there's a bunch of things, so just pay close attention.
So the first thing I know I need is the use editor hook. So I'm going to change this to a use client component. And let's go in here. And let's say const equal to use editor. Okay, and I'm going to remove this and I'm going to get access to dispatch and state because I know I might need both of these. Okay, and let's go here and we're going to remove this text component and we're going to say draggable. Okay. And the reason why we're saying draggable here is not because this is draggable because that is something we are not doing. Okay. We are not adding drag drop here. Okay. We're only adding drag drop from the navigation bar. Okay. But I have draggable in here. Actually, let's just go ahead and remove this. We don't even need it. Okay. But the reason why I'm putting it in here is I want to show you something eventually. So I'll keep it now and I'll show you and you guys can do that as a challenge. Okay. So draggable, we're going to have class name and we're going to set the class name to the following. So I'm going to just use CLSX. Okay. So import CLSX like this. And don't worry guys, I'm going to explain. So we're going to say padding to with full margin five pixel relative text 16 pixel and transition all. And then this one is going to have a border of blue 500 states.editor. So if state.editor.selected element ID is equal to this exact element ID that we got in here, then, oh, this is wrong here. So this is element like this. Okay. So if we are selecting this current element, then we're going to have a border blue around the element. Okay. And we also want to have the border be solid. So if it's equal to that solid, you can put this on the same line actually, if you'd like, but I'm just going to put it in here and then border dashed. Okay. Border one pixel and border slate. This is true if it is not in live mode. Okay, cool. All right. So by default, basically we have this and only when you click on it, we're going to have this blue border. So of course you're not going to see anything, right? Uh, because we haven't rendered that. And let me also refresh this so we can see what we're doing. All right. And also go into recursive and make sure you change this to element guys, um, because we changed that, right? So nice. So once you do this, um, while, while the server is loading up, okay, server is loading, just come in here and we're going to do the following. So we're going to say if the state dot editor, so if we are selecting that editor, then we want to have a little badge icon that shows on top of the element. So at the top left corner, we want to have a badge that shows the name of the component. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that, which is state.editor.selected ID. So if we're selecting this element and we are not in live mode. Okay. So we don't want to be in live mode. If that's true, just return a badge from components UI badge and put it absolute with the top of negative 23 pixels, left of negative one pixel, rounded none and rounded top LG. Okay. And now we're going to have the name inside this. So you won't see it, of course, because we don't have any elements. So don't be alarmed. It's going to take us some time to see any. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to have a, another span component. So what is the span? This span is basically to delete the element. So before we put anything in here, so I have something that I would like to do. So I'm going to create a span in here. Okay. And we're going to say content editable. We're going to set this to if we are not in state dot editor dot live mode. Okay. And in here, we're going to say on blur is equal to a function like this, set this to E. And in here we want to say const span elements equal to E dot target as HTML span. I think we have something span element, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we also want to dispatch an action. So what we're doing in here is this span can actually be editable. So you can click on the screen and you can change it. So initially what I was going to do here was have a setting in the custom settings, but I think it's so much more better if you can click on the screen and change the text, right? So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to say dispatch invoke that and we're going to pass in the type and set this to update element and payload is going to be an object with element details set to everything inside inside. So props dot element uh, like this and the content. Okay. Something is wrong here. Why is it not giving me, okay, this is, a, I made this an array on accident. Sorry guys. This is, this is an object. Okay. Element details is everything in here, but content is going to be set to inner text of span elements dot inner text. Now you're going to have an error here. Why? I want you to try to guess. Why do we have this inner text error? Nice. If you said the reason is because inside our provider, we don't have this custom element set up with this custom property, that's the answer. So let's go to our provider and up here you will see we have only href. So let's go ahead and create inner text as well and set that to a string. And this of course has to be optional. There we go. And that's going to solve that problem. So this is how we can set custom properties, right? So this is why we need this inner text thing right in here. And now in here, we're going to say if 
the content is not an array. We don't want it to be an array because if it's an array, that means it is not a text component. It's not a static component. It's a recursive component. So this component does not deal with the recursive components. It only deals with static components, right? So we're going to say if array dot is array props dot element dot content, then, and so we're going to say, and here props, oops, not prop props dot elements dot content dot inner text. So if this exists, um, so if this exists here, so if this is true, then we're going to just return the inner text. That's what we're doing here. Okay. And then after this, finally, we're going to show a delete button at the end of the component so we can delete it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in here. And all this is doing is it's saying if state dot editor dot selected element ID is equal to this element, then and also we're not in live mode, go ahead and return a div, which is absolute, bg primary, padding x of 2.5, padding y of 1, text of excess, font bold, negative top of 25 pixels, right of one pic negative 1 pixel, rounded none, rounded top lg, and text of white. And we're going to return a trash icon, okay, and I'm going to complete this handle delete element, which is actually insanely simple. Let's go up top. And we're going to say handle delete element. Okay. It's going to dispatch an action that says delete element with the payload and the element details, which is props dot element. Okay. That's what we need to delete. So nice. And now let's go in here. Okay. And now we have to complete the on click. So when we click on this, we want to do something, right? So I'm going to say on click equal to handle on body. So we clicked on this body. Oh, we clicked on this tag basically, right? So what this is going to do is I'm going to copy this. Okay. We're going to go up here and this is very important. Please, please pay attention. We're going to say handle on click body which is an event, which is react.mouse event, we're going to stop propagation. The reason is because these elements are within each other. And because of event bubbling, this event is going to go all the way up the child, all the way up the tree and fire at the body tag. We don't want that. We only want this to fire at this specific element. So we have to do e dot stop propagation. OK, we're going to dispatch a type called change clicked event and we're going to pass in the payload of element details as payload dot element. All right, guys. Nice. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to get the styles for this element. So we're going to say const styles equal props dot element dot styles. And in here, we're going to basically say styles equal those styles. So now we're going to override it with whatever we're putting inside our editor. OK, now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to just remove this for now because we don't need it actually in this component. It was just there for the challenge. And um, I'll see if I can mention the challenge at the end so that you guys can go ahead and give it a shot. OK, nice. And so now we've created one text element. So I also want to create the body element so we can render something. Right. So go in here and I'm going to create a quick case here called body and we're going to create container. Now this container is a custom component that we're going to create. And in my opinion, it is the only complex component in here. Okay. So copy this, go into your folder structure in here and we're going to say container.tsx and let's return a component and paste that in there. So let's go up top and let's go ahead and change this to use client. And I also want to make sure that my other component has use client too. Okay. And inside the container, let me go ahead and import that. So dot slash container and go into this component and this gets access to element, which is of type editor element. Okay. And in here, I'm going to extract some props ID name. Sorry about that. So I'm going to say element here like this, and I'm going to destructure from this, the ID, the name style and type. Okay. And I'm also going to get use editor. So const equal use editor invoke that. And we're going to get access to these two dispatch and state. Okay, nice. Now I want you to keep this in mind. A container is an element that is recursive. So what that means is inside a container, you can have other elements and you can also have other containers. So basically what we're going to return in here is not text, not something else. We're going to return another recursive component. So in here, we're going to just return another recursive, and then we're just going to pass in the details into that component. So that's how we're going to know what component has to be rendered. Okay. That's what we're going to be doing here, but let's go back into this container. So another thing I want you to keep in mind is if this component can have elements inside it, that means we should have the ability to drag elements from the sidebar and drop them into this container. Correct. So that means we are going to use some drag and drop features in here. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the bottom here and I'm going to give this style and set this to props. So did I take styles here? Yes, I took styles. So I'm just going to import, uh, I'm just going to put these styles in here. Okay, and this is going to have the following class name. So this is a little bit not complex, it's just a long class name. Okay, so let me go ahead, copy and paste it and I'm going to explain. So I'm going to import CLSX like this and this is going to be ID. So change this to ID. Okay, nice. And I'm just going to explain real quick, just focus. So we're going to have relative padding for transition all and group. Okay, this is important group. Now it's going to be max with a full and width of full by default. Okay, and this is if the type is container or the type is two columns. So a column is also a container. Keep that in mind. Okay, uh, sorry, a two column is also a container with two containers inside it. And then we're going to say height fit if the type is of container and height full if the type is of body. So if it's a body tag, we want it to take the entire screen, right? And then we're going to say flex, flex column, MD of flex row if it is two column. So we're using the same container for two calls too. So if basically look at recursive, right? If we go to recursive for two call for the type two call here, we're actually going to return the same container itself. All right, nice. And okay. And then after that here, we're going to say border blue 500. If the element is selected, so selected element from the editor is equal to the ID. So this exact element and it's not in live mode and the selected element type is not of type body. Okay. Because we're going to have a special color for the body tag. All right. I hope that makes sense. And we're also having a special border with here. So if it's body, body tag, we want to show that, Hey, you're clicked on body tag and that's going to be yellow color. Okay. Same thing here. State.editor.selected is the same ID and um, state.editor is not in live mode. And we have the type of underscore underscore body. Okay. Only two underscores, not three. All right. Everywhere, wherever you're using this body, only two underscores and then uh, exclamation border of solid. So this is true only if state.editor. So if it's we're selected on this element and we're not in live mode, then we want this to be solid and you want it to be dash dashed if we are not in live mode, but preview mode is there, right? So that's why. So by default, it's going to be this. So if we're in uh, live mode, then we're going to replace this. Okay, cool. And now inside this component, we're going to have an on inside this div, we're going to say on drop on drop. Okay, equal to we're going to get E here, and we're going to pass in handle on drop, and we're going to invoke it and pass in E and this, uh, this element itself. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up top here, and I'm going to say const handle on drop equal to a function and this function takes in so and this function is going to take an event which is of type react dot drag event okay and the type is going to be of type string and inside this we're going to first say event dot straw pop propagation because when we drop an element inside an uh, inside a container any element that has on on drop will also fire so we have to straw propagation and then we're going to say a very switch uh, simple switch statement in here and this one this key in here is going to be component type okay and if you want to know where we're getting component type that's from here so we're going to say const component type equal to e dot data transfer dot get data and we're going to say component type like this and we're going to set this as editor buttons now this is not going to make sense i know and i'm going to explain it right now so when we drag an element from the sidebar there is this thing called data transfer we can basically attach metadata okay metadata or any type of data into this event when it's dragged across the page and the handle on drop event basically gives you access to that data transfer. So if you want to see this in action, we're going to see this in just a bit. Okay, uh, just hang in there. Just follow through. It's all going to make sense. So in here, I'm going to say component type. Okay. And the case in here is if it is of type uh, text, for example. So if an element that was dropped into this component was of type text, we have to dispatch something. We're going to dispatch and add an element, right? We need to add an element because we drop something in here and we need to add an element into this element. So that's where we need that container ID. So we're going to say type equal add elements 
and payload is an object with container ID set to this ID and element details set to content. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. Okay, just give me one second. So this element details is going to be this object with the content set to inner text as text element. Okay, because it's a text, right? And the ID is going to be V4. Just import that. Name is going to be text. Styles is going to be this. Color is going to be black. Okay. And default styles. Where does this come from? So you're just going to go into your constants in here. And I'm going to create an object called default styles. And it just has some basic stuff that we're going to use for every component. Okay. Object fit cover, background repeat, text align left, opacity 100%, and background position of center. Okay. And let's go back in here and import this. Huh, what's going on? Let's go back into that file real quick. I'm not sure why it is not default styles. Export const default styles. I'm going to go in here. Okay. It's not showing guys. So I'm just going to import it from up here. Default styles like this. Okay. And that imported it. Well, that's, that's just bad. So yeah, I'm going to have the default styles in here and the color set to black and the type set to text. So this is how we add elements within a specific container. Okay. Awesome. Also after this text, I'm going to create one more case in here for the container and I'm going to dispatch an action called add element with the payload this container. So inside this container, we're going to set the element details to add to this one. So content's going to be an array V4. The name is going to be container styles is going to be, you know, our default styles and the type is going to say container. And now same thing, guys, go, <laughs> you can literally copy for all elements, but these are the first two things that we need to kind of get set up. Okay. And now let's scroll back down into the div and we want to have another thing in here called on drag over. Okay. On drag over. And we're going to set this to handle drag over. So we're going to go up top and we're going to build this function. Now, for some reason, this function has to be there or nothing works. Okay. And I think the reason is because we need to like, it's because of event bubbling clearly because we're doing event prevent default. So it's basically the default behavior I think is not to do what it's supposed to do, what you think, right? So that's why we have to prevent it. Like for example, if you hit the submit button, it kind of refreshes. So we have to do event.prevent default, right? Same thing here. Okay. So you have to put this in here. So go ahead and put that in there. And now I'm going to have a draggable in here. And this draggable is going to say type is not equal to type body. Okay. And then we're going to have an on drag start. And this on drag start is going to have an on drag start function right here. And let's scroll up top here. And I'm going to create this on drag start, which says react.drag event. Okay. Why is this indented? Okay. Type as of type string. And we're going to say if the type is equal to body return. And if not, we're going to say e dot data transfer dot set data component type to type. So this is how it works, guys. This is how we can transfer data into that event. So you see here, when we drag an element, we're just attaching some metadata called component type to this data transfer. And then we, when we drop it somewhere, we can extract that by saying get data component type. That's what we're doing. Okay, cool. Okay. So I know there is some kind of indentation error somewhere. What is this right here? Okay. That's what was causing it. Okay. So I'm going to remove this. <laughs> I don't know why I copied that. And sorry guys, I just made a bracket problem there. So just create this function up top. Okay. And then finally, we're going to need an on click, which is going to be handle on click. Okay. And we're just going to say handle on click body. And then this function is going to do the following. We're just going to set the state to basically say that this is the element that we have clicked on. Okay. So what is this error here? Let me see. So the element here. Okay. I understand. So here, because we need this element, we cannot just destructure it. So what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to say const like this equal to element. And I'm going to destructure these values in here like this. Okay. And now I can actually refer to that element from here directly. Okay. Nice. So here, when we click on this div or the container, we're basically stopping propagation first. And then we're saying dispatch change click event. And we're setting our element in uh, and passing it into the payload. So this element will now be clicked. And that way we can, you know, show the border and all and yellow border 
and all that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. And inside this container, I'm going to remove this and return a badge. Very same thing, similar to what we did everywhere. Okay, so it's a badge that has the following class name and it's going to say absolute negative top of 23 left one pixel rounded none rounded top and hidden and block. So it's going to be there if state dot editor. So if we're selecting this, right? So if you selected this element and we're not in live mode, Okay, let me remove this too. Okay, I think this is good. And after this, we have to return that recursive element, remember? So this recursive element basically will determine whether to return some kind of static elements or other containers as well. So go ahead and import this recursive, recursive from here, recursive element like this. And just to, uh, let's understand this too. So if the content of this component right here, if this content is an array, then we're going to map over that and we're going to return a recursive element for each of those elements. So what that means is, let's say uh, this element had the content and its content was an array of multiple elements. Now, each of those can be another container. So that's why we're returning recursive elements for each of them. So see, I'm explaining in depth. Okay. And if you have, if you don't understand, I got you. I'll see in the discord. Okay. All right. And here we're going to have the delete button. Same thing. What we did everywhere state editor selected element is equal to this elements ID and we're not in live mode and the state editor dot selected element dot type is not equal to body. Okay. If that's true. Then div class name, absolute BG primary, uh, the same thing. Okay. And trash, we're going to have the delete functionality and the delete functionality up here. I'm just going to scroll up top and say handle delete element, which is dispatch delete element and the payload is going to have element details set to element. Okay. That's it. So this is going to grow as we keep going, but it's literally copy paste, copy paste. That's it. Okay. Nothing else. You guys got this. I know you're almost, we're almost there guys. We just have to build payment forms and I'm going to show you how to create some more static complex static components like payment form, contact us form and things like that. Okay. So that way you can sell products directly in here from Stripe. Okay, go ahead and open this and click on the funnel editor, click on index.tsx. And the reason why we're not going to see any components in here is because we're not returning that recursive component, right? So let's go down here after this I button thing. <laughs> okay, we're going to say the following. So if array dot is array states dot editor dot elements and states dot editor dot elements dot map. So basically, if this is true, then we're going to map over those elements. So first, let's get the child element here and we're going to return the recursive element like this. So where is that funnel editors recursive? OK, and we're going to pass in key and set it to child element dot ID. OK, and we need to pass in the element itself, which is the child element. OK, now you won't see anything in here. I feel OK, we do. Nice. I thought because we saved the page, we would have some errors. But there you go. Nice. Now you see this so you can click on this and let's go down to background color. And I'm just going to say white and there you go. It changes. Let me save it actually and refresh. Awesome, guys. There you go. Now it's set up. And the reason why you can't see the body tag is because it's kind of pushed. OK, I wish I could show you. I can show you actually. I just have to push this down, but I'm just a little lazy. I'm not going to lie, but I promise you it's here. OK, and you cannot delete this because it's a body tag. So this is how it works. So now you can click on this and so on and so forth. Awesome. So now let's move on to building this. I think it's a good time to actually build this component drag and drop functionality. OK, all right. Now go ahead and create a folder inside this tab folder called components dash tab and create an index.tsx and just go ahead and return a component in there. Okay. So first we're going to say const components or elements and this is going to be of type of an array uh, of a specific type of object and it's going to say component. Okay. Like this component which is react dot react node and it's going to have the label which is going to be a string. And we're also going to have the ID, which is going to be of type editor button. OK, and we're going to have group. So this is going to say either layout or elements. So I'm creating two different groups inside our sidebar. Now, let's quickly understand what is the uh, what is this component sidebar? So if you remember, we have the plus icon, right? So when you click on that plus icon, we want to have a list of components that we can simply drag and drop onto the editor. That's what this is. Okay. 
So this components tab is going to have a bunch of placeholder components. And these placeholder components are just little widgets, okay, that you can drag and drop. That's basically what this is. All right. I hope that makes sense. So uh, what you're going to do now is uh, scroll down here and we're going to say accordion. So remove this stuff and say accordion like this. And this is going to have type equal multiple class name equal with full. And we also want to set the default value to be an array with layout because we're going to create two, right? So layout and the second element is going to be elements like this. And inside the accordion, create an accordion item. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. So save you, save you some time. So accordion item like this with the layout. And I'm going to go ahead and import this component as well with value layout. And the class name is PX six PY zero border border Y of one pixel. Okay. And inside the accordion item, go ahead and create a trigger. So this trigger is going to have layout inside of it. And it's going to have no underline uh, just like this. Okay. And the content to show inside this accordion item is basically this. So say accordion content, so everything from these, these elements, okay, we're only going to get the layout elements. That's what we're showing inside this accordion item. So filter the element group where it is equal to layout. And then we're going to do a dot map and we're going to return a div in here and just pass in a key with the following class name, flex call item center, justify center and flex. And we're just going to simply render the component like this saying element dot component. We're also going to create a span and say element dot label. Okay. Awesome. And then after that, we are also going to have other elements. So go uh, right outside this accordion item and we're going to create another accordion item like this. And this accordion item is going to say elements as the value with this class name, PX six PY of zero. The accordion trigger is going to say elements here and it's going to have no underline. The accordion content is going to say flex, flex wrap, gap two, and we're going to filter where the elements dot group is equal to type of elements. I got to change this here, guys. Sorry, I made a spelling error. So change it to elements. And then we're going to get all of them. So dot map, and we're going to return a div. So pass in a key and the class name is flex call items center, justify center and flex. And then we're going to pass in the component inside that and a span right below that to show the label. Okay. And you can make a text muted foreground. Awesome. Now, what are these components? What are these components going to look like? So now we only have the text and um, a container element, correct? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build out those two components because we have those. So the first one is an object here with a component text placeholder, which we're going to create in just a second. Label is going to be text. ID is going to be text and the element group is going to be element. So it'll be grouped under, uh, it'll be grouped under this accordion item. Okay. So go ahead and open up your uh, directory and inside the components tab, you can create a file in here and you're going to call this text dash placeholder dot TSX. Okay. And go ahead and return a component called text placeholder like this. Okay. Text placeholder. I think this is enough. Yep. And now I'm also going to go ahead and import this component. Nice. And we're going to go into this component and we're going to do the following. So follow this process when you need to create any sort of component inside your navigation. Okay. Inside your sidebar. And don't worry, I'm going to give you a detailed uh, illustration as well at the end of this to show, you know, a one step process on how to create components, which is first build it here, then build it inside the index, then go ahead and build your component. I'll show you the whole process in just one image, or just one picture. Okay. But let's go ahead and build this first. So, this is going to get um, the following. So we're going to just return a div here because this is a text return a div with draggable. This is very important because it should be draggable on drag start um, on drag start is going to be equal to a function. Okay. And this is going to give us E, which is the event. And I'm going to call a custom function here. It's called handle drag start invoke it pass an E and we're going to pass in the type, which is text. And now let's go in here and say const handle drag start equal to this function. So equal to a function up here. Okay. And it's going to take an E, which is react dot drag events. And, um, we want type to be editor buttons. Okay. One of this. So that's how we can pass this in here. And so basically when we, uh, when we drag, 
uh, when we first drag this component, we need to attach that data transfer, right? So we're going to say if type equal to null, we're simply going to return, okay? And then we're going to say e dot data transfer, invoke it. Uh, actually, you don't need to invoke it. Say set data, invoke the set data, and pass in component type. Don't make a spelling error here, okay? And we're going to pass in our type just like this. So now, when we drop this element, this placeholder, into any component that has that uh, on drag drop, right? On drop, right? Then inside there, we're going to get and extract this data transfer, which is the component type. And we're going to get the type from there. And based on the type, we're going to update the editor state. That is all we did. Okay. That's why in the other component, the container component, we had that data transfer stuff in there. Okay. I hope this makes sense. All right. Awesome. So now inside here, go ahead and give this a class name. Okay. Just to give it some styling. So I'm just going to say this height 14 with 14 background uh, muted, rounded LG, flex item center, and justify center. And in here, I'm going to use a type icon. Okay. Uh, which comes from Lucid React. And I'm going to set the following props. So I'm going to say size 40, class name of text muted foreground. Okay. And now let's go back in here into this component. And now we will have this component render. Okay. But nothing's going to show, of course. So just give me a second, guys. Let me first refresh and set my server. So go ahead and open up your directory. And you want to go into, let's see, which is that? I think it's this index. Yep. So go into funnel editor sidebar index.typescript. Okay. And inside this right here, after the media, we're just going to create one for the components. Okay. So I'm going to hit enter after, um, let me see, we have a tab content here. Hit enter and create one more tab content. And we're going to go ahead and import the components tab just like this. Okay. So it's just nothing, just tab content with the value sets of contents, sheet header, which is a title description. Okay. And the uh, component that we want to render. So now when we click on this, there you go. You can see we have um, this accordion here and we have one for all the elements. So I can drag this and I can drop it anywhere into this element. Okay. So let's go ahead and test and see what happens. So if I drop it, boom, there you go. You see the element now. And when you click on it, that element becomes the selected element. And that's why we see all these, you know, the badge basically. And you can also go ahead and delete this element and it removes it. How awesome is this guys? Wow. This is actually insane. I actually love this. So now if we click this, I want to show you what happens. If you click this, everything goes away, even the borders, and I can't even drag it. Okay. And if you see this icon here, right, you can click this to go back to edit mode. And you can also shrink the page, guys. You can see what the website is going to look like on different devices. This is actually very important in all website builders, right? So that's why we need this feature here. So yeah, so I hope this makes sense. Now let's go ahead and build. Um, we have a bunch of other elements and layouts. So I'm going to build the container as well to show you how that works, okay? So now let's say you wanted to create a new component. You're going to come in here. You're going to say component. And you're going to set this to a new component. So I'm actually going to call this container placeholder. Okay. Like this. And I'm going to go ahead and copy these things here. And I'm just going to change this um, as well. So I went ahead and changed this to container. And this is small letter container. And it's going to be grouped under layout. And of course, we don't have this. So then you're going to go into your components tab. You're going to create a container dash placeholder dot TSX. And you're going to return a component here and just do that. Okay. And inside this component, first, you're going to say const handle drag start equal to a function. So basically the exact same thing for every single component you want to create. That's why this is so reusable. Imagine if a new team comes in, they can immediately just change this, uh, just add components here and it's all going to work the way it should. Right? So I'm going to get the two parameters right inside this function. And those two parameters are, uh, this, which is the event and the type as well. And if there is no type, we're going to throw, um, I'm not thrown error. We're just going to return, right? So let's do that in here. We're going to return here and I'm going to go ahead and put the same props, the exact same thing from the text inside in here. However, uh, this is on drag start guys, RT. Okay. So on drag start like that. 
and it's the same exact thing. The only thing is when you are dragging, you want to pass in the different type. So for this one is container, so I'm going to pass in container. If you don't know where this is coming from, it is one of our editor buttons. Okay, awesome. And then inside this, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to create a div with the class name set to the following. So the class name is going to be border dashed, border one pixel, height full, rounded SM, BG muted, border muted foreground by 50 and width full. And I'm also going to just make this a closing tag like this. And now if I go back to my tab components, which is the components tab and in index.tsx, I'm going to go ahead and import this. And now you can see inside our components, we have our container. So if I drag a container, okay, drag a container. Okay, something seems to be wrong. Let me go ahead and figure out what's going on, guys. Okay, so I think the problem is inside our recursive um, element, right, in here, because for body we have something, but what about for the rest? So go ahead and you're going to create another container type here. So you're going to say case container, and you're going to return a container. So this was the problem here. Now if you go back and drag this, okay, it already showed it up. So I'm going to delete this and refresh the page. Okay, you click this, there's nothing in here. If you go into components, drag a container, now you see a container, right? Awesome. So you can see that container. And if you drag a text inside it, it's going to place that text inside that container. Okay, it looks like it also created another container here. It's not supposed to do that, but that might just be a mistake, um, you know, from where we are setting the component. So let's go inside the text component and in here, Okay, not in there, it should be inside a container, right? So inside the container for the text component, we are returning this. All right, guys, all our logic was perfect. What we missed here is inside our container. So go to your funnel editor components and go into the container, not the placeholder. When we are dropping the component, we are doing exactly what we're supposed to for the text component, but we did not put break here. So what's happening is it's jumping to the next line and also performing all these actions. So remember, after every case, you either have to have a return statement, so you can return here, or you have to have a break statement. Now, if you drag text components inside this, you will not see any more, you know, those weird containers being placed after them. Okay, sorry about that error, but that's it. That's literally the fundamentals. That's literally all you need to know to you know to build an editor like this and now you can click in here and change this to welcome page and you, if you save it right and you refresh the page you will now see that element and if you go into preview mode this is what the website is going to look like right you see right here and we can get out of this now there's another thing i wanted to show you which was our elements as well for example a container has an on drag over this is not a placeholder sorry on drag start and this is not a placeholder. Why are we doing this? Well, this is a challenge for you. Right now, When you can also drag these elements around, okay? And the problem is when you drag these elements, right? Let's see, uh, let me show you something here. So when you drag an element, you can technically drop this anywhere, right? So I can drop it here and it's gonna create a new uh, container for me. So what I want to do is I want to have the ability to duplicate elements by simply dragging and dropping them. That makes it so easy. Imagine I could drag and drop five cards and that's it. It's done, right? So I want to have the ability to do that. And also check out our undo feature. How cool is this? You can undo and redo stuff, right? So I want to have the ability to do that. I want to have the ability to copy the component. So here's the challenge. When you're dragging a component itself, I want you to send a new state. So right now, when we drag an element from here, right, we're only sending the component type, right? Only the component type. But now we want to send the entire component itself so that we can rebuild or just copy that component below that. So this is a big challenge, I know, but if you go for it. I know you guys can do it. You've learned a lot. I've helped, I've literally explained every single thing in detail. Um, and if you need more support, right, I'll be more than happy to help you in the discord. Okay. And everyone is helping each other out in there. Like everyone wants each other to succeed. So we will help you, but I'm just saying that's how, you know, um, that's what we want to accomplish in this, uh, in this challenge. So go ahead, pause the video if you'd like and give it a shot. 
If you don't want to do it now, you can finish the project and put it on your to-do list, do it, and then share it with everyone in the Discord or post it on your stories or whatever because everyone's, you know, super excited about what we're building. Okay, awesome. All right, now I'm going to show you the entire process in one shot of how to create a new component. Okay, so so far we went and just created um, a text and a container, but now we want to create um, another component called video component. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the entire process. First thing I would do is I would go into the sidebar placeholders right in here into the components tab, and I'm going to go into index and I'm going to quickly create a component in here. Okay, so because this is a video component, I'm going to create this object call it component video placeholder label is going to be video the id is going to be the video group is going to be elements okay and copy this and next step is i'm going to go into my uh my funnel so right here into the sorry into the components tab and i'm going to create a new file in here and i'm going to call this video dash placeholder dot tsx okay and return a component from here and i'm just going to change that name just like that and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create my on my handle drag start which is the exact same thing you guys know what this is right it's just taking uh two event two properties uh sorry two um parameters in here and we're just returning if there's null and we're setting the data transfer to whatever type we get and in here all we're doing is we're going to return a div with the following with the same exact props okay nothing different so we're going to say draggable on drag start drag we're going to handle drag start here pass in the event and we're going to pass an ev a video as the type and the class name is going to be height 14 with 14 the same thing okay and for this i'm going to use youtube icon from lucid react and i'm going to set the class name and the size to the following so size 40 class name text muted foreground okay nice and then next step is you're going to go back into your components tab which is this one index.tsx and you're going to import this video placeholder and now i'm going to verify to make sure that i can actually see this component there we go i can see it but if you drag and drop nothing is going to work because inside our container we need to listen to this component and we need to change the state right so i'll just show you see if i drag this and drop nothing is happening in here because it's not listening so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go into my container.tsx and i'm going to do something in here so after this case i'm going to create a new case in here and this case is for the video okay and i'm going to dispatch an action called add element i'm going to put a payload and the payload is going to have this specific container id and the element details are going to be content, uh, the ID, the name, the styles, and the type video. But the source is going to, I'm just putting some random video in here, but the source here has to be added manually. So because this is a special type of um, static component, I'm gonna go into my um, provider, which is in here. Okay, go into provider. I'm gonna scroll up top, and here I'm gonna add the special prop. Okay, the special property in here. So now I can actually use that um, to kind of show this. Now that I have this container listening for these specific uh, elements and firing these dispatches to add the element to the to the um, to the editor state, now we want to render a component out for this. So let's go to the recursive component in here. And now for a case video, we have to go ahead and return that video component. So that's gonna look something like this. So I'm gonna say case video, and I'm gonna return a video component, which I'm just gonna build and pass in the element. And this video component, we're just gonna open this here, and you're gonna create video.tsx, and in here, just gonna return a component and change this to video uh, components, okay? Because video just sounds weird. So yeah, just say video.tsx uh, like that and just put this in here. Now go up top and change this to use client. And here we're gonna get the element, which is gonna be editor element. And I'm gonna destructure this uh, or we'll just keep this, this is fine, okay? And now I'm gonna say const equal to use editor and I'm gonna get the dispatch and state, okay? And then I'm also going to scroll here and we're gonna remove this or we can keep this, no problem. And 
First, I need the styles, okay? So the styles are gonna be the props.elements.style, okay? I'm gonna get the uh, style from that element that's being passed in. So I'm gonna kinda get that value there. You can also use use memo and store it, no problem. And then I'm going to pass the styles into the element. So I'm done with the styles now. Next thing is if I ever wanted to do the duplication um, you know, feature, I'm going to go ahead and pass that feature in here too. So make this draggable on drag start. And I'm going to quickly create this, um, this component, I'm sorry, this function as well. And this function is going to look like this. So it's going to take the drag event and the type, which is the same thing as what we did in the placeholder, right? And we're going to do e .data transfer set data for now. I'm just going to do co co component type and pass in this type. Okay. It's your, it's a challenge for you to go ahead and figure out how to do that duplication, but it's very simple. Okay. I already explained the logic. If you need help, I'll, I'll help you just reach out to me. Then after the on drag start. Now, when we click on this, I also want to be able to set this as the selected element in the editor. So go ahead and get the event from here. I'm going to say, um, actually we don't need the event from here because I'm just going, I just, all I need to do is just pass in a click handler. So handle on click, um, like this, and I'm going to go up here and say const handle on click is equal to a function. Okay. And this function is going to take in the same thing again. Okay. It's going to take in an event. So this event is called react dot react, um, uh, sorry, react dot uh, mouse event. And inside this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop propagation and I'm going to dispatch a change click element, um, action. And I'm going to set the payload to this specific element. Okay. So now that I've done that, let me see what is the next step. Okay. The next step is to give the borders and all that type of class names, the, the styling, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say class name equal to the following. So CLSX padding two pixel width of two media uh, margin of five pixel relative text of uh, 16 pixel transition all flex item center justify center. And then I'm going to say border blue and 500 here. This is important. Uh, this is, uh, we're going to say important here if it is the selected element from the state, right? And then we're also going to say it's going to be solid if it, again, it is the selected element. And then we're going to say border dash border one pixel border slate 300 if it is not in live mode. Okay. And then inside this, now I'm going to render two things. First, the badge for this to show the element, right? And then the delete button. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that. And for this, we already did this in all the components, right? Same thing. So go ahead and say, if it is the current current selected element, then we want to also want to make sure it's not live mode, then just show the badge for uh, the editor's name, right? Sorry, the, the elements name. And then after this, I'll just hit enter here and I'm going to paste the one for the delete icon. And the delete icon is if it's the currently selected elements and it's not live mode, then go ahead and show this delete icon. You can pause this and, you know, type it out or you can copy paste if you'd like. I suggest you type. It's much better. It's going to help you learn a lot. Okay. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create my handle delete element function because when I click on this trash icon, I want to fire this function, which simply dispatches an event called delete element with the payload set to this specific element. Okay. And we're just passing that into these details. And now I need to pass the special stuff in here, right? So what is it? Well, for a video, we actually use iframes. I don't know if you know, but that's how we use videos in HTML. Go do some research, ask chat GPT. <laughs> okay. You can do some research and you'll find it. So I'm going to go ahead and return an iframe like this saying, if the content of this element of course, it's not going to be an array, but I have to check to make sure because TypeScript is going to scream at you. So I'm going to say, if not is an array props.element.content, then I'm going to return an iframe with the width set to any specific width that they gave or 500 height set to any specific height that they gave or, you know, this specific number and the source we're just going to pass in. So whatever source they provided, that source is going to be uh, put in here. Okay. And the title is going to be YouTube video player and you, I'm just going to pass in some stuff in here. Okay. Which is autoplay and all this kind of stuff. Awesome. 
So now that this is done, let me think what else we need. Let me see if our recursive. Okay, so go into recursive and import this video component. Okay, so now you should see video here. If I drag and drop, let's just see what happens. Awesome, guys. There you go. Now you have a video. So if I go to the settings and click on this element. Oops, sorry. Okay, didn't mean to play the tutorial. <laughs> but if I click on the video, something's wrong here. I did not import the badge from the right component. Okay, so go into badge. Okay, I'm going to delete badge here. I accidentally imported from Lucid React and import badge from components UI. Okay, and now when I uh, go back here, because I refreshed the page, I lost that data. If I paste um, a YouTube video and click on it, I see video in here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is go into settings and you can actually change the width. So say 400 or 4000 or 100% or 50%, literally whatever you want. So if I don't put anything, it's going to default to whatever number we have. Okay. And now if you see this in, in production, this is what it looks like. Looks bad, but you can build literally almost anything. Okay. As you, I'm sure you already saw from the examples and guys, I would love to see you guys build amazing websites using this builder and actually put it in the discord. Okay. And I'm going to share it on YouTube. I'm going to put it in the, in the communities. Okay in the community post, sorry. All right, let's go back. So now that we're done with this, this is the process to create a custom element. Okay, I hope it's broken down pretty well. And don't worry, I'm going to show a quick picture on the screen right now that like an illustration that's going to show you the process as well. Okay. All right, guys. So this is the illustration to understand the entire process in just one picture so that you can have a mental image of how to create new components. So first, go ahead and create the component placeholder object. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Then go and create the placeholder itself. So what you have to see in the, in the sidebar, basically, then verify your new component shows in the sidebar. This is what you created. This is what you see now. Then update the container component to listen to your new events, then build the component itself. And finally update the recursive component to return that component if needed. All right. So I went ahead and copied the link placeholder component and the two columns placeholder component. Okay. If you went ahead and took a step forward and did it by yourself, no problem. But if you didn't just please follow through with me and pause the video and type any code that you need to. Okay. So first I copy pasted this, which is this object to create our component and make sure you follow this guideline. Okay. Of exactly how to create a new component. So create this thing here first. And then I went and created the placeholder and the placeholder is inside the components tab. Okay. And I went ahead and created that in here. And again, I changed this to link. Okay. Then after I did this, so after I created the placeholder, I verified the comp component shows. So I went to the browser and now I see my link component right here. Perfect. Then what's next? Update the container component to listen to your new event. So I went into my container, which is inside the funnel editor components. And I went into the event listeners, right? This is technical. Not, it's not an event listener. I'm just going to call it a, a listener. And I added the link right in here. And what I added was dispatch type, add element, payload, container ID. The element details are basically an object with, you know, the content set to inner text to call link element and href set to this hashtag. Okay. And then after that, I created the ID, the link name and the styles. I'm just going to say color black and I put some default styles and I set the type to link. And then what's the next step? Let's see, build the component itself. So I went in here and I created, created a link component like this. And the link component has the handle drag start very same, you know, similar to whatever we did in the past. It has this to get access to the dispatch and state. It's a client component. Okay. We have this coming in from the props as well. And then I created the handle on click. So when you click on it, you want to set this as the selected element. So I did that action in here. Then I extracted the styles. Then I also have the delete elements. And then I created a div, have the styles here, set it to draggable, even though it's not needed, but this is a challenge for you, right? And I have this for the challenge too. An on click handle click uh, handle on click. And then I have this class name here, which is the exact same thing as every single element. And then in here I have the badge and at the bottom I have the delete button. Now in here, I want to just point out 
and uh, we're rendering a link when we are in production and when we are not in production we're rendering a span that way when you click on the link get, you know annoyingly take you take you to that page right you don't want it to just like keep redirecting you to that ugly page so <laughs> that's why i have this thing here so i put a span in here and i put a link in here so i'm saying if this is not an array of course if the content is not an array and we are in preview mode or live mode if this is true then we're going to go ahead and show this link okay and if we're not in preview mode so state.editor and not in live mode then go ahead and show the span like this okay so now when i drag this link and put it in here and if i click on it i do have some custom properties which i can change so if i click on this it's not going to take me to some other page okay so for example if i changed this link path here if i changed it to google.com okay www.google.com okay if i click on it, it's not going to take me to that page if i view this now i can actually click on it and it will take me to google.com so if i click right it's going to take me. so that's why i had that thing in there so that it doesn't actually take me to that to that page okay i hope that makes sense okay then once i finished creating the component i went into the recursive component as you can see in here update the recursive component and i went ahead and added the link in here with that link component and then there's one final step that's not actually a part of the component creation process but it is to add any custom properties in the tab in the sidebar if needed so basically if you go into the sidebar go into your settings tab right you might need to create some custom properties in here so right now i don't have anything except for this right href stuff so i'm saying link path this is the only thing i have in here so uh similarly maybe for the video element you can render a custom element so i just wanted to show you just in case you were wondering how to change those properties okay so now i pretty much showed you everything except for one more which is the two columns placeholder so i did the same process right follow the same process here but i'm gonna but i'm gonna just um, walk you through the component itself and what it looks like okay so the placeholder is pretty much the same okay just has two divs here just to look like this right here okay and then let's also go into the component itself and take a look at that so we have two columns here and let's see what this looks like so this is going to have the same div okay as the previous container so you can literally copy paste that and you can paste that in here okay and we're going to change this id to inner container like this okay and we're going to say on drag actually i don't even think we need this anywhere yeah we don't even need this i think i was just doing this to distinguish between something but yeah just put it in here it's fine okay i think it comes from probably css i'm not entirely sure uh let me see maybe we're doing that in css so i'm going to shrink all this stuff inner container okay it doesn't look like we're doing anything in here okay i have it there so it's probably for some reason that's not important anyway but it's okay just put it so yeah we have the same things in here okay and on drag uh, start we're setting container and inside here we have the badge and um, we also have this recursive element so basically what we're saying is for the two column element we're going to check if its contents are if its contents are an array and if it is we're just going to return recursive elements for that and inside our container this is what we're doing for our two column element we're basically returning the content as an array of two containers that's it nothing crazy in here okay so that way when you go to this if you drag and drop two containers you see we have two containers side by side and now you can put elements inside those as well like this text and um, and a video and things and i'm just going to undo this real quick okay nice so let's go back so that's basically the two column elements now we have the contact us form as well as the payment form which is the most important one because there's no point in having funnels if your customers cannot sell products on those funnels right so let's go straight into it all right so go ahead and open your directory and go into your components tab and we're going to first work on the contact form okay so go ahead and uncomment it if you have already pasted that in there and we're going to just do this so copy this component okay copy this name and you're going to open your structure again your directory structure and we're going to say uh, contact dash form dash placeholder dot tsx and just return a component in here and inside this component 
we're going to say the following. It's pretty much the same thing, guys. Okay, we're just going to have different icons for them, right? So just go ahead and import this editor buttons from the correct file. And basically, it's a div that has the following class name. So height 14 with 14 background muted. Rounded LG, flex, item center, and justify center. And here we have the contact to icon. So if you go and see what it looks like, okay, we didn't import it. So let's go back and import this component now. Okay, and now we should see the page render with no issue. And now you see the contact form. Okay, so now we can drag this and drop it. Nothing's going to work, of course, right? So, of course, I'm following this guide as well. So, follow this guide if you want to create components, right? So, now that we're finished this, let's go ahead and see what's the next step, okay? Which is verify we did that. Update the container component to listen to your new event. So, I'm going to go into container and I'm going to basically say contact form. So case contact form, we're going to dispatch a new type called add element, sorry, the same type called add element. And we're going to say the payload is going to have this container ID and the element details is going to be the content with ID v4 and the name is going to be contact form. Okay. And styles is going to be just an empty object and type is going to be contact form. Okay. So make sure you do this too. Next, we're supposed to build a component. So go to your directory structure, create a new uh, file here, call it contact-form.tsx. And I'm going to actually say component because I know we have, you know, a bunch of other uh, forms and stuff like that. So I don't want to have some confusion. And in here, I'm going to paste the following. So this is what we're going to do. Just please focus on what I'm doing. There's a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to break it down though. Okay. Don't worry about it. So first things first, Let's just look at this. Forget about the import statements. Let's just look at our component, okay? You know this. You've seen this before, right? This is the same thing. So go ahead, pause, um, or copy-paste it, okay? So now, in here, we're returning the badge, and we're also returning the trash icon. So you guys know this too. Now, what is this? It's a contact form that we need to create. So it's a new contact form that we're going to create. So go into your forms, okay? Right here, go into forms. And you're going to say contact. Okay, so this is different. This is not um, the contact, uh, what do you say? So this one has email and name. Hmm. I'm thinking, could we just use this? All right, guys. So unfortunately, we cannot use this. And I think that's because we wired. I mean, we can, but it's going to take a lot of time for us to wire it up. So go in here and create a new form here. We're going to call this contact-form.tsx, okay? And in here, we're basically going to return a component and call it contact form like this, okay? And we need to get the following uh, props. So we need the title, subtitle, and the API call. So what is this? We're basically going to have the ability to pass in a function that we can invoke while submitting the form, while saving the contact. So we're not going to, oh, we do have this, okay, which is contact um, I don't think we do have it. Let me see. Okay, so just go ahead and import this. I think this is the same thing, name and email. That's all we need. So we're good to go and import Z from Zod. Okay, and inside this, we're going to basically destructure these values. Okay, and inside this, we're going to say const form equal use form. Import that from React Hook Forms. And you guys know this, so I'm just going to paste this here, paste this here too, and say Zod resolver. Nice. And we're just saying use form infer type of this schema mode on change, putting a resolver here and default values are name is empty and email is also empty. And now the is loading state is going to be from form dot form state dot is loading. And the component is actually relatively very simple compared to the other contact form. So I'm going to return this specific component in here. And I'm also going to go ahead and import these components. So import card, import header, title, and the description. Okay. So now you know what the first part is. Now, what is the content? That's it. We only have this content in here. So the content is going to have a form inside. And this form is going to have, you know, a native form with flex, flex column, and gap four. Okay. And we're going to have form.handle submit. And we're going to actually pass in the API call this time. So when we submit this form, we're not going to have an on submit and create the contact. Instead, we're going to have the ability to pass in any type of API call in here. And I'm going to also import form fields 
and all these fields as well. So now I have an, a name field and email field. Okay. And you guys know what this is, right? You've built probably how many forms now? Look at that. How many forms you've built? Okay. Nice. And the button is this right here. Guys, I really suggest you type. If you typed this entire project by hand, for sure you're going to understand patterns. And once you understand patterns, you're going to be able to build anything on your own. So type it on your own. I really, really recommend you do that because when you type redundant code, it just gets stuck and engraved into your mind. You will never forget it. I promise you. Okay, give that a shot. All right. So, and we have this button here, which is the submitting, and we're just going to show loading or get a free quote. Okay. So what is this form? Basically on the website, we want to have the ability to have contact forms so that we can get leads from our websites, right? That's the goal. We want to have leads from the websites. And here's another challenge for you. And this might require you to actually make a change in the schema. Okay. But if you want to do this challenge, um, good, go for it. Basically, we want to have the ability to create tags for each lead that comes from the form. Okay. So we want to give the sub account the ability to create tags. Okay. We already created tags. So that's why I'm saying this, but these tags are a little different. What these tags are is you should be able to attach this tag to the contact. Okay. That way for each form here. Okay. You can pass in along with the API call. You can basically pass in a tag and you can save that tag to each lead. This way, you know which specific form the lead came from, okay? Because now the leads are just coming in, but we don't know where they're coming from, right? So you can do that to actually create some tags to understand and map where the user is coming from. Awesome, so now we built this form. Um, let's go ahead and close this, okay? And now I'm gonna go back into my contact form and I'm gonna import this contact form, okay? Awesome. And then we also have this contact form schema. So I'm going to go into libs types and I'm going to go, actually, we already do have this, right? Contact user form schema. This is good too. And editor buttons. I'm going to import the editor. Where's, where are we using editor buttons right here? Just imported from there. Okay, cool. So, um, let's see what we have here. Contact, this will be contact user form schema now. Okay. Just don't worry about all these changes. Okay. We're going to go through it one by one. Sorry. I'm just jumping all over the page, but basically, um, this component is going to first get access to our editor. And then we also have router. We're going to have an on drag start and the, um, you know, these things, right? We have this because you're going to do the duplication, uh, feature, but if you're not, you can just skip over this. And now when we click on this element globally, we're going to set the clicked element. Then we're getting the styles. And then we have this page. This is the API call basically. Okay. And then we have an on delete element. So when you click on this, we want to also delete. And then we have an on form submit. Okay. So this on form submit is um, what we're going to run when we submit the form. Okay. So let's go up here, go to next page. And this go to next page guys is part of this on submit. Okay. So yeah, right here. So if there is a next page, we're going to go to that next page. Okay. That's the whole point of funnels. So same thing here. We're building the div with style with draggable on drag start. And we're setting this to contact form. We're also having on click and the same class name. Okay. And the same badge here and the same trash icon here as well. And now where we imported that contact form, right? We're just going to render that out right here. So we're showing the contact form saying, contact us, want a free quote, we can help you. And the API call is going to be the on form submit. So let's look at that function. So this is going to take in values, which is of type Z dot in for type of contact user form schema, which is email and name. And then it's not in live mode, just return. Okay. Because only in live mode, do you want to get these contacts or else while you're editing, you're going to end up, you know, sending form data. You want the, don't want that to happen. And then here we're going to do a try catch, which is to upsert the contact. So we're going to save the contact by saying, everything uh, by saying, you know, by putting all the values and for that specific sub account. Okay. We need to pass this in here. That's why we need sub account ID from the editor provider. Okay. That's why we had to pass that in here. So that's how we're getting access to this. So we're going to pass that in there and that way we can save that contact information. And then we also need to save the activity log. So I'm going to put an activity log in here and say a new contact signed up. 
okay? And then we're going to go to the next page if it exists. So I'm going to take this, put it up here actually, and then we're going to go to the next page. So let's see what that looks like. So the go to the next page is basically saying if we're not in live mode, then return, okay? And then we're saying funnel pages equal get funnel with this ID, okay? And it's going to return um, this right here, okay? It's going to return all the funnel pages as well. Then we're going to say if there's no funnel pages or no page details, just return. What are the page details? Uh, this comes from our editor, okay? If there's no page details, return because we need to get the order from that, okay? So we're going to say if the length of the funnels is greater than the page details dot order plus one. So that means we are on the last step of the funnel, okay? Um, sorry, not the last step. That means we have more. We have more to go, okay? If we have more to go, I'm going to remove this console lock. Then we're going to say const next page equal funnel pages dot funnel page dot find where the page order is equal to page details dot order plus one. And then if there's no next page, so for some reason there's no next page, then we're going to say return or we're going to say router dot replace and we're going to say process dot env dot next public scheme. So HTTPS or HTTP and we're going to say funnel page subdomain, okay, dot the domain itself of our application slash next page path name, okay? So we're going to go to that next page if it exists. That's it. That's the form in here. And now if you go into, so let's see what's our next step. Update the recursive component, go into recursive, and let's go ahead and remove this from here. And let's also import this contact form component like that, okay? Nice. And now let's see if we see this component. So we see this, I'm going to refresh this page. Okay. We see the contact form. If I place it in here, there we go. Now we see the contact form and this is what it looks like in production. So you could literally get leads from this. And if you try to submit, right, if you put something in here, put something in here, try to submit gmail.com and try to submit, it's not going to submit. Okay. Because we are in production and I mean, we're not in production. And even if you're in preview mode, Okay. It actually, <laughs> it actually did submit. All right. You guys can fix that. Okay. I'm tired. <laughs> All right. So let me go back. Let me click on this. All right. Um, okay. So basically it's some logical error. Um, probably what we're doing here is inside here. When we submit, we're saying if we are not in live mode and also if we're not in preview mode. So you want to do that too. Okay. That's why. And yeah, that's about it for this. So now we can also create the payment form. So same process, I'm going to go into this index file and I'm going to essentially just uh, remove this checkout placeholder and I'm going to copy this and create a checkout placeholder in here. So checkout dash placeholder dot TSX and I'm going to return a component and I'm just going to save this in here. And now basically this component is, let me also go ahead and import the checkout placeholder and let's go into this placeholder component. And I'm also going to re-import editor buttons from the right path. And yeah, so basically this is it's the same thing. It has the handler and we're passing in payment form this time. But we have an image with Stripe logo. So if you look in here, now have the Stripe logo saying checkout, okay? And then after you create this image, let's go back. So we did this part. So what's our next step? Okay, verify the component. And now you need to update the container component to listen to your new component. So go into container so that this is so helpful, right? So follow this guide guys and go in here and I see the payment form in here. So in our container, we're creating another case in here called payment form and we're dispatching an add element event and we're passing these elements, okay? To element details, which is content is nothing, an array, you can actually just pass in an object too. And the ID is v4, name is contact form, and type is payment form. And then what's the next step? Build the component. So let's go ahead and build that. So I'm going to go in here into my components, and I'm going to say checkout.tsx, okay? And we're going to return a component in here, and I'm going to say checkout. Uh, checkout, yeah, this looks good too, okay? So for the props, we're going to get the element. So let's go ahead and get the element like this. And I'm also going to import this element. And this is a client component. So scroll up and say, use client like this, okay? And in here first, we need access to use editor. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna import this use editor. And then we also need router from next router, from next navigation, sorry. So I'm gonna uh, import that too. And then we need the client secret. So if you remember the checkout form we created, uh, you know, 
for our page, right? It's very similar. However, uh, we're going to do this, okay? So we're going to say use state here and we're going to get the client uh, secret, but we also have live prices. So this is the difference here, okay? We have live prices and then we also need a state to keep track of the sub account connected ID, okay? Right in here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to basically say when the uh, sub account, so let's, um, let me quickly, look here, let me remove this real quick. Okay, so when the sub account ID from our use editor comes in, so that's the dependency in here. So when that updates, we're going to check if that exists, if not return, and then we're going to fetch some data. What are we going to fetch? Well, we're going to get all the sub account details because we want to get the sub account connected account ID. That's what we need. So go ahead and uh, import this from queries. We've already created it. So we're going to say const sub account details equal await get sub account details. Okay, pass in that ID. And then if sub account details exist, if there's no connected ID, return. But if there is, then we're going to set that and store it in here. So that's the first step. Now, what's the next step? We need the funnel ID. So let's go ahead and say when the funnel ID comes in from our use editor, then we're going to say const fetch data. So we're going to fetch some data in here and we're going to get the funnel. So go ahead and import this. So we're going to get that funnel and then we're going to get the live products. That's why we need the funnel information. So say set live products, json.parse funnel data dot live products. So we're converting this to a string. I mean, we're parsing it from a string into JSON or we're just going to, uh, you know, parse this empty array. OK, and then we're going to go up here. OK, and we're going to create a use memo and import this. And this use memo is actually going to have the options for our payment form. This is needed for Stripe to work. And that use memo is going to have an object that has client secret stored inside it. And the dependency is every time client secret changes, we're going to store that in there. OK, now you may ask, what is this client secret or how are we getting this client secret? Nice. We're going to go ahead and create another use effect. So let's go ahead and also import toast. OK, nice. So this use effect, when the component renders, it's going to fire when we have live prices, sub account ID and the connected accounts ID. So all of these things have to be available. So what it's going to do is it's basically going to make sure all of them exist. And if they do exist, it's going to make um, a call here. So we're going to fire this function called get client secret. Client secret then is going to basically first create a body object here by converting all of this into JSON. OK, and then it's going to send this to an API endpoint. That API endpoint is called API slash Stripe slash create checkout session. And then um, we're going to pass that as the fetch endpoint and we're going to pass in method with the headers set to content type an application slash JSON and the body is going to be in here. OK, and then we have to have const response JSON and we're going to extract the response. And if there's no response, we're going to throw an error. But if response.error exists, also throw another error. And if response.json the client secret exists, we're going to go ahead and set our client secret and store it in there. That's all we're doing. And then if an error, you know, any something else happened, we're just going to show uh, this right here. OK, and we are also, you know, bring this all the way up top and we're just saying, oops, something happened wrong. OK, we're just showing the error message from Stripe as well. So let me see um, if we have this endpoint all set up. So go into API Stripe create checkout session. OK, it looks like we haven't built this out yet. And that makes a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and build this out. So you want to create a file called route.typescript and inside this file you're going to do the following export an async function called you know post and this is going to have request which is of type request okay and in here i'm going to first extract some values that come in from request.json so i'm going to say i want this sub account id if you guys remember um we had that from the checkout form right right here you see we passed it in here so we're just extracting that from here so extract the values and these are the types. The prices are going to be product ID, you know, uh, this one right here and then the sub account ID. So go ahead and extract that. And then we're going to get the origin header. So we're going to say origin equal request dot headers dot get origin. And then if no sub account connect ID exists, OK, or we don't have the prices, the prices at length don't exist. We're going to say Stripe ID or price ID is missing and we're going to just throw 
this status 400. Okay, and after that, we're going to say if process.env.platform subscription. So none of these percentages exist. Okay, then we're also going to throw an error. And I know we already populated this, but just to confirm, okay, we already populated it. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Nice. And after this, guys, we're going to create a variable here called agency ID connect account ID. Okay, and we're going to get the DB sub account find unique. So we're just going to get that sub account. Okay. Uh, find unique where the account is of type sub account ID and we're going to get that specific agency for that sub account and then we're going to say const subscription prices exist now let me explain please stop for a second and just pay attention so stripe I did a lot I took so much time to research this guys it's it's actually very very complex to uh, read stripe documentation but basically subscription prices and one-time prices can it can exist together but the way they're set up, they need to be, you know, they need to be set up a slight bit differently. That means inside the uh, checkout session, you have to provide information on whether they are payment intent data or they are subscription related data. And if they are subscription related data, you can only charge application fee percentages and you can only charge application fee amounts for payment intent data and for a subscription. So let's say if they had a subscription, okay, the subscription must have, of course, one subscription. So you cannot have, you know, a subscription based payment intent and not have any products in there. So that means we have to identify if they're selling any reoccurring products before we do that. I know it's a very complex concept and I understand if you cannot wrap your head around it, the Discord is open, okay? I'll help you in there, but it is it is a little complex, trust me. It took me some time to find out and I had to read thousands of lines of code, literally. So we need to first identify, in simple terms, we need to know if there are any subscription prices before we move forward. So now we're going to say if there's no agency connect account, so we cannot find the agency's connected account ID, then go ahead and return. And I'll go ahead and create a try catch. And inside the try block, we're basically going to create um, a session. Okay. So inside the try block, go ahead and say the following. So don't be afraid. I'm going to explain what this stuff is. Okay. So go ahead and import Stripe first from LibStripe. So this is what it is. Okay. So we're creating a session in here. This is what I was talking about. It's a session and this is checkout sessions.create. So we're using Stripe embed. So I already showed you guys how to use Stripe custom forms. Now I'm going to show you the Stripe embedded page. We're not using external pages. I, I see a lot of people on YouTube use external pages. So that's why I wanted to show you how to use an embedded page. Okay. So in here, we're going to create a checkout session and first we're going to pass in the line items. Now, what is this? You may ask, this is all the prices that are one time payment products. Okay. So that's why we're passing it in here. Price product ID. You can see it right here. So this, prices basically comes from here and it looks like this. So we're just passing that value in here. And this is actually not the product ID. It's called price ID, but we are storing it in our database as product ID. Okay. So it's basically the price. So each price goes in here. So these are one-time products. And then we're dynamically using two different type subscription data and payment intent data. So if there are subscription prices, then we're going to use a subscription data intent. If not, we're going to use the payment intent. So that one time payment type. So based on subscription prices exist, we're going to say subscription data, pass in the metadata and say connected account subscriptions true. Now, if you recollect when we were creating subscriptions for the Plura app, we had some metadata that we were looking at, right? This is where that comes from. Okay. And the application fee percentage, you know where to get this from. It's from our process.env. And we're doing this little ES6 trick here to convert it to a number. And then in here, we're checking if there's no subscription products. If there's no subscription products, then we have to use a payment intent. Okay. And the payment intent, we're going to charge an application fee of this times a hundred. Okay. And then the mode is subscription prices exist. So this is why we need this, right? You cannot use one of them. Apparently it works really different. I had to actually speak to the Stripe team to get more info on this stuff. So subscription prices exist, then we're going to use subscription or we're going to use payment. And then the UI mode here is going to be embedded. So you can change this. You can change it to whatever you like, right? And you can see that we're going to get some intelligence hosted and embedded. So we're going to use embedded hosted means it'll take you to another page and redirect on completion is never because we are embedded form. 
and then here we're going to say Stripe account is the Stripe connected account because we are making the payment on behalf of these people, right? On behalf of the sub account. That's why we want that. And finally, when we're done, we're going to go ahead and say next response.json and we're going to return the client secret back to the client. And this is very, very important. Do not forget this and do not make any spelling mistakes. I think we might have to update this somewhere else too, but please copy this from GitHub. Copy this and paste it. It's basic access control that allows um, this endpoint to be called from any page, okay? Because it's public page, right? It's a public page, so we should be able to, you know, call this from anywhere. So that's why you have to provide it. So in here now, I'm also going to print out an error like this. Oops, what am I doing? Okay, <laughs> print out an error, and we're going to return the following. So I'm going to say next response.json error. Okay, that's causing, a, yeah, that's fine. Error.message, okay? And then after this, I'm also going to have one more thing in here. Now, this is something that Next.js 13 or Next.js 14 is supposed to create by default, but this took me like one week to find out because I did not know what was going on. But apparently, my project was not creating the options by default. And options are actually created, I think, for every API endpoint. So the options are basically, you know, all the headers and things like that. So you have to create this uh, manually. And then I think after that, if you remove it, it works. But just do this here, okay? Say function options, say request is of type request, allow origin, request.header.getOrigin, and then you're going to say response, new response, null, and this object is the options. So status is 200, and the headers is going to be access control, origin, allow origin, or uh, star, which means anything, and this is the access control, allow methods, get, post, delete, and options, and put, and then for the headers, we're just going to pass in some stuff in here, okay? Don't worry about it, and then that's about it. Cool, so now we have created the session, so let's go back to our payment form. Okay, so now we have this API endpoint wired up. We can actually get a client secret from that endpoint. And that way we can actually create the form and actually show the Stripe form on the page. So the next thing you want to do now is after this, go ahead and create a handle drag start. And this is not needed, but if you use the challenge, if you're going to do the challenge, then of course you're going to need this, okay? So I'm just going to put that in here. And then we also have a handle on click body. So this is basically to set this element as the selected element. So we're going to say e dot stop propagation, dispatch, change, clicked element, and pass in the payload. And then I'm also going to get the styles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the styles up here. Okay, props dot elements dot styles. And then I'm also going to have a go to next page function. And you guys know this, we did this for the contact form, same thing. Okay, and we're just going to send them to the next form. So you can copy that same function from there too. And this thing is not not wired up uh, with the submission of this form specifically, but uh, let me see. Yeah, so it's not actually wired up and you can wire it up if you want to. So I'm just going to put it in here. Okay. So after that, we're going to have a handle delete as well. And the handle delete is here. So don't worry about this guys. You can technically just remove it. Okay. I'm just going to put it in here in case I want to wire it up with that. Okay. So after this handle delete, I'm now going to render the component. So my div is going to have the following styles, very similar to the other elements too. So the styles, the draggable and CLSX here. So on drag start, if you're doing the challenge, so these two for the challenge on click, and the class name is CLSX. We're going to pass in the same thing we have everywhere. Okay. And then the badge, which is the same thing we have everywhere. Honestly, I might as well just put this into a different component. I don't know why I did this, but sorry about that, but <laughs> you guys get it. Okay. So I'm going to pass in the badge in here, and then I'm going to go ahead and pass in the delete trash icon. So at the bottom, just say delete trash icon. I'm going to import that. Okay. And I'm just going to hit enter. And in here, we're going to have the payment form. Okay, so that payment form is going to look like this. So basically, um, also guys, you can also copy and paste as I'm doing. I'm sorry, I know I'm running really fast, but we have a lot of things, guys. I'm going to try my best to do this as quick as possible, okay? So that's why. I'm really sorry about that, but pause, go copy paste. You guys already have it in here, right? So now let's look at this. So first, we're going to say div border none transition all, and then another div in here that says flex, flex column, and gap four. 
and this one is options.client secret. So if this exists and the connected account for the sub account exists, then we're going to return the embedded checkout provider form. Sorry, this is actually from Stripe and we're going to import this in just a second. This is the form. Okay. This is the provider. So here we're going to go ahead and import this, which comes from react Stripe JS. And this get Stripe is coming from our Stripe client that we created. And we're also passing in that sub account ID in there. And this is also another component from React Stripe JS. And our loading form here is from global loading. So basically, if everything exists, the client ID exists, client secret, then we'll show the form. If not, just show loading. That's all we're doing there. Okay. And now, yeah, that's uh, pretty much about it. Okay. And let me see what else we got. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to give this a shot. Um, fingers crossed. I hope it works. So I'm going to drag the stripe and paste it right here. All right, I don't think anything, what's going on here? Let me refresh this page real quick. Okay, so something's going on. Uh, let me figure it out, guys, just give me a second. Okay, so the reason is because in our recursive component, we actually don't have a case to support our checkout form. So I'm gonna go ahead and import like that, okay? And now we should be able to drag. So let's hopefully, you know, let's hope this works. Okay, the page loads, keeps loading. So if it keeps loading, that usually means something is wrong. Just give me a second, guys. I'm going to go ahead and debug. All right, so I did a bunch of research and, you know, messing around. And basically inside the create checkout session, here's what's happening. When you're returning here, you're not supposed to return like this. You're supposed to return some sort of next response with some data, okay, or some status. That way you can throw an error, okay? But the problem here is we're not doing that. We're just returning. That's the first thing, okay? So make sure you just return something there. Um, so I'm just going to return maybe something in here like this and return something in here too. And for this one, I'm just going to say fees do not exist. Okay. And for this one, you're going to say the agency account is not connected. Now you won't see this message, I feel, because we are returning a special type of error, right? Yeah, we're returning this one. So let me do this here. I'm actually going to return JSON instead of this. So fees do not exist. I'm going to take this and put that in here like this. Okay, now let's go ahead and remove that. And I'm going to do the same for this one too. Agency account is not connected like this. Nice. And I'm going to remove this. Okay, cool. So basically what's happening is in here, our agency account is not connected. So because it's not connected throwing some sort of error okay so what this means is that we're gonna come into this if block and previously we were just returning nothing and when you return nothing from an api endpoint especially because we're trying to get json data because there's no json data it's going to throw an error and that's why we were seeing that unexpected end of json error okay so the solution first to fix that is to return some json data so you can return some json data here because we need that json data and that's how our form is actually wired up. Now, the next thing I want to point out is this section is actually not really needed, right? It was part of the challenge. So you can technically remove this, but what the section does is it checks to see if the agency account is connected. And then if it's connected, then we can transfer fees into their account too. So for every transaction, we're going to send them a piece of the cake as well. Okay. But we don't care about that. We just want to take money from each of the transactions made as well for Plura. Okay. We don't care about the agency. We're not going to send them any money. But if you want to take it up as a challenge, remember I told you in the start of the video, that is a great challenge to do here. Okay. So basically you want to send or transfer money to a connected account. And it's actually insanely easy. I just don't have time to do it, guys. I really, really don't have time to do this because I have to do the dashboard as well and deployment. Okay. I don't even know if I can finish this video. So that's why I can't do this. Okay. But you can take it up as a challenge and I'll put the Stripe docs. I have all the docs ready. Okay. I'll put some links in the description. If there's no links in the description, it will be in the discord or I will be in the discord or everyone else will be in there to help you. Okay. So that's the first thing here. Now, if you remove this part, so let's go ahead and remove this. So let's let's just see what happens. Okay, let's go into this funnel, click on this, and let's render this. So now you'll see this agency account is not connected. That's the problem here. Okay, so but even if you try to hide this for now, I'm going to hide it. Okay, because it's part of the challenge. If you hide this, let's see what a uh, subscription. Sorry, guys, you want to hide only this part and hide this part because we don't need this. So if you go in here and now if you drag it, you're going to see a different type of error. It's saying in order to use checkouts, you must set an account business name at this dashboard. So you want to basically be logged in as the sub account 
okay the sub account user the basically the account you use to connect all of this stuff right so make sure you log into that stripe account i'm gonna do that just give me one second back in here and let's close this delete this component let's see what it says now oh my god awesome it works <laughs> I'm so happy. All right, guys, great job so far. Now this works. So let's see what it looks like here. Okay, it looks really, really horrible. That's because of some styling problem. I think you can go in here and change the width to 100% or 100 okay i don't think this one is set up that way or maybe it is i'm not sure let me see what do we have here okay but I'm, I'm happy that we fixed this problem this was the big problem apart from that everything else looks good okay okay so i just went into the checkout page and i just put with full here and with full here as well and that fixed the component okay now i see this other thing here for the entire body tag and it looks a little weird so what i'm going to do is i'm gonna go into all right that was actually very simple so i just went into the container component and i noticed that this is the body tag so if it is the body tag we want to make it scroll right just like this so what i did is i simply said overflow scroll and if the type is equal to body then this is true so if this is true then it's going to use this so that's why now it looks much better so if you shrink it now you see it's also responsive all right awesome now here's a challenge for you i have showed you how to build a recursive component all you have to do is build the layers tab in here and the layers tab is basically a dom representation in a tree structure you should also be able to click on this and focus on the element being clicked now just to show you what these now just to show you what the layers tab is supposed to look like i'm gonna build out a page real quick by the way i'm coming from the future okay so i already built a website so i'm gonna show you what the layers tab looks like with a fully built website as you can see here we have a bunch of elements on the page if i click on the layers tab you can see all the recursive components inside it so a recursive component is a container right so two columns is a container and all containers in here are also recursive and those containers will show more recursive components that decide whether to return a static component or another recursive component the answer to this will not be there on github the answer is only available to our private community so why are you waiting go ahead click the link in the description and i will see you in there so now i quickly also want to test to make sure that this page is accessible so if i go in here and click on this web prodigies.localhost i see domain now okay so basically we have to build that functionality so before we move on to building the dashboard pages i'm just going to quickly finish this section so go into this shrink everything actually go into source app go into domain and click on page.tsx and in here i'm going to change this to an async component and we're going to get access to params okay and this is going to be an object with params which is an object again and it's going to have domain so domain like this domain set to string okay and let me confirm domain all right perfect and once you get that in here we're going to first get the domain data so we're going to say const domain data equal to await get domain content and we have to create this query okay so go into your queries file inside libs queries and i'm just gonna paste it right here which is basically gonna say it's gonna need a subdomain name and we're gonna say funnel dot find unique where subdomain okay and we're just gonna include the funnel pages and we're gonna return that data so let's go ahead and import that real quick okay awesome no errors great and then we're gonna say if there's no domain data turn not found Okay, so this does that logic of determining whether to show a page or not. Okay, so now if I go here and click on this, okay, I see the page, but if I access a page that does not exist, okay, there you go, it throws a not found error. So now after this, guys, we want to say const page data equal domain data dot funnel pages dot find, okay, where the page is where we want to basically find where the page does not have a path name okay so find that page and then if there's no page data go ahead and return not found as well just like this and put a space here and in this one here right before this actually we want to update the funnel page so why are we updating this we want to update the visits we want to increment it by one so i'm just going to say where id page data day data visits set it to increment with one okay we're just updating it to get some data basically so let me just copy paste this so i'm going to render the editor provider 
like this and import this component as well. And it's going to need the sub account ID, which comes from domain data. So this looks good. And this needs children as well. So this is now going to have the funnel editor nav bar. Okay. And we're going to pass in the funnel details. Okay. So I actually created a nav bar here so that we can actually wire up that page with light and dark mode, but I'm just going to remove that for now because we're using hard CSS style. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. So I'm going to say funnel editor like this, and we're going to import the funnel editor and we're going to set the funnel page ID equal to page details. So page data dot ID. Okay. And then we also need live mode. And now this is going to be set to true. Awesome. So now this is basically, I mean, it's going to render the component. All right, there we go. So now we're here. Everything works. Awesome. Take a look at that. But now you see the drag problem here, right? I hope you realize what's happening. I can drag this component everywhere. So we have to turn this off. But the reason why I did that is because I wanted to just show you guys that you can do that to duplicate components. But all right, now the website is live and ready to go. And I can scroll on this page, see everything. It's so, so it's literally a full website that is hosted. Okay. So yeah, spend some time, make it look all pretty and then take a screen and show me because I'm very curious to see what you got. Now, next thing you want to do is go into path and click on this path name. And in here, we're going to render the pages for that path name. Okay. So let's go ahead and get access to the props here. So I'm going to say params. Okay. And this is going to be an object with params, which is going to give us domain, which is a string. And finally, we're going to get path, which is also a string. Okay. And in here, we're going to get the domain data. So we're going to say const domain data equal await domain content. So going to go ahead and import that and change this to an async component. Uh, and here we're saying params.domain.slice zero to negative one. So we're taking the domain data. We're basically, you know, kind of splitting it af from that period. Okay. And then we want to get the page data now. So we're going to get page data equal domain data dot funnel pages find where the page name equal to this params.path, which is the page name, right? And they want to say if there's no page data or there's no domain data, go ahead and return not found like this and invoke that. And then we're going to return the editor provider again. So remove this, return the editor provider, import this component. Everything else looks good. We just have to return the funnel editor. So go in here and say funnel editor like this. And we're going to pass in our funnel ID and live mode set to true. Okay. So now we can also access each path. So we set that up as well. Nice. Cool. Great job guys. Super proud of you. Hey guys, just a quick announcement for our free freelance course. So if you want access to that, just listen up. One of the most important skills as a web developer, apart from the web development stuff is knowing how to freelance and how to make money on your own. And there's a lot more benefits that you can gain as a freelancer than doing a nine to five job. Because the problem with only having a job is that you're exchanging your time for small dollars. Now, why do I say small dollars? Well, it's pretty obvious. You only have so much time. Whereas when you freelance, you're basically exchanging your expertise and the value you have to offer for a fixed price. And one of the best rewards that you get out of freelancing, apart from the monetary part, is that you can work from anywhere. Like it really is possible. You could sit halfway across the world and deliver the same, if not better results for your clients. And just through freelancing alone, you learn so many things like how to get leads, how to run an entire sales call, how to show somebody your expertise and have them build trust in you to invest in your services. And the best part is you get to work with other people, build a team, and you're building a brand for yourself. So here's what I want to do for you. We have opened up limited spots in our private community. And I want to give you access to this community for free because I want you to start learning. And the fastest way to do it is be a part of a supporting community that's already making money doing freelancing. Be around people who are where you want to be. So I want you to get access to this knowledge because it's not available anywhere else. So I am creating a completely free freelance course to get you guys started. And that course will be available for anybody who is a part of that private community. And here's the best part. If you join before we actually lock this community, every course we release in that community will be completely free for you. Now, here's the criteria. If you join the community, you have to have a display picture because people want to know you. And I'm sure you want to know other people. This is not a discord channel. So if you want to just hang around and this is not the place for that, this is the place only for success minded individuals. This is only if you want to meet successful people and see some real progress in your career, please be understanding because we are only opening up limited spots in that community. So if you try to log in and your request gets denied, it's probably 
because we're either at cap or we're no longer offering this opportunity. So if you want to start freelancing and also get personally mentored by me and be a part of a community that is absolutely crushing it in the field of freelancing, scroll down to the description and you are going to find the link there. Click on that and join and I will see you there. So now we're going to go ahead and build out all our dashboards. So open up your directory structure, go into agency, agency ID, and click on page.tsx. Okay, so I'm going to shrink this so you guys can see better. So the first thing, guys, I'm just going to create some variables up here. Okay, so right below this, go ahead and say let currency equal US dollars, let sessions, total closed sessions, total pending sessions, let net potential income and closing rate. So to be honest with you, like, see, if you're showing this as a project for someone else, it really doesn't matter as long as they see data, okay? I'm gonna get some good data, but you can update this to show different type of data and whatever you prefer, okay? But I'm just gonna use these uh, metrics right now. So after we do this, uh, we're getting the agency ID from params. We also need one more property in here, which is called search params, okay? And this one is going to give us code, which is gonna be a string, okay? Nice. So go down here now and we're going to first set the current year. So let a const current year equal to new date dot get full year. OK, and then the start date, I'm just going to say this here or actually you can change this. Just give me one second, guys. And then we're going to say start date equal to new date with the current year. And then we're just going to put this number, just put this in here. OK, and we're going to get the time from there divided by a thousand. And then finally, we also need the end date. We're going to say end date is the same thing with the current year. Put this number in here. So pause the screen and type this out. OK, and then after that, we're going to say const agency details equal to await db dot. So import db agency dot find a uh, unique. And also, since this is an ace, we're going to use some async stuff in here. Just make this uh, an async component since we're using a wait. And here we're going to say where the ID is params dot params dot the agency ID. OK, and after this, we're going to say if there is no agency details, go ahead and return. All right. Awesome. And then we also need the sub account, guys. So I'm going to say const sub account right here equal to awaits db dot sub account dot find many where the agency ID is equal to uh, this a specific agency ID. And then um, we're going to do a, a bunch of stuff here. So now we're going to create this sort of uh, not like a function, just an if statement that's going to set all these values up here. OK, so just follow through with me. I'm going to type this out uh, from scratch so it, I can also explain it to you. All right. So if the agency details dot connected account ID exists, then we're going to say const response equal await stripe. We're going to import the stripe here from libstripe dot accounts dot retrieve okay for this specific stripe account so we're going to say agency details dot connected account id okay and so now we have that and then after that here we're going to say const actually we're going to set the currency sorry so currency is equal to response dot default currency if this exists dot to uppercase and just invoke that like that or we're going to just set our default which is a us dollars and then we're going to say const checkout sessions OK, uh, let me copy this so I don't make any spelling errors. OK, and this is going to be equal to await stripe dot checkout dot sessions dot list. And we're going to list which is created between these specific dates. OK, so just put this in here, guys. So GTE and we're going to say start date. OK, and then we want to say LTE and this is going to be end date. And then finally, we want to pass in the limit. Uh, let me think. So we have this object here. Yes. Yeah, so say limit and this is going to be limited to 100 entries. OK. And finally, the second value in here is going to be an object with Stripe account set to agency details dot connected account ID. And now after this, go ahead and say sessions equal to checkout sessions dot data. And then the total closed sessions is equal to checkout sessions dot data dot filter. OK. So what is this variable? This is basically all the uh, sessions that were actually paid, right? So they paid something for that. We're going to say filter. So we filter them out. Oops, what did I do in here? Sorry, like that. And we're going to filter up uh, and first we're going to get the session in here. And in here we're going to return where the session dot status equal to complete. OK, so only the sessions that are completed. And then for each of the each of those, we want to do dot map and we want to return some new data. OK, so let's go ahead and get the session again. And in here we're going to return an object, so a custom object. 
with everything inside the session, but we're going to set created to a new date. Okay. Just like this. So create is going to be new date with session dot created to local string and the amount total. So whatever they paid for is going to be the following, which is session dot amount total. If that exists then return that divided by a hundred or just return zero. Nice. And then the total pending states is pretty much the same. Just this will change to open. So I'm going to say total pending sessions equal to the checkout sessions dot data dot filter dot map. Uh, for this. Okay. And I also made a quick search in here guys to check for this. <laughs> That's why I have this in here. Basically I was checking if this is actually for 2023 or 2024, but since we're using current year, that's why we have this. So I'm going to go back to our app. Just give that a set a uh, second. Maybe I have to refresh the browser, but if not, uh, we can just continue from here. Okay. So after this, we have to also get the net, which is the net profit, uh, total sessions. We're just going to say plus here is just a trick dot reduce total sessions. We're going to say total plus session amount or zero, or we're going to just pass in. Uh, and this is the default value for reduce. Okay. Which is zero. That's the total values default and then to fixed to zero. So we're just rounding it. And then what is the potential income? So this is the total pending sessions dot reduce to a specific number. So total plus the session dot amount total. And we're going to uh, return. I mean, we're going to append it to this. Okay. So total. And then finally we want to have the closing rate. So I'm just creating some, you guys see, I'm just creating some data in here to show, right? Because the charts are so simple. You just have to plug in and it works. So the closing rate, um, I'm going to convert this to a number total close sessions dot length divided by checkout sessions dot data dot length times 100 dot two fixed. All right, guys. So just give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and spin up the server now. OK, now go ahead and remove this here because right now we're returning that ID and we're going to say class name and set this to relative and we're going to set height to full. OK, and inside this, we're going to do the following. So we're going to make sure this account has the connected. I mean, does if it does not have the connected account ID, we're just going to show this a screen on the page that kind of blocks it and makes it look blurred. OK, I'll show you what that looks like and I'm going to explain it, of course. So let me just go ahead and import these components, guys. Just give me a second. All right, there you go. So it's just a very simple, you know, card in the center of the screen that says you need to connect your Stripe account to see metrics and it provides a link here. So if you look at what this looks like, it just it is just a div. Let me refresh this uh, this uh, Visual Studio code because TypeScript is not refreshing. And I'm just going to say absolute. So putting it negative top 10 pixel, left negative 10 pixel, right zero, bottom zero, Z of 30 flex item center, justify center, background blur MD and background color is set to background with 50. Okay. By 50. So we have a card, card header, card title, description, and the link. That's it. And the link has agency slash agency ID slash launchpad. Okay. And the class name is padding two with fit, a uh, background of secondary text of white rounded MD flex item center and gap two. And we're putting the clipboard icon and the launchpad. So if I click on this, it's going to take me straight uh, to the launchpad page. Okay. So let me move here. There you go. It's taking me to the launchpad page. So let's go back to dashboard. Okay. So since they don't have a connected account, we're not going to show them anything. That's the whole idea, right? And now we also want all the elements to be set up, but we don't want, I mean, of course, there's not going to be any data in here, right? But I've written the code in such a way that even if data does not exist, the components will show, but of course it's not going to break our app. So first I'm going to put an H1 tag here, and then I'm going to use a separator and import the separator. And then I'm going to create a div. Okay. So I'm going to say div like this. And this div is going to have another div inside of that. And it's going to have flex gap dash four flex column Excel from Excel devices flex row. Okay. And then we're going to have a card inside that component. So here is where we are rendering different type of, you know, elements for our dashboard, like the circle component or what do we call that? Sorry, pie chart and things like that, basically. So here I'm just going to show kind of like the net income, all right, the net income of the company of the agency. So go ahead and create a card component and inside this we want to create the card header and the card header is going to have a card description the card title is at the bottom here and then we're going to have small so you see we're not showing that we're not showing anything because they don't have an account awesome so we're first creating this and after the card header we want to show some card content so the card content i'm just going to import this card content as well is just going to say total revenue generated as reflected in your stripe dashboard so i'm going to hide this for now guys so we can actually see all our components okay let me go ahead and refresh this all right now we can see our 
card components. We'll come back to this and remove it in just a second. And finally, after the card content, I'm going to use a dollar sign icon and import that from Lucid React. And it's just going to show this kind of dollar symbol right here. Okay, nice. And then let's move on to the next card now. So the next card, I'm going to copy and paste. Very simple. Okay, don't worry, I'm going to explain it too. So after this card, I'm going to say card flex one relative, and it's going to have a card header, which has a description and a title. So this is the potential income. And the potential income is simply the potential income if it exists, show the currency. So this is a, a string literal, the currency, so US dollars. And then we're going to say potential income dot two fixed, or we're just going to sh uh, show a zero dollars. Here we're passing a small element saying for the year, current year, so 2024. And then we're going to say this is how uh, this is how much you can close, okay, into the card content. And then finally, the co uh, this one can be another dollar sign too. I actually don't know why I put this icon here. So let me copy this and paste the dollar sign icon in here. All right. So it's just showing the potential income. So how much you can make. And you see when we change the size of the screen, those elements wrap accordingly. Okay. So it's perfect for mobile and for desktop devices. Now, after this card, guys, hit enter here and we're going to create another card. And this one is basically how many uh, sub accounts we have. Okay. So it's card description like this saying active clients. All right. And right now we only have one sub account, right? So that's why it's showing one uh, right here. So you see one sub account. And then after this, we have another card. So this card is a slight bit longer, but it's basically the number of sub accounts you own and manage It's uh, with respect to the goal. Okay. So let me go in here and I'm just going to show some data here and I'm going to change this, just import this and I'm going to explain. So first we're going to have the card. Okay. Which is going to have a card header, which has the title and description. The title is agency goal. And then we're going to have a paragraph that says reflects the number of sub accounts you own, uh, you want to, you want to own and manage. And then in here, we're going to have a footer, which has a div flex flex column with full and another div inside that, which says flex justify between item center. And then a span here that says current. So what you have right now, which is sub account dot length. And then we're going to have the goal, which is agency details dot goal. Okay. And then we're going to import the progress component from chat UI. We're going to set its value to the sub accounts dot length divided by agency goal times 100. And then here, I'm just going to import the goal icon from lucid react icons. And this is what it looks like. So, so it just literally shows some sort of uh, progress bar that how far you're going to get and all that kind of stuff. All right. It's really valuable information for a company. Correct. Exactly. After this, I'm going to create another div. And this one is kind of like a section that for another section. So this is the top section. Then we're going to create one section right below that. Okay. So go ahead and after this div, all right, not inside the card after the div, create another div. And we're going to set the class name to flex gap dash four from Excel. We're going to say gap dash row and set this to important. And then after this, we're going to say flex dash column. And inside this create a card component. So card like this, set the class name to P dash four flex dash one. And inside the card, create a card header. And the card header is going to have the card title. And the title is going to say transaction history. Okay. And after the title, we also actually, yeah, just go outside the header and we're going to use the area chart. Okay. So say area chart, which comes from tremor react guys. If you remember, we installed that component, right? So go ahead and import that. And we're going to set the class name to text dash SM and stroke dash primary. This is very important. Okay. If you don't put this, the card is going to look absolutely horrifying. So, <laughs> so please put that in. Okay. And then after this, I'm going to say data equal to, and it's going to be equal to the following. It's an array with everything. Okay. With everything inside total closed sessions or an empty array. And the second one is going to be everything inside total pending sessions or an empty array, just like this. So we're passing some data and this is okay. This needs a couple other props. So we're going to say index equal to created and then categories equal to an array and the categories we want. So we're only going to use amount total. And then we also want the colors and this is going to be an array again with primary inside it. And then Y axis is going to be set to 30 and then show animations is going to be set to true. Okay. And let's just give that a second. Of course, we have no data for this account. And the reason is because first of all, we don't have any pages running any data for this account, right? So you're not going to see anything in here. That's the reason. Then I'm going to go uh, down here after this card, create another card. And this card is going to have the following class name from Excel. It's going to say width of 400 pixel. And then after this with a full on mobile devices and then create a card header. 
letter and a card title and the card title is going to say conversions okay conversions and then we're going to create the card content right below and inside this go ahead and create the circle progress guys so the circle progress actually comes from it's a it's a custom component okay and we're going to create that in just a second so first actually here let's just remove this here and let's go down to our components go into global and we're going to say circle dash progress dot tsx and return a component and say circle progress okay nice and then we're going to need some props in here so say value is going to be a number and description description is going to be react dot react node and then in here i'm just going to go ahead and destructure these and then finally uh, i'm also going to set the value by e uh, by default equal to zero okay make sure you do that and now very simple i'm just going to return something here so first set the class name to flex gap dash four items dash center and then i'm going to go ahead and remove this and return the progress circle okay which is going to be an open component okay not a closed tag and then show animation is going to be set to true and then value we're going to pass in the value and then the radius not radio group radius is going to be 70 and the stroke width is going to be 20 and inside this go ahead and pass in the value along with the percentage right after that okay and then here create another div and we're going to have a bold tag and this bold tag is going to say closing rate and after this create a p tag and have a class name called text muted foreground and inside the p tag we're going to say description just like this that's about it for this component i'm just going to go ahead okay looks like we have to import that or is this because of the stupid error <sighs> all right guys give me a second let me refresh all right now we're going to go back into our page.tsx where is that component right in here and we're going to import that circle progress okay so inside the content go ahead and say circle progress import this component and for now we can i think we can make it a, a closed component this is fine and go ahead and pass in the value which is equal to closing rate and the next one is the description so this one is a little big so just follow through with me okay create a react fragment and inside this we're going to say sessions if these exist then we're going to return a div so we're going to say div just like this and inside this div pass in the following class name and this is flex flex dash call okay i made an error here so this is flex dash call and then inside this we're going to say abandoned like that and after abandoned right below this div um let me think so maybe inside this yeah inside this create another div and we're going to set its class name to flex gap dash two okay and then we're going to use the shopping cart icon from lucid react and we're going to set uh the class name to be text dash rows dash probably 700 okay this looks good and then inside this uh div go ahead and say sessions dot length nice and then after this guys so go down here we're gonna say total closed i was gonna write toothpaste <laughs> Total closed sessions. If this exists, go ahead and return a div. And this div is going to have a class name of flex flex dash call. And inside this, we're going to say one carts. And we're going to pass in the same shopping cart icon. And this actually, uh, yeah, let's create a div and then pass the shopping cart icon inside that and say class name of flex and gap dash two. And this shopping cart icon is going to have the class name text dash emerald dash 700. And then we're also going to pass in the, we're going to pass in the variable here. We're going to say total closed sessions dot length okay like this now let's go back in so i see this i think it's coming from circle progress let's go in here and change this to use client i think that should fix the issue because this is using some sort of create context and that's causing a problem okay all right nice i think this is the context provider this might be the context provider that's why all right now you see we have this closing rate thing in here and if you shrink it i mean expand it it's going to look like this two different rows okay so let's go down to after this and i think we're done yeah good job guys we're done with the agency dashboard so now let's move to the sub accounts dashboard so shrink everything real quick go into source app main sub account sub account id and then go into page.tsx all right so this is also very very similar to what we did previously so first i'm going to get params which is an object with sub account id which is a string and the search params which is going to give us the code okay which is also going to be a string and now here i'm just simply going to go ahead and destructure these two and first i'm going to create the same variables we created in the agency component okay also let's go to sub account i'm going to go to acme corp 
let that load up all right nice we see absolutely nothing here this looks too bad and the reason is because i think the layout let's see if it's returning anything why are we not seeing anything in here okay so we have sub account id and we don't see anything in here and let's make sure this is the dashboard so i don't see anything in here guys i'm trying to think what might be causing this problem so just give me a second okay so i think it's because we're not using the blur page in this layout. So I'm just going to say something in here. Okay, I think that's the solution. All right, there we go. Okay, we just needed the blur page. So after this, I'm going to get all the sub account details. So say sub account details equal await. And if we have to use await, you guys know this has to be an async component. And let's import db and say db.subaccount.findUnique where the ID is of this type. Okay, nice. And then we're going to say, we're going to get the current year. So say current year here. Okay. And after we get the current year, same thing. We're going to get the start date and end date. You guys know this, right? You can copy paste if you'd like. So after we get the start date and end date, now we need to make sure there is a sub, there are sub account details. And if there's not, we're just going to return. Let me remove this. I don't like that too. All right, nice. And now we're going to say, please follow through with me. Okay. If sub account details dot connected account so if this is if this exists then we're going to say const response equal await equal await stripe and we're going to import the stripe from libs dot stripe dot accounts dot retrieve okay the following stripe account is going to be sub account details like this dot connected account id so guys it's pretty much the same you can copy paste it if you'd like to but just make sure to change wherever we say agency to sub account but don't worry i'm going to type it out for you and then we're going to also get the currency so okay current okay currency is equal to response.defaultcurrency.to uppercase and then we need the checkout sessions so checkout sessions is the same thing here checkout sessions equal oh wait sorry i said i wanted to type this out but i just copy pasted it sorry guys but i'll explain it so checkout sessions getting the stripe.checkout.sessions.list for this specific start and end date so pass in an object and say created gte start date and lte end date and the limit is only 100 for this specific sub account this is important okay so put a comma and put that there if you don't put that there you're not going to get relevant data okay you're going to get up you're going to end up getting plural stuff okay so sessions now is equal to checkout sessions sessions like this checkout sessions dot data dot map and we're gonna get something in here so i'm simply gonna say um what is this what's going on okay sorry about that so in here we're going to get access to the session and we're going to return a new object and this object is going to have everything inside the session but we're going to set created to something else create is going to created is going to be new date dot session dot created dot to local string okay to local date string and the amount total is going to be set to session amount total if that exists this one divided by 100 or zero and then let's go ahead and get the total closed sessions so total closed sessions equal to checkout sessions checkout sessions or here let me just copy paste this i don't want to waste your time because you already know it's the same thing right checkout sessions dot data filter it by which is only completed and we're going to map over that and return a new object here with everything in session created is going to be new date session not created to local date string and the amount total is going to be this one if this exists then return that or uh, return that divided by 100 or we're going to return zero and then let's get the pending sessions now so total pending sessions is equal to checkout sessions dot data dot filter dot map and uh, we're filtering for where the sessions are open or if the sessions are expired so we're showing more data okay i'm just i'm just getting more data to show okay and then dot map we're just doing everything in this session and we're setting these two variables to you guys know okay the created date and the amount total and then let's get the net total so the net total is total closed sessions dot reduce and we're reducing this to total plus session amount dot total or we're just putting zero here and uh, this is the default value dot two fixed potential income is pretty much the same thing with the total potential income dot reduce it's to total plus session dot amount total and then we're going to have the closing rate which is again the same thing that we did before and it is total closed sessions dot length divided by checkout sessions dot data dot length times 100 dot two fixed okay now we also need some additional information for sub accounts so we're going to say const funnels equal await db dot funnel dot find many so find everything where sub account id has params dot sub account id and we're going to get the funnel pages then we're going to create a variable here called funnel metrics so funnel performance metrics equal to funnels dot map 
and we're going to map over these okay and we're going to get access to the funnel here and then we're going to say uh, we're going to actually return a new object here with everything inside funnel okay but we're going to set that we're going to set a custom property and this custom property is called a uh, total funnel visits okay which is the funnel dot funnel pages dot reduce so we're reducing all of its uh, funnel page um, you know funnel pages to one value called total which is the page dot visits that's it okay so this is not done oh this is funnel funnel performance metrics and that's it for this guys so let's go in here and now first I'm gonna say div and the class name is gonna say relative and height dash full and inside this I'm going to I'm going to put the following so I'm going to say sub account details dot connected account ID if that exists then if that does not exist then I'm going to return a div here okay and you guys know right it's just that 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 um, blur component right so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to do this one more time right here so if there's no sub account details dot connected account then we're going to show this thing which has that blur background with the card so import all these components or so just give me a second guys I'm going to go ahead and import this okay okay now after this go ahead and hit enter and we're going to create another div in here and this div is going to have flex flex dash column gap four padding bottom of six and inside this we're going to create another div and this div is going to have flex gap four flex column excel devices flex row and then inside this let's go ahead and use the card component and the card component is going to have card header and card header is going to have card description oops let me do it this way actually card description and we're going to pass in income into this and then finally the card title which is the net exist and currency like that dot net dot debt i'm sorry nets dot two fixed um for two okay and then uh, at two and then we're going to say if not we're going to return zero and then finally we're going to just put some text here for uh for the year 2024 and after this header go ahead and just create the content and we're just going to say a uh, total revenue generated as reflected in your stripe dashboard Okay, and then finally, I'm also going to put the dollar sign just like we did in the other one. Okay, let's give that a second. All right, there you go. I'm going to also, so, okay, so since this actually has the the Stripe connected account, that's why we're not seeing this, uh, you know, this blur component. Okay, just want to give you a heads up. So this is what it would look like in production. All right, and um, after this, uh, we need to create some more stuff. So go to this card component, and after this card component, we're going to create the potential income, okay? So the potential income is this. So we're going to create card here with card header, which says potential income for description, and the title is going to be potential income. If that exists, we're going to return currency and the potential income to fixed at two, or we're going to return zero. And we're going to return a small element here, and this small element is going to have for the year 2024 and then card content which is this is how much you can close and you see we have seven thousand dollars in value here how do we have that well if you remember we opened the stripe checkout page so many times right that's why we have this in here so if we go to production let's see if we can actually do that web prodigies uh, localhost dot uh, 3000 so you see it's spinning up this page okay so it was 5997 so if we come here and refresh this you see that amount was added here so this is 70 seven thousand actually so we spun up that that brow um you know that page so many times right and that's probably because we had it open too so that's why it got added so you see that the value is adding too so that's basically what this potential income means this means people did not pay and they just abandoned the cart okay that's pretty much what it is and now i'm going to say uh now i'm also going to create the pipeline value so just give me one second all right now you want to go into your components right here scroll to the bottom go into this one this components go into global we're going to create pipeline dash value dot tsx and we're just going to go ahead and uh, return something in here so just return this component and for this one we need the sub account account uh, sub account id so sub account id which is a string and go ahead and destructure that from here and in here we're going to do the following so first set this to a client component so use client that's why we're not building this in in the server component right and in here we're going to create a state to hold all of the pipelines so I'm going to say pipelines equal to use state, which, and I'm also going to pass in a Prisma type in here. Okay, just give me one second. Get pipelines. Okay, we need to create this, guys. But basically, we're creating a state to keep track of all the pipelines. And what are these pipelines? These are basically what we what we built, right? If you see here, let me see if I can show you these pipelines. 
right? So these pipelines are basically what we're trying to show in here, this right here. So we're trying to show the total pipeline value and which pipeline has the most, you know, amount of customers and the highest ticket and all that kind of stuff. So quickly go into your queries file. So scroll here, libs queries, and we're going to create that get pipelines um, query, which is get pipeline equal async sub account ID. Okay. It's a function that takes a sub account ID, which is a string. And then we're going to say response equal await db dot pipeline dot find many where it's this sub account and we're going to include its lanes along with the tickets okay and return that and if you go back here let's go ahead and import this okay nice and then I'm also going to go ahead and set the selected pipeline ID. Why? Because I want to have sort of something like this where I can change the pipeline and check what is the pipeline value. OK, so let's go into dashboard again. OK, nice. And I'm going to say selected pipeline ID equal use state like this. And then I'm also going to say pipeline closed value. OK, which is oh, I'm also storing that in here. So now when uh, on default, when this component spins up right when it mounts, we're going to basically say use effect right here fetch data and we're going to invoke that when the sub account ID updates we're going to say get pipelines and we're going to put the sub account ID in here and then we're going to set the pipelines to this response okay and then we're also going to say set selected pipeline ID to that specific one so whichever we get the first right that's basically what we're passing in here and then after this, we also need the total pipeline value, right? So I actually did not create this. I'm going to make this on my own. So total pipeline value equal to use memo, import that. We're going to pass in an empty dependency, which and I think we're going to need these two pipelines like this. And let's first think about this. So it's basically all the pipelines. We're going to go across all the pipelines and we need to go into all the lanes and we need to reduce all the lanes. OK, and we also want to make sure the pipeline value is only for this, which one is selected. Right. So I'm going to say if first pipelines dot length. So pipelines dot length. So something we have some value here. What's happening? OK, that's what's happening. And then in here, we're going to return something. So we're going to say uh, pipelines dot find. OK, dot find. And we're going to find first the pipeline where the pipeline dot ID is equal to the selected pipeline ID. OK, and if this is true, so if we find that, then we're going to say dot lanes. So we're going to get all the lanes dot reduce them. OK, and we're going to actually reduce what is OK. This is going to be the lane and then we're going to. OK, sorry, this is reduce guys. So this will be total or total lane, something like this total lanes. Then we get the lane itself. We also get the current index. So I'm going to say uh, current lane index. OK, let's give it some meaningful words and then the array itself. OK, and in here we're going to say const lane tickets, OK, or lane tickets total like this equal to lane dot tickets dot reduce. Again, we're going to reduce each of these and we're going to get a function here, right? So we're going to get the total tickets tickets and we're going to get the ticket itself. So we're just storing this right and its second parameter is going to be something in here. So, oh, I forgot to pass in the default value. So this default value is going to be zero and this default value is going to be zero too. And I'm going to do something like this. OK, so in here we're going to say um, total tickets plus where we have to get the ticket dot value. OK, like, OK, what is this error? Plus cannot be applied to types number or decimal. OK, so this one is type decimal, I think. So maybe just convert it like this. Let's see. So number ticket dot value. OK, or we can also pass in zero in here and I see something else. OK, because we're not returning anything in here, right? OK, so after you say this, Reduce. I think this looks good. OK, so after this. Uh, OK, so just after this, we're going to say if the current lane index is equal to array dot length. OK, array dot length. So that'll be the last one. So minus one. Then we want to set the pipeline, a closed value to be the lane tickets total plus uh, not plus one. Sorry, the lane tickets total or we'll just say zero in here. OK, and then let's go ahead and return the total lanes like this. So that should fix that issue. All right. I need to refresh this one more time. I really think this is because of our our middleware function, but I don't see this happening in production, guys. So you should be fine. OK, so if you're seeing this uh, this error, don't worry about it. So I'm going to say bun. I uh, let me just give me a second, guys. I'll restart. OK, so it looks like. Oh my God, what is this error? OK, I think I know what's going on. So this is only if, right? We need to also return something by default. So I'm going to return the total lanes. Oh, total lanes plus the lane tickets, lane tickets total. 
Okay, all right, I think that should be good. And what about this? What if this is actually, okay, this one right here, guys, we're returning this. So what if nothing exists? We have to return some value, right? So I'm just gonna return zero if everything fails. If something happens wrong, then we still have some value, okay? Awesome, I think we're set up with this. I think also a dependency array is right. So then go down here and we're gonna say pipeline and rate equal to use memo, import this like this and we, we're gonna pass in a dependency array and this is gonna have the closed value and this one, okay? That's why we need this. So the closed pipeline closed value and our total pipelines. And inside here, we're gonna return the following. So we're gonna say pipeline closed value divided by total pipeline value plus pipeline closed value and after this say star 100, okay? Okay, I see something wrong here. This is potentially undefined. I thought we did make sure. All right, give me a second, guys. Let me let me see, because this there's no way this can be undefined. So just give me one second. Oh, I know why. So here, if this is true, okay, return zero here. Now this will solve that problem. Okay, nice, cool. And then let's come down here, remove all this stuff, and return a card component with a class name relative width dash full. From Excel, width is gonna be 350 pixels. Okay, and inside this, we're gonna say card header. I think I imported a card header from the wrong place. Let's see, huh? Okay, it worked, nice. And inside this, I'm gonna pass in the card description, which is the pipeline value. And then after this, some text here that says, you know, pipeline progress, like this. And let's go ahead and import that component, guys. So let's see where we need to put that pipeline. Okay, so right after this card, go ahead and say pipeline uh, value component import that and pass in, uh, I think we need sub account ID, right? So this should be equal to the params dot sub account ID. And let's go into this component and let's continue editing this component, okay? Okay, so after this small, I'm gonna return a div here and another div inside here, another div inside here. So it's left and right with justify between. That's why this is left and this is right. And we're gonna say closed, pipeline closed, and then total, total pipeline value plus the pipeline closed value. Okay, and now I'm gonna have a progress component and this progress component uh, comes from UI, from Shadcn UI, okay? It's not from Tremor. So we're gonna scroll down here. So after this div, go ahead and say progress, import that, and color is gonna be green. The value is going to be pipeline rate. I see some error here, guys, just give me a second. Okay, so you see here, we return this object, I mean, not object, we return curly brackets. So just remove this, okay? That should fix that. Okay, nice, that should fix that error. And then um, let's scroll down after this and we're going to say card content. Why is it, why do you want my password, bro? <laughs> card content, okay. And class name set to text-sm, text-muted-foreground. And inside this, we're gonna create a P tag and we're gonna set the class name for this to margin bottom of two. And inside this, we're gonna just paste some text. I'm just gonna copy something, okay? It just says the total value of all the tickets in the given pipeline ex uh, ex except the last lane, okay? And your last lane is considered your closing lane in every pipeline, right? That's why we're just considering it like that. And now we're gonna use select component from Shadcn UI. Very simple stuff, we already did this. So I'm gonna import this and uh, just give me a second. Okay, so I'm using a select component and the select component has the value set to the selected pipeline ID. <laughs> And then we have the on value change. So we're gonna update this, okay? So now you can click on this and you can select it, okay? You can select different pipelines. And here we're gonna have the trigger set to select value with the placeholder select, not a fruit, <laughs> a pipeline, okay? That's because of ShadCN, it, that, it gives it by default. And then the selected content here is gonna have the group with pipelines inside it. So if you open this, you see pipelines, right? And then we're gonna say for each pipeline, render a select item with the value set to its ID and the key set to that ID with the name inside here. This is important, okay? Because that's what we're using to show this, uh, this value by default, okay? All right, guys, awesome. So now we have this pipeline value set. So let me extend this, awesome, let's shrink this. Man, I can't wait for you to get a job with this project. <laughs> This is one of the best projects ever, literally. I wish someone made a project like this for me when, you know, YouTube used to have those, you know, tutorials very similar to this. All right, <laughs> anyway, so I'm glad I can do this for you guys. So go back here, I'm gonna go back into page and I'm gonna continue, okay? So after pipeline value, go ahead and create a card component again with the class, class, uh, class name of XL, W fit, 
not fill guys, sorry, fit. And inside here, we're going to do the following. We're just gonna create the card header. And since this is a little long, I'll type it out for you, okay? card header and this card header is going to have the card description and the card description is going to say conversions and after the conversions we're going to have the circle progress now this is another custom component so go in here okay actually i'm going to type in circle progress like this i'm going to copy this go into my components down here and say circle dash progress and i'm just going to say dot tsx circle progress already exists oh it does oh yeah it does you're right sorry guys go ahead and import circle progress and uh, let's just go ahead and pass in the props for it okay so the value uh, okay yes we did create that sorry about that is going to be the closing uh, rate and then the description is going to be a component okay so put a react fragment like this and inside this, we're going to say if sessions exist, okay? So if the sessions exist, we're going to show total carts opened and show this shopping cart icon and with, you know, the sessions.length. So all the sessions, okay? And then we're going to have the total closed sessions, which is if total closed sessions exist, return one cart, which means the carts you won. We're going to send another uh, shopping cart here. And we're going to show the total closed session. So see, 13 times it was opened, but zero was actually one. Okay, none of them actually went through. So you see, this is really useful data. Now go to this div here after this card and hit enter. We're going to create another div with the class name flex gap dash four like this. And then we want to say flex dash call Excel. We're going to say flex dash row. Oops, row like that. Okay. And then inside this guys, we're going to actually create another card. So this card looks like this. So card, card header, card description is going to be funnel performance. And the card content here is going to be something called sub account funnel chart. Okay, and I'm going to create this custom component in just a second. And we're going to say total page visits across all funnels. Um, you know, hover over to get more details and stuff like that. So go in here. I'm going to copy this. Go into your components. And you want to create sub account funnel chart dot TSX. Return a component from here and just paste what you have in there. Okay. And this is going to give us data. And this data is going to be, let's, let's just say any. Now let's destructure that from here. And in here, I'm just going to return a div, a div like this. Actually, I already had a div there. And class name of height dash fit flex transition all items start okay and let's remove this and we're going to return a donut chart donut chart and guys if you want to learn about tremor ui just look up tremor ui like this you already have it saved and they have some decent components i don't think it's the best but it's really good for um you know showing dashboards i think that's the only reason i would use it. they do have a lot of components though don't get me wrong see they have trackers um what else switch bunch of stuff so you can learn from there okay that's how i learned and that's how i used it too so now the class name is going to have height of 40 width of 40 and then we're going to pass in the data in here and then we're going to pass in a couple other props so this like this we're going to say categories total funnel visits index is name colors is blue 400 primary blue 600 blue 700 and blue 800 show animation 2 and the custom tooltip which we're going to get which is all the way at the bottom okay so go down here all the way to the bottom and we're going to do the following so just follow through with me okay i'm going to explain it as i copy paste so we're going to say const Okay, and we're going to create a custom funnel tool, custom tooltip equal to a function here, which gives us the payload and active. And I'm just going to, you know, put assign types for it. And then if it's active or there's no, if there's no active and no payload return, and then we're going to say const category payload equal payload at zero. And then if this does not exist again, we want to return. And then we're creating a div here with margin left of 100 pixel like this. Okay, let's shrink all of this dark of text white, text black with fit dark bg muted uh divided by 60 background blur md bg uh background 660 then rounded large important here then padding 2 and shadow 2 xl and then here we're going to say flex item center flex 1 and space x 2.5 2.5 and then here we're going to create a div with with 5 height 5 rounded full and bg uh, which is category payload dot color and then um here we're just going to say rounded and then after that here 
what is this? Okay, yeah, I know what this is. This is the uh, payload, the, the name and, so, and also the value, okay? So basically, you know, this, um, whatever data we're passing here, that's what we're showing. So we're just showing some data, okay? Nothing else crazy. So with full, and then inside that a div, flex, item center, justify between, space X of eight. Padding here, I'm sorry, a paragraph here with the name and a paragraph here with the value. And then at the end, we're going to say if this dot funnel pages dot map, and we're going to return something for each of the funnel pages, we're going to return a div with the funnel page name and the total visits. Okay, now go back up here. Okay, I see an error here. All right, guys, so this has to be any but an array of any, I think. All right, just give me a second, guys. Ah, okay. I see what we did. So this is incorrect here. We don't need this. So it's data, which is of type any. Okay, I'm just going to remove this and say data, which is going to be any. All right. And then here, this should actually fix it. Okay, that fixed that problem. So let's go back and quickly import that component. Where is that? Um, not there in page.tsx right here. I'm going to go ahead and import this component now. Okay, let's refresh. Okay, so this can be passed directly to client components. So go up into that component and say use client and I'm going to remove this. Okay, nice. So it just shows this. And if you hover over it, it shows the amount of, um, you know, lead generation, the landing page, um, you know, how many people are in there and the landing uh, page copy. How insane is that? So the more pages you have, more funnels you have, it's going to show all the details. So this is the second page basically. All right, guys, awesome stuff. So we have a couple more. So I'm going to go back here. And after this card here, I'm going to um, also create another card. Okay. And this card is going to have padding four, flex one, the header of checkout activity, and it's going to be an area chart. So I'm going to go ahead and import it from uh, Tremor React. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's just going to look like this because it's uh, this is the, you know, some checkout activity right here. And let me open this here. Okay, nice. And then after this div, hit enter, create another div with the class name flex gap dash four Excel important flex dash row flex dash column. Okay. And inside that we're going to create another card component. So we're showing one more element and this is a very, this is actually a table to show all transactions. So you can stop here if you don't want to, but I want this to look even better. So I'm going to create this. Okay. Just give me one second. All right. So I just created a card. I created a card with a padding four flex one height of 450 pixel overflow scroll and relative. And then we're going to create a header and this header is going to have a title here. And this title is going to have transaction history with badge uh, Delta. Okay. And if you don't know what this looks like, this is what it looks like. Okay. Why did I create this? Don't ask me. It just looked nice. All right. So you can put some valuable information in here. For example, if they made more sales, you can do some math and you can put that value in here. Okay. And then we're going to return a table right after the title and the table is going to have the uh, table header, okay, and the table body. The table header is going to have one table row because this is one row here. And we're going to have the table header, table head, which is email, table TED, status, this one, the created at, and the value. Okay, so these are basically customers that, that are coming in. And then the table body is going to have total closed sessions. So all the closed sessions only. We're going to go over all of that and map it. And if there's no data, just show no data. And if so, if it does exist, we're going to show a table row. So create one row, right? For each thing is one row. So table row and the first cell is going to have session.customerdetail.email. And uh, or I'm just going to say nothing in here. And then this is going to have a badge in here that says paid. And then the second, the third uh, cell is going to be the date. So new date session dot created dot two UTC string. And then another uh, table cell in here with currency set to the, uh, you know, so US dollars and then a span with the amount. Okay. And there you go. I think we are literally done with every single thing. Let me just cross check guys. I'm going to quickly check our work in progress tags to make sure we didn't miss anything major. Okay. Okay. So here is one work in progress tag that we need to complete, which is to wire up the Stripe product. So right now we are you know, we are using, we're hard coding all of them, right? We're just creating a card here, but we want to actually fetch them from Stripe. So how do we do that? I want you to try to guess how to do that. So go ahead, take a pause and just sit and think, how can I wire this up and see if you can give it a shot. If you can't, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So go ahead and say const prices equal to await Stripe, which comes from libstripe 
www.prices.list for this specific product ID. Now, which product ID are we speaking about? We are speaking about um, the uh, Plura product, right? So now you see it says there's no such products here. So let me see. I think we created that inside our const files, right, guys? Let me search for it. Um, is it in here? Or maybe I can search for product. Uh, maybe not like that. Let me just quickly find that product ID, okay? Okay, so since I don't have it in here, I'm going to go into Stripe. So make sure you log into Stripe too, and I'm going to get that product. So I might be, okay, give me one second, guys. I'm going to log in with the other email. Okay, so go into your, you know, the the email you used to, to sign up Plura with Stripe, and we're going to click on that product. Okay, sorry, I'm stuttering. And in here, you're going to see a product ID. So copy that product ID, and you want to go in here, and we're going to paste this product ID in here. And let's go back to localhost. All right, great. No more problems. Nice. So yeah, you can, I, oh, I think we saved it in our .env file. Uh, there we did. Okay, so we can use it from here. This is actually much better. Okay, so I'm going to do this. And in here, I'm going to say process.env dot this variable. And let's go back and refresh and see if it shows any errors. Okay, awesome. No errors. Now, here, instead of mapping over the pricing cards, I'm actually going to map over our prices. So I'm going to say prices.map.data.map. So dot data dot map like this. And we're going to get the card here. This is going to say nickname, okay, not uh, that. And then here, we're going to say nickname again. And then here, we're going to change this also to nickname. And let's see, this also to nickname. The description is actually going to be something else, guys. Uh, let me think. Okay, so for the description, we have to do pricing cards dot uh, find, okay, find where for C, I'm just going to say C here where c dot title equal to card dot nickname. And if we find something, we're going to get the description from it. Okay, nice. All right. And then here for price, I'm actually going to say something else. I'm going to remove this and say card dot unit amount. If that exists, then the unit amount divided by 100. Okay. And then finally, we have one more span here, right? Where is that? Here, instead of this, I'm going to use the duration, the interval. So I'm going to say card.recurring.interval. And then here for the features, I'm actually going to map over pricing cards now. So remove this, and we're going to say pricing cards.find, where the title is this nickname. And then we're going to say features. We're going to get the features and map over that, and we're going to return a check with the feature. Okay, cool. And then this href here is going to change to card dot id because that's the price and in here this is going to say nickname not equal to unlimited and then get started at the bottom now one more thing you're going to notice here is we're only going to see two plans we're not going to see the free plan so we have to create that by you know uh, and hard code it so i'm just going to copy this you guys can build one more and just copy that okay just build one more all right i know you guys can do it it's just the same thing it's a card with the same properties just change the values in here so now it says get started like this. So if I extend this, you see it shows like that. And if you close it, it shows like this. All right. Awesome, guys. So if you click on this, by the way, we didn't test one functionality. If you click on this, I'm just going to show you what happens. So it's going to take you to that agency with the price ID. And it's going to take you to the billing page. And since I already have a plan, I don't think it's going to show anything. Uh, or I think, okay, I think I know why it's not showing anything. We have one more thing to complete. Uh, just give me one second. So you're going to go into your billing page, which is inside agency right here. So agency, agency ID billing, page.tsx. And here we need to actually create a, uh, a subscription helper component, okay? So go ahead and say subscription helper like this, create this component. And we're going to pass in the price, the prices. So we're going to say prices equal prices dot data. Customer ID is agency subscription dot customer ID. And the plan exists is agency subscription dot subscription dot active. Okay. Copy this now. And you're going to go into your uh, components. So actually, we already have one here. So I'm going to say subscription dash helper dot TSX and return a component like this. And in here, we're going to quickly get those props too, like that. And I'm going to import price list. So price is going to be price list at, at data. 
Okay, let me quit this and refresh because we don't need it anyway. And what this is, it's basically like a um, like a client component that shows a modal on the screen. Okay, don't worry, there's nothing in here. It's just one, like five lines, okay? So <laughs> go ahead and first, we're gonna change this to a client component. So go up and say, use client. And in here, I'm first gonna get search params because we need that from the uh, from the param, right? Let me see if I can show you if we're on that page. There you go, you see it says plan equal that price. So we need that. So let's store that in here by saying plan equals search params dot get plan. And then we're gonna also do use modal. I'm gonna push this up top. And then in here, I'm gonna create a use effect hook. And this use effect hook is gonna fire whenever the plan updates, okay? So now we want to basically fire this use effect when the plan updates and we want to open up a modal on the screen. And now we're gonna return that subscription uh, wrapper that we created, right? So I'm gonna say subscription, where is that? Subscription form wrapper. So go ahead and import that component and uh, the plan exist um, is gonna be plan exist which comes from our props. So go ahead and extend, uh, ex you know, just get all those and now we can pass them in here. And now let's go back and import this component. And give me one second, I'm gonna spin up my server as well. All right, and there you go. It's already <laughs> it already upgraded the user. But um, the reason why it did that is because they're already a customer. So you wanna make it insanely simple to convert them. But if you have a new account, let me just show you what it looks like. It's a quick glimpse, all right? So just focus. So if you go here and you click on, let's say the $49 plan, it takes you there and it shows the form and it quickly updates you. But by default, it would show the form and ask you to pay, okay? Oh my God, I am so proud of you because you have done so much and you have come so far. The only thing left now is to deploy this application on Vercel. And this is a very, very crucial step because it is not simple to deploy an application like this that has these subdomain paths, okay? So just, you know, follow through with me. Even I might, you know, go through some, some hurdles, but if I do, I will get the pro solution and I'll show you guys what to do, all right? So let's move on to deploying this application now. All right, now it's time to deploy our application. The first thing we need is to switch to a production database, and we're gonna be using PlanetScale to do that. So go ahead and log in, sign up, whatever you gotta do, and then once you're done, come straight back to this video. All right, so now I am logged into PlanetScale. So what I'm gonna do is I already have a project in here, right, of course. So I'm gonna click on that, quickly go to settings, Okay, and if you guys already have a project in here, you would have to do this as well, which is delete it if you don't have a, a paid plan, okay? So they allow you to have one free plan, so we're gonna scroll to the bottom and delete this database. Now, that database is gone. Now I'm gonna be able to create another free hobby project. So go in here, click on create new database, and as you can see, for hobby projects, it is completely free. For you, if you are just setting up this account, it will ask for your credit card, guys. Um, they clearly said um, that you know they need your credit card information just to prevent uh, abuse of the software. I actually had to put my credit card information, so I have that locked in, and that's how I get a free project, okay? You'll be fine, just go ahead and proceed through. So I'm gonna click on this hobby project. We also have to create the title, so I'm gonna call this Plura Production. We're gonna scroll down and hit Create Database. Now it's gonna take you to this page. You wanna scroll here and click on Prisma and then it's gonna ask you to create a password. Go ahead and click on Create Password. Copy this password just in case, okay? Because you'll never see it again. And then here it's gonna give you the Prisma configuration. We don't actually need this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the code base and I'm gonna go into .env and I'm just gonna store this somewhere here, okay? I'm just gonna say database password. Just store this in here just so that we don't lose that. So all you have to do is you're gonna see this new URL right here, right? Copy this entire URL like this. You wanna copy that. You wanna come back to your .env file and you want to search for the production database link, which is in here. So you see local database, and then you see production database, right? Go ahead and paste that new URL in there. And you wanna put the entire thing in double quotes as well. And now you can copy this and you can replace your uh, local database with that new link, okay? So I'm gonna remove this and paste that right in there. So now what you wanna do is open your terminal, quit everything, and you wanna say bun x prisma generate, and it's gonna do something, nice. And then you wanna say bun x prisma db push and if everything looks good 
you should not see any errors. So let's give that a shot. Awesome. There you go, guys. It looks like our push has been made. We can also come in here and say go to database overview to actually see if anything was done. And as you can see in here, it went ahead and created ticket, funnel, add-ons, everything we needed. So everything worked. So great job. Now we can move to deploying the uh, application to Vercel. Vercel makes it very easy to deploy apps um, directly. In order to make it very easy, we need to actually go and log in to GitHub. So you want to go into repositories, create a new repo right here, and we're just going to call this Plura-Production and go in here and just go ahead and create the repo. So what you want to do is you want to use this, which is push an existing repository from the command line. So go ahead and copy this and it's saying paste it in here. So I'm going to first quit all of this, paste that right in here. And then I'm going to copy the next line, paste that in here and hit enter. And then same thing for the third one as well. And now you can just do git add dot git commit. And I'm just going to say moving to production and then git push. So all your files got committed. And now everything is going to be pushed to this GitHub repository. So now if you refresh this, you will see the new production database. So now you want to go to Vercel, go to Vercel and log in. Okay. So go ahead and create an account if you haven't already, and then come back. All right. So hopefully you logged in successfully and you are right in here. Make sure you connect your GitHub account. Okay. That's how we're going to easily deploy. So the first thing is you can only create one of these type of projects. And the reason is because we are going to be using this sort of uh, dynamic URL structure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply delete this. So I'm going to come in here, click on this, go to settings. This is harder to see. So let me keep it like this. Yeah. Scroll down and you want to go ahead and delete this project. Now, the next thing is it's going to take you to this page, click on import project. So from here, or you can do uh, from here as well. So we're going to do import project from GitHub and it's going to take us in here and you see our new Plura production five minutes ago, click on import and you can keep the name as Plura production. We're going to keep the root directory like this. And then in here, we're going to change a couple things. All right, please follow through with me. Don't make any mistakes. Override this and our build command is going to be bun run build. We also have to have the install command. So I'm going to put the install command and this is going to be bun install or bun I. And now you want to go into your project. Okay. And go to your package.json file. After this lint command, we're going to create a new command called post install. And this is going to be set to Prisma generate and put a comma in here and you can save that. And we also have to push this. I'm going to say git add git commit. Okay. And we're going to say new script and git push. We also have to set the environment variables. So I'm going to go in here, go to dot env. I'm going to copy everything from here and I'm just going to click on this key and paste. And now I'm going to change a couple of things. So just pay close attention. Okay. So the scheme here is going to be HTTPS. Our next public domain and the public URL, we're going to get to this in just a second because I may want to change the URL name. So we will keep that on hold. And now you can scroll to the bottom here and you can hit deploy. This might actually show some errors. We don't know. We'll see how it goes. I see an error in here. So let's see what this error is. So it says fail to compile type error. Carousel react has no exported member. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this. We're going to go in here, paste this, and we're going to see what's what's happening. Where is this being used? So carousel.tsx. Are we even using this? Let me see. I don't think we are. So what I'm going to do is since we're not using this carousel anywhere, we can just simply delete it, right? And uh, we have to unfortunately push one more time. So you got to do git add, git commit, give some meaning to your, to your commits. And let's just go ahead and push that. I'm glad this actually failed because I can show you how you, we, how we can kind of spin that up one more time, go into inspect deployment so we can actually see what's going on in here. So now we just have to redo this. So I'm going to click on this one and it's saying it's going to redeploy with the same source code. Why is it doing that? So I am not sure why it is not triggering a new deployment. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to check out into a new branch. I'm going to say git uh, checkout dash B and I'm just going to say removing component. Okay. Oh, that's not a valid name. Sorry guys. We have to put this dash in here. Now it's going to take me to this new branch in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into this page.tsx in here and I'm just going to make some change, get the user details like this. And then I'm just going to simply say git add git commit changes. Okay. And when you do this, it's going to give you a line of code, copy this because you have to set up the upstream and go ahead and paste that. And it's going to do it for you. I'm going to refresh this and inside our pull requests, 
we now see the new removing component pull request. I'm going to go and compare and pull and I'm going to create a new pull request and it also shows our change there. And now it's going to do the, the, the Vercel stuff for us. Okay, so you see here it's saying pending. So this uh, Vercel is now trying to deploy. So until that verifies, you cannot merge. So let's give that a second. All right, there we go. So we are verified now. And all I have to do is merge the pull request and confirm it. And now that should make a change. So anytime you have to make a change, guys, create a branch and then create a change. Okay, create the change and push it. It's much easier to actually bug track and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let this go ahead and spin up. I think now if you go back in here and if you uh, refresh, you're going to see building. Okay, so now that this is done, it looks like we did not have any errors. Um, it says deployment completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here, click on this project, and we're going to go into settings and go into domains. Okay. So first thing is I'm going to change the name of this project. I don't like this dash here. So let's change that to plural production and let's just give that a second. Okay. And what we're going to do, do is we're going to spin up a new domain and we're going to use this structure right here, star dot, and then we're going to say the rest of this. So let me copy this here. Let me go back, click on domains. And now we have this. So let me edit this, we're going to change this to Plura Production uh, Vercel app and set it to, you know, no redirect and save that. Click on your team, all right, not on the project, click on the team, go into settings and you're going to see this general setting in here. So this is the team URL. So to have a URL structure like this, you have to have the team name, okay? So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this team, uh, um, you know, URL right here and I'm going to say Plura production like this. I'm going to copy this and hit save here. Okay. And our team URL has been updated. And now let's go back to Plura production. Let's click on settings, domains. And now we have Plura production in here. If I do this and put a star dot dot Vercel dot app, there you go. Now I can actually add this new domain in here. So just as a side note, keep this in mind. If you are ever building applications like this, you can only have one URL per team. Okay. So you would have to basically create a new team in order to have this new link. All right. This actually took me some time <laughs> to find. This took me some time to research, but anyway, I think we're good to go. Yeah. Let me just go ahead and open the website now. All right. So I really want you to think like a developer. So here's a challenge. Okay. If I try to access the website, if I try to go in here and hit enter, I am seeing page not found. Try to guess why is this happening? Why am I not able to see this page? What does this 404 actually mean? Or why is this page returning a 404? See, to think like a developer, I don't care if you know what. I need you to know the why. If you know the why behind everything, you are a real developer. Go ahead and pause for a second and just give it a shot. Try to think, why am I seeing 404? Why did we throw a 404 in here when something was not found? Go ahead and try to guess. Hopefully you got it right, and if you didn't, no problem. So when you try to access something, let's let's just quickly research so we can learn how to learn, right? So what is 404? So let's open this. I don't like Wikipedia. I'm actually going to just go through, okay, W3 schools. Mozilla is much better. So the HTTP 404 response status code, right? Status code indicates that the server cannot find the requested resource links to that lead to a 404 page and are often broken or dead or something. So basically, if we're trying to access this, there is no page being returned, but clearly we are returning a page, right? We saw in our local environment, we were returning a page. The real answer is in here. In our .env file, we did not update the endpoint URL. So when we were trying to access that, there is no page there. So all you have to do right now is you're going to go into this project. So go back into the project, click on settings, click on environment variables, and you're going to scroll down here. You see the next public URL right here. This is what you need to change. So go ahead and hit edit and you're going to change this to the following. Put this and make sure you put the trailing slash and go ahead and save this. So let me copy this to save this. And then you also have the domain. So we're going to edit this. And now right below this, I'm going to paste this, remove this stuff in here till the app. Okay. Go back on top and I'm going to paste that 
just like that in there. And now since we changed the .env, I think we might have to redeploy, okay? So here's what you do, click here, go into the, pro the project itself, and we're going to scroll up here, you see deployment, click on that, and then this is the deployment that's in production. So click on this and hit redeploy. It's gonna tell you it's gonna use the same thing but the newest configuration setting and we're just gonna go ahead and redeploy this, okay? So now everything worked, it said deployed. So moment of truth, I still see this in here, but I think this is just cached stuff, or it probably tried to access the this domain and it didn't find anything, right? So that's probably why. If we click on this, there we go. Please keep in mind, everything is gonna be erased, okay? Because we're using a production database. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click this, and the reason why I wanna test is I wanna make sure we're not getting any cores error when we try to access a public page, okay? So go in here, and I'm just gonna you know, log in with one of my accounts. Click login, it's gonna ask me to do the same thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select some information in here, okay? Just give me a second. Okay, so I just went ahead and uploaded all this stuff. I'm gonna also make it a white labeled agency. And now I can save the agency information. There we go, guys. It takes us into our Stripe dashboard. And now it tells us you need to connect Stripe to view metrics. How insane is this? I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly just, you know, play around with our software. And, and I'm gonna try to build a new website. And I wanna show you guys so, you know, we can hopefully get to experience what we built. All right, I'll see you in a second. All right, guys. So if you remember in the beginning of this video, somewhere in between, I mentioned about Stripe in production. Okay. So here's a challenge for you. And I want, this is actually the only real challenge, which is how to get Stripe to work in production. And now I'll guide you, but I want you to try. And if you cannot get the answer, all the answers are in the community only. It's only available for people who signed up to the community, not the discord inside the community. Okay. So this is all you have to do. So in here you see we have, uh, this is by the way, the account where I, which I use to set up Plura. Okay. Not the sub accounts. So inside that Stripe account, you want to look for web hooks. And in here, you're going to see these two things, test and local or add an endpoint. If you go to test and local, it's going to take you in here or add an endpoint. It's going to take you in here. How Stripe works in production for connected accounts is different in production than in local environments. I was completely surprised myself when I came across this because in the local endpoints, we only have one, just one webhook. But in deployments, we have two, one for events on your account and one for events on, uh, you know, on the connected account. So here's a challenge. All you would have to do is put your endpoint URL. So which is the Plura stuff, right? put that endpoint URL with the webhook. So in localhost, we were using the, you know, the localhost URL. Same thing you have to do in here. You have to put this endpoint right in here where we have the webhook. Let me see if I can show you uh, right in here, API Stripe webhook. This URL you have to put in here, but for the production one, and then just give it a description. So this will be for the accounts, okay? So for Plura as the application, not as the agency owner. And now for the connected accounts, you would actually have to create a new webhook uh, that will handle all requests for that. If you can remember in here, what we did is we used metadata and depending on that information, we decided to, you know, create a subscription for us or for the sub account. So as you can see in here, we have the subscription dot metadata, right? This metadata is what has all that information. And we want to make sure there's no metadata and only then are we creating subscriptions for the eight, for our, uh, for Plura as the application. So what you would have to do is you would simply create another webhook and this webhook would look for all subscriptions that have the metadata. And if they have the metadata, you would perform the same actions for them, but you will pass in their, uh, you can see in here, it wants their Stripe account ID. You would have to pass in that information. And if you don't know how to pass in that information, everything is already in here. It's just a puzzle. You have to put it together. I'll show you where exactly what I'm talking about. In here, you're going to see that we made calls with the Stripe, the connected account. Same thing. You just have to make the call with this connected account. That's pretty much it. One more error we need to address is when you try to access the Stripe onboarding process for 
connecting an account, right, like this, it's going to show this error. It's actually very simple. The problem is because in our Plura app, the one that we used to create a Stripe account, you need to actually update those endpoints. So you want to go into the search bar and look for connect settings and you're going to scroll down here and now you're going to see localhost, right? So go back to your application and you want to copy this new domain right here, okay? Pluraproduction.vercel.app. So go back in here. We just need to use the agency and sub account. So I'm going to just delete this, add a new one. I'm going to paste this and I'm just going to go ahead and remove everything and just keep the agency. And then you want to add another one and call this slash sub account. And now I'm just going to refresh to make sure all of that is saved. Okay. Awesome. That is saved. And now if I go back into my application, I'm going to refresh this and just click on the Stripe onboarding. And now it should onboard your user uh, and you should not see any errors. Instead of hitting connect, I'm going to hit skip this form. Now it's immediately going to take me back to my application and the redirect URL should work as expected. And there we go. So now if I go back to dashboard, my connected account should be wired up. And now this agency is set, right? Awesome. Okay, I am ready to showcase my website. So as you can see, I already connected this account. This is a sub account called Biometrics. They are already signed up with their Stripe onboarding process. So let's go into funnels. I just want to show you what I built out in here. So I have a funnel with the welcome page details and the payment page. And also I have connected their Stripe account in here. And as you can see, they are connected with Plura and I've created two products with the following prices, okay? And inside our funnels page, if I go into settings, I've also set both these products to live, okay? And if I go into this uh, first page now, the welcome page, this is the moment of truth. Let's take a look at what I built. And there you go. What an amazing landing animation. And it takes you to this beautiful page that's a fully functional website. Like, you can literally click this button and go to the next page and check that out. Now it asks for uh, your, a quote, like, hey, would you want a quote? If, if so, just drop your information. And I'm just going to put some, you know, some information in here. I'm just going to say, Perrin, Joseph, I'm just going to put some fake email at gmail.com. And if I go ahead and hit get free quote, it not only submits the data, there you go. It also sends me to the next page, which is a payment form. This company called Purple Sky is ready to accept payments on their funnel. How amazing is this, guys? I have never found anyone on YouTube or anyone on the Internet that shows these kind of projects that give you an insight into something that can actually bring value for other companies. Like, see, all you have to do is take this, make a couple upgrades. Of course, you would have to, you know, make it a little more cleaner. And you can start accepting payments. You can start making money. This is a SaaS application that currently exists in the market making billions of dollars per year. You can create such an application and compete with them. It is possible and I believe in you because I have given you all my knowledge and there is still so much more for me to give away to you. So if you want to become the best developer on earth, here's all you have to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. I promise you every video I create will be something that you will never find and it's always going to impress you. All right, prodigies, great job on getting one step closer to your goal of becoming the world's best developer, okay? I will see you in the community and peace out.